Hello, and welcome to Legal Bites. If you're new here, my name is Alita. I'm a lawyer licensed in California and DC, and on this channel, we explain the law one bite at a time. We don't give legal advice, but we do talk about how the law works and try to look into our crystal ball to see how things might turn out. If you're enjoying this on YouTube, we'd love it if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with friends, all the great YouTube-y stuff. And if you want to listen while out and about, we're now offering our live streams in podcast form where you can leave a rating and review. Links are in the description below, as well as to our clips channel, where you can find some of the best clips taken from our live streams. Otherwise, if you want to catch me elsewhere, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Locals, Patreon, or by becoming a YouTube member, or by buying some really awesome Legal Bites merch. Again, all links are in the description below. And with that said, let's get into it. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone doing? I see we've got a bunch of people in the chat already. I love it. I love seeing it. I love seeing people all excited about this day three of trial because it's a, it is why I always need to adjust the mic like right when I go live. I don't know why. Um, (laughs) So Oh, yesterday was a banger of a day, wasn't it? Um, we had some we had some really boring parts that we had to get through. It was pretty <laughs> rough going for a while, right? Um, but other than that, we had a really great day yesterday. Um, at least if you if if you are uh, if if you're Team Johnny Depp, right? If you're Team Amber Heard, it was not the not the best day because um, Isaac Baruch was a fantastic witness yesterday. We all wanted him to be our best friends. We all wanted him in our own inner circles because who doesn't want somebody like that, right? Who doesn't want someone who is going to go up? I mean, that is the ultimate moment when you need a friend, right? When you when you absolutely need them is is in a moment like this and to go up there and be himself and just absolutely knock it out of the park. Um, he he did a phenomenal job yesterday and and I'm I'm I am so happy for Johnny Depp that he has a friend like that. <laughs> you know, like I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's like, of course, like there's a lot that we're that we're seeing him try to do here and he's trying to accomplish, you know. Um, there's the there's the court of law, there's the court of public opinion that he's trying to win. Um uh, but at the same time, it's like at the end of the day, we all we all have this awareness that <laughs> no matter what, he gets to go back to having Isaac Baruch as a best friend. <laughs> How awesome is that? Um, now, of course, that's that doesn't uh, <laughs> that doesn't really mean much for for the other reputational harm and all the other stuff that he's trying to trying to remedy here. But um, but it was just so so wonderful to get to know him yesterday um, and to see some of their um, some of their 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 friendship and their history um, and and the wonderful things that have that have come through um in, in that so anyhow um I had some really funny moments too um and speaking of speaking of I mean one of the funny moments was I was just thinking about how um Isaac was asked on cross-examination about the kiss that he gave Amber Heard on the cheek um it was such a ridiculous question because it was like I don't know. It, it maybe maybe it was her delivery or something but like which I it seems like what she was trying to get at was like did you did you like when you went in for a cheek kiss, was it like hard that she would have winced or something? Or was it, was it like you made no contact? Was it a double kiss? Was it a triple kiss? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know, but it was like pretty crazy. But, um, but then, but his, his response was hilarious. He's like, I'm not European. It's a single kiss. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was so funny, um, which of course made me think of yesterday morning when when we were like, "Hey, where's everybody watching from?" And there's like a bunch of people from all around the world. And I was like, in that moment, I was like, "Oh no, we've got a bunch of people from Europe. I wonder what they think about that." <laughs> so, but it was funny. It was funny. It was endearing, um, and I thought that it was. Um, I thought that it was a really funny moment. One of many funny moments in his testimony. Honestly, I, he was very difficult to to do a a cross examination. Um, so it was a it was a just a just a good day for Johnny. Um, um, so anyhow, I also okay the whole thing about <laughs> the whole thing about Amica cream, um, Amica cream, Arnica cream. Um, I was not familiar with this 
cream or product or whatever until yesterday. I hadn't heard about it until she was repeating this Amica cream um, and found out from people in the chat. It's actually Arnica cream, not Amica cream. And actually, um, I happened to have dinner with one of my really good friends and she explained to me, I think, I think it probably maybe is more familiar for, for people that are well-versed in, um, I don't know, like not necessarily cosmetic surgery, but like, you know, different, different things that you can have done aesthetically. Um, and, um, I guess maybe, maybe for cosmetic surgery, but basically, what she explained to me was that um, Arnica, there's there's actually two different types of Arnica. There's an Arnica pill and there's an Arnica cream. And she said that um, the Arnica pill, what was explained to her by somebody else who I guess was using it or was considering using it or something. Um, the Arnica pill is obviously something that you ingest um, and it's to help reduce bruising and swelling, except in order for it to be in order for it to be um, um, uh, effective, you have to start taking that pill a week before your uh, a week before your procedure, because otherwise, it's not it's not going to do really anything. Um, it's oh, I mean, or at least at least not immediately, at least not right after the surgery. And it doesn't even even when you do use it, um, even when you do use it, apparently it's like it'll maybe reduce some swelling, but you'll still see some bruising. Um, and the same thing with the cream, you can, you can put the cream on it. Um, you can put the cream on, on your, your face. If you, if you have some bruising, but it's not necessarily going to make it go away. It's not magic. Um, it might reduce it somewhat, but like I said, not, not magic uh, according to, according to my friend. <laughs> so my knowledge on this is of course, all hearsay. <laughs> but um, but I just thought that was so fascinating to hear. So um, anyhow, that was just that was just really interesting. Jason Lizotte says, great job on your coverage. After watching Isaac on the stand, I am praying to see Elon Musk take the stand. This will be great. So um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he's actually going to end up taking the stand because I think, um, let me see here. I want to make sure that I'm catching all these super chats while I'm, while I'm talking to you guys. So, um, yeah, I don't know if he's actually going to take the stand because he was, uh, apparently not served any subpoenas either for depositions or for, um, um, or for the trial he's been, I mean, either because he's just a busy guy or maybe he's actually been dodging it. it it's, 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 there's no, there's no repercussions or consequences for that it's just he's just been uh, for whatever reason they they have not been able to affect service and the thing is in order to say in order to compel someone to come to court you have to first come you have to first affect that that service properly so i don't know i would i would love to see i would love to see him in court i mean he's he's such a he's such a maverick anyway that like who knows like <laughs> like even even despite that like how crazy would that be if he still was like you know what ah. I'll go. <laughs> what harm could it do? <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, if I were his attorney, I would probably say, no, just stay away. Stay, stay, stay as far away from this as possible. Um, because I think, I think yesterday when we did see Brandon Patterson's testimony, you know, it, it, as boring as it was, we did get some glimpses into these, um, these surveillance video tapes from around May 21st. Um, and there was one that looked like it was in the basement storage area or something like maybe like a like right outside a a a, a, a um a, a facility elevator or something like that and it looked like there was a flash of amber at the bottom of the screen she kind of goes from like the bottom right to like the bottom and just kind of like sort of like dodges it almost but you can kind of see it and then you can see a, a dude wearing a suit and he looks relatively tall too. So to me, I was like, it was, a, it was very fast. So there could have been a lot of people, but my first thought was, um, my first thought was like, I, that seems like probably Elon Musk. So I, I don't know. It, it, we, we may still see some of him through the footage and all the other stuff. Um, so anyhow, um, oh, shoot. It looks like we just hit 50k 
50k subscribers. That's awesome. You guys, that's really cool. Um, that's amazing. Um, this is a uh, really, really, <laughs> really, really cool. I don't really know what to say about this. I was hoping to get to 50k at some point this year. Um, and the fact that I just hit it is amazing. So thank you everyone for watching and subscribing and liking and sharing and all that great stuff. I, I, the fact that we've gotten to this point is amazing. And I, I, that means that I have to run a 50 K because I don't know if, so to you guys that are new here, I made a promise. <laughs> I made a promise that starting, starting when I hit five K this was back in September, I think when I hit five, five K subscribers, I made a promise that every 5,000 subs, I would run another five K. I, that is, I would add a five K onto the previous one. So, um, I have so far run up to the 10 K. I, I meant to run a 15 K last weekend with my brother, Andy. Um, and I realized that it is in fact true that I, uh, do not know how to do math very well <laughs> because uh, we were at about the 15k mark when I realized, and you'll see it in the video. I've I have, I have video that that's going to be it's going to be a it's gonna be, we're going to make a video of it. I just haven't had the time to um, get the footage to to my guy, my editor, because um, we, we've just been so busy this week. Um, but uh, I realized around the, around the the nine mile mark. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is about a 15K, but I feel like I'm mentally prepared for a 20K, so I'm kind of dying. So let's just continue anyway. Oh, so anyhow, um, expect expect a, a video on the 10 or the 20K and on a 15K at some point. I'm gonna try to run it before before I hop onto a plane and head back overseas this weekend. So um yeah. And then uh, and then yeah, those two videos. But now my promise, I should have said, my promise. To everybody was that I would um, do that for uh, every 5k up to 50 because I, I I can't I can't promise that I'm gonna do like 85ks 90ks <laughs> maybe maybe a single 100k if I'm absolutely nuts and I've just decided to really dedicate myself um, <clears throat> to an insane ultra marathon because already a 50k is is like dipping your toes in the water to to uh ultra marathon i think it technically is is ultra marathoning already and that's you're starting to get into into looney tunes crazy down there um i don't know if anybody has has actually done a, a 50k before but anyhow okay so that's awesome wonderful we have 50k fantastic thank you guys thank you for joining me for for all of this it's great and welcome hey mike how's it going can you hear me yeah I just want to say congratulations on 50K. I, I literally have a hearing in like a few at nine, the nine <laughs> central. And so I'm just like checking in to see what you're doing this morning. And I saw that and I'm like, oh, someone's got to get on there and say, lot of you. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's really exciting. <laughs> like we just met. In fact, I invited myself on your stream. I've already admitted this. And, uh, but you're doing a great job. It's really fun. Thank you. I'm an attorney and a creator like you. And I know it's you're saying like you had to plan and set this out and said, look, I'm committed to this project. And it's a ton behind the scenes. It's a ton. It is. It is a lot of work. And in fact, my my editor recommended maybe filming some like behind the scenes stuff because he's like, maybe it would be good to like make a video to show people what some of this is kind of like. Um, and so like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe people will be interested in see seeing how the sausage is made. <laughs> so uh little things like yesterday okay so i was on and and i saw like and i went back to like to check some of the stuff in the afternoon yeah and this is more creator inside baseball stuff but that you had a list of everybody who showed up yesterday and you had a bunch of people mm -hmm. i'm like do, do you know how hard that is after eight hours of sitting there doing that that then then it closes down and you think okay now i have to do this that you know all these like intricate little things whatever you have this to, is very actually, cool that was that was getting updated during the live stream even because it, it's it's easier to do that keeping track while you're doing well sometimes it's easier sometimes it's not because you're also super focused but i actually am am incredibly fortunate that my my editor is is helping me with a lot of that behind the scenes stuff too um and with i gotta get me one out, of those yeah yeah he's 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 amazing get yourself a brad <laughs> 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 well, that's, um, I, 
Yeah. I hopped on yesterday and I just got lucky because I was I was trying to keep up because I thought I'd come back. So I wanted to sort of half know what's going on at least. Mm-hmm. I had to take calls, so I couldn't do it. But um, I just happened to get lucky. The witness that, yeah, I mean, I just hopped on when I could. Yeah. That guy was fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was amazing. I, I, I feel like this is the witness that I'm going to be talking about throughout the rest of the trial just to be like, oh. Remember Isaac? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there should be some other good witnesses and you'll have some. Yeah. You'll have some celebrities. I mean, you were just talking about Elon Musk. He's not testing. I mean, there's no I way he can testify. Even, even if he says, fine, I want to testify, somebody will object and say they're barred. They, they didn't. Uh, we weren't mm-hmm. able to depose him. Probably right. You're probably Wh- whoever right. thinks it's not good for them will just say, no, uh, I didn't get to depose him. And the judge is going to be like, eh, oh, yeah, you can't testify. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree. I definitely agree. But I I, I have a question. Are you wearing Arnica cream? (laughs) (laughs) Everybody was looking up Arnica cream. (laughs) Yeah, I had I had to have one of my friends explain it to me. (laughs) <laughs> well, and, and uh, in my in my comments, everyone's asking me, you know, what does this have to do with it? I think they're setting up a theory. They're saying you don't know if she was wearing makeup or not. Mm-hmm. That that whole horrible cross examination could have been could have been summarized in. Isn't it true that you don't know if if Amber was wearing makeup at the time? He yeah. would have had to say yes. Yeah, that would, and, and then he couldn't have gone on these it launched on all these fantastic like little uh speeches yeah. for johnny depp yep yep so you know it was, it was all good stuff all right i just had to hop on and say hi i have to, I have to go get ready and do my hearing all right I, i'll good try luck. to hop back on if i can but i have to That's actually great. actually i have to go to court sounds great sounds great good luck <laughs> thank you yeah so um yeah yeah it was uh it, he's absolutely right he's absolutely right about that because it the more the more space that they um that they gave him the more he took right so by by asking these questions and especially the more ridiculous that these questions seemed to get um the more he really started to kind of pounce on them and and rightfully so i mean he just he kind of revealed their process as like okay this is kind of stupid right <laughs> um so but anyhow um yeah. Yeah. That amica cream. <laughs> let me, uh, let me get some more, let me get some more super chats here so that we can, we can get this working and we've got, we've got 12 minutes before. So hopefully I wonder if the feed is up yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, Kayla Duke says Arnica is homeopathic. There's no peer reviewed studies to show it is effective. I, I'll take your word for it because that's, I mean, uh, what I explained about Arnica cream is what was explained to me yesterday. And that's about all that I know. So that, that wouldn't exactly surprise me, um, that it's homeopathic and, and not necessarily, um, yeah, probably, probably not FDA approved or, or something like that. So who knows, who knows? I, I certainly don't. (laughs) You probably know better than me, actually. Uh, Dragon's Treasure says so far, Legal Bites coupon code is beating that filthy Ricada Laws code. Keep it up and put that mail in his place. <laughs> Get some tea today. Um, thanks, Dragon's Treasure. Thanks, Tea Man. Um, so yeah, of course, if you guys do want to buy some tea from the Dragon's Treasure, go to dra- thedragonstreasure.com. You can enter code Amber Turd um, for ten percent off. And when you do, it does help Dragon's Treasure. And I mean, it's amazing tea. Fan- I mean, it's 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 the best tea you'll get seriously anywhere it's it's really good um and even if you don't really like tea that much it's it's really good you can get you can get loose leaf and you can get bagged tea um anyhow it also benefits this channel as well because we do get a little a little uh commission from that as well so um be sure to check them out i think i have the link in the description below if not i'll have to update that at some point today um Isaac Baruch's wholesome gabool, <laughs> gabagool art. <laughs> That's such a great name. Uh, said, finally, a username to surpass Provolone Loaf. Thanks for the inspiration. Hopefully we get another fun character or two before this trial is over. I completely agree. And I really, I really do hope that at some point after this trial is over, at some point after um, Isaac is released, if there's any way that we could, that we could find someone that could get in touch with him to bring him onto the show, I would love to interview him. Um, I, I, 
getting to interact with some of these witnesses after the trial is over is great. I mean, that's how I, I became friends with Nathan De Bruin after the, the Rittenhouse trial. Um, he literally over Christmas vacation, like came over to my parents' house and like had dinner with my family. It was great. <laughs> um, so anyhow, it would be, it would be really great to, to get to meet him. Um, IFID said, road to 50K, let's go. I keep you and Nick running on separate tabs for the algorithms. Day three of the battle of herd mentality is here. Britt Cormier says, how many runs are you behind? Just asking. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to do, uh, I've got to do the, the 15K real quick and then, and then hopping over to the 25K. Cause as I said, the, um, the 20K was, I accidentally ran, ran a 20K. Um, for 20,000 subscribers. So I'm definitely behind, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it. We're going to happen. We're going to, we're going to happen. We're going to do it. It's going to happen. Um, it's early. It's early. <laughs> okay. Um, Ashley's pretty little life super sticker. Hey, thanks for sending a super sticker. Um, Austin S a $5 to celebrate Elon taking whack at actual fascism and $5 into the swear jar for yesterday. See you next Tuesday, Amber. <laughs> that was hilarious too. I mean, should we, should we talk about that? I feel like, I feel like we should talk about that because that was, I mean, the fact that, that we had Amber Heard's own attorney using the word, I'll spell it for now because we're, it's, it's early days. It's early days. I'll spell, it. uh, but using, using the, the see you next Tuesday word <laughs> for herself to describe Amber. I mean, she didn't intend it like, oh, Amber is a see you next Tuesday, but still like, it's just the optics of it. Optics are, are actually very important in this kind of a trial, in any kind of a trial, right? Because all of these things that the attorneys and that the parties are and that the witnesses are doing are signaling certain things to the jury because the jury has to sit there. They can't ask questions. They can only take notes. They can't talk to anybody. All they can do is observe and take notes. And so they, um, they, they're looking for these signs to try to pick up like what actually happened here. What are people trying to hide? What are people very open about? Who's interested in talking about certain things? Who's disinterested in talking about certain things? So, you know, having this kind of signaling, like having, having Amber's own lawyer refer to Amber being called to see you next Tuesday over and over and over again, it kind of just, the jury may have walked away from that saying, People are calling Amber. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> you know, and, and it's not particularly hurtful for Johnny because everybody knows that they, um, that they were in a nasty divorce. Everybody knows that they're in litigation against one another for crying out loud, right? So, so it's it's that was just hilarious. Um, hey, speaking of litigation, <laughs> how are you, Kurt? How's it going? Well, congratulations on fifty k. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been, it's been a crazy wild ride, but it's great. How are you doing? <laughs> well, uh, I feel a little paranoid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just remembered <laughs> for anybody that doesn't know, <laughs> Kurt, um, uncivil law is a, is a, he has a, a channel called uncivil law on YouTube and it was hacked by a crypto cartel, mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. some kind of a, some kind of a, a mm. group of people or something mm. um and um they also now hacked into with they or someone else but it had to do with with crypto something nfts it looked like also yeah, hacked they, were, into they, were mass twitter spam, they were mass spamming for my twitter they took over my twitter changed the name of the twitter changed the icon they were bass bass reply spamming about ethereum and uh yeah and I got to find out about that yesterday live on a stream. That was fun. Oh man! It's like, hey, so because I was doing the stream with this uh, with uh, Nina Infinity, and uh, she, at the very end of the stream, she's like, "So why did you change your Twitter icon?" I'm like, "I didn't." <laughs> like, she's like, she, "What do you?" It's like, "What are you talking about?" She's like, "Are you serious?" Like, yeah. So she pulls it up, and I'm like, "Great, that's great, that's good news." <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely yep, lovely that's, that's it. wonderful that's <laughs> oh no oh no but but you managed to get it back though right and you changed all the passwords and everything i changed the passwords yeah i'm just 
I'm like, is this my life now, though? This is what I'm wondering. Is this my life now? Is it just going to be one hacked account after another? You should just change your coming, passwords every gonna be, coming, day. It's going to be me coming to the to the law tube Twitter and be like, hey, guys, you never guess what happened again. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, I'm so sorry. Do you have your actual subscriber count to the number? I, so yes, let's see here. Last I checked, I think when I refreshed the screen here to, to share it, uh, 50.1. 50 there you 1. go. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and this is wonderful. I, and, and the fact that the fact that I could, that I could hit 50 K while on a live stream is also really satisfying. Really it's really nice. Uh, Cause really you could, you could kind of like, you could kind of like share it, share the experience with a bunch of people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Kurt, just buy crypto. It will end <laughs> all the crypto. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> if I had thoughts about crypto before I did that. <laughs> Well, let's see. I was just checking. I'm at 52.7, so you're probably going to cross me pretty soon. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe stick stick around, man. We'll get we'll get some subscribers going your way too. <laughs> I mean, you got this child, and people really like it, and you have decided to flog yourself for six weeks. I'm not sure. So the far, though, worth a squeeze, you but... missed you missed yesterday. You missed yesterday. Yesterday was an amazing day in this trial. I mean, if you haven't seen the testimony of Isaac Baruch, you really should watch it because that guy is a national treasure. Oh, I saw part of it cuz Yeah. I think Nina, I think it was Nina who we watched part of the testimony on her stream and it was it was interesting. And what was interesting to me is that the cross examination, the way it was done was bad. Terrible. Cuz the crowd, the person who was asking is asking very open-ended questions. Yes. That was both of the cross examinations were, were yesterday. You, I think the question was weren't <clears throat> you angry? I'm like you got to be kidding me. And then he's giving this amazing answer about, yeah, I was a little bit angry about the false lies and the maliciousness and, the, just and this, all the rest up. of it. I'm like, oh, my and then God. The, the, the way that she's destroyed his life. You know, this is my best friend. Of course. Of course, I'm a little bit angry. So, you know, and I and that's why I told her. And then you know, I thought his answer to we don't you talk so angry right now was so good, too. It's like, uh, I just want to end. I yeah. want her to heal and him to heal and yeah it's been so harmful i'm like jesus but it, lord but it was it, it was it felt sincere to me i don't know it did, did feel sincere think... it felt okay. sincere it felt yeah. sincere and the fact that she was able to lose lose control and cross to such a degree was was yeah. amazing i mean he he is a, he is a particularly difficult um person to cross-examine because number one he's very friendly and very um appealing to everyone everyone in that jury room he even made amber smile um and on top of that, he also is a very dominant kind of personality. So he can, he very easily controls dialogue. So that combination together is, makes him very difficult to cross-examine. And the question, note, should, the question should have been something more like, isn't it true that on November the 12th of 2005, you said that you felt anger towards Amber Heard? Right, that should be the question. Like, it's a very yeah. narrow yes/no question. And then when he starts going off, well, didn't I feel angry? I was like, oh, that wasn't the question. My question was, did you say this on this date? Right? Yeah. So yeah. the questions were not tailored. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Also, not cross-examining is an option if you have that particular problem. I mean, the trial is going on for six weeks for reasons that pass my understanding or ability to process. So I, we don't really need to necessarily get everything from this witness. I, I'm sure we can get it 13 witnesses from now on. No one will know the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly true. Um, also, guys, uh, before we before we get started here, it looks like they're going to start in probably a minute or maybe a couple minutes. But um, I wanted to make a note again, remind everybody that the the purpose of, of our live streaming here is to, to give you guys some legal commentary on top of everything and to give... Also to make this kind of more enjoyable for everybody because these are long hours, especially if you're sticking around for the full like 10 hours every single day. So we are going to be talking over testimony at times because we have to give our, we have to, we want to, but we also kind of have to give our, our, our thoughts unvarnished, raw in the moment um, as this stuff is going down to explain certain things um, and to kind of talk about strategy too. All of this kind of stuff to sort of educate people on the, the legal process and on what trials are like in the United States, what civil trials are like. Um, 
and uh, and also just to make things are are um, whoa if I, that was not even grammatically correct. Just to make things a little bit more entertaining too. So um, if you don't want that, if you don't want our commentary, every once in a while we're gonna joke. Every once in a while we're gonna we're we're gonna um, shoot shoot the shoot the shit shoot the turd shoot the amber turd mm -hmm. um not not actually literally shoot guys um uh the the, the turn of phrase anyhow um it, it's day three i'm a little you, my you brain's shoot, a little shoot the shit foggy. is the phrase <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah i it, we, I, I picked up on it there we go um so but yeah if i understand you don't what want you're trying that, to do i got it good morning. if you don't want that head to right. lawn crime the Network, first thing i want to say TV, is I get a call from my news. mother last night and my mother-in-law saying, why did you have your phone on the bench? So <laughs> I want to clear everything up. That was not my phone. That was a call through the computer system. Mother-in-law Because watching. I guess we have an open line for remote witnesses. So that it came through the computer system. Jamie says it's never happened before. Oh my gosh. It came through the computer system and she hung up on it. So just for the record, that was not my phone. <laughs> so I don't need that kind of grief from my mother. All right. Come on. Hey, okay. potentially criminal, Sean. Thank welcome you. back. Good morning. Just want right. to say congratulations. So, uh, I'm going to head out, but I just want to stop by and say hi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is it, hey, Kurt. Uh, exhibit five, you know, What's up? Good morning. Love, love on, love on crypto Plaintiff's law. Exhibit five, you know, thanks. Give us a subscribe, guys. Yeah, thanks. So you had offered <laughs> him to come into evidence. Yeah. I'll, I'll be seeing I you guys later. But was, congratulations again, Alita. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a redacted copy for me, or is that something you haven't worked through? Okay. Okay, that's fine, Mr. Chu. I think it was her witness, but uh, <laughs> that's fine. Well, I know it's their exhibit, but it's you're offering it. And, and so if you're offering it, you have to redact it to basically, I think it's those two. Wait a second, how are they offering, how is she offering anything? At this point, well, I just wanted to make sure missing? I know there... unless it's unless it's a deposition. OK, if you can work out the details, that they may so, be offering uh, both at the you same time. Exhibit, so we'll get that at some point today. Right. Or even if I guess tomorrow when I see you guys, that's fine. OK, perfect. All right. Anything else preliminary before the jury? Mr. Rottenborn? One, one brief matter, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes, that's fine. All right. A little bit of a sidebar. Um, and while that's happening, I'm going to get caught up on some of these super chats. Arrojas NYP. I think it's Arrojas. Um, however, Isaac is a painter and works with flesh color paint, making him an expert. So wouldn't he be able to tell if she had makeup on? The lawyers should have pushed that. I think, you know, I think the jury probably would would be able to put that kind of stuff together themselves. Um, I don't think the lawyers necessarily needed to push something like that. Um, and I, I think that when, when we're talking somebody that, that is three feet away, that was the testimony that came out was it, was that she was maybe about three feet away, away from him the day after the incident. Um, I, I think that it's reasonable to say that, that a man who doesn't know what Arnica cream or Amica cream is or foundation, or, you know, the difference between these different types of, of makeup can also still tell if someone is wearing makeup. So I think. Um, Did you discuss Elon one? Musk's offer to buy Twitter? No, I thought I I saw something about that, but I I I didn't have time to to home in on it. Okay, just asking. <laughs> yeah, I was reading his statement to the SEC. Ah, interesting. Uh, let me let me get the super chat first, and then we'll 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 talk about it. Um, Aiden Bergen says, "Hey, Legal Bites was on Nick's stream for two days in a row. Now going to watch your stream for two days. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the better Happy stream." This is uh, a superior stream. <laughs> well, Nick is great. Nick is great, and he's very entertaining. No, um, I have a little bit one, of a... Not on this one. You you are the champ on this one, <laughs> Legal Bites. You are the champ. He might have been the champ of the Ridden House, but you are the champ of this stream. You, Aww. I have your back 100%. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. I appreciate that. Until you cross my th threshold of subscribers, then I'm going to stab you in the back. <laughs> I fully expect it. Lawyers, okay. man. <laughs> Are we ready for the jury? Yes. Okay. Monkey Gamers, the official says, I only work from home one day a week now, so I can only watch this live once in a week. Once a week now. Great content as always. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry you're back in the office. Um, unless you enjoy that, then I'm happy for you. <laughs> Mandalore Wise 01 says that's the written the written house super class for you. Uh, cover a big trial live and you'll get a lot of subs and super chats. It's, it's very helpful. 
Vox Dark Star says, just run an ultra marathon and you should be covered for the foreseeable future. Yeah, yeah, that's that's also true. Jay Watt says, you think they'll address the guy who walked off the elevator two minutes timestamp before the police arrived? The guy who took wine on the floor photos. Probably uh, yes. I'm sure they'll they'll address all of it. They'll address all of these details for sure. Upstate Housewife, New York. Hey, thank you. The pool of wine thing was like I did. I was trying to figure out why anyone right. cared. Good morning, but I feel like I'm going to ask that question a lot. It's going to become witness? it's going to become important. I'll take your word for it. Okay, my video. You know that. Two seconds earlier, can you get the screen up? Michelle Guillaume. I like to get the screen up before. Welcome. I, Welcome to, YouTube YouTube to try to get the screen up before you, because of that, uh, the sound, but we'll get it up for you. King Bob also says, love the coverage, keep up the good work, and happy birthday to my wonderful wife, Denise. Hey, happy birthday, Denise. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, King Bob, happy to have you here watching. Andy the Game Maker, how dare you da drag Crypto Cartel into this? <laughs> Andy, if this winds up being some sort of promotion for your stuff, I'm going to find you. <laughs> We're going to have very strong words. <laughs> Linda Ford, thanks for the super sticker. You may have to beat the crap out of your brother. No, it definitely is not him. I don't think he has the capability of hacking into anyone's profile. Yeah. He's just a goofball. I know. Or is he? I'm just kidding. We're only having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Purchase Wholesome Gabagool Art says this stream brought to you by Kurt Coin. At this point, though, at this point, me offering my own crypto is the only way that this as I a feel meme, like I actually feel like is not the worst idea I've ever heard of to do it. That's as a the meme, golden opportunity the here idea. for you. Me, my way into the riches. I mean, <laughs> it's actually, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, 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 that. That's what happened with Dogecoin, right? It started off literally as a meme. Yeah. And now it's a thing. <laughs> when you buy Kurt, Kurt coin, you invest in Kurt. <laughs> Phil Abudi says, shooting the shit sounds like a messy event. <laughs> yes, it does. Mia Miller says the trial is lengthy, so Elaine and co. can ask a gazillion times about drugs. Well, they they still have time limits, though. And the 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 judge said at the end of the day yesterday, she kind of gave them a little bit of a warning and said, you know, my my clerk is keeping track of the time for both sides. So these lengthy cross examinations that Amber Heard's team is pulling that is not um not actually drawing any blood from the other side is really just wasting their own time. There is a time limit. There is, there is because, because the judge said the judge said she's like, she's like, you know, six weeks sounds like a long time, but it it's sounds actually like an incredibly long time, but it's Monday through Thursday. We're not, we're not at, at trial on Fridays. So there's 24 days in this trial. We have, we, are, this is day three that we have already done. So, you know, for, for us substantively, I I'm saying this is day three, but for them, this is actually day four, including the, the jury selection day. So she was like, uh, we're already at the end of day three out of 24. So, you know, like start stipulating to stuff because we are going to run out of time. My clerk is actually taking, taking the time for both sides. And, uh, and we, um, um, you're, we're going to cut you off once you run out of time, we're going to, we're just going to cut you, cut you right off. So it sounds like she's, she seems very friendly. She seems very nice. Um, and not like an a-hole about things, but she sounds like she's going to be strict on that. I'm still sticking with six weeks is an insane length of time. Insane. Yeah. It's a, it's a long time. It's a Good long morning, time. Ms. James, can you please say your Can you name? imagine being in a six week trial? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So this is a another video deposition. I wonder if this one has a cool background. <laughs> My name is Catherine Olwyn James. Catherine James. What's your current address? Have you ever spoken with Miss Vasquez before today? Yes. When? I don't recall. 
What was the substance of that conversation? I don't recall. Was it in the past month? No. Was it in the past year? Yes. Did you talk about this case? No. What did you talk about? I don't recall. I don't recall. <laughs> yeah. If you don't recall, how can you recall that you didn't discuss this case? Have you discussed this case or the UK litigation with Mr. Waldman? I just, yes, I discussed the UK case with Mr. Waldman. I mean, that's that's not well, that hard of a question to answer, the by the way. It's like, if you don't know what you talked about, how do you know okay. you didn't talk about this case? Like, because I didn't talk about this case with anybody. I would have remembered talking about Did this case. Did you pause, I mean, please? Take your pick. No details whatsoever that you recall? No. Did Miss? You could. There you go. Sorry, you want to approach? Uh, or, sure. I'm not sure. Okay, so we've got an objection. So this is. Um, this is Kate James, who folks in the chat, is she the one, is she the one who Amber supposedly stole her rape story? This is, I, I think, I think this is what I'm seeing. So she was, I think, Amber's personal assistant. Yep. People are saying, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm trying to tweet this out. Sometimes I'm a little bit, a little bit late here in getting this stuff out. All right. Okay. So I wonder what this is about. I wonder if maybe they're, they're arguing about the the, the, the point at which they jumped into the deposition or maybe something that's about to come up. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to the uh, video deposition, there are some extra statements that this witness made um, that aren't part of the video, but it's part of her testimony. So Mr. Rottenborn is just going to read those uh, into the record and for you as well. Okay. Interesting. That's weird. I don't like Question. that. Have you spoken with Adam Waldman before? Answer. Yes. Question, when was the last time you spoke with him? Answer, I don't recall. Question, how many times have you spoken with him? Answer, I would say somewhere around 10 times total. Question, have you spoken with him in 2022? Answer, yes. Question, what was the substance of that conversation? Answer, friendly banter. Question, about what? Answer, Nothing to do with the case at all. Question, what was it about? Answer, we have gotten to know each other. And, you know, I was on vacation, said Happy New Year, that's it. Question, did you call him or did he call you? Answer, I didn't call him. Question, did you text him? Answer, I sent a message saying Happy New Year to a lot of my friends. Question, over text? Answer, Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. You can continue the video. Waldman, assist you in preparing your witness statements for the UK litigation. No. Did you exchange drafts of those statements with Mr. Waldman? No. Who did you send those drafts to? Shillings. Is every word in those witness statements words that you drafted? Yes. Did anyone provide edits to those witness statements for your consideration? I'm very good at my own editing, I can assure you. That's not the question. I didn't answer my question. Did yeah. anyone else provide edits to those witness statements no. for your There you go. Now, you've spoken with Mr. Depp She's spicy. since he and Amber got divorced, correct? Correct. When was the last time you spoke with him? You can answer. I don't recall. Was it within the past year? No. In any day prior to today, have you exchanged text messages with Mr. Depp? Yes. When was the last time approximately that you exchanged text messages with Mr. Depp? Uh, I would say 2016. Oh, 
yeah, I think 2016, but it's a long time ago. When was the last time you spoke with Amber Heard? I don't recall. Was it shortly after your employment with her ended in 2015? No. Was it after that? No. Do you, have you spoken with her to the best of your recollection or communicated with her in any way in the past, say, five years? No. When were you, um, when were you hired by Ms. Hurt? In 2012. Um, how did you meet her? Her sister put an ad through, uh, you know, a recruitment uh, system I use in my field. Um, take me through your, the chronology of, um, well, let me ask you this way. When did you, would, would you describe your, your work for Ms. Hurd as a personal assistant? Is that what you'd call your job title? Yes. When did you first start working as a personal assistant? In 1999. How many, for how many people have you served as a personal assistant? Maybe uh, six. Since you um, left Ms. Hurd's employment in 2015, for how many people have you served as a personal assistant? One, that's the same person I work for to this day. I've been with him for six and a half years. Ms. James, have you had any other jobs since, other than this, this personal assistant job since you left Ms. Hurd's employment? No. She definitely seems now, very annoyed. Your work for Ms. Heard was, was it part-time or full-time? I can understand that. Yeah. When did you change from part-time to full-time? I don't recall. <clears throat> what were your job duties? Too many to mention. Give me your best summary mm. of what your job duties were, please. Mm -hmm. This is relevant. Okay, so let's see. I mean, if you are ready for a really, really long time of me explaining all of the details, that's fine. <clears throat> it's everything you could possibly do to run someone's life. Okay, so it is grocery shopping, it is taking care of admin, it is running errands, it is getting the car fixed, it is getting the dogs groomed, it is picking up flowers, it is dealing with the decorator, it is dealing with the housekeeper, it is going on and on and on and on and it goes on every single day. Oh, geez. Arranging travel, dealing with all of the surplus <laughs> stuff around the travel, booking all the greeters, dealing with the changing of travel. Okay, liaising with people that she's working with on films, updating her calendar accordingly, uh, liaising with the people on set every single day to update her calendar to ensure that she knows what scene she's doing each day, what her call time is. Or every day it's something different. But it's a, lot, it's a, myriad, a myriad of things that go across the board daily. Ooh. You were paid for that work. Picking up correct? some resentment here. Very poorly. <laughs> You pay for that work very poorly. What were you paid? Was it fifteen hundred dollars a week to start? Are you kidding? That... No, I wish. My God. <laughs> no, it was not. She paid me twenty five dollars an hour to start <clears> off <throat> with, and she finally agreed after screaming abuse at me that she would pay me fifty thousand dollars a year once I went to full time. What? And this was after me working. <clears throat> well over 10 years it feels like that should be a little bit more so than that very insulting to me but i did it anyway because i had grandfathered in the ability to pick up my son from school and bring him to work with me at three o'clock and you could have left miss Hurd's employment at any time correct yes whoa no, she had me changed in the basement. You were based in Los Angeles when you were providing personal assistance services to Ms. Heard, right? I have always lived in Los Angeles since 1999. So you didn't travel with Ms. Heard when she was out of town, correct? 
that was another part of our agreement that I wouldn't travel with her because of my child. Something about her accent is point, just so perfect, bit, right? you know, for, really. for her job and this testimony. It's Not like the really. best accent ever. How many weeks a year would you estimate Miss Herb is out of town while you work for her? Well, you're talking uh, almost 10 years ago, so I can't tell you quite honestly. But when she was out of town, Welcome back, Mike. you wouldn't Hello. see, um, I, you, you, you never traveled with her, right? No. How much did you see uh, Mr. Depp over the course of your employment with Ms. Heard? Apparently, you can get a personal assistant for $50,000, so I think I might put out a How Craigslist many times, ad. Well, obviously, you didn't see him when he was out of town, right? No. When he was in town, was it, would you see him daily, weekly, monthly? What, what would you estimate? Uh, there is no rhyme or reason to, to, be, to answer that question. Now, you never witnessed any violence between Ms. Hurd or Mr. Depp, right? No. And Ms. Hurd never told you that she had been violent to Mr. Depp, correct? No. You had knowledge that um, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp had arguments, correct? No. Ms. Hurd never told you that she had and Mr. Depp had had arguments? Occasionally she'd send a text message complaining about her mental state, but it was, it was never clear exactly what was going on. Was okay, so you never... It was, I remember she would text me complaining uh, about her mental state, and that was about it. I don't have any of the text messages, so it's hard to remember. Do you recall hearing anything about uh, an alleged incident between Amber and Johnny on a flight from Boston to LA around this time frame. Like I said, I remember that day very well. And and um, to, to, to follow up on that, I, I'm not asking just about what Amber may have told you. I'm just trying to drill down generally to what you may have heard, whether from Amber or Johnny or anyone about that. Does that make sense? So, can you tell us what do you she remember like she has a bruise on her cheek. about that flight or what happened? It's a horrible outfit on that flight from Boston to LA. It's a little too yeah, severe. No. Two days in a row, she today, looks you evil. Don't remember anything? It's just yeah. about poor that. choices. I don't know. I wasn't on the plane. I just know what she went from Dr. Elsa Schneider to a, a Bond villain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Meet her at the shuttle. Did you think that Good call her back. she was okay? Thank you. <laughs> you know, I Long days here. That's my role <laughs> to play a caregiver. That's all I can imagine. So what do you remember about this day um, that you alluded to earlier? Mostly my surprise that they went to the Chateau Marmont because Amber had an apartment of her own in West Hollywood that was like completely set up and available to her. So I, that was my biggest confusion. Like, why did she go to the chateau? And then she asked me to get her bathing suit. I remember that. So I had to go to her apartment to get her bathing suit, which, again, seems strange to me. And then um, I, what also seems strange is when I got there, she had a bunch of friends with her. And it's originally, it, I thought she was alone. Did... Um, when you refer to Amber's apartment, are you referring to the apartment on Orange Avenue? Yeah, yeah. And isn't it true that Mr. Depp would spend time in that apartment with Amber from time to time, correct? Well, I don't really know what the question is in relation to, but he wasn't there at that time, if that's what you're referring to. Yeah, no, that's not my question. My question was just over the course of your employment, you have knowledge of Mr. Depp spending time at that Orange Avenue apartment, they spent right? They time there and at his residences. They would go around different places, yeah. Were you concerned about Miss Heard and her well-being on this day? No, because it had become a pattern with her, and so I was merely placating her, I would say, and especially when I saw she was there with about four or five girlfriends and basically having fun. 
enjoying each other down by the pool. That's where she needed a swimsuit. And then they proceeded to hang there all day drinking uh, while I sat around waiting um, with my son. Actually, I think it was a Sunday that day, I remember. We had to wait all day and while they just hung around drinking by the pool. And then uh, finally I went home and finally she went back to her apartment and then she wanted me to go back and pack a bag for her at about 10 o'clock at night on Sunday. And I said, I couldn't go. By that point, I'd already spent the whole day sitting there. So I said, I couldn't go and pack a bag because it, I'd already put my son to bed and she was very angry about that. I remember that. Okay. So let's, so when you asked her if she was okay, you didn't actually care if she was okay. You said you were just placating her, right? It was a standard, standard procedure at this point. She was uh, a very dramatic person. So you, you didn't actually think that there was anything um, that, that, that Amber was actually upset, correct? As I said, it just didn't make sense that she went to the shuttle instead of going home. That, that was the first red flag for me that day. You know? So, so you, so you, you came to the conclusion that day that any, she actually wasn't upset. Is that what you're saying? It's too much. I mean, I already answered once. <laughs> what I'm asking is, did you did you come to the conclusion that there was nothing wrong with Miss Heard that day, and that she wasn't actually upset? I don't know how to answer. I mean, it's such a strange question. Like I said, you already asked me, and I already answered. I'm asking to answer it again. I don't think I asked the exact same question, but do your best, please. Could you ask me the question in a different way or a clearer way that is not exactly the same as the last question you asked me? How about could you could rephrase the question? That day that Miss Heard hadn't experienced anything traumatic. Less, less aggressive. Over the course of the day, I observed Miss Heard <clears throat> enjoying the company of her friends for several hours. That's all I have to say on that matter. And would it be odd for someone who's experienced trauma to want to be around friends? To you? Yeah, I, I don't know. So in any event, you you um, you said you sat around at the Chateau Marmont, is that right? Yes, well, she was deciding what to do. Now you were being paid for that time, correct? Not overtime, it was a Sunday. I was not being paid, no. Did you um, did you avail yourself of anything um, at the hotel? Like, did you order any food? No. Did you? I might have ordered, ordered, I might have ordered some food for my son, actually, to be honest. Now I think about it, because he was only little at the time. I think he was, you know, five or something. So I, I, might, I might have ordered food for my son. I'm not a big eater. Food is not a priority for me. Did, did you, would you put that on Miss Hurd's tab that day? Everything was on Deb's tab that day, so no. On Johnny's tab? Yes. Let's bring up the document. Of course. Titled, uh, or the <laughs> ends in 6151, please. Sounds consistent. Three of them when she wrote, I love you, and you wrote, love you too, hon, won't be long, X. Um, was that just placating Miss Hurd? Standard friendly text exchange uh, in my role of work. Were you trying to be supportive at all or, or just placating her? A bit of both, I guess. Did you have any concern whatsoever about Miss Hurd's well being that day? No. When was the first time that you remember uh, Miss Hurd telling you? that um, all wasn't right in the relationship between her and Mr. Depp. Jack, I don't recall exactly when it started, but it was usually um, her complaining and crying uh, uh, due to, I would say, insecurities within the relationship more than anything else. Uh, she would be very, very insecure a lot of the time, and she would call me up 
crying. I remember one time she called me when she was alone in New York City and she was crying, walking around the street, crying. And he wasn't there, she was alone, but I said to him that she needed to go inside because I was worried that the paparazzi might take a photo of her and she was in a very dysregulated state. And so just out of kindness, I, I said to her it was better if she went inside rather than walking around crying in public. So I remember that, but I don't remember exactly when that was. It might have been 2012 or 2013. Um, as the... Um, as the job went on, we called each other less and less and did mostly text messaging. It was all text messaging we did. Did you, um, did you ever believe that Mr. mistreated her? No. So, and why not? Just never any evidence of it at all. I was there almost daily in uh, both her place and then eventually at uh, his place in West Hollywood and then ultimately at the, the lofts downtown. It was a daily basis experience, morning, noon, night, all days of the week. So, you know, I mean, I never once saw any evidence of anything. Did Miss Hurt ever tell you that Johnny had hit her? No. Did he ever tell you, did she ever tell you that Johnny had pulled her hair or pushed her? No. Let me ask it a little bit differently. You never believed, Miss Heard, that Mr. Depp had mistreated her. Is that correct? At the time or after? I never believed it. In what context are you talking about? During my employ or afterward? During, During your employment? No, never. Yes, any and there was time. never any damage to the apartment that I witnessed. There was never any aftermath of anything ever that I ever saw. Now, you, of course, have no personal knowledge one way or the other whether um, Johnny was abusive to her, correct? Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true because if it was true, I would have seen the damage even if I wasn't physically present in the moment of, of these alleged arguments. And what's your basis for that statement? Well, if someone's been beaten, there's generally physical evidence. So your testimony is that if there's if, if there was no physical evidence that you observed, then it couldn't have happened, the domestic violence by Johnny toward Amber. Is that your testimony? No. Well, I'm trying to, to understand what your testimony is. Um, maybe you could clarify for me, Ms. James. Um, is, is your testimony that... Um, you never saw firsthand evidence of Johnny being violent to Amber that it couldn't have happened? That's not what I said. You're trying to put words into my mouth. I don't appreciate that. Can you pull up the document that is... Um, it, well, let me see what it ends with here. Someone in the chat. I'm not a phytologist. <laughs> so this is this is Amber's attorney that is that is conducting the deposition, which is probably why she's so hostile. The doc, um, Def one one four three two, please. Or at least one reason why she's so hostile. Four, can we this isn't good for Amber. Direct your attention no. to the. Um, Especially right on the heels of Isaac. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she's not as good a witness, but she's painting a picture that uh, Johnny Dutt's text to his friend was correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's the number on it? <laughs> okay. The, the asking to pack a bag at 10 o'clock at night for your assistant who just put their child to bed is is not a good look. Mm -hmm. Yep. And reviewing that dep had to be a nightmare. You, you, the, what, what people don't see is there there were tons of this. This dep was three times longer than we'll see with objections and all this stuff. And then they went through it all together and they did timestamps. They might have even watched it together in chambers for 30 freaking witnesses. I, I, the, the amount of work here is ridiculous. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I did go to court and I set a nice expert uh, disclosure schedule. So in case you were all wondering. <laughs> Yep. I, do you think she's she has like a stylist or or is she yes. or is she making these outfit choices because she's that hair. she she literally looks she's like not, she's dressing as a villain. She's not she's not making these choices 100% on her own. I I I am I'm right. I'm fairly Unless certain, certain of that. Okay, I would I would go softer but you, you know what do I know? especially when what they're trying to combat is this image that Amber is the aggressor. I'm suddenly so, getting Elizabeth home vibes. Yeah. That's what somebody said yesterday. Yeah. I got super chatted that yesterday that they were like, Oh, I wanted right, to know if she was looking like, like Elizabeth Holmes again. And yeah. yep, somebody sure enough. has a copy of eight, four, four for me. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll get she it. She really right. should oh, we'll be wearing it. softer colors. She should come in with something maybe more like like what what Isaac described yesterday as a hippie dress, a schmata, right? Ooh, no, I don't think <laughs> that's the that's schmata. Way. No, I mean I it, 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 is, that it, is, it is Northern Virginia. You want to be a little conservative, so well, I of course, yeah. I, I I'm yeah, I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, but basically <laughs> my my point here is that if anything, she should go softer, more feminine, more mm -hmm. more youthful. But right now, she's looking like like she's some she's some warrior princess. Um, which I think for her, what she thinks of herself is maybe it's, it's appropriate. Cause she's like, Oh, I'm this me too warrior. Um, but, uh, I, I, th I think it doesn't work for the optics of her case because no. she should not be looking like a warrior. She should be looking like someone who has been, has been, you know, beaten by this, this celebrity who has so much fame and so much money and power and all this stuff. And she, Oh, me, Oh my, I'm, I'm just a, a little, a little lady. <laughs> who happened yeah. to fall in love with him <laughs> so um yeah it's it's that's i i like i like the hair i like the hair but i think uh i i think going with the all black and the very overly structured i still think it looks better than the first day because she just looked disheveled and and half ha only half alive really I, I like the hair in the sense that I think it looks good and there was a lot of effort put into it and it's it's not it's appealing in its way but i think it's mm -hmm. too much Detail. It's too much effort, and it's sort of obnoxious for court. Again, I, I don't think I would it, agree with that. I, okay. I would go simpler, like like that hair is like okay. Somebody worked on me for three hours to put this together. That's that's also true. Also true that that I, that, 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 that can also make her less less relatable. Right, and maybe maybe it's just me being Midwestern simple paranoid, but that, that's the way I see it. Yeah. No, I I think I think that's a, that's that's fantastic insight. I'm just a regular guy from Chicago. <laughs> from a little oh, town. On women's fashion choices. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, why am I talking fashion choices? <laughs> I love it. No, I love it because because the optics of this trial and, you know, through body language, through their dress, through different things that people are doing, the way that people are phrasing things, all of these are, are subtle communications to the jury. So I Absolutely. love breaking down all of that, even though some people are kind of sometimes uncomfortable with talking about it, especially in today's climate, you know, talking about these gendered sort of things like, you know, men's fashion, women's fashion. I feel like all of it is it's fair game to talk about because we all notice it whether now, whether we want to or not right with the with the with the with the pastel shirt man clerk court clerk court guy yeah i like his i like his attire you're talking if about the guy i represented her who oh i think johnny looks good if i represented yeah. her and she ro and she rolled in for for you know day three of the trial like this i'd say we're not doing that go fix that yeah yeah, I, I really go, would. Go, and she and if she some, got go, upset, I'd say, no, you, you, this is this is all wrong for what we're trying to do. Go fix I would, it. I don't know what to change to, but don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I, what I would say is go put on some dusty pink. I've and taken suits off the back of my tomorrow, door and put them on clients. <laughs> yeah. And if she if she shows up tomorrow wearing dusty pink, then we know that that, that her team is watching this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Nate, how's it going? What's up, everybody? Hi, Nate. Doing? Uh, just sitting here watching another day of the trial of the century. Yeah. The definition <laughs> trial of the century. There's Judge. Judge Church Lady. 
<laughs> the judge is also wearing all black. I mean, that's a gen- <laughs> this is a gender she has no judge. choice. Okay, okay. <laughs> she's allowed to look severe, but she also is the, is super nice. There was a funny exchange this morning where she was like, "Okay, you know how there was a phone that rang in here yesterday? I had to clarify because my mother in law called me and and told me not to turn my phone on in the courtroom. She's like, it wasn't mine. I promise." <laughs> Oh, wow. It was so cute. That is cute. <laughs> she's she's very relatable. She seems like a very you very sweet Kate judge. In that um, the column yeah. labeled participants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is this a text message that you received from Ms. I like Beth, she has the American um, flag on around her. August thirteenth, mm-hmm. twenty sixteen. Yes. And it, it appears that he's responding to something that you had sent him. Correct. I don't know. You see That's where he says, "Thank you, sweetheart." Yes. He's directing that to you, right? It looks like there's someone else CC'd on this text, so it could be to that person. I honestly don't know. I can't answer your question. Can we please pause the video? Okay. All right. Can we pause for a second? Thank you. He already did. That was good. Nice work. Your Honor, I'd like to. Um, we'll switch we to. Switch to our, okay, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, not yet. From everything I've been seeing, Johnny Depp, he should be going home at night, kissing his lawyers in the mouth. Your Honor, with a fantastic um, job. So far, so far. With the stipulation that we'll prepare a redacted version to be entered into evidence that has other personal identifiers redacted, we'd ask for permission to publish, to admit this into evidence and publish to the jury. The objections are noted, um, and we will get the redacted copy. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Why do they have all those young women behind Amber? Those are her friends, I think, or somebody. Oh, I think that in, in the black blazer and the white, I think that's, um, what's her name? Eve Barlow. She's like a sort of a journalist or something. People have been asking me about this because it, she's a friend of hers and she's been, she's been going up to her like in recesses and whatnot. And they've passed notes, I guess, asking if that's improper. I, my instinct says, no, she's one of, she's there as one of her friends. I don't think that she's going to be writing any sort of journalistic stuff about her or if she does she's going to have to disclose her connections with her ready to resume with the video thank you your honor let's say i wanted to show what the text actually said yeah do you see where he says um we'll hit you when i get back doll come over for a spot of purple and we'll fix her flabby ass nice and good (laughs) um come over for a spot of purple means come over for a drink of wine right i don't know that's what you understood it to mean correct I don't know. Solution, can you pull up the document um, labeled UK? I've never heard that before. Come over for a spot of purple? I like Me it. Either. James, I kind of like it. Like, like Merlot that or something? Yeah, yeah. like red yeah, wine. Yeah, it's supposed to be wine. I guess. Uh, well, there'd be something wrong with me if I didn't. Or is that purple and drying? I need order in the court. You gave that testimony. Thank you. you gave it under oath, correct? Yes. Um, Lucian, can you please go to page 39 of the PDF? And sorry, guys, the volume and is even lower up, than the courtroom um, feed, so I can't the turn them up. Uh, I can only turn us down. And on line seven, um, Ms. James, is it? Am I reading this right? You were asked the question, and he is inviting you over for a spot of purple. What is that? Yes, your answer. Question, what did you understand? You answered red wine, I imagine. You see that? Yeah, I do remember that. Remember giving that testimony? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is it your understanding that um, Mr. Depp was inviting you over for, um, for wine um, at some point after he split up from Ms. Hurd? And just speculation. Did you go, uh, did you meet up with Mr. Depp um, for red wine around the time period of this? It might be, you know, something else. I did meet up with him, but we did not drink red wine. Could be purple pills instead of red wine. Was anyone else present for that meeting? Blue and yellow, purple pills. When he said, come over for a spot of purple and we'll fix her flabby ass. (laughs) You understood him to be referring to Miss Hurt when he um, said, "We'll fix her flabby ass." Correct? Did you, in fact, fix her flabby ass? No, I'm sorry. 
I can Hold only on. do so much. It's still flabby. And I'm not asking for you to speculate what he was referring to. I'm asking for your your understanding was that he was talking about Ms. Heard, correct? You can answer. There isn't an answer. I mean, this is the way. But this actually that. helps there Amber's case, answer. her being so deceptive, because we all know what the answer is. Obviously, yeah. we're talking about her. Yeah. Her fighting it just makes it okay. the um, point get driven it even farther and farther. The, mm -hmm. the prior testimony that we just looked at. Now he's going to play a prior testimony. This is how you kill a witness wh who wants to try to fight you. Okay, so you Ms. said James, this before, but you don't um, know that. Isn't it true that um, on line 12 of page 1221, you were asked the question, red wine, and not only to come over for a spot of purple, but to fix her flabby ass. That was about misheard, was it not? And on line 14, you answered, yes, yes. You see that? There it is. Yes. Totally impeached now. So you, Credibility you shot up like a dog. Referring to misheard. Correct. I'm sorry, you said no. Just trying to be agreeable in the in the court, having no clue what is going on. So, this go. is how you break down a witness on cross. Was that answer in the court truthful or just agreeable? Just being agreeable. So Not it wasn't truthful. truthful. You can answer. I don't have an answer for you, Mr. Robinson. Yeah. What did you and Mr. Depp talk about at that meeting that you recall? I don't recall details. Just tell me generally everything you recall. It's too long ago, Mr. Rottenborn. I don't recall. Do you recall anything? No. Where was the meeting? At his residence in uh, West Hollywood. Is that um, his residence? What, I'm sorry? In West Hollywood. What time of day? Um, about 3 p.m. Um, so you recall the time of day, but you don't recall anything you discussed? No, I'm just saying, I know it was in the afternoon because it was after I picked my son up from school because my son went to swim in the pool with the security guards watching him. It's a bright light on that attorney's face. Yeah. Yeah, no, he had the same problem the other day, too. Yeah. I'd be going to the court. I'd be like, we got to put up a blanket or something. <laughs> I mean, I could not deal with this. What did what did you discuss about this hurt? Uh, like I said, I don't recall the details. Well, I'm I'm just a little confused because you just testified you didn't remember anything, but now you remember that you did talk about Miss Hurd. Oh, uh, they killing her in the depot. What I'm trying to get is everything you remember about the conversation. Well, you've got to understand, Mr. Rottenborn, the the mutual um, connection between Mr. Depp and myself is, in fact, Mr. Hurt, Miss Heard. So inevitably, that is going to be part of the conversation. That's all I remember. Okay. Do you remember anything else about that conversation, with Mr. Depp? No. Have you seen Mr. Depp since that conversation? No. Now, um, what's your just describe generally your educational background, please. I completed high school and then I went straight into becoming a veterinary nurse when I left the school, left school, which I did for approximately three to four years before I left Australia. Do you have any sort of specialized training in veterinary medicine or nursing? Uh, only on the ground experience, like four years in a clinic. So, um, you don't have any experience with um, medical training for humans, right? No. And okay. um, you don't have any training in healthcare, correct? Could you be more specific? You don't have any training in healthcare for people, correct? I'm not, a nurse, I'm not a human nurse, if that's your question. I don't really understand your question. Sorry, you don't have any training related to prescription drugs, do you? No. Amateur training. Um, I, you have no I, I'm sure. Only pertaining to animals. Yes, I would like to add that. Okay, and that, that was the training that you received on the job in Australia before you came to the U.S.? Amongst other things, yeah. Um, you, you familiar with um, Ms. Heard um, taking prescriptions for acupain and Provigil, among other things, correct? Yeah. Provigil? Um, 
I've taken provincial. You never served as a nurse or a doctor to Miss Heard, right? No. And you have uh, no medical knowledge um, to testify whether uh, Miss Heard used provigil or Accutane in the way her doctors instructed, correct? No. And you're not an expert on the interaction of prescription drugs and alcohol or other drugs, correct? No. Textbook, textbook cross-examination. Isn't it true? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? She's just now a prop. And all the information yep. is coming from the attorney. This is, yep. this is beautiful cross-examination. Right. Did you, during the course of your employment, develop any personal knowledge of um, Mr. Depp's use of alcohol or drugs? Not firsthand. And what do you mean by not firsthand? Well, I worked with Amber. I didn't work with him. Did you ever see Mr. Depp um, using illegal drugs? No. Did you ever see Mr. Depp um, abuse alcohol? No. Did you ever speak with Dr. Kipper? No. Did you ever speak with Aaron Borum? Yes. And Aaron Borum was a nurse who worked for Dr. Kipper, right? She was assigned to Amber. That's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She she was assigned to Amber. That's how I came to be speaking to her. And she also provided medical services to Johnny, right? I I don't know. More. What do you recall speaking to Aaron Borum about? Just random chit chat in the course of the day. Nothing specific. Do you recall ever forming any concern in your own mind about any of Mr. Depp's behavior in his relationship with Amber? Never. Nothing you heard, nothing you witnessed, nothing you saw during your time with Mr. Depp ever gave you an inkling of concern about Mr. Depp's behavior toward Amber? Never. Did anyone get the answer? Never. Never. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, she doesn't come off credible to me. That's you, the problem. Um, you left She's your very salty. Your, your and the problem is, we're not ended, we're not familiar with with her enough to understand right? why. Yeah, just after they came back from the wedding on the island. Did Miss Heard terminate your employment? When Miss Heard came back from the island, she informed me that she now needed to support her mother because her mother could no longer work at a diagnosis, a medical diagnosis, and she told me she could no longer afford to pay me since she had to support her mother, and therefore she would have to terminate my employment to support her family. And did you resent Miss Heard for that, for terminating your employment? I would have been nice to have been given some notice, so I had some time to look around. Uh, so I was a little upset. Angry ex-employee with an axe that, to grind. Not upset. Doesn't want to tell me anything. Gave you six <laughs> yeah. weeks of severance pay, correct? I don't recall. I mean, she went out of her way to say that she was yeah, terminated because Amber Heard wanted to take care of her mother and her well, family, which makes Amber well, Heard seem very sympathetic. So it doesn't sound like an angry employee to me. No, but I'm saying, but that's the way uh, that's the way the lawyer needs to portray it. This is some angry, crazed employee who has an axe to grind. That's the way I would put it. No. Did did you ask to be put on Mr. Depp's payroll so that you could remain uh, being paid by Miss Heard or Mr. Depp? Well, when she said she couldn't afford, I said, "Now you're married, couldn't I go on to uh, Depp's payroll?" And she said, "No, it was part of a legal agreement I had that she was not allowed." to do that i don't know whether that was true or not i feel like that's probably not true Did you ever asked yeah. mr depp whether he could go on his payroll no isn't, isn't it true that you asked to um, live in one of mr depp's houses rent free for a period of time after your employment well you see i'm a homeowner and but i want to be clear i didn't want to miss a mortgage payment 
Due to uh, so my idea was is perhaps I could find an alternate accommodation in order to rent out my house. So Thank you, John, to the stay fired by Amber. And yeah, bias is all everywhere in this my one. Home and my payments up to date is just the paramount importance to me. Isn't it true that you had already? Why are we watching this like deposition just incidentally? During the time you were employed. unavailable, this is available, this. right? No. Yeah. I think well, so. So. She's available. Maybe she's out of the jurisdiction. Yeah, that would be one. Yeah, she'd be out of the country. Yeah, she'd be out of the country. I think she's. I think she's, I think she's in the U.S., but I think she's in L.A. So if you if they want to fly her butt over her. Okay. My first question is just: Is this an email exchange between? I love a good video. It's a break during the trial. Do you? <laughs> you do the work, but you pray to do the work. Yeah, so right now the lawyers can kind of sit back. They all look pretty pretty relaxed. Prep for the next live witness that's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I woke up that morning, yeah. Um, can you go to the first page, please? Top of the document. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't it true that Miss Heard did pay you six extra weeks of pay after your termination? She's stating that, but I don't recall if it actually happened or not. Come on. Personal knowledge one way or the other or a recollection of whether she... You wouldn't paid. realize that you got paid for six weeks after you got yeah, fired? Yeah, six weeks. Come on. And Yeah, you, you know that. that you, you do tell her in this email... I don't you recall. ...you didn't pay your mortgage for the first year and a half that you were working for her. Yes, <laughs> one of those balloon mortgages, so I had to go through a loan modification, and I recall now that that's why I was able to agree to work for her for such a small amount of money than what I normally made. It was sort of as a, a favor almost. What what was a favor? To work for her for like half my usual paycheck, basically. So you're you, you were doing Amber a favor. Yes, because initially it was described as a part-time, 20-hour-a-week thing with flexibility and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I thought it's not really in my caliber, but my son was only four at the time, so it seemed like a good idea, especially because I wasn't paying my mortgage, so I could take the hit by getting less pay than I would normally make. And that way I could also have the time with my son that I wanted. Are you? And I, I think the answer to this is no, but I just want to be clear. You're not blaming... Amber, for you're not paying your mortgage, right? No, that was my choice. That was the only way I could get a loan modification. Was the way it was. It, then. But you know the 2008 crash. That's how it worked back then. If you wanted to save property, well, and you started working for Amber in 2012, right? Yes, it took a long time. The loan modification process. And and you're not blaming Amber for getting a credit card with 29 percent interest, are you? What? You, you see in your email on that first page, um, about two thirds of the way down, you say, I have borrowed from my mom my tenant security deposit, and now I have used up a credit oh. card I should use as it has 29% interest. Oh, that's my choice. Did you have tenants in your property at that time? Is the audio just getting progressively softer and softer? It seems um, like it. I have a duplex. I'm they're they're screwing with us now, aren't they? Time, yeah. Yes, I had tenants I think in so. my house, and I was living in the other. We have to do a, an ASMR whisper spring, whisper stream. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good when it's live. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, see, ninety percent of the time, all this would be irrelevant, but they're going to bias, so that's why they're they're able to bring all this in. Yeah. Do you recall using your tenant security deposit or, or borrowing from that? It's too long ago for me to recall if it actually happened. Would there be a reason that you would have? said that if it wasn't true no and um isn't it true that you did ask to live rent free um in johnny's houses after you were terminated right lots of people did isn't it true that you did yes and did that ever come to pass no did it make you angry that that didn't happen no. It's fair to say at the time that your employment was terminated, you were in fairly significant financial trouble, correct? Yes. And you don't realize you get six weeks of, and, of pay? Uh-huh. Yeah.
you were angry with Amber for terminating you at this time when you were in financial trouble, correct? No. He's already asked that. See at the yeah. bottom of your email. She gave a different answer two. this time too. Mm -hmm. You say, Max and I love you very much as a, a sign off to your email. Yes. And Max is your son, right? Yes. That wasn't true, correct? In fact, you, you, you didn't love Amber. You didn't like her, did you? Um, any close relationship has ebbs and flows in the energy that you feel towards one another. It's pretty standard. And at that point in time, you, um, well, since your termination, you've had nothing but animosity toward Miss Heard, correct? No, I actually bumped into her at the P.O. box about three months after, and she was in her Range Rover, and I saw her sister, and she said, come say hi to Amber, and I went back there, and I was going to say hi, but she was on the phone, and she was saying, wait, wait, but then I had to go. That's the only time I've ever seen her, but I, w I wanted to go and say hi. I wasn't feeling like I wanted to avoid her or anything. You know, things, things happen, and life goes on, you know? I understand you're a personal assistant, Ms. James. What type of people do you work for? Uh, High-profile celebrities. Are they celebrities in the entertainment industry? Yes. You previously testified that in March of 2012, you worked as a personal assistant for Ms. Hurd. Yes? Yes. In total, how long did you work for Ms. Hurd as her personal assistant? Uh, almost three years. And at the time you were hired in March of 2012, had you ever heard of Ms. Heard? No. This lawyer is succinct with the questions. Today, yes. At some point while working for Ms. Heard, you transitioned from working part-time to full-time. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she answered the questions before the witness, happen? correct? I don't recall mm -hmm. specifically. Do you think it happened within the first year of your employment? I believe it happened within the of around six months into the employment. So most definitely it happened in the first year of your employment. Is that correct? Yes. You really just testified that you stopped working for Ms. Hurd as her personal assistant in February of 2015. Is that right? Yes. And you also testified that Ms. Hurd let you go upon her return from the Bahamas in February of 2015. Yes? Yes. Did Ms. Hurd ever give you any indication or warning that your employment might end upon her marriage to Mr. Depp? No. How did it make you feel when Ms. Hurd terminated your employment without warning? A bit of a shock, a bit of a feeling of being blindsided. And you don't know if you got an extra six weeks of pay? And when Ms. Hurd was Unless it was crap pay. In words, that is, is insignificant. See her. Almost daily. Six weeks of full pay is not insignificant. Personal assistant for Ms. Heard? No. If it's fifty thousand dollars a year, I don't know. Would you see Ms. Heard on the weekends as well? No, but you're right. Yes. She should have remembered that, in my opinion. <laughs> and when you would see Ms. Heard in person, did you coordinate with her when you would be seeing her oh it's no volume is rough whenever it was necessary they, to bring stuff that i picked up on errands or whatnot there was no given set schedule and when you say you would arrive where would you arrive to um it depended where she was at the time sometimes she was at orange sometimes she was at one of johnny's houses on sweetser and then eventually they all moved down to the lofts downtown you previously testified that your work as Ms. Hurd's, as being Ms. Hurd's uh, private assistant um, was extensive. Would you please tell us everything that was you were responsible for? Everything from handling all of her um, dry cleaning, picking up packages, mail, liaising with agents, um, other people in the industry, tr uh, coordinating travel, making restaurant reservations, uh, you know, dealing with the staff, the vendors on the property, uh, that sort of thing. Personal assistant she, stuff. She, they should have started with this portion of the deposition, even though it's out of order. Yes. What specifically did she ask you to do? 
I had a newsstand guy that was instructed to hold two copies of every magazine she appeared in. Uh, was a newsstand on Sherborne Avenue, just off La Cienega, and he would hold- Does it just feel really lazy just to play the entire thing uh, instead of like breaking it up into segments? You, you, you got muffled out. You said that you would hold those for me and- Hold them for me. We're gonna listen to this five minute segment in which they're gonna talk about this. We're gonna listen to the three minute segment which they talk about this. But don't, don't forget though, there's some probably evidentiary issues, testimonial mm -hmm. evidentiary issues that they can't have, so. Here, say, for because instance. she didn't want Mr. Depp to see them. Did she tell you why she didn't want Mr. Depp to see them? No, she just got very angry with me one day because I hadn't quite made made it downstairs to put them in the garage when she came home, and she went absolutely ballistic over that. When you say she went absolutely ballistic over that, can you please describe what you mean? Screaming, yelling, abuse. Do you remember what she said Ouch. to you? No. But it was abusive in your opinion? Blind rage. Not a good day for Amber to be wearing all black. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, not a good day. All right, I gotta go to the post office, so I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, Kurt, Say hi to Amber you. if she's in her Range <laughs> yeah. Rover. We'll do it. <laughs> Often were you present when Miss Heard was getting dressed? Every time she was getting dressed for a fitting, I was, I would say 90% of the time I was there. And just to clarify, was it just when Miss Heard was in fittings that you would see her in states of undress? No, it was it was also in her apartment. She had no issue with walking around naked quite often. Did you ever observe Miss Heard putting on makeup? Yeah. How oh no! <laughs> Just when she was getting ready to go out somewhere for a party or something. And when you interacted with Miss Heard, and I understand it was quite frequent and regular, did it appear to you that she was wearing makeup? She usually never wore makeup unless she was going to a special event. And when she did go to special events, would you describe her makeup as heavy? It would depend on it would be more makeup artists would do it or if she would do it herself. If she did it herself, it would be light and usually adding lashes and that's about it. And I believe you previously testified to this, so I'm sorry for asking you again, but while you worked for Miss Heard, did you ever see any types of injuries on her? No. Did you ever see any cuts? No. Did you see bruises? No. Did you see swelling? No. Redness in her face? No. How about Miss Heard having black eyes? Never. A broken nose? Never. Missing hair clumps? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Miss Never. James. Never. Did you ever see Miss Heard cry? Yes. How often did you see her cry? Hard to put a number on it. Sometimes she would cry on the phone. I think at least once or twice she might have cried on the phone. You know, and then as far as seeing her personally crying, you know, she was a pretty dramatic person. It's hard to really put a number on it. I'm focusing on when you saw her in person crying. How many times do you believe that you saw her in person crying? I would say twice, maybe twice. No food in the courtroom, Johnny. Take that in, in bites. You know, Starbucks <laughs> is happy that, that he's drinking person. Starbucks. Go ahead. Depending on how trial goes, right? <laughs> in, in by emotions. Starbucks. So the, tw the two times that you recall Miss Heard crying in front of you, you remember her crying about being insecure. Is that yes. correct? Yes. You testified that she felt insecure about her relationship. Is that correct? Yes. Can you expand on that? What do you mean by that? She didn't like being away from his physical presence. Did she, Ms. Heard tell you that she felt insecure when Mr. Depp wouldn't be present with her? Yeah. 
other than telling you she felt insecure about her relationship with Mr. Depp, what else did Ms. Hurd say about feeling insecure? She told me she didn't like hanging out in his house with his friends because it, it was boring and they were all old men playing guitars and it wasn't interesting to her. <laughs> like, I'm laughing. <laughs> Was Miss Heard dating Mr. Depp when you first started working for her? Yes. When did you first learn that Miss Heard was dating Mr. Depp? After uh, about a month, I think. How did you learn that she was dating Mr. Depp? She told me. What did she tell you? She. She told me she was dating Johnny Depp. Do you recall the first time you met Mr. Depp? Yes. When was that? It was in her apartment on Orange. Probably shortly after she told me she was dating him. He was standing in the dining room. And approximately when was that? I don't remember. I would say um, April, or, April or May of 2020. What was your impression of Mr. Depp? He was very peaceful, very calm, almost shy and uh, very quiet. And uh, I remember he was wearing red red suede shoes because I didn't know where else to look. I looked at his shoes. So that was <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a weird recollection, I know. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp be rude to anyone? He's such a gentleman. He's so uh, he's like a total southern gentleman. So no. Um, Did you ever see Mr. Depp lose his cool? No. Did you ever see him scream at anyone? No. Did you ever see him break something? Only in a video. In your presence, did you ever see Mr. Depp break something intentionally? Never break anything, never throw anything, always completely passive. I believe you've testified previously that you have a son, correct? Yes. How old was your son when you first started working for Ms. Hurd? Four, four years old. And did you ever bring your son to work with you? Yes. How often? Uh, quite often if I had to keep working, I would bring him back there after school. And if I had to work on the weekends, he would come with me then. Did Mr. Depp ever interact with your son? Yes, he was very kind. How often did you did Mr. Depp interact with your son? Whenever they were in each other's presence. Can you give me an estimate of how often that happened? Oh, countless times. And he would he would even teach him how to play guitar. He brought him back from vacations. Uh, he showed him his amazing makeup makeover when he was uh, doing black mass. He tricked him, he leant over and was saying, do you know who I am? And had the full makeup on his son's jaw, almost hit the ground. It was Aww. really cute, actually. Mm. Yeah. You can you can tell he's like, he's really enjoying that memory of yeah. like bringing that so to him. I gave my son a, a little um, pick as well, a guitar pick, But you know what though? This makes him look like a really amazing guy. Yeah. It really does. Right. This doesn't make him look like the monster to that they're supposed to be. Mr. This Depp. is a yes. very good this is how you quite redirect. A, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. She's yeah, totally rehabilitated this witness. As the time yeah. Went on. yeah. What was your impression of Miss Heard and Mr. Depp's relationship? Uh, you know, it was it, it did not seem like a perfect relationship to me, based on a lot of insecurity on her behalf, um, which seemed to cause uh confusion in the relationship um uh, maybe the age gap was an issue because they different interests i know that much apart from that who am i to know the relationship you know do 
you think that Mr. Depp was smothering of Ms. Heard? Oh, yeah. Did it, did it appear to you that Mr. Depp was jealous of Ms. Heard? No. I'm appreciating these pauses so that I can take notes. <laughs> <laughs> like keep up. <laughs> sometimes it's hard. <laughs> by yourself. Um, sometimes, yeah. And what were those interactions like? Just friendly chit chat, which would stop immediately when Amber saw me speaking to him. She'd give me the evil eye, and I'd know to just quickly walk away. Did Amber ever talk to you about your interactions with Mr. Depp? No. In the three years that you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever see Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp argue? No. In the three years that you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever see any physical violence between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp? Never. Did you ever see either of them being physically aggressive with one another. No. Did you ever see any property damage at Ms. Hurd's home? Never. Did you ever see any property damage at Mr. Depp's primary residence on Sweetser? Never. Did you ever see any property damage at the lofts or the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building? No, no never. Over the three year period in which you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever hear from anyone that Mr. Depp or Ms. Hurd had been in a physical alteration, altercation? No. Over the three year period in which you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever see Ms. Hurd be physically aggressive with anyone? No. Let's break that down a bit. When you say she was verbally abusive to you regularly, can you explain to me how she was verbally abusive to you? Screaming. Uh, screaming over the phone. She screamed at me once in person, multiple times screaming at me over the phone. Barrages of abusive um, text messages, day and night, a lot of them in the middle of the night, I think you're aware. I think uh, uh, between 2 and 4 a.m. the barrage would start, that's what I'd wake up to. Um, all incoherent, not really making sense, just basically someone to lash out at, you know, no apparent reason to it. You testified previously that you observed Ms. Hurd be verbally abusive to her sister. Yes. What do you recall about that? It was abuse? ongoing kick the dog kind of relationship with her sister. So it's really hard to huh. pinpoint any specifics, but uh, yeah, uh, her poor sister was treated like the dog that you kick basically. You previously testified that Ms. Hurd, you observed Ms. Hurd be verbally abusive to her mother. Mm -hmm. What specifically did you observe? Well, there is a video that um, line where you can see her being abusive first and foremost. So it's not even based on what I'm telling you. It's what I've seen, the interactions between the two of them when her mother was still alive and the fact that her mother was terrified of her. Ooh. Did her mother Did tell you she was terrified of her? She personally told me she was terrified of her. That I would have an objection to. Mm -hmm. But it's in. Mother? Here and there, yes. Especially when it was a build up to a stressful event or something like that. Yeah. Testifying to what the mother knew and all of and what she believed. Uh, this is yeah. where uh, a lot yeah. got in. It's in. Now the sun's on Johnny's face. They really need to cover that window. You said you felt that Miss Heard was verbally abusive to you. Can you provide me with any specific examples of this behavior? 
Well, I thought I did earlier, but yeah, it was so random and ongoing. You would never know where, when it was going to come left the centre. Um, I do remember on one occasion when we were moving from part to full time and the salary negotiations became a real bone of contention. And I specifically remember standing in her office where she leapt up out of her chair, put her face approx approximately four inches from my face. She was spitting in my face. Huh. And telling me how dare I ask for the salary I was asking for, which was in fact approximately half of my regular annual salary. I was offering her that as a favor. Yeah. And she felt she felt that gave her the right to spit in my face. Jesus. And there was a witness in, in the apartment at that time, by the way. Who was at the apartment at the time? The handyman, Hector Galindo. I'm sorry? The handyman, Hector Galindo. He was so he was so mortified. For me. He was so embarrassed to hear her speaking to me like that. Miss James, while you worked for Miss Hurd, did you ever observe her drinking alcohol? Yes, I did. How often did you observe Miss Hurd drink alcohol? Don't recall. What alcohol did you observe Miss Heard drink in your presence? Red wine. Did Miss Heard ever appear intoxicated to you? Yes, she often did. Are you a doctor? While you worked for Ms. Hurd, were you aware of what, if any, prescription drugs she was taking? Yes, because I had to pick it up and I often had to deliver it to her. To you set. anticipated. I'm sorry, Ms. James, I interrupted your question or your answer, excuse me. The last part of your answer was to. I would, I, it was my job to pick it up and deliver it to her also bring it to her if she was doing a photo shoot or uh, you know on set or something if she'd forgotten it what prescription drugs do you remember picking up from Ms. Hurd? provigil any other prescription drugs that you remember picking up from Ms. Hurd? accutane I know that one. <laughs> Any others? Not specifically. To your knowledge, did Miss Hurd ever stop taking Provigil or Accutane while you were working for her? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she had, was experiencing any side effects from Provisual? She didn't say it, but I observed it. We'll go back to that in a minute, but did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she was experiencing any side effects from Accutane? No. You previously testified that you observed Ms. Hurd having certain side effects from Provisual. Yes? Yes. What side effects did you observe Ms. Hurd exhibiting? Manic episodes. Ooh. Can you tell me what you mean by manic episodes? Similar to if someone was on some sort of amphetamine drug. Hmm. Moving very fast. Uh, not making a lot of sense, hyper organizing, hyper tasking, just very, very uh, hyper. Yeah. Besides prescribed medication, did you ever observe Ms. Hurd ingest any illicit drugs while you worked for her? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? Yes. When did Ms. Hurd tell you that she 
So an admission. Um, sporadically here and there. What drugs did Ms. Hurd tell you she had ingested? Mushrooms, ecstasy, and cocaine. Oh, is that all? <sighs> if you remember, how many times did Ms. Hurd tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? I can't remember. Based on your personal observations, did it ever appear to you that Ms. Hurd was under the influence of illegal drugs? Yes. How many times? Uh, I, I don't know. Less than five? It's so long ago, it's hard for me to remember. Why did you why did it appear to you that Miss Hurd was under the influence of illegal drugs? Disoriented, partying with friends, um, lots of heavy drinking, laughing, dancing, playing, all the sorts of things that go hand in hand with uh, imbibing in drugs. Would Ms. Hurd's treatment of you change when she was intoxicated? Yes. How so? She became more and more belligerent and abusive. Ms. James, you previously testified that you provided testimony in the matter involving Mr. Depp in the United Kingdom. Do you remember that testimony? Mm hmm Yep. And how did you provide testimony in the United Kingdom? Uh, well, I wrote a written statement and then I had to do a live video feed. And did you understand that your witness statement was made under oath? Yes. And did you understand that your testimony during the trial live was also under oath? Mm -hmm. Did anyone help you write your witness statement? Uh, Shillings over in the UK uh, helped me with the first draft and then I took over and com completely edited it to be my own words. That was after a phone conversation we had. They jotted down notes, sent me some basic notes to work with and then I worked on it from there. How long did it take you to write your witness statement? Um, about three or four days. Did you feel you had an adequate amount of time to prepare and write your witness statement? Yes, I was very proud with the outcome of how I wrote it because it was all my words and it was the absolute truth. And did you have enough time to review your witness statement for accuracy before you signed it? Yes. Was everything that was in your witness statement true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes. And is that still true today? Yes. Lucien, may I please have you pull up exhibit, death exhibit number four, please? No, I need death exhibit number four on the screen. Thank you. Ms. James, do you remember receiving an email from Ms. Hurd on or about February 2nd? Uh, 12th, 2015. I don't even believe I was still working for that date. Do you remember receiving this email in particular from just February 12th, 2015? Again, I don't, as far as I know, I wasn't even working for her at that time, so I wouldn't even know why she wrote this letter to me, quite honestly. Do you remember receiving this email then? No. Okay. Can we please pull up exhibit number five? Emma.
Join Dev and Zoom Notify on the screen. And Sam, may I ask you to? There you go. You read my mind. Lucien, may I either take control or have you scroll down to the bottom? Thank you. James, the way these emails tend to work is they, they start at the bottom and then go up. And this one is no exception. So I'm going to, for your ease, I'm going to have you read the bottom email first since it's the first one in the chain dated February 3rd, 2015. Yeah, this does mm -hmm. feel like she's being rehabilitated as a witness quite well. It looks like she was traveling straight to London after the wedding. That's what, it's, that's what I'm reading. Do you remember, actually, you know what, why don't you read this entire email chain and then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Oh boy. Okay. All right. So we've got probably a minute here of her reading through everything. <laughs> I think we're going to fast forward it to that part. <laughs> I know. I know. They thankfully skipped the statement because it should be consistent with her testimony. Yeah. Yeah. And so just so you guys know, also, a deposition is going to be brought. So this this witness was deposed by Amber Heard's team. So the direct of the deposition, the direct examination on the deposition was actually conducted by Amber Heard's team, even though now she's being brought as Johnny Depp's witness. So if she was brought in person, the direct would be done by Johnny Depp's no, attorneys. Yeah, like said, oh, no, no, it's, but the roles are kind of reversed in this thinking. deposition. Uh -huh. no, do, you, do you have control of this? I do have control. Sorry, Miss James. So that's why that's why Johnny's attorney. It sounds like it's it may be Camille, Camille Vasquez, who's who's asking these questions. Why she's able to ask so many leading questions, which is actually kind of really effective right now because she wouldn't be able to do that in in the mm -hmm. courtroom physically. Well, and 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 usually the attorneys agree to waive scope objections so they can ask direct on on cross to to make it faster. But that might be too deep for people. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> February 4th, 2015, writes in all caps, are there no direct flights? Question mark, question mark, exclamation. I'm just pointing her to the top email, Mr. Rottenborn. You see where- But this has been a, a fantastic rehabilitation of a, of a witness, so. No so. It's been fantastic. I agree. She's, she's totally disarmed now. She seems a lot more comfortable. She's relaxed. She's not fighting with everybody. <laughs> you would agree with me that Nowhere else in this email chain, Ms. Heard uses all caps to, to write to you, correct? No, it does not. She seems very confused. That's all I can say. When I'm reading through this, she just seems to be very confused. And the thing is, it's um like if that if that question were to be directed to anyone it should have been to the travel agent not me i mean i'm not the travel agent the travel agent was down there in the beginning trudy sullivan directing your attention miss james to may of 2014 when you met miss heard at the chateau marmont in los angeles california do you remember your testimony about that incident you testified previously that she, that Ms. Heard asked you to bring a bathing suit to the hotel. Is that correct? Yes. Did you see Ms. Heard wearing a bathing suit in May of 2014 at the Chateau Marmont? Yes. Based on your recollection, did you see any bruises on Ms. Heard's body? No. Did you see any red marks on Ms. Heard's body? No. How would you describe the general atmosphere or mood of Ms. Heard and her friends at the Chateau Marmont? 
But to be honest, it seemed a little conspiratorial to me. Yeah. How so? Like a strategy meeting or something and combined with a pool party, hard to describe. It was very confusing. I, originally, I thought I was going over for some major emergency, but then something else completely different was going on that day. What made you think something completely different was going on that day? Well, because originally it made it seem like she was having this major emergency and she was completely alone and she needed me very badly to come as quickly as possible. But when I got there, like, she was surrounded by people. Savannah, Io, Tillett Wright, and Rocky specifically, Ra Raquel Pennington. What was the second name you said? I got Rocky and who? Io, Tillett Wright. It's the letter I, the letter O, Tillett Wright. Did you observe Ms. Hurd showing what appeared to be injuries to any of her friends at the Chateau that day? No. Did it appear to you that Ms. Hurd's friends were con comforting her? How would you describe Ms. Hurd's friends' behavior? Friends hanging out together by the pool, having cocktails and spending the entire afternoon hanging around together. Did you ever um, did you ever learn information that made you believe that one of the reasons that their relationship uh, between Johnny and Amber wasn't, as you described, perfect was because of Johnny's substance abuse? I couldn't speculate on the details of their personal relationship. You did testify earlier that one of the reasons you thought their relationship was, wasn't perfect was insecurity on Amber's part, though, right? Yes. So you, you developed an opinion that insecurity on Amber's part affected their relationship, but you did not develop an opinion that substance abuse or any actions by Johnny affected their relationship, is that right? That statement was based on communications directed to me from Amber, basically. What communications specifically? Expressing, uh, you know, exactly what I just stated, that she was sad, she didn't want to be away from him, blah, 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 that sort of thing. It would happen all the time. And um, you believe that those statements were the reason that their relationship wasn't perfect? It's not for me to speculate. You would agree that because someone is insecure in a relationship does not mean that she deserves to be abused, correct? I have no answer for you for that. You would agree that even if someone acts quote unquote, smothering in a relationship doesn't mean she deserves to be abused, correct? I don't have an answer for you for that. I don't have any further questions. Thank you for your time today. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our morning recess <laughs> for 15 minutes. No outside research, do not talk about the case, right? Okay, thank you. All right. They should, they should all hop on uh, Legal Bites right now. <laughs> the whole jury come on in and let's talk about it <laughs> no that, we don't believe her <laughs> Nate, nate's right they were trying to establish bias of course and i think they did a good job but at a big cost um they did a nice job in actually crossing and have asking leading questions and they mm -hmm. got that that this woman does not right, like amber her take a break until noon um, is your next witness, um, are you, we're going to set it up so it's all ready to go uh, in the next. Okay. I really appreciate that. Okay, Speed things you. up, we'll guys. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they, they got it. She's biased. She doesn't like Amber, but, but the, the cost was heavy. The cost was Why she doesn't does she like, Amber like Amber for good reason because Amber treated her like garbage. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And she was credible in that. So yes, she's biased, but for good cause. And uh, I, I don't know if I agree with the strategy, although although they actually did cross-examine her as opposed to just ask open-ended questions, that, that's a plus.
Yeah. Yeah. True. I, yeah. I, it, it was interesting because they they were trying to when they were trying to recover her um well, uh, now I'm forgetting the word, but when they were trying to bolster her credibility a little bit there, mm-hmm. you if you notice on redirect which at that position is kind of weird to say, but essentially on redirect, the attorney was answering the question before the witness. So she would say, remember when you said you didn't like a correct to let her know, okay, so you were on your side to get her into it. You've already said this, now explain it. And I think yeah. that's what, it was a very good tactic because as you can see, it also changed the witnesses, um, the, the way she was reacting to the attorney, even though she, I'm mm-hmm. assuming she knew it was going to be friendly, but then her mannerisms changed. She wasn't as combative. She was answering the questions. And then when the other attorney got back, it changed right back to, you know, I'm team Amber. So I think I have no Law talk answer with Mike, for that. <laughs> yes. I think law talk with Mike is um, said his best. The, for, the defense got bias out of this witness. They got it out of the last witness and they got it out of the first witness. Yeah. But I just don't think they got enough to, because it, there's a cost, there's a cost benefit analysis. And I think on the other side, the cost of getting out that bias left so much in it. Johnny's so nice to my son. Johnny's taking care of all these people. Johnny's such a great guy. All of that was a heavy cost to pay to get out there a little biased because now all these biased people are showing this is the reason why we're biased because he's such a phenomenal guy. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why and we if like the jury, him. And if the jury then looked over at at Johnny's face when she was talking about the memories of, of, you know, what he did with the makeup to trick her son to be like, you know, come up close to him and be like, do you know who I am? You know, like it's, 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 it fits in with kind of these, these, vignettes that many of us have heard about him like that he just dresses up as captain jack sparrow and goes to goes to hospitals on his own just because he can and he wants to and he likes he likes seeing the impact that it has on these sick kids you know he's not making any money from it he has zero financial benefit from doing that it's literally just because he likes doing that um and so and i mean that hasn't come in at trial but this is just something that that i had i had heard about him before but it looked very sincere and i think one of the things that i I sort of realized um, when I was sort of analyzing his his facial reaction to that was that he's not making any kind of eye contact with the jury. In fact, it almost seems like he's trying to ignore the jury and like hide from the jury even. So if they catch these sort of reactions from him, it looks even more so like he's not trying to communicate with them. It's just like these things are almost like like they're slipping from him because he doesn't he doesn't necessarily want them to see him smiling he's just he's just he's in almost like in spite of himself he's reacting to it i don't know do you guys get that same impression i do i i get that it's very sincere i mean I, you know you're just judging but on a base level mm-hmm. i get that he was you said it right when it was happening it's as if he's reliving it while he's listening to the testimony and he is fondness he thinks oh i really mm-hmm. like the kid i remember that time period it was fun to play with this little four-year-old kid yeah I had a good time with it. Very fatherly, you you know, and it struck me as sincere. I also think he's wise to not look at the jury because I think it's too try hard and it's bad. And he's he's super famous. And I think he has to be very careful. I think he's playing it just right. I do. I yeah, I I, I'll also agree with that. Yeah. Amber Amber looks so stoic over there, too. She just she looks like the mean lady that, (laughs) you know, it's like she's too severe. Uh, but it's it's tough, and you know, again, I, I'm going to say it because I don't care about getting canceled. It ain't happening to me. But <laughs> what, what I'm going to say because I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pe- talk about her looks. No, yes, let's do it. All it's, right. it's fair game. We're talking. I, I love talking about court courtroom aesthetics. Let's do it. I'm here for it. Yes, <laughs> number one, Amber. We can all agree, Amber is a beautiful woman, right? Yes. I told sure. my wife if Amber Heard comes through, I might be leaving, and we might be have some problems because of the rich and all that other stuff. Because I'm, well, a, I'm an Amber Heard fan. You might have. Even more problems just because of I'm that's just true, where that's true. Johnny Depp is. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it. Johnny Depp, that's right. It's not Ooh. worth it. But that juice is not I worth the in, squeeze. <laughs> but I, I yeah. think in that vein, like even when when I when I've gone to court with my clients, right? You don't have your clients. You don't even though you have. I have. I've had the conversation with my clients, especially clients who have less means and so forth. Do you have a suit? Can you come? You know, can you look a certain way? Because that matters. That matters. And I think here. Amber Heard's team is trying to take a beautiful woman and dress her down to make her look less intimidating and more and to connect with the jury. And it's tough when you're Hollywood 
to do that, right? Because yeah. walking in a room, have, have you ever heard the expression, you know, when the, the person walks in the room, it's like a spotlight's on them, right? They just take so much attention because of the way they look and who they are. Yeah. I think Johnny's team is trying to do that with their clothes. If you notice, he's very, he's got a lot of stuff on him. Everything's over his face. He's trying, it's almost like he's trying not to be seen, not to stand out. Where I think yeah. on her end, she's trying to stand out before a different, like she's trying to look the part of, you know, I'm a strong, confident woman and this happened to me. But I don't think it plays well for that just regular everyday joy who's trying to look for someone who's been abused. Someone who's been abused doesn't seem, you, you know what I mean? It doesn't play into the stereotype of an abused victim. Someone who looks dainty, someone who looks, you know, yes. so, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? So yes. I, again, Absolutely. I think she's trying I, to just... she's trying to make herself look like a Me Too warrior. That's the impression that I have. And that yeah. doesn't work for for what she's trying to do in this trial. What she is trying to do is to show that he is a monster and that she yeah. has been abused by him. So it doesn't really help for her to look like a, a warrior who's severe and cold. I think that it's a smart move for them to have Elaine sitting next to her today. I said that on first on day one that I, I thought that that would be a good move because for her in this kind of a in this kind of a trial, um, it's it's I feel like women are going to be more judgmental against her naturally um, than I than men. Listen, I, I remember I had a I, I had a six figure defamation case and okay. my client, my client was from the hood and she asked me, she said, what do what, what should I wear for the deposition? I said, wear what you wear your Sunday best. Right. What should I wear for court? Wear your Sunday best with the thing that you're going to go to church with. That's what I want you to wear, because yep. I wanted the sympathy. And I think that's what Amber should Amber should be like. She's going to church. Yeah. You know, it, it, it shouldn't be. It should be something where when I look at her, I don't see Amber heard. I, I see a woman who's possibly abused by her Hollywood boyfriend. And that's yeah. who I feel. And the sympathy is just for my looking at her. And a lot of people don't realize this in criminal court. It actually reversed because usually men are men sympathize with women rape victims more than women do yes. generally sometimes. Yes. And that's been a phenomenon in, um, in criminal court for a while. And mm -hmm. you were saying that it's, you believe it's the same in civil court because I wasn't sure if that, that was true in civil, but you think that's I the think same here? I think so. I think that I think that especially with with her her tendencies and the way that she carries herself, she has kind of a Regina George vibe to her, like Mean Girls, um, the Queen Bee from Mean Girls. Um, and and I think yeah. that that fetch. that gives Go off. Fetch. Yeah, she's trying trying to make fetch happen. Um, actually, maybe that's her friend Eve. I don't know, but let's see. Um, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but but so she she has a little bit of that vibe, and so that is very distancing for any other woman in the room. Like it's, it's, it makes you feel like, okay, she's this cold, severe person. If she has someone like Elaine sitting next to her the first on the first day, at least, at, at least during opening statements, Elaine came across as very conversational, very warm, almost like motherly. And so if she was sitting next to her, I figured that kind of gives like a sort of subtle, like the, there are, there are protective women who are yeah. relatively real that are that are sympathetic with her that are protective with her like this is real she's not just claiming this and and surrounding herself with a bunch of men yeah it, it, it's like i remember you said it best yesterday when with the other guy i forgot johnny's friend was on the stand you said Isaac. that's somebody i wanted to have a beer with yes you were like that's somebody i want to have a beer with yes. i don't want to have a beer with amber i want to have a beer with that guy but those are and, that, and that's what i'm talking about it, it and, and it i know it sounds silly Right. Because but people, I think, fail to realize what's being said in court. That's one thing. But, you know, the your body language, you know, what does it sound like? 70 percent of our communication is through body language. Uh -huh. It's so important because you really would really need people when you have that 50 50 ball to give you the benefit of the doubt, especially in a case like this. People need to say, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And the thing that pushes them over to that side is your appearance. If they feel like you're stuck up and you already earn it, then you know what? effort you know yeah she's but if they feel like ah i don't know you know what let's just move it back so yeah i i, I think their team is doing a i understand what their team is trying to do because they're trying mm -hmm. to play to kind of two points me too activist strong woman and you know but i think in this case if you're going in and saying i'm a, i'm such this victim i've been beaten up i've been on list i think the optics have to change because you have to start portraying that 
in how you look and, and how you're presenting yourself in there. Uh, I'm having the, the problem with the Me Too thing is Me Too has famously gone overboard with the believe all women, which is just throw throw law out yeah. and, and create two classes of citizens. It's just a horrible, horrible play. A lot of people have come around to that realization. I would not want to attach myself to that in the middle of a trial. Yes, yeah. it'll play to some people, but not most. Yeah, yeah, I I completely oh, agree. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I also, I also have I also had a thought that there's been this tendency kind of in connection with the Me Too movement to cast strong women as impervious. Um, and it it generally, like, that is, that is one of the things that has garnered a lot of criticism from people, especially around, like, YouTube and stuff. These um, characters like Captain Marvel, as an example, somebody who, like, so, like, somehow doesn't have any weaknesses, and she's this, like, perfect person. It, there, I feel like there's this tendency that is somewhat connected to the Me Too movement to cast women as impervious because they're afraid to show female vulnerabilities because that's like somehow not PC right now. But the problem is it, it it's not real. It's right. not humanizing. And it, it actually is not very compelling in terms of, of creating a hero or, or, you know, crafting a story about a hero. You have to have vulnerabilities. And so I think that Right now, I almost feel like that's similar to what they're doing with her appearance is they're trying to make her look like impervious. She's this heroine. She's she's strong. She's severe. She's, you know, wearing all black. She's got her hair back and in a braid. You know, everything is is very intense where if they allowed for some vulnerability, if they allowed for some sensitivity, some softness, that would probably go a long way in making her into a real person that people could believe was actually abused. I, I feel bad for saying this, but I'm I'm going to say it. If and, and maybe this makes me a bad attorney, but I would have her <laughs> dressed up as number one. I want and and I'm going to say it. I want the guys to want her, and I want the women to sympathize with her, right? Because right. I want to play on that protection of men. Men, I want you to protect her. She's in a nice dress. Well, she's feminine. vulnerable. Yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 I and I understand. But if I'm if you know if a lot of people in the chat may hate me, but if I'm your attorney, you want me playing to these to these things, right? Because we want to take every little advantage we can take and do it. Now, I'm not saying it's going to I work agree. all the time, but I would I would rather have an attorney who says, I want to go, yes, let's let's play to what we know versus let's just do this whole sit down like a, like I'm not an ice queen and have them hate me, right? Because it's it's like those don't get you points. If she's in a nice and I I hate I, I know people are gonna clip this, but if she <laughs> is dressed differently, if she's in a nice dress and people have a different feeling for her. And like, and like, and like you said, Alita, you could just put another woman there just to give her that 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 edge. She she's got such an edge on right now. You got to yes. take a little bit of that off just to get that sympathy for. Her. It, yeah. Ultimately, it's insulting to women. What they're saying is, uh, it's very sexist. the The best thing a woman could be is not feminine or what they naturally are, and everybody knows them to be, but a man. They are yeah. trying to. She is dressed like a, a masculine presence, and they're saying that's superior to being a woman. It's not. Everybody knows it. It yeah. it looks silly. You can only sell this to your gender gender studies professor. No one else <laughs> on the planet's buying it. No one. Yeah. No one yeah. thinks that a woman has stronger upper body strength. No one thinks that a woman makes a good superhero in the masculine mold. Yeah. You, use 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 the feminine superhero traits, not not the masculine ones, yeah. because people know in reality it's not so. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't mean, I mean, I, I, I just saw in the chat, it doesn't necessarily mean a floral dress and a sloppy updo. You can have, I mean, <laughs> look, there are plenty of, of female lawyers in that courtroom that look perfect for, for that courtroom. They look feminine. They look put together. They look fine. You know, like there are plenty of examples that you can look at right there. Um, the, the female attorney for the for the uh, plaintiff is is great. She looks professional and good, and and maintains some femininity w without mm -hmm. without being you, you know. Th th there's a way to do that. It's professional, straight, good. Yes. Yeah. Let, let me let me let me give you guys a real life example. So I used to do um, <clears throat> prostitute well John cases. You know, they, Johns would go up and pick up prostitutes, or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. So I, so I was prosecuting I those cases early in your career when you're at the DA's office. They give you those cases. So, you know, and the cops they use, because New York's very extremely big. So the cops they use, you think they're runway models. These are beautiful women. You're like, you're a, you're a cop? They're like, yeah. I'm like, my God, I'm glad I wasn't out there. I wouldn't have fucking been in trouble. <laughs> but anyway, so they have these cops. They, they they do their thing. They get these these guys. So we're doing a trial. And in that trial, just to show you about looks, 
The cops, she's coming in in full uniform, you know, yes, I'm, I'm an officer. And the defense attorney says, well, can we have her dress as she was that day? Because mm. my client was saying that he thought that she was in trouble. She <laughs> yeah. was she was, he's like, can we have her dress like she was that day? And, you know, there's a whole big thing. No, no, no. But the judge said it was relevant because what she was wearing that day gives you perspective. This was not what, what we saw, right? What she's, <laughs> and when they saw that picture of how she looked that day, the whole thing changed. There was did, the jury, everything, everything changed. Did everything they, changed. Did they actually, um, did they actually make them dress and show up on the stand, or could you just no, show a picture? No, picture. We, had, we there were pictures. We, <laughs> okay. we were able to show pictures. Excuse me, man. So we showed Can the pictures. Even run to the and, bathroom real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but those pictures show because the guy, the guy's argument was that, hey, I was, um, you know, I saw this woman who was scantily clad crossing the street now, and, and I stopped and asked, hey, are you okay? They had a conversation. He thought she was attractive. He said, sure, jump in. And then, you know, later, let's go do something. So his, right. his thing was he was entrapped. Like you saw somebody crossing the street running in a bad neighborhood who, looking like that. He's you know, obviously going to say what's up. So he got off. He was, he was you know, got, he's free. But what I'm saying, I say that story to say this. It matters a lot because if, if we didn't show, if that judge would have denied showing them what she looked like during that day and what she was wearing, that would have changed that whole scenario. And I think that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing, even though we, we like to pretend that we live in this thing where looks don't matter, gender doesn't matter. That's BS. We're pure you're, logical you're, beings. You know, those social justice attorneys are getting those people convicted because I'm going into court playing on all those racial stereotypes, right? I'm going to play on them, right? Because I'm going. I need to do what's best for my client. If I have a, a lot of horny men on that jury, and I got a beautiful woman I'm defending, my God, you better know I'm going to play to their, <laughs> to what I believe they want to see. Right. Absolutely. And that, that's what they did in Theranos. That's what they do in all trials. So, yep. we, you know, the, the I, I love the piece of we practice uh, when we give our commentary, we give our commentary in this safe space of me, too, and all this other stuff. But when we practice. You got to practice in reality. And that's yep. reality. Yes, absolutely. I mean, because because that's that's the that's the world in which these cases even happen in. Right. I mean, that's 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 just. You're right. It's reality. And so you have to try the case in the same reality in which things arose. Um, now, people also uh, there was also a question about whether or not the jury can see Amber's face. Um, now, I don't know what kind of a distance they're at in the courtroom, but they can they can see there. This is part of the part of the purpose of doing all of this as much as possible in person is so that the jury throughout trial can look at the two parties and see how they're reacting to things. That's part of their assessment of, of everything is also in, in not just their dress and their aesthetics and stuff, but also in their reactions to things. So, um, you know, it's, I, I love, I love looking at what I can observe of Amber's makeup. And of course, you know, we can see kind of close-ups and stuff because of the camera. I don't know how close the jury can see her face either, but you can see shadowing from her cheekbones that kind of looks like it could be a bruise um, if you look at yeah. it from certain angles. So it, there's, there's stuff like that that I'm picking up that I, I wonder if the jury is starting to notice these things and look at her face to see like, hmm. What does her face look like normally? I mean, obviously she's wearing makeup. The idea that she would show up to court for something this important without makeup is ridiculous, right? She, of course, mm -hmm. is getting mm -hmm. either doing it herself or or getting her makeup done. I personally think she's probably getting it done professionally, just like her hair. Um, but um, but yeah, they they can they can see all of that, and that is all part of the part of the assessment. Yeah, I, I one thing I, I I will say is that I remember when I was taking trial, my trial advocacy class. And one of the things that, that our professors, who was a, who was a ACLU attorney, and they were always saying, they would always tell their clients when, the, when they first see the jury to smile, to look warm, to, because they want that, you, when, you, when you walk into a room, if you see everybody with stone faces on, right, it gives you one little feel and it gives you, and it kind of makes you a judgment about those people. But if you see someone happy, smiling, you know, just kind of relaxed, it gives you a different feel. And mm -hmm. I think I, we haven't seen a relaxed Amber Heard through this whole trial. Every day she's been like the ice queen. Fully clenched. And uh -huh. yeah. And <laughs> but I and I think her attorneys are 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 trying to do what they're doing a good job in trying to combat what's what they're seeing. I want to see what they put on the case, but I think they really need to, you know, start trying to win the war, the battle in court, because Johnny. Him smiling—that was huge today. Him, yeah, you know, reliving like, like, like when he's when I 
when she mentioned the thing about the kid and how Johnny did the makeup and the kid loved it and everything, when she when she said that. I it took me who's watching into that spot. Like I felt like I was there yep. watching him do that to that kid. And when yep. he smiled, I connected with him smiling about it, right? Yes. Those yep. were all points where I was like, oh my God, just that one little moment. And it changed that whole scenario for me, right? That whole scenario. This is a bad witness. Now I went to okay. This witness has now gotten to relate to Johnny, give me a story. All this other stuff she said didn't really even matter to me. But now this and but this is again, this is the back and forth of trial. Yes. Yep. Uh, well, hey there, and, folks. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Rick. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. What's up? Virtual well, having a good morning. <laughs> yes, it's going going well so far. This first witness for the day, she she, as Nate was saying, at first, so it was it was by deposition, which of course is always a little bit more rough because you can't. They did they did they did back to back videos for the jury? Because I, I know it crossed the day line, but it was video video. So yesterday they, they finished, yeah, they, they finished that witness. So he, we didn't have to recall him by video. Um, but yes, yeah, it was, it was two, two depositions. Maybe that, that, that may have been one of the reasons why, well, I think the next one is also going to be a deposition video. So I, I you might want to throw know. a person at the jury at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would. I would that hope that so. volume is tough, man. I, I have been there, but boy, do I get the complaints you, when you happen to do a call like literally I'll do a call like a live stream of a case that, that, I, that I'm following. That's interesting for my audience. And and just that day, the, the it'll do it or even in the middle of the that hearing, it'll just the, the volume will change. They'll switch microphones or something. And I'm like, there's <laughs> only so much I can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the video on this on this is excellent when we're, when the judge is talking or the live witnesses are there. But yeah, it, it's tough. It's tougher in the video. Yeah. yeah. And I know I'm, I am trying to balance out the, the sound for us and them. I can't, like I said before, I can't bring up the, the video in the, in the feed, but I can only lower us and I can only lower us. So well, you can too. Do. Yeah. <laughs> take us down to mouse, mouse sound effects and just say, yeah. turn up your speakers. It won't be easy. The, all right. I got, I got, to, I got to step out. Nice okay, to see you all. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Mike. It was great seeing uh -huh. you. So it's a video <laughs> deposition this morning. Nate, you yes. were telling a story about this particular deposition as I as I rolled in. Um, no, no, no. We, we were just talking about how um how 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 you look in a courtroom, how that also matters, and 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 nonverbal communication. Yeah. Oh, this wasn't uh, lunch with the jury. This no, was, this was this, just this was a morning. fifteen minute break. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we are we are back, and we're going to be doing the next the next witness. Who is this going to be? And they're going to do this next Laurel witness. Laurel like Davis Anderson. Laurel what is your business address? Ooh. It's been a while. 10921 Wilshire Boulevard, Westwood Medical Plaza, Suite 11101, uh, 1, Los Angeles, 90024. And you're a clinical psychologist, is that correct? Correct. And you practice in Los Angeles? Yes. For how long have you been practicing? Almost 40 years. <clears throat> have you been practicing in uh, Los Angeles for that entire time? Yes. And you provide counseling for couples? Psychotherapy for individuals and couples. And what is psychotherapy? Just a, a brief layman's description. Um, it's an evaluation of an individual or a couple's um, problems. And then it's a conceptualization of what's actually going on and an effort to make intervention that leads to change. Do you recognize what this document is? Yes. What is it? Uh, this is my ledger for tracking sessions that I use for invoice billing. I and that echo this is ledger in the come out of your files? Yes. And you keep this document in the ordinary course of business? Absolutely. And I just want to. Um, How I get paid. And this particular ledger, who is it for? It's, well, despite the names that are camouflaged, um, it's for Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp. At the top, um, wh what are the two names that, that it says there? Anne Henry and Joey Davis. And, and, and Anne Henry is Amber Hurd. Yes. And, and Joey Davis is Johnny Depp. Oh, I see what she did there yeah. with the initials. And then, it, and then uh, it says age 29 and 52, is that right? Yes. And 29 was the age of Amber Heard at the time? 
Yes. And 52 was the age of Johnny Depp. Yes. So, so as I understand it, on October 1st, uh, 2015, Mr. Depp and Amber Heard came in for couples counseling at uh, for three and a half hours? Yes. yes. Whether they were in for the full three and a half or not, I don't know. But that was the amount of, that was when this, the session started and they came in when they came in and <laughs> not together. Um, and it took three and a half hours to actually do that first session. Uh, so as I understand it, for that first session, Mr. Depp and Amber Heard did not come in together? I don't believe that they did. The next session with Amber, with Ms. Heard alone for background intake, and that was a two and one third hour session. And, and that session was on October 6, 2015? Yes. And what's the next uh, row? Indicated? The next day. You saw Amber on October 6, 2015 for two and a third hours, correct? Yes. He means row on the ledger. And what is the next For some reason, uh, I was hearing indicating. it was British for fight. The next day, October 7th, Mr. Depp for three and a half. Again, it may not have been face-to-face -face for the full three and a half, but it was being at the beginning of the session, waiting for him, his coming in with the entourage and our getting to work. And... For the, th the three sessions we just discussed, the, the October 1st session, the October 6th session, and the October 7th session, those were all in person with you, correct? So, yes, the first three sessions were all in person. And then what does it say under uh, for the next row, for the 1014 row? Couple, three hours. So on October 14th, 2015, Amber Heard and Mr. Depp saw you for a couple session? Yes. There's a there's a couple session on October 14th for three hours. Is that right? 1014, there's a couple session. On 1021, there's a couple session where someone walked out for two hours. On 1024, Ms. Heard was there, we did a phone session for one and a half. And and how did and Ne on the 1024 row, next to the two hours, it says W out, correct? It's 1021. In the, in the 1021 row, what does it say in the fourth column? Walk, for me, that's walk out. And do you recall who walked out of that meeting? I have tried to, and I don't, because each threatened and stood up, <laughs> and I'm not positive who finally did the walkout. And then what does it say, what is it indicating on the row for 11, 12, 2015? Couple session showed one and a half hours. And then on 12, 17, what does that show? Amber alone showed two and a quarter hours. It, based on this ledger, you saw Amber and Mr. Depp for four couple sessions? That's right. Dr. Anderson, I'm showing you it's been marked as Anderson three, Three ninety seven, no objection. Is that correct? They didn't list objections in their exhibit list, and then we actually communicated this morning and they said they weren't objecting. All right. Do you know who on the team you you, you talked with? I'm sorry. Johnny's back to being a little bit more reserved and inside himself, it no, seems. No, so you, you just who, who, who? I believe it was Jessica Okay. All right. So no objection. All right. And that's okay. 397 in evidence then. A defense 397. Um, and I will let you, which is CC000172, I'll let you take a look at it. So it's a one page email. So let me know when you're finished. Do you recognize this email chain? Yes. Do you know who Christian Carino is? Yes. 
again. On the page where it says laurel.anderson28 at gmail.com, that's your email address? Yes. The email of March 28th, 2015 from Mr. Carino, he wrote, uh, Laurel, my closest friend, Amber, on copy, wants to come see you alone first and then with her husband, Johnny. We'll leave it to you two to arrange a time. Love you both. You see that email? Did you receive that email from March 18th, 2015? I did. And you responded to Mr. Carino's email, correct? As you can see, yes. What was your understanding as to why Amber Heard wanted to meet with you? Mm -hmm. I took it at face value that Ms. Heard wanted to have a consultation. And if this is not infrequent that I might get an email like this. So, and when I hear that someone may then later want to come in with their husband or spouse, Yes, I think it has to do with relationship issue. When she talks specifically um, about Amber at all, is, is there no privilege issue here in Virginia? Was that discussed at all? It's a, it's a, it's, it's a case right? between two parties. Yes. So she's he she's a therapist for both of them. Up. So I I think I think it's waived. And Mr. Carino was Even trying to set up a meeting with, Amber? Uh, with you and Amber yeah. and Mr. Depp. Is that right? Yes, that's what I assumed. And, and you responded to Mr. Carino's email, um, correct? I did. And then at the top, you received an email from Amber Heard. Yes. And she wrote, hi, Laurel. Thank you so much for responding. I really appreciate it. I have to speak to my husband when he's done working today and make sure it's good with that time. I think it sounds perfect. Thank you so much again. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to meeting you. Did I read that correctly? Yes. And, and you received that email from Amber Heard? I did. Um, on September 27th, 2015, you received an email from Amber Heard, correct? Yes. And Amber wrote, hi, Laurel, Johnny and I are back in town and would love to know if you have any availability to see us this week. Please let me know, thanks. You received that email from Amber Heard? Yes. And you responded that you were available on Thursday at 5.30 p.m., correct? Yes. And, and um, Looking at the top of the email where it says Wednesday, September 30th, um, would you agree that the next day is uh, Thursday, October 1st, 2015? Yes. Okay. And we need to, we can go back to your billing ledger, but the first time you saw Amber Heard and Mr. Depp was on October 1st, 2015. Is that right? Yes. But did you see Amber Heard on December 17th, 2015? Yes, we we had established that. Yes. All right, so it's that on screen. Dr. Anderson, I'm showing you it's been marked as Anderson Exhibit Seven, which is depth three two zero two. Uh, take a chance, read it, and let me know when you're finished. Life Sanders says, yeah. I can't watch all day, but when yes. I'm, when I can, I'm always entertained. Thanks for all daily recaps. Um, also, I like watching seven your expression when taking a, notes because you look like what I'm thinking when a, I take, when I have March to take notes. Thank you. Email from <laughs> Thanks, Life Sanders. You, yes. And Christian Carino was asking if you'd be willing to make a house call to Johnny Depp's apartment downtown. Is that right? I did not know where he lived. Uh, his email says, would you be willing to make a house call to Johnny's apartment downtown, correct? Did it say downtown? Yes, it did. Okay. And then you responded on March 8th, 2016, correct? Yes. And you wrote, hey, Christian, have, of course, avoided this my whole career unless someone was in rehab, would be willing to try it once, and that there's something I'd like Johnny to understand, and I don't think he does. Um where you wrote, I'd like Johnny to understand um, 
that I'd, where you wrote would it, would would be willing to try it once in that there's something I'd like Johnny to understand that I don't think he does. What did you mean by that? I can't say exactly what it was I wanted to impart, but I, I know that I thought that he was um, having difficulty in the sessions. And I think it was something about the process between the two of them that I was trying to clue him into. What difficulty was Mr. Depp having in the sessions? <clears throat> having a voice. What do you mean by that? Ms. Hurd had a Jack Hammer style of talking. She was very amped up. He had trouble talking at a similar pace. Their dialogue, he was cut off a lot. So I, 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 I'm guessing this is what I was, I'm not sure what I, it is, but there was something, anyhow, this is how he didn't have a voice. He couldn't keep up with her rapid fire um, way of conversation. And so he was really overwhelmed. In, in working with um, Amber and Mr. Depp, did Amber ever report to you any physical violence on behalf of Mr. Depp toward Amber? Yes. What type of physical violence did she report to you? Do you recall seeing photos from Amber Heard? I, I, I have, but I don't remember when I saw them. What do you recall about the photos? Her face was bruised. Do we not do get the answer what, on what she where recorded? on her face you saw, on Amber's mm, face you yeah. saw bruises? It's weird. I it? think they were around her eyes, but I couldn't be positive. Did, did you witness abuse by either? I didn't person? witness. I didn't witness. Had you worked with Mr. Depp before working with Amber and Mr. Depp? No. Is it your testimony that while Mr. Depp may have said he wasn't violent with any of his other partners, there was violence between from Mr. Depp toward Amber, correct? Yes, you're right. He said that Johnny Depp said that? He had he had, had been well controlled, I think, for almost, I don't know, 20, 30 years. And uh, both were victims of abuse in their homes but I thought he had been well controlled for decades. And then with Ms. Ms. Hurd, he was triggered and um, they engaged in what I saw as mutual abuse. Sometimes I'm not, I know she led on more than one occasion. Did, and did Johnny just present a witness that says with her she felt Johnny engaged in abandonment abuse? Abandonment and having him leave was mutual abuse. Nightmare. Mm -hmm. I know I mutual, but that doesn't change that. Initiated it on occasions too. I'm that I'm. Less yeah, mutual sure abuse about. is a loss for Johnny. And how did you? Yeah, feel no, it's not helpful to him. If you abused at all, Miss Heard physically abused Mr. Depp. Miss Heard reported that. What did Miss Heard report to you? That it was a point of pride. Two things. It was a point of pride to her if she felt disrespected to initiate a fight, and was. Her father had beaten her. She was not going to. And the second, uh, the second one is what she reported to me, which is if he was going to leave her to de-escalate from the fight, she would strike him to keep him there. She would rather be in a fight than have him leave. Did you speak mm -hmm. to any other doctors or psychologists that worked with either Amber or Mr. Depp? No. Did you review any uh, medical documents of Mr. Depp or Amber? I reviewed a um, pharmacokinetic um, that that Ms. Hurd showed me, which has to do with um, neurotransmitter function, genetics, and medications. Just to go back, uh, Doctor, what professional degrees do you hold? I have a... I have a couple of masters, a PhD, and a, a certified clinical nutrition certification. Would you mind please just um, elaborating on that for the record? Yes, I have a master's from Young in my 
early in my life uh, in uh, teaching and curriculum. I have a master's in psych. I have a PhD in clinical psychology. I have a CCN, which is a certified clinical nutrition um, uh, certification. And do you recall, doctor, uh, in what year you obtained your PhD? Yes, I got it in 82. And if very briefly, if you could just please, in summary fashion, just describe your employment history from 1982 forward after earning your PhD. Um, I collected clinical hours um, in hospitals and in psychiatric medical groups. I was employed to do some nutrition evaluation and intervention as well, but there were MDs behind me. We worked in concert, um, then worked in a hospital with, I think, I think that doctor was, re, uh, was, um, workers comp um, and then when I was you know I have it out of order then I was on my own but I was employed by that this is when I was employed by a psychiatric medical group um, to do kind of a combination of psychotherapy and some nutrition and then since then I have been so, a solo practitioner out of network word of mouth only very small footprint <laughs> um, purposely um, all of these years when did you become a solo practitioner? Um, very soon, probably uh, in probably in eighty six. So, is it fair to say that as of two thousand fifteen, you were, you were already quite established as a solo practitioner? Yes. Generally speaking, what type of services did you provide your patients in two thousand fifteen? Adults only, individual or couples work, and um, with a limited number of people, there would have been neurotransmitter testing and uh, some attention to lifestyle and how <laughs> uh, nutritional elements affect the brain. And if you would just please describe for us lay people what a clinical psychologist does. Um, the first thing is evaluation, intake, gather material. The second thing, and the way I work is cons uh, during the intake process, could be one session, could be four sessions, depends on if it's an individual or a couple. I'm conceptualizing. I'm looking for the process. The content is something I make notes on, I care about. It leads me from session to session, but I'm really looking at process. What's going on between two people? or what's actually going on inside of someone. The third step is I am I show my hand. I talk about it. I try to get either three people in the room all on the same page with me or one other person. This is what I see. And then the onus is on me to not just be a good friend and hold someone's hand and talk about mom, <laughs> but to actually make change. And so I lay out here are the things I think we need to work on. Um, and then there are action steps for all of them so that someone has a more directed sense of what they're doing in psychotherapy as opposed to just coming in and talking about how they feel. Is it your practice when you have a session with a couple that you take notes from the session? I absolutely take notes from any session. Do you take, at what time in relation to this session do you take the notes? Um, I'm taking them during the session and they know it because so I don't want hours and hours and hours of homework at the end of a clinical day. So the notes I can understand that <laughs> often, uh, you know, a lot of typos, wrong pronouns here and there, but essentially I'm just trying to gather facts as I go. Is it fair to say that you take the notes in a somewhat contemporaneous fashion? <laughs> Could you use the so, word contemporaneous on this tape, please? Do you take those Thank notes you. in the ordinary course of your practice in your business? Absolutely. Do you maintain or do you keep those notes as part of your uh, treatment and regular course, ordinary course of business? I do. Thank you. 
And what type of information generally do you keep in your notes other than what you've already testified about? Whatever I want to. A anything that come. It could be content that I'm tracking, just so I know in the next session what kind of content we were talking about. Um, and it could be processed too. Stand by. And I'll mark that as uh, plans exhibit number one. Showing exhibit one on the screen. You, just to confirm, have you seen this do uh, document before, Dr. Anderson? It, yes. And and what is it? It's uh, Christian Carino doing the first contact, and the second one is from Ms. Hurd. Uh, wanting to know how to get in touch with me. But accepting uh, what's been thrust upon us, when was your first uh, couples therapy involving Ms. Hurd? October 1st, 2015. Was that an in-person session? Yes. Where was the session held? In my office. And, and Mr. Depp was also there, correct? Yes. How long was that first session? Three and a half hours. Was that the first time that you had ever met Ms. Hurd in person? I think so. And was that the first time you had ever met Mr. Depp in person? Yes. Okay, now if, if you could please turn, and this is a multi-page exhibit uh, Mr. Nadelhaft did not show you. Uh, this is going to be plaintiff's exhibit two. Stand by. Can I interrupt a second, Ben? Sure. Um, Adam, can you turn up your microphone? Because everyone's a lot louder than you, and when you object, I struggle to hear you. See, even they have problems me? with volume, folks. Well, <laughs> official deposition is a lot louder than you, so you talk at the same time. They got to pause. They got to do a sound hear you. check. Live streamception right, right video right issues. Right exactly. <laughs> And Dr. Anderson, if you could just take as long as you uh, would like to familiarize yourself with this document, I'll just state for the record, these are documents that you produced uh, that have a Bates designation 1 through 17. Yes, that, I'm familiar. Um, what are these? Oh, well, strike that. Have you ever seen Plaintiff's Exhibit 2 before? Yes. What What is it? It's a redacted copy of my personal notes that I provided to you guys. <laughs> and are these, um, I think you testified in response to Mr. Nadelhaft's questioning that the names Ann Henry and Joey Davis are pseudonyms? Yes. And uh, would you please just identify for us who Ann Henry is in real life? Anne Henry is Amber Heard. Joey Davis is Johnny Depp. And are these uh, your notes that you took contemporaneously of the four couples th uh, of, strike that, are these your contemporaneous notes that you took of the couples therapy sessions? Yes. Would these notes include any session that you had for Miss Heard? that was not part of the couples therapy? No. Did you have any sessions with Mr. Depp individually that weren't part of the couples therapy? No, during this period of time, it's color coded. Black is couples, red is Ms. Heard, and blue is Mr. Depp. Uh, whether I talked to them or saw them individually or as a couple, it was all in service of couples therapy. Understood. And so these notes in plaintiff's exhibit to encompass all of the couples therapies sessions that you had with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, either when they appeared together or when they appeared separately in the context of your couples therapy. Is that correct? I'm looking at one page. If you're talking about the entire redacted document, yes. And I've asked you the question generally, but I want to ask you in the context of, of these 17 pages, did you prepare these 17 pages of couples therapy notes in the ordinary course of your treatment 
of Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yes. Did you maintain or keep them in the ordinary course of your practice or business? I did. So my question was, it's gotta be uh, what is the significance of October 1, 2015? Yeah. Um, and I'm also probably reliving some I'm tough conversations, so this too. To you. This can't possibly make sense, but it makes sense to me. I can't imagine okay. it's a fun process for they anybody. They reported no. what they said to one another. So the first line is Ms. Hurd talking, saying that Mr. Depp says to her, no one likes you. You're getting fame from me. I'm falling out of love with you. You're a whore. She's reporting just in the first session just how bad the relationship is, just how mean they are to one another. And at that point, I, because I'm typing quickly as they go along, I'm switching into a different voice, more about the process between them, where she has, I believe, interrupted him. He says no more about what she says about him. And it's just that they're fighting and she has a hard time. She, she bites the bait. She can't let him talk. Is, is my recollection and from this, th that's kind of what that is. So it gives me a sense of what they're doing at home. They're each reporting. This is what we say to each other. Okay, I appreciate that, Dr. Anderson. I'm just gonna try to break it down into to little bits. Um, so October 1, 2015 was the date of the first couple session, correct? Yes. And two and a half means two and a half hours long from start to finish? I am guessing they were in, they were present for two and a half hours, but that I waited, whatever the first doc, the ledger says, but I waited an hour for them to show up. And Dr. Important Anderson, invoicing. Uh, in that first <laughs> bullet point that yep. we can see, uh, you write, Jay says, no one likes you, getting fame from me, falling out of love with you, whore. Jay is Johnny Depp? Yes, but that was said by Ms. Hurd. So is it fair to say that Ms. Hurd was saying that Johnny said to her, no one likes you, you're getting fame from me, I'm falling out of love with you, whore. That, that, would, that would have come from Mr. Depp, is that correct? Ms. Hurd reported that that's Reading what counseling Depp notes said really takes you through course. hearsay inception. Did here. Amber, <laughs> when, he's, when Mr. He Depp said, told you that she Amber said, hit him in the jaw. He said, this is allowed because she's explaining a document that's being introduced into evidence, it? but yeah, I understand uh, everybody that says it sounds crazy. I don't think she denied it. Yeah. It's party but opponent admission because it's what Johnny said, but she said, so they're both parties to the lawsuit. So. Yeah. Yes, they, they are. And then it's a business record. It's, it. it's also a business record exception because um, it's coming from her notes. to talk, and there was no more that Johnny Depp was going to say about what he was reporting. It was more that they started into a fight. And I wrote that their process is a back and forth firing at each other. At that point, he had some energy. Um, and they don't communicate. They have terrible skills. At any point during the first <laughs> session, did okay. Ms. Hurd interrupt Mr. Depp when he was trying to talk? Yes. She talked over him. She had rapid fire talking. Did she interrupt him during your other sessions that are reflected in Plaintiff's Exhibit 2? Yes, and I pointed out the process to her at some point, and she got it, that, she, that no one could actually have a decent dialogue with her if she was rapid firing and talking over and just barraging. It was a process issue. You write doesn't answer directly when he asks her a question to what were you referring there? Don't have a clue. If I could direct your attention further down the page from plan, you see the notation to October 6, 2015? Yes. Was that the second couple's session? No, it's red. It's Amber alone. So is it fair to say that you met alone with, with Amber for two and a third hours in the context of the couple's therapy? Is that correct? Yes, this was to get her background material. So tell us what you mean uh, in that one section. He hits her, no closed fist. She hits back and now starts it for pride because... Father. Hit her. Would you please tell us um, 
what you meant by that. This is her reporting to me. Uh, it's the only thing in this uh, clinical session that apparently was about physical abuse or else it would uh, not have been redacted out. Um, it's so when she said in terms of physical abuse that he hits her, a no closed fist means an open hand slap to me. And she says that she hits back and now she starts it and sometimes hits him first because her history is having been violated by her father physically. And just out of pride, she, uh, if she's, a lot of things trigger her. Uh, and if she's triggered, she would hit him first. And the he you're referring to is Johnny Depp, correct? Yes. When you said question. that she sometimes hits Johnny first because of pride, what did you mean? She was sensitive to feeling disrespected um, and a number of other things. But, and so, and if she felt disrespected, she had come out of her background history um, feeling that her pride needed to be, be needed to dominate and she needed to stand up for herself. When Ms. Heard told you that Johnny Depp hits her or slaps her, Johnny Depp was not present, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and it wasn't plural. It was, she referred to, well, I wrote he hits her. Yes. So maybe it was plural. But he was not present when she made that assertion. He was not. Did Ms. Hurd tell you that she socked Mr. Depp? Yes. Um, she was describing kind of the progression of the physical violence. The, Did you have any understanding of what she meant when she admitted that she socks Mr. Depp? Yes, because... And there were three lines above this that explained the progression a bit. And I've already said what it was. Um, she felt she had to hit him back if he hit her. Um, and so she always did. And and again, that entry is from a session where Mr. Depp was not physically present, correct? That's right. Okay, let's move to the next session of uh, October 7, 2015. And this is a three and a half hour session. Is it's that three correct? Three in one week. Yes. Yeah. Was that an in person session? Yes. Did both Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd attend? No, this is blue. This is John, Mr. Depp's intake. Under, understood. And let's move now um, to the toward the bottom of the page. And I think I'm finally getting the code right. Um, so the next session occurred on October 14th, 2015. And it was the two of them for three hours. Is that correct? Yes. And that was another in person session. True. Yes. Um, and am, am I right to say that every single piece of your notes as to the October 14th, 2015 session has been redacted. Is that true? Yes, but I, to clarify something earlier on the ledger. Yes. I wrote two hours couple then Amber. It means he is the one who walked out of that session. My question was, um, am I correct that all of your notes for the October 14th, 2015 couple session for three hours are completely redacted. Is that true? Yes. So, um, so the next session occurred on October 21, 2015. True. True. And it lasted two hours. It started as a couple, then Mr. Depp left, and then you spoke only with Amber, but in the context of couples therapy, or, is that right? Yes. Okay. And let's go to the next session on, uh, page 10. The next session was, on October 24th, 2015. That's a lot of sessions and I can't back to back. See from the code, was that a, a, a couple's therapy or was it just one or the other of them attending? I don't know. This is a red phone session with Ms. Hurd. Okay, great. 
Um, and it lasted one and a half hours. Yes. So the next session was after that was on October 29th, 2015. Is that right? Yes. And um, that just. And that, that one. No, that one was uh, canceled. Oh, it was canceled. That's why it's so short. Okay. And then the one after that, still on page 10, was on November 12th, 2015. There's a, an appointment on 11-4 that was canceled that I didn't put an entry on. Okay. That's well, thank you. No, that's helpful. Uh, what about uh, November 12th? Was yes. that a joint session? Yes, it was. And was that in person? Yes. Okay. And then the next session on page 11 is uh, that even I can understand. Uh, so there was a no show on December 4th, 2015. Is that right? Yes. I, I'd like to clarify the no shows. In the oh, please, please do. Um, I think they both told me, but I think Mr. Depp told me at one point, but I already knew because this happens with couples. When a couple is having a lot of trouble in sessions, but they're doing well at home and they're in a little bit of a honeymoon, you know, period, they cancel instead of coming in because they know coming in will get them into conflict. Ah, interesting. Okay. And and fair to say that that happened again on December uh, 10th, 2015? I can't tell which sessions they were sick or which which tesh, which sessions they were canceling because of this dynamic, but it was admitted and explained to me and I understood it fully. Okay. Um, and still on page 11, the next session was on December 15th, 2015, and it was a telephonic session. Is that right? With, yes, with uh, Ms. Hurd. That was with Ms. Hurd. Okay. You write, then last night, Monday, she slapped him as he sat there talking incoherently. Who slapped who? I actually, I actually know what happened. What happened? This was, as I said, Ms. Heard talking on the phone to me. Mr. Depp's mother was in ICU. He had been doing a lot of, he was fucked up, as she would say, on a lot of drugs. And she slapped him because he was being incoherent and talking about another, being with another woman. Did she, did she tell you that he had hit her first or was she the one who initiated the slap? She initiated that one because I think she felt demeaned and threatened. And this is what she reported to you, correct? Yes. He was not present. He was not on the call when she made these allegations. Uh, was, was, was he? No. And you didn't see any of this, did you? No. And you didn't see her in person? No. After. Okay. Um, then uh, there is a uh, notation. Um, should she call police? Question mark. Where is that? That's um, right below what we were just talking about. There, in red, it says... Should she call police? What does that refer to? So what did you mean? Uh, that was her asking me. Did you respond to her? I believe I did. Then you write, doesn't want to divorce, wants to want to divorce. Yes. What did you mean by that? She loved him. <laughs> um, he loved her. Um, she believed that she wasn't stupid. She knew that what they were doing wasn't healthy. And so she wanted to want to divorce him, but she didn't. And yet it had escalated to this point. So she was trying to figure out what to do. And she had an entourage around her telling her what to do. Who was her entourage? Uh, she had a routine group of friends that stayed with her, lived in her home, um, probably as well as uh, paid people that I don't know. Do you recall the names of any of her entourage? One was Rocky. Directing your attention to the last snippet from that session, 
will she have advantage if she leaves him but files with police for abuse first? Was that a question that she asked you? Yes, this was her mm -hmm. talking out loud, trying to strategize for herself. So I'm playing exhibit three on the screen. And uh, Dr. Anderson, I think this is the same document that Mr. Nadelhaft showed you as Anderson exhibit six. So I'm not gonna ask you to identify Yikes. it again, but I do well, have I mean, a couple I, of- know, um, Certainly there's nothing wrong with strategizing how to best position yourself after a major situation, but certainly in this ask. context, you testified that's one of the reasons this was presented is because that, that looks like a- You have never spoken to any of Ms. Yeah, Bird's other psychologists or therapists. Is that true? That's true. And putting that aside, uh, when she refers to her own therapist in this exhibit three, do you know the name of that person putting aside whether you have ever spoken to him or her? I do not. Okay. Did Ms. Hurd ever explain to you why the nuances and com complexity of her relationship with Mr. Depp would be lost on her own therapist? I believe that she felt known in a more thorough way in terms of her re her behavior inside of the relationship. And let's pick up where we left off on the bottom of page 11 of plaintiff's exhibit two. Okay. And specifically the entry that begins on January 13, it's at the very bottom of page 11, the literally the last line. Oh, that's it. On, on January 13, 2016, was this a uh, joint session with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, or was this just with one of them? It was only Ms. Hurd. And let me go back and see if it, it was phone. No, 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 I'm sorry. It was in person. No, it was, no, 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 never mind. 113.16. was Ms. Heard in person. And do you know how long this in-person session was with Ms. Heard on January 13, 2016? I think it was probably just one hour. Okay. You write, didn't fight on island till last day. On island started to get into something. Uh, what did you were what were you referring to there? Well, Christmas had occurred, and the goal was they had a lot of people going to his island, and they were going to be together. And the goal was to try and get through the Christmas holiday without fighting. And so she was reporting on that. Then she's uh, you write he got aggressive, threatening, didn't touch him hidden bathroom. What were you referring to there? What she reported to me. Um, which was an improvement that she didn't participate. So she, is it fair to say that she told you she did not hit him at that time? Yes, that's what I believe my notes say. Yes. Then you write she threw can at him since home fighting, then she better. Who is the she who threw a can at him? Miss Heard. And the him whom she threw a can at was Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Did you receive that email on or about March 8th in the morning at 6.23 a.m.? Well, apparently because I responded in the morning. Okay, well then let's, we'll skip it. We'll go right back to your response. Um, so the response at the top of the page of the second entry, I suppose, did you write that email to Mr. Carino on March 8th, 2016 at 7.27 a.m.? I did. Uh, and fair to say that you weren't enthusiastic about the idea of, of making a house call? I was not. And... Mr. Nadel have asked you about what it was you wanted Johnny to understand about the process. 
And I, I was wrong because I can see now the date of it, looking at it more carefully. This is after the relationship has devolved considerably. So what I, I think was guessing was earlier in the um, relationship. I don't know what it was I wanted him to understand. Let's go back to exhibit two then, please. And we're not gonna repeat, we're just picking up where we left off. And now we've gotten up to page 13 of the 17 page of your notes. So if we can start, oh, exactly. Um, do you see where the notes of your session on June 18th, 2016 begin? Yes. And was this a solo session, couples session between you and Mr. Depp only? This is with Mr. Depp, it's blue, it's just the two of us. Gotcha. And it lasted one and a third hours? Yeah. You write fight on her April 22nd birthday. He late, huge fight. His mother died on the 20th. I think I know what you're referring to, but if you could please describe that for the record. One second. This is when I got the Scaramanga Productions on my phone. So he found me at home, which was new. Um, domestic violence charges had already been made. His mother had just died on the 20th. Well, when he told you that there was a fight on April 22, birth, 22 birthday, was that Ms. Hurd's 30th birthday? I think it was. And is he telling you uh, that he arrived late for the birthday a dinner party and there was a huge fight? Yes. Do you know who Tasha Von Rhee is? Yeah, well, I know her name. I know she was someone that Ms. Hurd was in a relationship with. Then you write, was chaotic violence, but gave as good as she got. What does that mean? I believe I'm quoting, I'm, I think I'm quoting what, some of this is just my typing of the words he's using while he's talking. Very, ver He's also very verbal when no one's interrupting him. Um, and I think he talked about how chaotic it was, how violent it was, and she gave as good as she got. That's kind of a direct quote. Those are not my, that's not my language. Directing your attention further down the page to the entry for July 13th, 2016, three hours Amber in person. Was that an in-person meeting you had uh, a couples ther therapy with only Ms. Hurd? No, this is not couples therapy. This is Ms. Ms. Hurd by herself. I wrote in person. Oh, okay. Um, so just to be clear, what follows in your, these are your notes for your individual treatment of Ms. Hurd having nothing to do with couples therapy? Not true. In my mind, uh, the dust had not settled on the couple yet. And this was just kind of aftermath of the, the uh, kind of falling apart of the marriage. But okay. I, I didn't mean to mischaracterize anything. I was just trying to suss out what it was. No, um, this is not individual therapy for her. This is about the marriage. If we could please go to exhibit six, Lucian, which is a new document. Yeah, because individual therapy, she would have to waive the privilege. They can only right. waive the privilege for the couples oh, therapy. I, I think right. that's why she was so adamant about saying that couples, even though Mr. it's individuals, because I, I was just looking at the Virginia it. statutes on this. The client does have full authority uh, Dr. over Anderson, any, anybody working in mental health, before. but the client is of the couple, I which means they both have authority to waive on behalf of each other in likelihood. There you go. I can't speak to Virginia precedent, when I was first, Yes subpoenaed or my notes were required years ago because i got to tell you in general format my notes are jumbly they don't say a lot disincentivizing <laughs> they're, they're confusing um, they're, honesty and transparency know, as you've in, seen, a, in a coupling you in, a, seen, in a couples actually. therapy environment so um i did i don't know how i feel about this as an do. outcome of, of marriage take, counseling you go through all of those hey notes viva's in the chat viva you, come join us you have a and link. your brain because it's not <laughs> as if you're not left check with the group dm thread very you know, I hope a very clear sense of what went on. 
He so looks different I now. took everything he I thought and believed conceptually yeah, about them. I went through all out. of my notes and I wrote well, I think this it's good when he looks something. engaged. I don't know about the drawing and the pen in the mouth. And then if you can go up the paragraph, him, it's but... still there. Everybody yeah, and I want to ask you about that one paragraph. It's the same for her. I think engagement looks better, but. Mm -hmm. I think you've described this in the course of your testimony, but I did want to ask you about your sentence. She reported oh, always hitting him back as a point of pride, but admitted that she eventually initiated the hitting herself. Is the she you're referring to, Ms. Hurd? It is. And is the him you're referring to, Johnny Depp? It is. Okay, let's move to the next right, I got to retract please. my thing about him having a weak case. This case has just gotten a lot stronger today. <laughs> and, and I just want to focus it's gotten on a hell of a lot stronger. snippet yep. on page, page three. Yeah, this whole background story about her pride, that that was something that she would she would hit him Sorry. out of pride when she felt disrespected I, I, you yeah. know, it, 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 it giving a little bit of the background with her you coming write, from an abusive father to that helps to sort of by slapping him neutralize her, her look a little bit said. but still it's is the she you're referring to there? I, I find it to, to be mixed, yes, right? I, I agree with all the, the testimony that's about her hitting, to, but there's a lot of stuff at the beginning that's suggestive, at least, of John hitting her at some point. At this time and, and they just need to say it happened once in order to win the case. Of her yeah, I'm, she wins if I'm, it I'm mixed on that point. I think it was two years ago. Well, that and we'll we'll talk more about it in well, detail on the break. Right, but I'm I'm, I'm mixed on that. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. I'm saying it was right after that fight, and she. My recollection is she came in, she talked to me by phone, and then came in the next day. I don't know how I feel about her um, hair today. The all black is like the funeral thing, but the hair I'm not too sure. She's she's Darth Leia, <laughs> or at least ah. I thought. I thought that. <laughs> Speaking of crazy Somewhere hair, the time she got the injury. Hey, Viva. I know she came in <laughs> it's Lily Viva. Tomlin. It's Lily did she Tomlin. Show you photos there you go. Or did there you go. Show I'm going to turn you down just so that oh. you're. Sorry. You said no, no, not, not your fault at all. Photos and so. Oh, so that's a green screen with the whole. Is it your right, testimony that she in showed in you photos? She is. You look at her hair, how it disappears behind her. I thought that was a real room. I was like, shortly after the alleged event. No, her left shoulder disappears from time to time. Somewhere in the period while she still had injuries she showed me photos but she also came in and showed me in person and what did she show you in person bruising on her face um other than the bruising on her face what else what other injuries did she show you i don't remember there may have been more but i don't remember and you weren't present during the alleged uh physical injuries correct Correct. So the only basis you had uh, with respect to the cause of the injuries was what Ms. Hurd told you, correct? Yes. And you write, the physical violence that occurred between them appeared to me to be mutual. You never actually witnessed any physical violence by Mr. Depp or by Ms. Hurd, correct? Never. And you said that they were each victims of domestic violence, both in their family. Uh, they were each victims of domestic violence in their families. What did you mean by that? They were each beaten by parents. Um, go back very briefly to exhibit two. Page 11. So I didn't hear wrong. She admitted that Amber said that she hit herself from time to time. And, that she initiated um, from time to time out of pride and, and other after reasons. After the part where...
this this refers to a session that was just uh, you and Ms. Hurd, correct? Yes. And this call, which was just between you and Ms. Ms. Hurd and not Mr. Depp involved, that occurred on or about December 15th, 2015? Yes. And was it just shortly after that call uh, when Ms. Hurd showed you pictures and actually came into your office? Is that right? She came in on 12-17, so yes. So, so Ms. Hurd came in on December 17th and you saw bruises on her face, is that correct? I believe that's when. Was that bruising that you observed similar to the bruising that appeared on the photographs that she showed you? Yes. You testified that what you saw in person was similar to what you saw in the photographs Amber gave you, correct? Yes when she came into your office on December 17th, what did her face look like? What I recall is not purple, green, and blue, but just a darkening, so kind of a dark, a darker gray-blue sort of thing. But I, I, I don't have a photo of it. I don't remember that well. Is that, Dr. Anderson, consistent with your understanding that there were no other entries on December 15 uh, or December 17th relating to physical abuse? You know, um, there was nothing about physical abuse, nothing in that next session. It was all about Christmas and get, and her therapist telling her one thing. Not um, that's weird. What was the size of the bruise on her face that you observed on December 17th? Maybe like this in more than one place, but an inch. You said it was in, so is it fair to say those are small bruises in more than one place? So there was, how many one inch size bruises were on her face that you observed? I'm not a good person to ask this question to. I don't really remember. I wasn't looking to memorize it. I think there's other data that will support this, not from me. A few minutes ago, you briefly spoke about seeing bruises about an, about an inch on, on Amber Heard's face. You recall that testimony? Yes. And you were, you were making motions with your fingers. But, but I was saying multiple. I'm not saying one. Right. You were seeing multiple, multiple bruises on Amber's face. Yes. Correct. When you um, were talking about how the size of it, you, your fingers were under your eyes. Did you, you remember seeing the bruises under Amber's eyes? That's what I recall. They may have been in other places throughout her body. I don't remember, but I, I do remember her face. You can turn to page 13. So my question before was, did this doctor say that Amber caused cell um, phone? No, not, In not the cell blue, Okay. where it says she's the instigator, she initiates violent. the violence, but do you know what Mr. Depp also was referring to? Kind of making it seem like Johnny Depp also has committed some violence in the relationship, which is a again. loser for him. He loses. That's um, true. Yeah, that's He's not helpful to his case. He's kind of doing a retrospective of trying to understand the relationship um, and is characterizing it as chaotic and violent, but she gave as good as she got, and he... Uh, and she she started it, but in, you know he's he's complaining, but he's also just kind of describing what the relationship was. His um, mother is dead at this point. She the gave relationship as good as she is got. Not, no, no, no. This is not, it's not good. It's over pretty much, and he's trying to come to terms with it. And he still loves her, <laughs> and is mourning. So he's just. He, He's a very articulate man, and when left alone to speak, he can describe intelligently what's going on. I think I'm kind of, I think while he's talking, and I'm not trying to be obtrusive with my taking notes, I'm listening, I'm talking, but I'm also copying down a word here and there. So my belief is that those are his words. And, and Mr. Depp, I think you testified about this, but I just want to make sure it's clear. Mr. Depp told you Amber gave as good as she got, correct? Correct. Did you ask what Mr. Depp meant by gave as good as she got? Um, I was pretty aware of what he meant. I agreed. What did he, what oh. did 
Do you understand please, Mr. Depp to me? Please define right, God. Um, she initiated fights. She started violence. She uh, rose to the challenge if he started first, which I, and so she, in my opinion, that had been established throughout the relationship that she fought as hard as he did. And he tried to de-escalate far more than I think she did. Do you know, did Mr. Depp talk That's about his fingertips with you before June 18th, 2016? I don't, I don't know about she fought as hard as he did. No, I because know. I would have written it yeah. when he first mentioned it to me. It, she did you ever see Johnny Mr. Depp, Depp with an injury to as good as his did. finger during any of your sessions with Mr. Depp? Or, or Depp, counseling or you know sessions together with Amber Heard? During that session, yes, he showed me. On June 18th, 2016, but before June 18th, 2016, did you ever see an injury to Mr. Depp's finger? No. But in, yes, no, I didn't. When we were uh, going through Amber's, uh, the incidents where Amber described Mr. Depp being violent, Mr. Depp was not present, correct? That's true. And traffic cone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our lunch for the afternoon okay. now. Well, no wow, outside research, break. not talk to anybody, How and long? we'll give you till 2.15, okay? So 2.15, so a little over an hour. Now. Thank you. I'm All feeling right. vindicated in the prediction. If it, if it turns out that Johnny Depp admits to ever having hit Amber, uh, it's a big problem for his case, regardless. His case is done. I, mean, I don't think, I don't, I, don't I, really, think it's done. I really don't think Johnny Depp wins this case. I, I don't. It's kind of ancillary to everything we're going to do for four weeks, I think. Mm. <laughs> this is exactly the type of dirt that comes out. Oh, oh I can, I can right. talk a little loud now. They're not talking. Yeah. Uh, this, is the type, this is what happens. You, you had the first afternoon. witness there, the Australian lady. The first witness. Um, or... Sorry. The last witness. So we can put it down during lunch. Okay, perfect. All right. We'll be back at 2.15 then. Thank you. Okay. But when right. the first Australian witness... Uh, you know, says that she Johnny Depp was always peaceful, you know, the greatest person ever, never saw any violence. You know that evidence is going to come out that's going to contradict that witness. So it's it's mm -hmm. a bad line of questioning to ask to get that witness to say something that's going to be contradicted later on. Yeah. Although here's something to keep in mind here is that everything that the that the clinical psychologist testified to is is what was told to her. And so she's yep. obviously able to give her own assessment because she's a professional. She knows how to assess these individuals as they are giving this kind of information to her. Um, but this is all stuff that was reported by these individuals to them. Um, so it sounds like I correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know that Johnny ever. Ad, I mean, other than saying she, she gave as good as she got, there were statements like that, but did he ever admit to hitting her first? You know, I don't think I've heard first. that. Hitting her yeah. first would be would be uh, irrelevant, a distinction without a difference to me for this case. But if Johnny Depp gets up here and says, yeah, that's what I told her. She got as good as she gave. Because I think she, the, the, the doctor there was saying that that was a quote that Johnny Depp gave her, unless I miss, yes. unless I miss something. So if, if he has to admit, yeah, I said that. I mean, okay, fine. So she hit you first. Uh, this is a defamation case alleging uh, abuse. Hit, who hit first doesn't really change that in my mind for this case. I think it might I for think the jury. I mean, I, I, mean, I think... Yeah. I think the jury, the, the, the killer to me is she starts out suggesting that Johnny might have initiated violence at the start, at the early stages, because uh, the, the important part of that testimony to me is that she says eventually she started initiating, which to OK, so what's before eventually? If she's not initiating to start, what, what was initiating before eventually happened? Because yeah. she says it's tumultuous the whole time. So if I'm a jury member, I look at that and say, there's a lot of implied Johnny was hitting her first at the start. I'm not saying that that happened. And again, Alita is exactly right to say this is effectively a kind of foundational interpretation of a contemporaneous business record. I mean, like that's what she's doing is like, yeah. what do these notes mean um, mm -hmm. from what people told her? So that already has a couple of levels of ambiguity, but I, I'm just listening and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as balanced as possible. This is Johnny's yeah. witness. And I hear a lot of mixed messages for what is, and you're, you said you were going to explain your thoughts on this, Lita. What is, to me, looking at it says, if, if you find a time when Johnny initiated, initiated violence against Amber, there's, the defamation is almost impossible here. I think I think that what's going to matter is is the, the level to which things were exaggerated by Amber. Yep. I think that will make a difference to people because I think that, that the implication that came from her op-ed is 
I am a domestic abuse survivor. You know, mm-hmm. I am the person that was victimized here. Um, and I Good think point. that if you start to see a pattern where she has taken certain events and taken them and blown them up out of proportion, fabricated certain facts, fabricated the damages to the apartment that she says he left behind. I mean, especially if they are particularly egregious. I'm thinking about, you know, yesterday we heard from Isaac where he was talking about when he came, came, you know, home to the penthouse floor um, and on the way to his particular penthouse, he saw in the hallway that there was a puddle of, of red wine. There was broken glass. There was stuff that this is this is evidence that we are going to be hearing about that uh, that she has alleged that Johnny on his way out after a particularly violent assault where she says he pulled her by her hair from one room to the next to the next. He socked her in the face. He broke her nose. He gave her black eyes. Um, that he did like like horrifically violent things. This is what she alleged. And this is what she alleged in her domestic violence restraining order um, or her, her request for, for a TRO. Um, this is the kind of stuff that she alleged and that kind of came out publicly around that time in 2016 um, that I think that it will make a difference to a jury who is looking at this not perfectly logically, you know, these, these are human beings here too. They, they may be looking at this and saying, okay, then it, like, you know, maybe he smacked her in an argument. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like I know, it, I know, I you know, know. <laughs> but like, but you know, they, they may be saying, okay, but what she's saying is that he did horrific things way right. worse than that. And, and, and he has, and she has completely destroyed his career in the process. And, and juries like to find some level of justice, you know, even sometimes in criminal cases, for example, when somebody dies, Potter is, is an example of, of that Kim Potter, her, 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 uh, um, uh, murder conviction, you know, when we were looking strictly at the law, it looked like, no, 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 no. She should not have been convicted of murder because she didn't have awareness of what was going on. That's a very crucial element in, in, in that analysis is whether she had, you know, uh, awareness of what she was doing for murder. Sure. Um, but the jury nonetheless looked at, okay, but this is a kid that died. You know, this the is kid so- that died and someone could be something. punished. Yeah. So you know, sometimes juries will do that. And that that's murder versus, you know, a civil liability case where we're talking about money. So that it could be a slightly different calculus, but I, I still feel, feel like people, people have senses of justice that they, they want to balance out those scales, even if they don't fit perfectly into a legal analysis, as we are looking at this as lawyers. Well, I, if I, 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 I do. I, can I, can I just say one thing? I honestly think you guys are, are taking the term abuse and narrowing it to a real to to be extremely narrow in other words johnny has to hit her first for her and and i just don't think that's the case you can i i've seen abuse cases where people are screaming at their children and things that they and they call that abuse and there are other forms of abuse right you can deprive people of food or clothes, you know the abuse is a is, is something that's just not limited to the physical abuse you do have mental abuse and sort of things so i i'm thinking because we're thinking that way, I think this is good for Johnny Depp's team. Because if we have to prove physical abuse, then we've we've raised we've raised the bar tremendously high on our own. But I think in reality, abuse since it comes in many different forms. If what Johnny with Amber Heard's team is, I think, successfully doing is say there was abuse everywhere, and it's not limited to just these. Even if what I was saying was so horrific, the op ed, particularly what they're suing for, is specifically about whether I was a victim of abuse, Amber Heard. And yeah. if I can show that, yes, he hit me once or he pushed me once, which he's already admitted to doing, if that happened once, then yes, I was a victim of some domestic abuse. And that makes all of these statements now not um, defamatory. Defamation. So I, right. I, I think yeah. if we think about it in that context, then I think Johnny Depp's case becomes a little weaker. Oh, I agree with you, but that's yeah. the that's the legal robot concept that Alita was referring to, right? Like we yeah. read it, yeah, yeah, here's yeah. the statute, it's not a lie, blah, 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 blah. And, and I think what you're posing, Alita, is if there is like a full-on third act gone girl that they can prove on May 21st, then you say, uh, well, that's a bad person. And this is this is these are the charges I have in front of me at the end mm-hmm. of all this. Yeah. There was in, in the, one of the Project Veritas defamation cases where the, of the CNN, where the judge said the lie would have been no different than the truth and therefore dismissed as a matter of law. It, this, 
I, I, that, it was bogus in that case because accusing a journalist of leaking confidential information is different than accusing a journalist of being providing misinformation. But if it's like, oh, he didn't, he didn't do all of that to me, but he, there's evidence and now an admission that he slapped me, punched me, abused me on any one occasion. Okay, fine. So he didn't do it as badly as she described or the way she described, but he's admitting to having hit her at any point. I think, I think as a matter of law, it might be done for the defamation. And you know, to some of the chats where they say a verbal fight could also lead to a comment of she gave as good as she got, and there was a super chat. I don't. In my my. If I'm hearing that, ninety nine percent of the time, I think they're talking physically and not verbally. Um, mm. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 so say he didn't. I didn't beat her that badly. I didn't drag her by the hair from room to room. But yeah, every now and again, I hit her when she would hit me, or I hit her when she would. You know, if I lost it, I think he's done. And I, and then this is the type of dirt that comes out in cross-examination because Johnny knows he's not a perfect person. He's done bad things. Doesn't justify the other bad things, but it might make it such that the truth, if e even if what's happened is not deemed to be sufficiently true, the lie might be no more damaging to Johnny than the truth. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I've well, got some work to do, right? Because like one of the statements is the headline. I, we heard in their opening statements says she didn't write that. The headline is the one that specifically talks about sexual violence, like sexual mm -hmm. violence. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that she, it looks like their defense is going to be that that wasn't Amber Heard at all. I mean, there, there's there's various pieces of this that are going to go back and forth. And certainly their lawsuit is predominantly against Johnny for his attorney. But basically on the premise that his attorney said this was a hoax, that this was a setup, that this was a full on production that was that happened, especially on the night of the 21st. So, I you know, there's proofs that go back and forth there. So there's multiple levels of this. But I think Alita, psychologically, you're right. <laughs> the jury is going to determine who they think is least bad and, yeah. and start to start to fit the stories to that, because we can already tell here on day four, it's going to be super messy at the end. Like, it, like it's oh, going to be yeah. super yeah. messy with cross and direct and everything else about what happened at all. So they're going to they're going to decide on who they like better. I mean, that, that's going to happen. Yes. Yeah, but just just so we can put it all some perspective, what Johnny's suing for? Because I've I've had I've I'm doing a video on this, so I went back and looked at all the documents. In the complaint, Johnny's actually asking for defamation per se. So mm -hmm. he's saying that he was that she's accused him by implication of a crime, domestic mm -hmm. abuse. So mm -hmm. he's asking for defamation per se. So yesterday we had a whole conversation about damages, whether he had to prove damages and harm to reputation. Mm -hmm. So based on his cause of action, he really does it right. It's it's icing on the cake, but really he just has to prove the false statement published to a third party about him and um, the actual malice piece. So that's what it seems like what they're going for. If this is if that's the case, and he's saying, if you look at his complaint. He's saying that he's not saying it's it's weird. It's like he's not, it's it's not claiming that he he's claiming well he is claiming he never abused her, but his argument to overcome, you know, did I ever abuse her in the past? Is he's saying in the complaint that here are the incidents she's giving all of these incidents that we she said I abused her, mm -hmm. and in the complaint he says now I'll quote it here. He says that he has that that her claims of where he has abused her has been refuted conclusively by police, neutral third-party witnesses, and he says newly discovered 87 surveillance videos. So I'm assuming that under that in his case in chief, he's going to say, she's presented these four incidents where I abused her, and I have evidence that each one of these four incidents were false based on this evidence I'm providing to the court. And that's essentially what this complaint says. So, yeah. and now in reevaluating the case, Looking at it from that perspective, I think if he's successful doing that, it can win. But I also am sympathetic to what Viva and Hulk is saying, where if there was violence anywhere in the relationship, I still think that's an avenue where Amber can win. Because she can say, yeah, those yeah. four incidents I may have said stuff about, but there was this other time where he pushed me and punched me. And that also led to the abuse. So even though if I, if I inflated these... I still have this other stuff on the back side. Well, and look at the realistic effect of this case, right? Like even if he loses on a defamation case, uh, part of the goal here is to say, you presented in the Washington Post as angelic. I am the suffering survivor of these instances against me and we need to we need to enhance uh, VAWA and, and things like these things that go in the Washington Post. Bare minimum, you get testimony like that from the marriage counselor and presumably four weeks more of it um, Amber Heard isn't going to come out looking very well to the American public and in, and in a public setting like, like this court, because what was presented, however you feel about defamation and Johnny Depp, is that it was toxic and they were at, at worst for Johnny, both beating on each other and doing horrible, horrible things. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And to clarify also, so this witness, so it was called during, she was called during Johnny's case in chief, but she was off of Amber's witness list. Um, she was not on, on Johnny's witness list. Um, and I think, okay. so I think that what she was being offered as here was actually a witness partly for both sides. Um, okay. because, because it, I mean, and for, for good reason, right. I, I can see why both sides would want portions of her deposition testimony and maybe not, not want other portions. That's right. But there's, there's, there, there's a lot that she says that is painful to both sides. Yep. Um, I mean, the fact that, that both of them would be violent. The fact that that she was a jackhammer speaking, she would never let him speak. She was, you know, uh, uh, verbally abusive almost, it sounds like. But the fact that there was mutual abuse is it's not really good for either of them. So, yeah. Right. Well, Certainly I, in the in the court of public opinion, it's not good for Amber Heard. It, it yeah, I, depends yeah. on what happens yeah, yeah, yeah. for the legal case. Yeah. That I, might I be the only saving grace is that people are going to see that Johnny Depp wasn't quite, you know, he he's a troubled soul and occasionally would lash out. But, we, you know, this witness being bad for both and good for both, that's fine. But, you know, Amber, Amber, it's it's Johnny Depp that has to prove the case that what Amber Heard said is a, is defamatory, defamatory per se. And if it turns out he hit her at any point, uh, you know. Although she still also has a burden of proof here because she has filed counterclaims as well. And yeah, those are. Yeah. Yeah, which which I I I question the number that she used. It, it it almost feels like he filed for fifty million dollars, and then she's like, "Oh, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna sue me for fifty million? Well, I'm gonna sue you for twice as much." That's it, kind it's of just how it, it's just a Doctor Evil number out of the sky. <laughs> it's uh, what, what, what what was this worth? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, so yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's but, gonna be. But I, so I think... she she does have her own burden of proof to to prove. That what she did was not a hoax. So, yeah, well, she's 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 put that burden on herself because I think, you know, you can have a situation where she doesn't satisfy her burden. He neither does he, and they both lose because it's just so messy, right? You both are beating each other up, and the Virginia you know, courts throw their hands up and say, "Ah, Hollywood." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because right now, I think Johnny Johnny Depp, in in looking at this, he's I think he's trying to hit three things personality right and that's what we've been here the first two days he's a good guy he's meek he's this he's that he's not aggressive every everybody who they've put on has said johnny is the nicest meekest humblest guy on the planet right we don't know how he's acting with amber but that's the guy so that's his character he's doing a propensity character thing the second thing he's talking about is factual right factually these things were lies she didn't have you know makeup she she um no she didn't have the bruises this other guy was saying you know these are all lies she made it up. And then the last thing is that his career, this was, this was all for her motive was to enhance her career by destroying his career. And we got a little bit of that today too, when she was saying, you know, Johnny kept saying that, Hey, you, you know, you're a slut. And on top of that, you know, you're only with me to become famous and stuff like that. So that's yeah, no, the story that they've, they've been painting. And I think they've been doing, they've been doing a good job painting it, but how well is it going to hit? Because right, again, we're still in day two or three. We just got to go to day 30. How well is this going to be remembered on day 30? You know? Yeah. Well, what you, you, you had her attesting to seeing bruises in person. I think they said in December of 2015. Yeah. So, I mean, but you got that out there. Said, she also said that she couldn't be relied upon for details on that. because she. No, I, and, and I, I get that. Photos. I get that. But I think I presumably one of the things that Depp's team is going to try to do with what we've talked about with the photos is try to hurt that those are real and mm -hmm. that they weren't yeah. edited. So yeah. you, you've got someone actually saying, I saw bruises in person. It yeah. doesn't say it's Johnny's. It doesn't say anything along those lines, but it's, it yeah. is separate from the digital world. Yes, I, I agree. That part, that bit right there is not helpful to Johnny. But what is helpful to Johnny in connection to that is the fact that she says, we didn't talk about any physical abuse in that session. Right. It didn't come up, which is interesting because it seems like if someone were to come up to a, a therapy session with bruises on her face, it seems like that would, that would be a, a point of interest what? to be like, this is, look at what happened to me. I, that, no, that's or, how you would open. Like what the hell happened? Right? Well, yeah. If, if, if someone shows up to a therapy session and the therapist themselves does not ask, Hey, what happened? I mean, that, that, that that's curious on both ends. Yes. Um, there was a curious we, therapist. Let, I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. There, there was a lot of interesting, just kind of locution and description of events there. And I, a deposition is an unusual animal. So I don't think I saw chat. I don't think anybody should impugn her professionality or what she operates on uh, on a daily basis. But th there were some like, really, you didn't follow up on that. You didn't. You, that's your note for that particular question. Okay. 
um, that that do raise the eyebrow a little bit. But uh, mm-hmm. depositions, they're weird, man. In the chat, yeah, people are. are joking around about a nose job. Is there any, uh, not knowing this fact, is there any issue as to whether or not Amber actually had any facial work done that could have potentially explained a bruises under her eyes? I I don't <clears throat> know. Not not that I'm aware of, but she has alleged that she had a broken nose the, the day before she went on the James Corden show. So, and, back and in Johnny Depp's their their arguments is that she she made all this up everything that she's done is manufactured and that's how they're trying to get the actual malice because if they can prove that she made it up they get your they get the actual malice mm-hmm. yeah and the more they can show exaggeration as a personality quirk trait the the, the more that helps them broadly yeah well hey. I, not- what's up how's it going oh, hey there. going great welcome welcome Lori. how are all you <laughs> good really how are good. you so, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be going back to a symmetrical circle sooner than later because I got to walk the dogs and prepare for my own live stream at three o'clock. Not Johnny right. Depp coverage. Um, uh, don't worry, I'll take it back to odds after I have to go draft the document. So it's, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep up here. <laughs> Remind me, the the uh, Australian witness this morning. I missed the part where they. I mean, I I got the better part of her testimony, but who was she in terms of why she was working at a she discount was... for uh, Amber? She was Amber Heard's personal assistant for several years. Um, and the reason why she was working at a, at a discount was because she said that she she had it grandfathered into her agreement that she would be able to pick up her son from school at 3 p.m. every day and that she wouldn't have to travel with Amber also because of her son. So she had a four year old son when she started working with him or with with her, excuse me, with Amber Heard. Um, and so that was that was one of the, the most important parts to her. Um, it sounds like that she was willing to work at a discount. Yeah, but she was, she was kind of a little mess there with that as too. A personal because personal assistant. Yeah, well, she was. Yeah, she was working as a personal assistant. She said she was. She was doing half her rate. But then it didn't make sense because she was making it seem like oh, I was doing this as a, as a for a friend. It was half the rate. It was no big deal. I wasn't really relying on it. Then on the back end, she's like, "But she fired me early, and it really messed me up." Then it was like, "Well, didn't you get six weeks? Didn't she give you six weeks worth of pay? You know, as, yeah. as severance?" Then yeah. she was kind of like. I don't remember. I don't it's remember. like, but well, hold on. You were said you just said that you were in a financial strait because she fired you, but now you don't remember if she paid you the six weeks. That just doesn't make any sense. And so she came off as someone who was very anti Amber, but then I think they rehabilitated her on you know on the deposition by by kind of bringing her back in and letting her and you know letting her kind of give her peace, saying, okay, this is what happened. This is why I thought this way. So they did a real good job of rehabilitating her, but she came off as one hundred percent anti Amber, and even gave a great story about her um and jo- her her kid and Johnny Depp, where he had yeah. dressed up for her kid and all that stuff. So she you can tell she was all pro Johnny. And another thing which I did which I found surprising, this woman has testified in England. She's testified here in the United States. Like she's like wherever Johnny needs this woman to go, Amber's former is to go testify at court. She's going there. So this yeah. woman has an axe to grind. Well, and a, and a detail too that Nate didn't mention was that she she had a lot to say about her own uh, her own brushes with Amber's uh, to I guess you could say uh, verbal violence, That's you know, right. verbal abuse. Yes. She she yeah. got up into her face, four inches from her face screamed at her and spit in her face asking how dare you ask for a raise um when she says that she had all she was already working for half her normal rate so like what the heck like why am i being yelled at for asking for this when i'm doing crazy things for you you're i just put my kid into bed and now you're asking me at 10 p.m to pack your bag so that you can go on a trip like all kinds of, uh, is, of, the, of that's, stories. That's what they, and she was mad about losing that job. Just exactly how angry she was about that happening. Yeah, but she, she, was... she opened herself up to a lot of that, I feel like, because if she would have just said, yeah, it sucked when she fired me. Obviously, I need money. I got fired. As opposed yeah. to I had my mortgage payments because I'm a homeowner and mortgage payments are paramount. And they're like, well, you weren't paying your mortgage payments before that, were you? And then she had to go into all this history of balloon payments on her house. And none yeah. of that has anything to do with anything. And with a witness like this, you have to be careful not to make them sound so biased, like Nate's saying, to where yeah. she doesn't act. I mean, she obviously hated Amber, but I think yeah. she could have been a really good witness as Amber's personal assistant, who has now telling the truth about what Amber, Amber's like and how Johnny Depp is the most non-abusive person ever. And Amber is yeah. so abusive. But I mean, as it went on, there was a lot of a lot of biased stuff to work I- with her. Yeah, I, mean, I, I definitely agree. Tell when you have a friend, apparently, that kind of switches sides. I mean, that that's its own statement about the character of the yeah. person she's describing. But did she say, was she working at half her rate because she was working twice as much time for the same salary? Or 
That, that's one question. If I missed that, and that, that didn't make much sense in my opinion. I, and again, to complain about agreeing to work for a certain amount, in my opinion, never looks good. It's like nobody forced you to. You agreed but, to for whatever that, reason. I mean, that's Working just the internet. Half a rate for an abusive for an abusive woman who doesn't make abused. sense. It doesn't make sense. So I, I, I thought I missed something, yeah. but maybe it just doesn't make and sense. And they get angry when she fires you. Like, oh, yeah. it's all abusive. It's well, all abusive. I'm only working for half the money, and now I'm sad that you're not giving me half the money. Part of it, part of it, did sound like she was saying that initially what she thought she was agreeing to was a part time job, and that it basically ballooned into this like this. Basically, it was her her whole life was was Amber Heard. Um, and so she wasn't getting paid for the amount of time that she ended up working, you know, whereas it would have been maybe a little bit closer to what she thought she would be working. Um, so that, that was the impression that I got, but I do, I do agree. I mean, it, there's also the, the, the question that could be asked, like, did you look for a new job? Yeah, at if you could really get 120 doing the same yeah. thing, why don't you go do that for 120? If you weren't having the flexibility you thought you were going to have for 60, it was hard. That whole thing to me. She didn't do a Although, great job making a big deal, I think. I, I, can, I can say that from another perspective, though, this is also something that is very common for a lot of women is sometimes we're a little bit too agreeable when we're getting into agreements. And then and then later on, you realize this is a bad deal and I don't know how to get out of it. And all you're left with is resentment. Not saying that that is an excuse, but sometimes there's that tendency for. And she's I, thinking I'm about her house and her kid. Women. And she I, said I she's thinking about house and kids. So that makes sense, she, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I, and I don't think. I don't think that's just women. I think I think you can sure. agree to things that you don't realize the impact of and you get down the line and say, oh, all right, this is taking too much yeah. uh, or this is not a good person or whatever. And still, Nate, I still think when that's ripped away from you, even if you hated it, you're grousing about it every day. Uh, yeah. When it's ripped away from you, you can still have a panic attack and freak out about not having income, even after six weeks, potentially. Yeah, I thought she was a good witness, though. Did you guys think overall she was a good witness? I, I thought I, she was good for Johnny Depp. I think I think that yeah. in the end, in the end, in, in as a whole, she was a good witness, especially with Amber Heard wearing what she's wearing. She looks so severe, so cold, so warrior like that. I mean, the jury. Seeing that deposition testimony and her saying she came in my face, she spit in my face, she screamed at me, how dare you ask for a raise? And then you look over at Amber and she's sitting there in the corner wearing all black, her hair all all up and and just looking very severe. It's like, mm, that kind of Checks fits. out. Checks yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, my, my my caster for the role. The, the witness looks very partial or biased to Johnny Depp. And then she says things which are then utterly contradicted by an expert doctor in the subsequent testimony. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate I'm biased because I know what I already think and maybe I'm interpreting it to come to that conclusion. <laughs> but when she says All he of was us an angel, that. he never did anything, <laughs> never raised his voice. And then you have allegedly Johnny Depp making these admissions to the doctor. Well, either that assistant who's working all the time but magically missed all of this, or she might be totally vendetta against Amber and totally charmed by Johnny Could Depp be. to the point where she's lacking credibility. Could be. But even e even the fact that you're asking that question, I'm assuming somebody on the jury is asking that same question. And I think Amber wins a tie. Johnny Depp has to win this mm -hmm. case. I think Amber wins a tie. And I think that's where we're at right now. I think he's mm -hmm. doing well and he's going toward that. But I, it's just right she now. She wins I, a tie, I, but I, she, I he might see. also be trying to get her off of Aquaman too and, and have what happened to him happen to her. I mean, this is this is an yeah, ugly divorce true. proceeding point. at the end of the day. <laughs> All right, Thanks. Alita, gentlemen, everybody. Yes. I'm going to duck out, but I'm going to continue listening as I walk the dog. Uh, awesome. Good stuff, people. Yeah, See you, Viva. thanks for checking See you in. Soon. Later. So, yeah. So I think, I think, yeah, today, today's, today's a mixed bag. And I think, I think that the, the therapist, the therapist testimony is, is limited, of course, because she's, she's going off of what has been told to her by other people. And mm -hmm. I think that it'll be, it will be most interesting when Johnny and Amber take the stand and they are questioned about her testimony and they're, you know, they, they, they get, they get cross-examined by the opposing counsel saying you watched her video testimony in court and she said this. So what about this? <laughs> um, you know, and to see their reactions, to see their explanations, you know, if, 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 you know, Johnny gets asked in court, 
you know, you said she gave as good as she got. What did you mean by that? Did you mean physical violence? Did you mean verbal violence? What did you mean by that? Mm -hmm. And that could make a difference as well. If he says, yeah, she gave as good as she got because she was, she was, you know, verbally abusive. And that was, that, that was what I was talking about is that we were talking about, you know, the, these, these verbal fights that we would get into that were just insane. Um, you know, well, cynically, but, I expect that. Cynically, yeah. I expect his attorneys to have prepped him for that. And yeah. I do give some additional weight to the contemporaneous recordings, right? I mean, like we're in a different situation now than we were presumably in December, November of 2015. Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, I I fully expect that Johnny will say, well, here's what I meant. It was innocuous. And, and Amber will say the same. That's That's what you can expect. And that the jury the, will evaluate yes. their words and their demeanor as Finders they do fact. that. <laughs> to figure out whether or not are they really telling the truth or are they just making things up to make it to well make that's it what i mean by like, i don't see any way that this ends other than they decide which one they like more and i don't mean like personality wise purely but like mm -hmm. which one they think is lying a, a lot of these instances are somebody's wrong right so somebody yeah. is wrong and somebody is is probably maliciously wrong somebody is probably deliberately wrong on what they are yeah. saying here and like, th that's what it's all going to come down to, at least in the, in the thought process, the emotions uh, of the jury, then whether yeah. or not they are legal robots, they look at specifically what their jury instructions say or not is kind of hard to guess. That's going to be demeanor yeah. and who's there, who's the head of the jury and, and that kind of thing. Because yeah. I, I, I agree with you completely that there is a whole, there's a whole version of this where the jury just decides whatever, we don't like her, we don't like him, whichever. Um, yeah. But yeah, reading reading just as a lawyer, reading just the lines, defamation seems. Yeah, hard. this this is a really different case when you read it that way versus how I think the jury is actually going to think about it sure. and how they think about it. it's it's the client's case. Their life is on the line here. Their life is on trial. And I also think that calling somebody a biased witness like that first witness today, if your biased witnesses are not saying you're a great guy and she's abusive, then you're not going to get it out. So I realize that there's going to be witnesses that are tainted as biased on both sides because they're coming to the aid of the famous person in their life, really. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think that, like Viva said, she's just going to get crossed off as a biased witness. I really don't think that. I think she brought plenty of facts to the table for them to hold on to. Yeah, she's going to get contradicted, not just by the doctor, but by, I assume, recordings of Johnny losing his mind and acting like, you know, abusive or saying things that are abusive. Amber's going to testify that he's abusive. I'm sure there's going to be other people that, just like she said, Amber was abusive. They're going to say Johnny's abusive. But you have to have both sides of that coin. And like Nate said, a tie goes to Amber, legally speaking. But I do think that Amber's entire team has the elephant in the room to climb over, which is people like Johnny Depp. You know, I really yeah. think people like Johnny Depp. Yeah. You know, and another thing that I was thinking about, too, is that, you know, the, 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 the he hit, the if he hit at all, no matter what he's done concept, I think also gets lost because even though this is not a, not an assault case this is not a battery case this is not a uh, a criminal case involving um you know allegations of battery or assault people still have that concept of self defense um when they go into these kinds of cases you know like it's 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 a concept that that people understand even outside of a courtroom right like like somebody hit first somebody hit back with reciprocal or even less force is a concept that people will understand and they also have have a certain sense of, of justice and fairness for as well that could also play a role even though technically that's not what this case is about uh, right. you know it's it, it technically shouldn't be something that that comes into play in in a domestic violence you know case that this kind of sort of is kind of sort of not but kind of sort of is you know like people still have those concepts that that may come into play too even if they say okay he hit her but but what was she doing? What was she doing that she asked for? Yeah, I, I, I hate it's saying that. It's the leader's victim but... blaming corner. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I like, know, I, I know. I could like, hear. I could, I could see you going she, through not wanting to say these things. I it. totally get it in she, terms of jury she analysis. Yanks it out of him, you know, for twenty I, years, thirty years, he was Alita, fine, you know. I totally <laughs> agree. I, I, I feel, I feel like we switched genders for this one. <laughs> I, 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 disagree, I, disagree, I disagree with this. It, and the reason why is because this case comes down to one question. Was she a victim of domestic assault or domestic abuse, right? That, that's really what this comes down to. Did that's she believe she was. was? Did she believe this, yes. that she was? Yeah. Yes. And, and, or yeah. was it reasonable for her to believe she was? 
I don't even think that there's a reasonable person standard on opinion on protected (laughs) opinion speech. Well, Well, because it's opinion, we actual malice is a pretty high bar. Yeah, Um, but but I think here though, you're right. I think here if they're trying to prove that it's what she said was reasonable, and she was sometimes, and I think in in that vein, when Alita makes the point that the self defense point, if their genders were reversed, I think you can make that point, but. The fact that a matter, uh, remember the famous. Well, that's a uh, shame. NFL, I mean, I think you're right. NFL, Nate, it, it, is a, it is a shame, but I'm just, I'm just keeping it 100. Remember the NFL right. quarterback, I mean, NFL running back in Atlantic City. Um, he was a running back. He smacked his wife, smacked him in the elevator, and he punched her, and he lost his job. He got arrested. All that, right? Sure. She hit him first. He could have said, "Hey, this was, you know, I was, um, <laughs> I was trying to defend myself, right? This was, this was self defense." But that didn't fly because he was the male and it was seen to be to, to, to go down that. Part of the, the, part of that mode, matter there. I was just going to say, I think that yeah. that's also an element there that it sounds like the way that you're describing it is is a smack versus a punch and a punch by an NFL quarterback. Here you then have. Then he kicked yeah, her and yeah. dragged her on the floor. It was brutal. It was yeah. Brutal. yeah. No, that's that's so true. He, he, yeah. Here, here, yeah, that's 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 real. That's really bad. Here you have you have Amber saying you are old and fat. You know, like, like I'm this, I'm this tough person. You're old and fat and a loser. How, how much physicality just, does it seem like she thinks he has? And I'm, it's, oh, I think it's, it's great. a little bit less than an L- I, I, NFL player. To, to, today in, in our society today, from what, from what we've seen, man hits woman, unexcusable, no problem. Woman hits man, we can have a conversation about it. And I think that's the reality of the situation here. Mm-hmm. Look, for instance, Cardi B. Cardi B has submitted to robbing, drugging, and robbing men and being in a hotel with them, right? And I rob and drug them. She's not canceled. But if her boyfriend smacks her and submits, I, I smacked her, he's gone, right? Because the rules, you know, we can pretend the rules are the same, but they are mm-hmm. very different. And, and I believe in this situation, Johnny hitting and him claiming self-defense I don't think that's a win for him. I think that's I think that's still a loss because I think in our society today, if my wife hits me and I hit her back, even if it's a minor hit, I don't think I don't I don't think you can really spin it in the self defense and domestic violence way. As as if 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 it was a woman. Well, even if you could, even if you could, remember we are we are in fact talking about a defamation case at the end of the day, which is you know what does she believe if she actually says you know I, I I got smacked in whatever order. Um, I, I have no doubt that Amber Heard can get in her head that she is what she says she was in the op-ed in the Washington Post, right? I mean, there has to be basically nothing that they that she can rely upon in order to win the defamation case. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, we, we've all said Johnny has an uphill battle, but I, and I and I and I think he's doing well to get to where he's gotten to. Mm-hmm. But it's just you know, if if what this doctor was saying makes it seem like they had a they had a physical issue between the two. She used and, the term mutual abuse, which I assume that yes, Amber Heard yes. team is going to key in on for yes. sections of this case. Absolutely, they will use that in closing, I think. Well, I, I got a doctor, his doctor saying it's, it's mutual abuse. She's saying, yeah, I was a, bu- a victim of abuse. That, it's, that's, a, that's a huge thing to get over. It seems like in the text messages and in their exchanges, she never... She's never saying it's really one sided. She seems to agree that they both hit each other. They both abuse each other. They both do this to each other. Um, she just left that out of the Washington Post, but that doesn't yeah. make it defamation. Because she still thinks she's a victim <laughs> of abuse, even if she's involved in it, even if she's also an abuser. You can still be a victim, even though you're an abuser. I mean, that doesn't preclude you from also being a victim. It might in the jury's mind. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, just, I'm saying yeah. legally speaking, it doesn't legally. Preclude you. Yeah. Just because you've been convicted yeah. of being an abuser doesn't mean you can't also be the victim of abuse. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like she was. She was a victim of abuse from her father, which yes. is something that, that came out today, right? Mm-hmm. So and like he was too. Right. Well, you have that directly on the facts, right? You got everybody saying that there was violence in both houses at, at home, and then Johnny either abused her or didn't. So to me, that's why the cell just continues. Like everybody grew up in abuse. They all have mental issues. They're all abusers. Amber was trying to deal with, you know, coming out as an abuse victim in this op-ed piece from her past, from Johnny Depp, from other relationships. That's her mindset. That's why she did it. And it's not defamation. That, that's their, that's got to be their track, her yeah, lawyers, but, I think. But I, I would also go as far as to say, today gave, if I'm Amber's team, that also gave me kind of the second avenue of attack. Because since we now know she was abused before, um, both by her father and some other ways, that also gives me this thing where, 
when I said I'm a victim of abuse or domestic abuse, yeah, with Johnny, but also with other people, right? Because that that article was there were, there were some some of those some of those statements were so neutral where she could have been talking about some other abuse that she had. There was parts, yeah, everything but two Johnny, years ago, like the two years, yeah, that everything two but years the two years ago. Years that ago was, sentence. Yes, but all those other ones about yeah, I'm now you know I've I've seen abuse, I've seen how men are protected from abuse. Is she talking about a father? She's talking about the other boyfriend? Yeah, but Johnny? is her dad really a powerful guy in the industry that's going to silence her from talking about abuse in the public? I don't think her dad has that power. I think there's one guy that she was with two years ago that has that power. And I think, John, I think they Johnny can connect Depp. that to Johnny Depp pretty easily. Yeah. I just, I think it's I the opinion that part of it that's harder. I don't even think they fought that ground in the opening statement. Didn't seem like it. Yeah, well, I they mean, did I say, they fight it. They said the context of the article was not entirely about him. It was not a malice. Yeah. It was not a hit piece. Right. They meant that they meant it wasn't an attack piece. Correct. Like they, they never yielded on, of course, it's Johnny Depp. It's exactly it's the purpose of this is not, hey, Johnny Depp sucks. It's this other stuff. And that John, you know, that this affected Johnny is ancillary, effectively. Yeah. It was more about how yeah. great Amber is and she's going to be a voice for the victims now. You know, I mean, I think <laughs> that follows along with how Johnny Depp's team is trying to make her look all about her, make her look good in the press. Maybe she was just doing this so that she could become an advocate for victims. Well, and the and other part of this, the other the other part of this from a PR standpoint, right, is that, yeah, it, it seems to me like if Amber Heard's team goes fully down the mutual abuse angle and everything we were just talking about, that's probably a win on letter of the law, jury notwithstanding. Uh, but it's probably a loss for Amber Heard movie star after yeah. trial ends. So they're probably going to be taking a, a light star? touch. Is she a movie star for real? I, I Amber the, the Amber Star movie star pro, the Amber Heard movie star project you know the the the, 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 the version where the that Warner Brothers announces oh, yeah. Mira the one you've been waiting for you know yeah. everything else but so, her, so solo, they are also her solo have movie that she's fighting for in in the DC universe that's right exactly. well look Warner Brothers has its own problems right I mean Ezra Miller just all that stuff came oh, out in the last month so they have <laughs> yeah they but have he's still on fire right beats, you know. He's Johnny Depp was the least of their problems with Fantastic Beasts. So, uh, but, yeah. but Ezra, Ezra Miller is still not fired, though, right? Ezra He's Miller still... at present is not fired. I believe the statement from Warner Brothers is uh, we are carefully considering our options. The problem they have is that Ezra Miller is their headline for their next DC comic book movie already in the can. So they have to be like, I, somebody somewhere has thrown up their hands, right? Three Grindelwalds, Ezra Miller. It's like, <laughs> The other yeah, thing too is that they cut. have they have been pulled into depositions for this case too, and they oh. <laughs> they tried to say they were like, "Don't talk about us, don't talk about Aquaman," which of course it came out in, in opening statements. People talked about Aquaman because they're like, "We don't want this case to tank our 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 viewership." You know, yeah, when we it, really when prefer you stop out. saying Warner Brothers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So they may also be looking at at Ezra Miller's case and looking at, okay, well, he has allegations against him. We don't want another Johnny Depp coming back and pulling us into court, you know, yes. a few years from now. So if he comes back and says, no, 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 these were all false allegations. You acted too quickly, you know, in firing me. Now I'm going to sue them and maybe sue you, maybe not, but I'm going to pull you in and drag you through all of this bad publicity as well. I got to believe be like, they're oh, just like actors. We have to live through all of this yeah. again. <laughs> I, I got to believe looking at this, I mean, they also got the Joss Whedon stuff happening at the same time. Warner Brothers yeah. is having a grand old time. <laughs> a few, a few struggles yeah. here and there. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't want to be mentioned. They don't want to, they don't want, they don't want their name in anybody's mouth at this, at this trial, I think is really, is really the message. The quote they, Will Smith. Yeah. Will Smith. yeah. <laughs> quote the, the, the poet laureate Will Smith. Um, yeah. So, it's it's it continues to be a very interesting case because it's not a domestic violence case as much as it's going to seem that way 95 percent of the time mm -hmm. uh from the looks of things yeah. so I, I continue to think the one thing we're all going to agree on at the end of this is that this was a horrible horrible relationship and there was a lot of bad stuff done um and yeah I, certainly at the end of the day you'll be able to see i think that you know at least the the overall image of amber heard as presented in that washington post article is you know, is too innocent by half at bare minimum. Uh, yeah. But that's normal. Like, that's how you present yourself. Uh, so I don't know that that rises to a legal issue. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, uh, Eric Conley's in the chat. Hey, Eric. He said, hey, Eric. Uh, Ezra, mm -hmm. Ezra is a they and protected by Wokesters. I didn't realize that Ezra is, is. I guess that means non-binary. I was going to say, did I use a he pronoun? I had, My apologies, I had, Ezra. I, yeah, I had no idea. I 
would have referred to Ezra as as they if I, I just which is always hard to keep in mind if you if you have a you know you have a certain thing in your brain as to how to call someone and then my commenters always let me know if I'm not fully up to speed on what, yeah. whatever I should have properly done. Also, the another person, pronouns. another person oh. in in this particular lawsuit, one of the one of the witnesses, one of Amber's friends, is Io yeah. Tillett Wright. This person has been mentioned before. Okay, Io says that. Okay, so I, the pronouns that I have heard referred to Io is he. Okay. Io says that that he is gender fluid i think but people okay. at times have re referred to io as she and at times at, as he but i think at this point in time it is he okay yeah, so to me it doesn't matter as long as, long as you tell me what well, i'll call yeah, you absolutely you exactly. stay consistent. i mean you can see the problem and, even if you're just considering like the the psychologist's like notes right she says at the top i sometimes confuse the pronouns in my notes i'm like i wonder if that's going to come up again because when you're a marriage counselor and, and, and you've got like amber heard and johnny depp and that's they really, not, do need that's to make, they really need to make sure that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Like he, I meant she there when I said he, I meant she. She I meant, I meant Amber, not Johnny. It's like, that's pretty important. It is very, yeah. very important. No, I heard that and I was like, I wonder if that's going to come up again. I don't think it did. I, I, I don't think they needed the clarity there, but it's like, don't, why did you add that witness? Uh, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. yeah. So um, let me uh, let me get some some super chats here because I sure I, and then I'm gonna go at about two here. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's see here. This is from from early this morning. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Oh, oh, unfortunate. JD says uncivil law is the eor of law too. <laughs> I don't Somewhere. know. He's got a lot of great stuff. He's got a lot of great stuff. Renee B says this is like real life War of the Roses. Crazy. It does feel that way, doesn't it? I, I made that reference. Yeah. Colin Doyle says, when you make it to 200K subs, you should run the Moab 200. Oh, speaking I of which, yeah, I saw you went over 50 already today, Alita. So yeah. one, I think we should, oh, we should definitely celebrate. That's you awesome. Know. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, been so, a, it's been a good a good week for me, I think, numbers-wise. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff that we're that we're, we're pushing out there. And and huge shout out to my, my editor, who's been a huge help. I don't I would not be able to put out as much content this week as I as I have. Um, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Well, as I say, you know, before, especially before I get off your channel and you don't have to deal with, you know, the grifting, we got 5,000 <laughs> people watching. I see 2,000 likes. Like, subscribe. Alita's doing this for us for like a month and a half. I couldn't do this on my channel. But if you do want to drop by, I can cover Elon Musk. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. And and also be sure to go check out all of the guys that are showing up on this channel. Also, everybody is linked in the description below. So check out their channels, subscribe, watch their stuff, like their videos. Elon Musk just put in a hostile tender bid for Twitter. Come on over to Virtual Legality. It's already a video. Yes. Not during a yes. latest stream, though. Stay here. <laughs> yeah. After after we're done, go mm -hmm. and check it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I I don't I don't I obviously don't have the bandwidth to to even really look at that. I I saw a hint of it on on Twitter. I something you can about just drop over to Virtual Legality. Half exactly. hour, you go in so hostile right takeover law, fiduciary duty, Delaware blocking, poison pills. We got it all exactly exactly be sure to go go and, and check all that stuff out like the videos share them subscribe all but don't leave this video YouTube you stuff. won't leave this video there's a lot more <laughs> celebrity a lot more excitement over here but elon might show up over here we don't know we, we have no idea he might he might he might he might, he might have been knows. in that video that we had cleared by the mechanical foundational process somebody was coming in a service hallway that we didn't recognize <laughs> yeah somebody in a suit who was tall which to that, me seems like there was a hallway like check from Amber and a tall man in a suit came in the service entrance. We didn't get any, we didn't get to know who that was yesterday because it was like the world's worst Super testimony. Uh, yes, but uh, yeah, it it, uh, stay, stay tuned. There might be an Elon sighting over here as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dan, the man says morning. Everyone saw the win for Johnny yesterday on your channel. I hope this destructive conflict can end today. Peace and love. Yeah. I, it it definitely. I hope that after this case, it all ends. Munchichi says, "Thank you for the coverage. I don't understand legal talk. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're able to translate at least some of that, right?" Phila Booty says, "When did Rick Moranis become a judge? No, no, it's Church Lady. This is Church Lady. That's who this is." Um, P Dub says, "I don't care if the judge is nice. I just care if she's fair." But added bonus for her being kind of funny. I agree, and I think so far she's been relatively fair. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, I don't care if she's yeah, nice as much yeah. as I think a judge can get full of themselves mm. and cause problems and be the 
be the ref in the NFL game that wants to make the long speeches about what's happening. And I don't, I definitely don't think she's doing that. And yeah. I think she's doing it. She's running a good court trial so far. Yeah. I think she's no, been I'm... fine. I think she's yeah. missed some, she's missed yeah. some, which I think has added to them doing some of these terrible objections because she's giving them some of the terrible objections that they're making. But yeah. overall, I mean, she's dealing with a lot. So I think she's doing well. Yeah, no, I definitely, definitely agree. Um, Ashley Sisper Cox says people regularly confuse whether or not I am wearing makeup. I am an ESTI I, and do pro makeup. I have great skin tone and texture. I don't always think it is so easy to tell if it's done well. Well, that's a good point. That's I, a fair point. I mean, and that's, that, that is at issue in this case. My wife has worn makeup that I haven't noticed. So, I mean, I, I that's going to be a question that pops up. Are you used to analyzing that? Because it's clear the herd team is going to lean hard on she was in makeup. Yes. Yep. And, and that she's, she was good at it. You know, she would do it in such a way that you wouldn't notice personally looking at the close-ups of her throughout this trial. I can tell that she's wearing makeup. I can tell she's wearing bronzer and contouring on her nose. It's but can I close it? up. Yeah. Yeah. See, well, I mean like you've got people that are putting in this testimony and it's, I, I can only tell you about myself. It's like, I, I have been fooled an, mm -hmm. enough times to say I wouldn't exactly. feel confident testifying. And, and the thing is, too, is that, that the jury is probably also looking for stuff like that, but she's so far away that they may not be able to tell that kind of detail either. So who knows? I mean, that's but that's a very good point. Paulina says, um, actually, Amber is dressed like Leia in The Last Jedi. Is she trying to look strong, look strong, you know, a warrior? I thought this was a safe place from Last Jedi references. OK, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> yep um i think she's uh she's she's looking like you know what it's she knew that i was going to be drinking from a star wars mug it's it's this is a little bit it's a little bit damaged <laughs> now that's but nice this, now that's but this is she she knew she was like oh legal bites is going to come in with the with the star wars merch i've got to get my leia hair on and get my my vader style you know dress um, See, at the risk of losing your chat, I have not had any problem with the way she's been dressed or how she looks or anything with respect to this trial so far. But like, I it, clearly it's a topic of conversation. So I yeah, think she looks it's, fine. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, and that's the thing is that there are multiple interpretations of all of these things, right? You know, you sure? someone, Mike, Mike earlier was on here and he was like, she's dressed terribly. I would not <laughs> tell her to do that. I would, I would, you know, absolutely. I would tell her to go back and get changed and come back. You she know? does look a little uh, Hollywood. I mean, that's the only thing I would comment on is she looks a little fashion oriented and I don't know that you want that, but I, I it does nothing, none, none of that. I'm sure does not like my guy no. could have used a tailor on that suit. It's like, come on, buddy. Well, I, and I think Johnny Depp, when he's drawing or note taking or whatever with the one pen in his mouth and like seemingly not paying any attention at all, I, I don't think that's a great look at, at least for long periods of time for bringing it. This is something that's so important to you. You're, you're dragging me out of my life for six weeks here in Virginia uh, to talk about Hollywood fights in a Los Angeles building Mm -hmm. at least stay engaged because I'm essentially under orders at, at penalty of contempt to stay engaged myself. So, yeah. you know, yeah. hang with me. I, I'm, I'm curious how, how often he's doing that too. Cause you know, the, the camera's only on him for so long sure. and it mm -hmm. may, it may then get drawn to him when he starts doing that. So maybe we, we, we see like, you know, we see so, so much of the time that we see him, is when we see him doing that. So it seems like he's doing that all the time, but maybe the jury sees something a little bit different because they get to see him the full time. I don't know. That's also yeah. a possibility. Yeah, and Amber yeah. Heard, to me looks engaged the whole time. She could be talking notes with her lawyers about what the Wordle day, uh, Wordle word of the day is. You don't know, but she looks like she's whispering and passing messages and staying engaged with with something. <laughs> yeah, that's that is true. All right, I've got a two o'clock, guys. I appreciate all it. Right. This was fun again. I'll try to jump back in later. Yeah, thanks for joining see us. You. Yeah. yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a two o'clock too. I got to run. But oh, Alita, man. Alita, I have yes. bad news. <laughs> you got to go too. I That's have a fine. two o'clock. No, <laughs> everybody's oh, got a two o'clock. That's fine. I have a bunch of super chats that I need to get caught up on. Okay. Anyhow, so well, I'm so going to be I'm... back if I can. I can't make promises this afternoon. So is this the last day of trial for this week? Yes. Okay. Yes. So none so tomorrow. We'll, we'll, yeah, none tomorrow because it, it's not on on any of the Fridays. Okay. Um, because the judge has, has other hearings for other cases. So very, very fortunate for, for, um, my endurance. Uh, <laughs> um, so I can, up. I can have, yeah, I can have a little bit of a rest, especially since this, this weekend I'm, 
I'm fl- I'm flying. I'm leaving California. I'm going back overseas, and I'll be in my normal studio. So you guys will get to see Indy sleeping nice. on her back in all kinds of crazy, you know, ways again. And and the chat can comment on Indy again. Um, I know it's it's been I've been I've been animal less in all of these live streams. My parents have pets, but I'm I'm. I'm I'm in my childhood bedroom. I've got the door closed, so none of them wander in here. Um, <laughs> well, I said I didn't know uh, that tidbit. I like that it's in your original bedroom. I think that's yep, yep, that's awesome. yep. It's all uh, right. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to take time. off. I do have that. If I can come back while court's still on, I will. Uh, otherwise, thanks for having me. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure I'll have more Elon Musk videos soon. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, guys, go check him out. Go check out his his stuff if you haven't already, for sure. Talk to you later. Yeah. All see ya. right. Oh, and then there were two. And then there were two, plus like 4,600 people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our closest friends here, our closest friends. I it's, know. It's so weird because I, this is one of those, those stupid cases which I love to death. And I, it's because I, 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 my heart wants Johnny to win because I, I honestly, I, I feel like she's made all this stuff up and she's really hurt his career. But it's just, you know, it's just the, the legal part of it is the back and forth. But this is the, you know, the, what is it called? The Coliseum of today, right? Mm-hmm. This is the Coliseum where we decide who's right, not who dies. Well, we actually decide who dies too sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. But it's, it's, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. This is like a, like a modern day Coliseum because we, we don't have, <laughs> people fighting to the death anymore thank goodness <laughs> especially not for our entertainment for blood sport but it does sometimes this kind of does feel like blood sport because and this is some of the commentary that has been around this trial like on court tv and other places that i don't like is that people have been discounting this as oh this is just you know a bunch of hollywood celebrities that these are these are rich people problems all it's about money essentially which yes okay to a, to a certain extent that is true yes of course these are hollywood celebrities Yes, of course, these are uh, there's there's a lot of money that's that's being thrown around here, both in the fees and in the damages that are being requested. But uh, I fundamentally, as a civil litigator, I will defend this to the end of the day, uh, to the Mm -hmm. ends of the earth, I should say that just because a case is about money doesn't make it not important. You know, people spend their lives, people spend their lives, you know, working to build an income to build resources, right? It's like money to a certain extent oftentimes represents somebody's life because you have spent so much of your time in exchange for that money. And I think that just because a case is about money doesn't make it not important, doesn't make it any less about somebody's life and about somebody's, um, you know, I guess just the, 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 the overall impact on their entire life. So I, I think that some of, some of the commentary that has been around that on, on some of these channels, I fundamentally disagree with, um, and quite vehement, quite vehemently. So, because, um, I think that it's just a very shallow way of looking at this kind of litigation and looking at the people that are involved in this case. Hey, I'm, I wanted to ask, a, and I should have waited, asked the other two guys when they were here too. There's a procedural question that I wanted to, that I wanted, to, I'm confused about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so generally, um, this this is in state court. So this is in Virginia state court. They're both from California. So I was thinking, I'm like, well, why, why wouldn't they make this a diversity suit? Because you know, you, you're you're from California, you're suing in Virginia, throw it in federal court, makes it better. But since they're from the same state, mm-hmm. both Amber and Johnny are from the same state. Yes. She can't move it for a diversity suit because there's not diversity between the parties. Exactly. So there has to be a, complete is... diversity on both sides of the ledger. No, yeah, so... no party on one side can be from the same state as the other. So essentially, this is this was this is like a fantastic form shopping technique. We're from the same state, but I sue you <laughs> in Virginia and we're both from California. And then you can't mm-hmm. remove it to federal court and you can't and. The, the interesting part about not being able to remove the federal court, because you can also change venues then too. Yeah. Based on federal court, you can take it back to California. So this was, this is like the procedural aspect of this litigation. I think is just as fascinating as the case. The fact that the, to find the, the jurisdiction to actually have it, to find this kind of interesting interpretation of defamation law, and then to be able to do it in a way where you not or you're not able to remove it to federal court in a diversity action is it's all fascinating to see. Like like this was planned out in an expert way. Yes, it absolutely was. And and to to clarify, when we're talking about diversity, we are talking about diversity jurisdiction, 
So meaning that people are from different places and it can be different states. And it can also be that someone is, is from outside of the country that can be from Ireland or wherever else, you know? Um, so that, that is the kind of thing that will, that will help you land in, in federal court, but only if, if all of the plaintiffs are from different states than all of the defendants, you know, all the plaintiffs can be from California and all of them can be from Virginia and that would be fine. But if you have, you know, two plaintiffs from from California and one defendant from Virginia, but one from California, that destroys diversity jurisdiction. So it has to be complete, complete diversity. Um, and the reason why this is filed in Virginia is because, well, there's the procedural, like strategic reasons why Johnny Depp's side wanted to, which is the, the anti-slap laws are a little bit different here. Um, the the anti-slap laws in California are very strong, very procedural, and they had a stronger chance of surviving all of that that stuff uh, in Virginia. Now, when I'm talking about anti-slap, so let's start with slap. Slap is S-L-A-P-P. It stands for Strategic Litigation Against Public Participation. And so basically, the idea is that somebody files a lawsuit to prevent somebody from doing something that they legally are allowed to do usually some kind of a constitutionally protected behavior either either for either with their free speech or with demonstrating or all kinds of stuff like that usually you'll see it with um either speaking out or with filing a lawsuit because when you are filing a lawsuit you are actually petitioning your government you're asking the government to to get hand down some kind of a decision either make somebody give you money or make them do something or make them stop doing something that's essentially what that is it's a form of petitioning the government so an anti-slap um, anti motion or, or anti-slap laws are, 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 are geared towards preventing someone from filing a lawsuit to prevent them from doing something that they are otherwise constitutionally protected in doing. So how that applies in this case, when Johnny Depp filed this lawsuit, he filed against Amber for defamation. She was speaking, right? So there's this idea of speaking when anytime somebody is, is speaking, especially in the, in a, in a very public forum, um, law students should, should be issue spotting speech means free speech. First amendment issues could come up. Um, so when somebody files a defamation lawsuit, there is always a possibility that free speech, the first amendment could come into play. Um, and so therefore anti-slap can come into play as well. If somebody's filing a defamation lawsuit, it means that they're preventing someone from speaking, from saying certain things. Um, now defamation is not protected by the first amendment. You don't have a right to defame someone, but you do have a right to speak out in, uh, with, with your opinion on various things. Um, now, uh, so, so, you know, as Johnny Depp files this lawsuit for defamation, um, there is the possibility that Amber could come back and say, you are, this is an improper lawsuit. This is not actually defamation. What you're really trying to do here is, is infringe my first amendment rights. You are trying to keep me from speaking out to the public in a way that is, that is important and protected by the constitution. That's essentially what that argument is. And you can see that in the opening statements by Amber Heard's legal team. So, but the thing about that is that every single state that has anti-slap laws has different flavors of it. And some in some states, it'll be stronger. And in some states, it'll be weaker. Now, in California, that is one of the strongest states where they have anti-slap laws, basically meaning that you you have to, if you're going to file a, a lawsuit against somebody for defamation, you you have to make sure that that you that it's that it's a proper lawsuit because if they can prove ahead of time that that they have a high likelihood of of winning the case, they can file an anti-slap motion. I'll just I'll put it that way without getting. Mm -hmm. It's already very technical, my, my explanation here, but they can file, <laughs> they can file a motion and not only win and dismiss your case, but then get all of their attorney's fees on top of that from you. So it's, it's a very powerful anti-slap state. Virginia has a different anti-slap law. It's weird. It's, it's pretty limited. Um, and so that's why, that's one reason why it's a very appealing state for Johnny to file. Now, technically the, the legal argument for why Johnny Depp uh, filed in Virginia as opposed to California, because right, both parties are from California. The technical reason is the lawsuit here stems from her op-ed from the Washington Post. And where's the Washington Post headquartered? Ding, 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 ding. Virginia. 
specifically Northern Virginia. So that is why that is a proper place to file a lawsuit. So when you have yeah, multiple if, options, then you can kind of do this thing that's called forum shopping, which is what what Nate was referring to. Yeah, and, and, how, and, and how did I do, Nate? <laughs> no, no, you did, you did, you did fantastic. In in their complaint, they actually speak to it. Um, they speak to the fact of the jurisdiction. So they do understand because when you do have this kind of weird quandary and you're trying to pull what they, they call it a foreign a foreign litigant someone who's from a different state california new jersey into virginia you still have to satisfy the due process clause you know is it fair to hold somebody into virginia from california mm -hmm. and um so they so they actually speak to that in the lawsuit and so the reason why they allowed this lawsuit was was actually partial part of the reason was that the Washington Post is in Virginia, but the statements were actually published in Virginia. And so, so, so it's technically, yes, because they were there, but because they're printing press and they published the op-ed in Virginia, it's mm -hmm. like she actually made the statements in Virginia. The def 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 defamation happened in Virginia. So what they would have done, right. they could have done one of two things. They could have, he could have filed in California state court. Um, and then they would have taken the, they would have actually used Virginia law to figure out the case in California, which is weird because it, a lot of people think that, hey, they're in California, why are they using Virginia law? But it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So they'll be, they would have been in California trying to figure this out all under Virginia law. But what Johnny yeah. did was say, well, Virginia has, has, is better for us procedurally with, with, because anti slap is a procedural thing where you don't wear procedurally, you still have to overcome that in California. So they said, well, so, so us to avoid that, let's just go to Virginia where our cause of action is right there and to sue her there, and then we don't have to worry about the anti-California anti-slap. So, yeah. So that you yeah. know, it's 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 weird how this jurisdictional thing works. But it, here, I think Johnny Depp's team played it well to get it in front of a jury because I think in California, I don't think this gets in front of a jury. I think it definitely does in Virginia, though. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think I think that the laws, the way that they're that they are written, and the way that they've played out through case law and stuff, I, it probably is. Is a case that wouldn't have made it this far in front of uh, of a of a California court system. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So, so multiple multiple reasons for why this is in Virginia, depending on on how we're looking at it, right? The underlying, yeah. you know, strategy for Johnny Depp was what's the most favorable, and then and then the technical reason or or the legal reasons why it would be allowed. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting stuff. It's really, really interesting stuff. And I hope you guys can understand that in the chat, because, uh, I, this can get very technical when we start talking about slap, anti-slap, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the, and the mechanism yeah, this is, for it, <laughs> this is all very the, the technical. Legal this is all the nerding out to the, to the legal, to the background of the legal. Yeah. Because that, I was, I was, I thought that was a fantastic point too, but before I leave your prediction. So right now, first couple of days, how does it feel? Because right now this is this is day day four of day well day three of day one. How does it feel go halfway into this day? You're about to go out for lunch. How do you feel? Yeah, I think um, in terms of so it's hard. It's hard. You know, it's impossible to know how the jury feels about. Oh, hey, Kurt, how's it going? Um, Nate, Nate just asked me. You know, how do I feel at this point after you know going into lunch? on day three of the substantive case. Um, I, I, have, uh, I have some bad news for Nate, actually, uh, minor point. His icon that's showing up in Streamlabs is not showing up on YouTube. I know, and I don't know what to do about that. I know some people have mentioned it, but it's yeah. it's it's not a it's not something that can be fixed on our end. I think because it's showing up here in Stream, and on, and on Streamlabs, my name isn't showing up, but it is showing up on YouTube. It's showing ah. up for me. Well, now now Nate's a bunch of rainbow well, bars. Well, what I see is a big black nothing for my name. So Streamlabs comes through again. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, Streamyard is yeah. We've got we've got rainbow bars for for Nate's Nate's picture now. Uh, <laughs> we're we're working with it, right? Um. But uh. Yeah. I know. It, it, I think that this is something on on Streamyards, and it's not something that because for us it it looked normal. So. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, this is the well. Now the now the audio problems we've been plagued with for months I know. I know. have now become video problems. I know because I don't what like we it. hear on our end is decidedly not what you hear on your end. So it will sound totally balanced on my end. Yeah. And then in when I listen back, I'm like, this is way out of balance. And now the video isn't even predictable. Great news. What's that alternate tool? 
that Eric Conley is using. Wave? We, uh, wave this, that. this sucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, guys, I, I got to run real quick because I'm getting that phone call right now. So I will well, see you guys on the other up. side. So whatever you did. All right. See ya. See ya. All right. Bye. Um, yeah. Now, now, now it was finally showing up. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So did you did you see any of the any of the, the, the testimony after you left? No, 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 I didn't. Yeah, I actually did. I'd run to the post office because I had I'm still I have to f finish out my bar application for Texas has to be in by the end of the month. And I forgot a forgot a document. So I had to send it away to Virginia to you know, get something. So you, else, can, so you can be one of the lawyers in this case. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, I'm already. <laughs> you're already in licensed in Virginia. I'm already what am licensed I in Virginia. You're looking. You're you're trying to get into Texas. Yeah. What you're doing need, is you're trying me, to follow Amber Heard. There. I'm licensed. I'm good. <laughs> I know where the Fairfax um, Corning Courthouse is. I've been there before. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually been to the Fairfax Courthouse proper, but I, I'm 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 sure I've I've driven around there at some point from yeah. from when I was living in D.C um but yeah today today does feel like a, a bit more of a mixed bag i think overall it's impossible to see how the jury is is looking at this case if they're looking at at it more straightforward and kind of a legally sort of sense like like many of us are uh, you know the elements of a defamation claim then then it's it's looking a little bit more damaging based on what came out today um, through that, uh, through the clinical psychologist. But if we are looking from an emotional perspective, Johnny is looking like the better person overall here. Johnny, I think, I, I think, I think that's probably where this is going to end up at the end of the day. Cause I feel like it's just so long and so much material. Yeah. I, I think that asking the jury to actually, you know, assess facts is unrealistic. I think it's just going to be an overall impression by the time you're done. And maybe some, you know, there's, there's a very common idea that, many people make decisions emotionally then justify them logically and through reason and i think yeah. that's probably more true here than it might typically be because there's just yeah. so much stuff and so much that by the end you know i think so. can you really expect the jury to hold it in their head what one witness said one time it's like eh. yeah yeah because and and especially because there are so many people that have pieces of information but there's no it seems like there's not going to be a single silver bullet witness i mean other than amber um, and johnny the one we have in the binder they were there looks for all different of these, than the one you but... had on the screen so That's i'm okay. not sure the one on the screen looked much more redacted but maybe this is redacted but you know they may they may also say you know we've got we've got people okay, so with, with pieces of information are, right? we can't really trust any single individual everybody kind of has an essence of what happened yeah so the jury may may end up putting together their own sort of impressionistic picture of what happened sure, and kind of go like from well my overall impressionist picture for whatever value it has here, which so is just... not much but my overall impressive picture is much more negative to amber heard on this and i didn't really have a dog coming into this race well there are because yeah. i don't know anything emails. there's no but, on here those have been redacted i mean well i i guess to some degree that's to be expected since i've heard from only okay. giant up side so no i don't i don't care i just want to make sure everybody's yeah, yeah. agrees that the one that i have is the one that's in evidence I think you're on the one that was on the screen did in fact redact the email addresses oh. also, okay. which is not the same as I think what you have. So we can, I think we can replace it probably. Oh, okay. with the, did, you re did you redact it? We, we didn't. Oh, um, okay. David Murphy re redacted oh, okay. it. Okay. I apologize, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. You doing all right? Uh, so yeah. We will yeah. Provide you the, little, we'll provide you the little tired, so but. Uh, is there any chance it's gonna be good to get some get some rest tonight? Maybe you can talk ahead of time and get this these redacted. Maybe sleep ahead until ahead a reasonable hour. Possibly. But, um, okay. but yeah, otherwise, otherwise things are, things are good. All right. It's just, I, I already I still have three pending redaction now. I like how they have like three oh, deputies. Look, look with a smile that. on your face, Mr. Rottenboard. I see that. Okay. Make I know. I'm just trying to, to make you happy, your honor. That's always a good goal. That's yes. always a good goal. What's rule, what's okay. rule number one of litigation, Legal Bites? All right. So now I have. Uh, make the job as easy correct. and enjoyable for the judge. And well, don't piss off the judge is the way I say it. Yeah, don't, oh, piss yeah. off, don't piss off the judge. That's rule number one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, Your Honor. Anything you want, Your Honor. That's always a good place to start. So that then just leaves me with 397 then. Correct? The one who's 548 also. Okay, 548 and 397 now. Okay, perfect. All right. Anything else this time? Oh, good. Okay. Ready for the jury.
So, okay, let's get some more super chats while we're while we're waiting. Maybe oh. the, maybe in the maybe the back table is is writing the appellate briefs. Maybe that's maybe. what they're doing in the back. They're maybe. just already writing the appellate briefs. Isn't maybe. Rhiannon Adams says, can you imagine cross-examining her? She is great talking about the personal assistant earlier. Rick Cormier says, how do, how do people feel about these Hollywood types paying their staff <laughs> jack over shit? Remember, they are the ones that go out and talk about spending other people's money all the time. That's not going to be looking very good that Amber didn't pay her very well and treated her terribly. Rusty Robot says, this woman does not take any shit. Right. Thank you, guys. Your next witness, Mr. Chief? Uh, Excuse me, right, say that again, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, fifty thousand okay, dollars a year to deal with the demands of a -E prima donna doesn't sound very good. Duders. Gina Duders. Okay, let me uh, let me let me tweet this out that we're back. This is also exactly the reason why I prefer appellate law to trial law. <laughs> I just want to get through the issues faster, you know, get out the fluff, get to what matters. Witnesses are so annoying. <laughs> I love, I love trial. I love Witnesses. trial court. Juries, fuck right. that. And good afternoon, Miss Duders. Hi. Oh, she's nervous. Would you please state your full name for the record? Yes, it's um, Georgina Diane Dutas, but I, I go by Gina. And uh, Ms. Duders, uh, where are you from? London. And can you tell us a little bit about what your occupation is? Um, I currently am a freelance creator who kind of conceptualizes and shoots um, and edits um, photographs and clips largely for social media. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, just a few years. Um, before that, I was a visual effects coordinator for movies. And can you tell us just very briefly what that means? Um, it's it's basically the managing of CG and effects in films, the delivery of, and um, yeah, just the managing of that, yeah. And how long did you do that? Oh, um, from 2002 to 2016. So far she comes across really Any nice. Any films we might recognize? Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, um, The Dark Knight, um, terrible Christmas movie that I won't mention, um, uh, <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean 4, yeah. <laughs> do you know Johnny Depp? I do. And how do you know Johnny Depp? He is a good friend of mine. When did you first meet Mr. Depp? I met him um, summer of 2005. Um, it was actually at the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory premiere. My husband, Stephen, introduced me to him um, at a dinner after the premiere. And uh, yeah, he was super sweet and warm and kind of ushered us in to join him at dinner. And I remember being very nervous like I am now. <laughs> um, and yeah. She's very endearing met. right now. Yeah. Uh, you say your husband, Stephen, introduced you to Mr. Depp. Yeah. Uh, how did how did your husband know him? I'm sorry? How did your husband, Stephen, know Mr. Depp? Oh, he started working with him on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, he started off in production, but then um, joined the Depp department um, during the shoot. What's the Depp department? Oh. <laughs> and does he still work for Mr. Depp? Yeah. And in what capacity? Um, well, he started off as like a personal uh, assistant and it's kind of um, developed into a producer writer type role with Johnny's guidance. Uh, so for how long has he worked for Mr. Depp then? 18 years, I think, I think since 2004. Now over those 18 years, um, where has he been working? Um, all over the place. <laughs> It depends on where the film is is being shot. So um, Bahamas, Hawaii, London, LA, kind of all over. And have you, where have you been during this time? Well, um, Stephen and I, our first two films were, we worked on the same film, but then he went off to do Pirates and I went off to do other films. So 
I wouldn't always be with them. Um, I know that in between my projects, I want the husband um, to be called. <laughs> you know, Johnny was always mindful that me and Stephen didn't spend too much time apart, so he would usually be, you know, kind enough to um, fly me out uh, to be with them wherever they were. Okay. About how many times would that happen in a given year, if you can estimate for us? Um, two to three. Yeah. And it'd be like, you know, sometimes I'd be with them for like a month, sometimes just a couple of weeks. A month is a couple of weeks. Uh, can you just generally describe for us very briefly um, your husband's relationship with Mr. Depp? Um, it's a great one. <laughs> it's, um, they are very close professionally and um, personally. Um, I know that Stephen um, really respects Johnny and looks up to him. And Johnny's been a, a mentor to him um, and has really encouraged Stephen's career um, develop. Um, uh, and uh, great friends too. Okay. And can you just very briefly and very generally tell us what it was like on, on those time periods when you were spending time, uh, chunks of time with Mr. Depp and, and your uh, husband? Well, if the... It's a basic well, foundational it's... fact, Your Honor. Just... I, I'll, I'll allow it, that's fine, go ahead. I got that, okay. What was the question, sorry? Just generally describe for us. Okay, what... so so if they were if they were working, it would be, you know, like on wrap. We'd kind of have dinner together, um, and then I'd kind of entertain myself while the boys went off to work. <laughs> if it was during downtime, you know, he, it would um, probably be like a family holiday, so it would include his long term partner Vanessa and their little kids. Um, which was always really lovely, um, really happy memories there. Uh, kind of smiling so kind to of himself again. Okay. Aw. Yeah. Uh, He's remembering things. How yeah. well would you say you know Mr. Depp? Very well. Okay. Over the course of your friendship with Mr. Depp, and I apologize, did you say it had been 17 years? I'm not great at maths, but 2005 to now, I think, is... 17. Close enough. Yeah. Okay. Over the course of your friendship with Mr. Depp, have you ever seen Mr. Depp take drugs? Yes. And which ones? I've seen him smoke weed and um, occasionally. That's them, right? Cocaine. That's me. Have you ever oh. seen him drink? Yes. All right. Have you ever partaken of any of these substances at the same time? Yes. I'm going to turn your mic down too. About how many times would you estimate you've seen oh, no. Actually, Mr. Depp? Use fine. cocaine. Oh gosh. Um, I mean, it's usually like a, you know, kind of a celebratory event, like after a gig or a, a party or something. Um, twenty. I don't know. Um, twenty times over the. I don't. Yeah. I, about 20 times about, yeah and yeah. that's over and that's over i mean one. yeah i haven't been kind of keeping count but, but it's not a it's not it's not a regular thing it's sporadic it's okay and that's 20 times over what period of time gosh um since i think like the last like... maybe 10 years and uh how often have you seen mr depp uh consume alcohol um, since I've met him. Okay. Um, Every day. Can you describe for us um, how Mr. Depp seems to respond to cocaine? Um, I quite honestly can't gauge much difference in his demeanor. Um, you know, this stuff kind of tends to make the average person a bit chattier and maybe stays up a bit longer than they should. Uh, you're not a doctor, but, are you? Um, nothing out of the ordinary. <laughs> In cross-examination. Okay. Same question for alcohol. How would you say, based on your interactions with him while he's drinking, how does he seem to I look uh, forward to when you're being to... asked these questions about me. Um, <laughs> it's kind of annoying, but he, he doesn't, he holds his liquor very well. Um, so, uh, gosh, I kind of... Um, more jovial or just I've, I've never seen him I've honestly never seen him like 
drunk, drunk. Never been with him in that kind of situation. Does he seem to drink to excess in your experience? No. Have you ever seen him get angry or violent while on cocaine? No, definitely not. Have you ever seen him get angry or violent while Have on cocaine? Have you ever alcohol? seen Joe no. Nearman drink to excess? <laughs> yes, <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Ms. Duders, do you know Amber Laura Heard? Yes. And when did you first meet Ms. Heard? When did, when did I? When, yes. Oh. Um, well, we met kind of very briefly on the set of The Run Diary, but, you know, it was just kind of quick greeting in the craft tent, I think. And just so everybody's on the same page, um, what is The Run Diary? The Run Diary is a movie that we shot in 2009 in Puerto Rico. Um, and, yeah, it starred Johnny and, and Amber. And I was, I was, I was there with Stephen. That was one of the times that I wasn't working, so I travelled out to be with Stephen, and I was, I was around. I did end up doing a little thing for the visual effects department, but mostly it was leisure for me. Was there anything noteworthy about your interactions with Miss Heard on that occasion? No. Okay. When did you next meet Miss Heard? We. Uh, on, I think a couple of years later in um, Rum Diary Press Tour, I went to the premiere in London. And again, it was just a kind of, um, you know, greeting. It, it wasn't, we didn't kind of hang out, chat properly or anything. And again, just so, just so everybody's on the same page, what is a press tour? A press tour is when, um, when a film comes out, the actors and the director usually travel around with um, the film and show it in different cities all over the world. And um, the actors usually have to do interviews to promote it and just get the word out. Okay. And this was a press tour for Run Diary? Yeah. And what city were you in? I, I went to the London one. We'll be back in like does, two minutes. Does anything stand out to you about your interactions with Ms. Hurd on that occasion? No, she, no. Okay. Were you aware at that point that Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd had started a relationship? Yes. And how were you aware? Because um, Depp's team, oh, Johnny's team, sorry, um, Johnny's team, um, there's just always an open constant flow of information um you know because ultimately you know jerry judge would be looking after johnny so would kind of get updates as to where they were going and what he was doing and so in that way we got kind of you know notification <laughs> notified that you know they just got together okay. and you mentioned a name there jerry judge can you just Tell the jury who that is. Um, okay, I don't want to be upset, but Jerry Judge was Johnny's long-term security um, uh, guy, and he, yeah, was a dear, a dear individual. Um, we all loved him very much, and he was he was like family. He was like a dad, um, and unfortunately, he passed away. When did you next see Ms. Heard after the press tour uh, in London? Okay, so that's, that was like 2011. Um, I think it was on a trip that we accompanied Johnny and Amber on to Las Vegas for a few days. And can you estimate for us just approximately when that was? Oh, maybe that was 2012. I'm so sorry. Like, um, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm banking on the, on the date. Um, but it, 
it would have been after they'd, you know, started seeing each other, maybe a, a couple of months afterwards. Um, Did I miss anything? And we just went out there for a few days. I don't really. I don't remember okay. if it was just like a little so I was hoping. excursion for them. Just foundational um, stuff. Had when she to saw her. Do that. I don't okay. remember that. It was just. She like just continues to come off as very days. relatable. She apologized for not knowing like anything exactly. stand out to you about that trip. Like, what year that occurred? She's like, I'm so sorry. I don't remember exactly. Um, she yeah. just comes off yeah. as very sort of I sweet was kind and of nervous. Sweet, Amber, nervous. Amber, yeah. You know, because she was Johnny's new girl, and um, but I remember kind of trying to you know kind of make eye contact and um and then i was pulling an update in a, tif a different case yes um with an answer i kind of felt a bit ignored and, uh, which is fine it's you know two sentences long from a pro say so you know, not going great so i didn't i didn't really chat with her when you say staff what, what, what do well, you well i mean i'm i'm not employed by johnny but you know i'm obviously steven's wife and he's staff and um yeah i didn't really interact with her. Okay. Um, so can you kind of describe what happened when you saw her then, if anything? Um, no, no, nothing, nothing of note, just um, that she didn't really engage or um, make, you know, a, yeah, just didn't really acknowledge Oh, our presence. Did you see uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interact at all yeah. on that trip? Yeah. Okay. And can you describe that for us? They seemed pretty in love. Um, they were tactile and, um, you know, they seemed happy. Okay. When did you next meet Ms. Hurd? Um, when Johnny and Stephen had gone out on location to shoot the Lone Ranger, so I think that might have been the next year. So out of date, sorry. Um, yeah. So, oh, um, so um, you know, I think through Johnny and Stephen, Amber and I were um, kind of put in touch, and we went vintage shopping together and um, uh, went to get a coffee once. Um, and and then with Johnny and Stephen kind of looked around some galleries, um, art galleries. About how long would you say the period was that you and Ms. Heard were together in this time frame? How long were we both out on location? Right, yeah. I'm not sure about her and, and I know that I know that I personally made two trips, um, which seemed to coincide with her being there. So, it, you know, it was nice. Um, and, um, you know, kind of meeting up to go vintage shopping, she was really, really lovely, really sweet. We got on very well um, and it was fun. It was, yeah, you know, she's very charming. Did you discuss her relationship with Mr. Depp at all? Um, I remember like going for a coffee um, and she seemed a bit, um, just a bit kind of frustrated that uh, I don't think Johnny was ready to go public with their relationship yet. Um, and um, I think that was, you know, frustrating for her. Did you form an impression that she wanted to go public immediately? All right, I'll sustain as to speculation. Next question. Were you out in public? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, when you were interacting with Ms. Heard in this time frame, did you notice at all whether she was wearing makeup? No, I don't think she was wearing makeup. Um, she's naturally beautiful. It's, Legal Bites, correct um, me. Isn't it pretty you know, usual for a woman to have just thinking like, how makeup, including concealer her in her purse, her, pretty much generally? Yeah, pretty she was. I don't know about and, in their purse. I mean, how, how could you tell? That I she mean, powder, maybe? Well, I, um, yeah. I usually foundation, myself. you would 
you would just put on in the morning and then that's it. At least that's that's my experience with it. Expert. Um, you know, earlier on in my adult life, I kind of got hormonal acne, which was awful. So I got kind of professional at covering that up. Um, so I think I'm Mm. pretty good at telling if Mm. someone's wearing, you know, like foundation or concealer. Uh, have you ever heard of Arnica cream? Oh no, not this again. Um, I actually Arnica. was using it the other week. Um, this was yesterday. What is Arnica? You can, you can use the microphone. Just, I just uh, having trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. Oh, there you go. It's on. There you go. The question was, have you ever heard of it? And she answered it and then continued, Pat. So it's. All right. She's answered the question. She's answered the question. All right. If you want to ask another question. Oh, sure, you're on. Uh, what is it? It's a homeopathic uh, lotion that you use to um, help bruises heal faster. And have you ever used it yourself? Yes, I was using it a couple of weeks ago because I had a huge bruise on my hip after I had a fall. Okay. Um, yeah, so. A full what? what it is. And can you just describe for those of us who have no idea, like myself, um, what does Arnica cream look like? Um, oh, sorry, that was me. Um, it's kind of like a white emollient cream um opaque that you rub into your skin um you rub into the bruise once it's been rubbed in what does it look like transparent okay so is the bruise still visible Uh, absolutely yeah all right sustain as to leading all right all right after uh after after that uh those interactions with miss heard on the set of um Lone Ranger in, did you say 2013? I'm not sure if that's an objection, but. I'll, 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 he I'll, stood I'll up withdraw the date. The, the, the same thing. After, after saying, your interactions uh, with Ms. Hurd on the set of the Lone Ranger, uh, Ms. Duders, when did you next, uh, when do you next recall seeing Ms. Hurd? I think it was on the press tour for the Lone Ranger. Um, by that point, I believe they, their relationship was public. And um, we traveled to Japan with um, the kids, Johnny's kids, and her friend, um, Brittany, who I think was, you know, along as Amber's friend, but also to help take care of the kids while, you know, Johnny was working. And And why why were you traveling to Japan again? Um, Because the Lone Ranger, was premiering there and they were doing press. And then we also traveled like to um, Berlin, I think as well, and all around. Were you traveling with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yes. Okay. Did you witness any interactions between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd on these trips? Um, I mean, just generally on the plane, um, Nothing to note. I'm, there was um, an incident like when we were all at dinner together. Um, and when I say we all, I mean also the other actors and the producers and director. Um, and I noticed that Johnny was kind of hiding a drink on the side of his chair and taking secret sips. Um, and, and, and I just, I, I noticed, you know, she, she kind of saw that and was quite angry about it. And, um, I couldn't hear what, what was said, but he seemed to get be kind of getting it to, got a told off by, you know, the telling off, um, which was, it was kind of weird, you know, it's a bit like, um, telling off a child. What was he drinking? with champagne okay like a flute of champagne yeah something like that um did anything do you have any impressions of how how would you describe their body language when they were having this conversation um uh, um quite um you know, I think she was really angry. So, um, uh, so 
um, yeah, I, um, just okay. uh, just kind of like dominant and and um, just very angry and you know putting just telling you know him off. Okay, and how would you describe his body language? Um, I think you know quite. uh just exhausted by the whole being told off like a child over this period of time and just to clarify um were miss heard and miss step public at this point yes okay so it was yeah, it was yeah well i mean when we arrived at airports there was like photographers everywhere so uh, and they, and we, you know, it wasn't not very public. I, yeah. Okay. Over this period of time, then after they'd gone public, did you uh, ever witness them together? Um, did you have a perspective on their interactions in general? Objection relevant foundation. Do you, is your mic is on? Because I'm just pushed it. I'm sorry. There now it is. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Objection of relevance foundation leading. Well, their interactions are directly relevant, Your Honor. Uh, I can lay more foundation if the court wants. You don't lay foundation. That's fine. Uh, did you ever witness Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp together in this time period? Um, sorry, could you repeat? Sorry, I know you said it a few times, but could you just repeat it one more time? Of course. Um, over this next couple of years, yeah. uh, after, after the press tour for mm -hmm. um, Lone Ranger, did you have occasion to interact with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd at the same time? Did you see them together? Um, very rarely. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe a dinner here or there. Okay. Yeah. From those occasions when you did see them, did you form any impressions about how they were getting along based on their interactions with each other that you personally witnessed? Uh, I still don't think it's that established the foundation. It's been a few a few times that he, he saw a couple dinners and she's asking for his her perspective on their relationship. Right. On those particular occasions. What's well, the mean, relevance of her impression? That's not foundational to that. I'll rephrase her. Okay. If yeah, I went she out allows, to dinner with you and your husband a couple times, I would have How would you describe their interaction on those occasions when you witnessed them? Okay. It's the same same thing, Aaron. There's still no foundation. If she's present, I'll, I'll allow it. If um, I they seemed okay. I mean, uh, so, you know, they could be quite tense, um, but nothing, nothing to note, nothing I would. Okay. Um, remark on. Were you invited to their wedding? Yeah. Yes. And, and did you attend? Yes. Okay. Can you just generally describe for us what the wedding was like? It was definitely a predominantly amber event in the sense that a large percentage of the guests were her friends and family. Um, That's common for weddings. And one side being bigger than know, the other. A lot of his friends and family couldn't make it because it seemed to happen so quickly. Um, uh, and yeah, they seem to be having, oh, oh, her and her friends seem to be having a wonderful time. Where did the wedding take place? On um, Johnny's Island in the Bahamas. On Johnny's Island. <laughs> and did you have any interactions with Miss Heard during this time period? Or yes. I, oh. Did you did you talk to Miss Heard um, when you were at the wedding? Yeah, um, you know there were dinners and. It was certainly a you know, a celebration every day. Um, you know, uh, 
Amber and her friend Rocky gave me my first um, taste of MDMA. You know, oh. everyone was on, everyone, you know, like all her friends were oh. on it. Oh. And so I tried that for the first time with them. Um, yeah, it, it was like a party atmosphere. Okay. Um, just briefly, can you sketch out for us in a little just more detail? Casually um, mentioning MDMA. How you came to take MDMA on that uh, at the wedding? Oh, well, um, it, it was evening time. I think I was a bit hungover from the day before, and I can imagine those two saw me and when they f first dropped the pill into my hand i thought it was like a, a supplement like a vitamin supplement to make me feel better but um no they 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 quickly said it was mdma and i kind of decided to throw caution to the wind and just try it the fact that she's admitting to taking mdma on a stand like in trial it's crazy you mentioned that you. So she's coming across as very sincere, and very with honest. Mr. Devon has heard to Japan and Berlin and possibly other locations as well. Uh, can you tell us where else you traveled with him? Um, well, after the wedding, we headed to Australia. And why did you go to Australia? Because that's where Johnny would be shooting Pirates 5. Okay, so we're getting to the Australia incident. Okay, and, and approximately when do you think you were in Australia? I think that I flew with Johnny and um, Jerry Judge um, and Stephen and a few others. Um, I think that was February. Um, and, um, and, and Johnny stayed in a house um, and Stephen and I were based like a 35 minute drive away on the shoreline in the hotels. Um, and I think Amber flew in a while afterwards. Okay. Uh, you said you thought it was February. Do you recall the year? Yes, I do. 20, 2015. Um, so just so we have the cast of characters clear, who, who from this group was in Australia at this point? Um, so we've got, um, on the plane that I was on, it was Johnny, Jerry Judge, Stephen Deuters, um, Debbie Lloyd, and myself, and maybe one of, maybe one other. Um, you mentioned the name there. I don't think we've heard before. Can you just tell the jury quickly who Debbie Lloyd is? Okay. Ooh. Okay. In this sidebar, Brett Bachelor, thank you so much for the super generous super chat. The lesson for women to be believed, they they just need to speak. For men to be even heard, it costs them millions. That's kind of what we were talking about. Oh no, man. Earlier. It's depending on who you ask, man. It's like the other way around, right? Yeah, could be, could be. Um, Voodoo Child 69 says, started this trial in law and crime, found you through law talk with Mike and loving it. I hope you'll cover it every day. The sidebar of lawyers and guests makes it so worthy of best coverage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to you for watching and super chatting. Um, this is, it's great. We are having so much fun here. I plan on streaming this every single day that they the are at of trial. Lawyers is actually a good name for the group. I like that. The, the si sidebar, sidebar of lawyers. lawyers. That's cool. Although Viva kind of, kind of claimed Viva and, and Barnes kind of claimed that, that sidebar thing, right? When they, when they bring on a guest onto their show. So I don't know if, I don't know if they'll, yeah. they'll let I'll us. Fight them, I'll fight them for the trademark rights. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. And Ladies and gentlemen, of the jury, we just have to take a few housekeeping okay. matters up. So we're just going to have you take a, a recess for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Quick Are recess. No outside chance, research and don't talk to anybody. Criminal? Okay. <laughs> What's that, Kurt? I was asking, you're bouncing between the live stream coverages. <laughs> uh, I, I was over at Nick's for a little bit. I'm going to see you guys for a little while. Then I got to get some work done. So. Yeah. I thought <laughs> gotta I get work done I at some I point, right? You, I thought I saw you yeah. over there for a second. Let me see. I've got a then catch up on this other stuff here trying to pull up some more super chats oh so wow I can, they i can they stay caught that up. guy in new jersey really hmm. yeah looks like not guilty for every some insanity all right miss tutors i just had a question for you 
Have you been watching the trial this past week? Uh oh. Um, I've seen clips of it online. Yeah. You've been watching, oh, no. so you have seen parts oh. of this trial. Mm. Okay. And <gasps> witness testimonies. Oh no. Yeah. Oh. If, if oh, that is not good. All right. Does anybody have any no. follow-up questions? Uh, Ms. Ms. Dewars, um, oh, have yeah. you been watching? Okay. It doesn't matter. She's been watching clips of witness testimony. Have you been watching Legal Bites? <laughs> All right. You're excused, ma'am. You can have. You're excused. Okay. Thank you. Oof. Really? You're DQing her. I will. I will instruct the jury. They'll have to strike the testimony. Of Ms. <gasps> There's a rule on witnesses. Oh no! So Mr. Oh no! I right. First word. I I I I I. I I believe that. I have no doubt in my mind that this is the first. Wait, how did they it. know she was watching have testimony? Did Thank they you. say something? I must have missed that. Yeah, I, I totally missed. I, I, I totally I, missed I, the intro to this. Can we go back? I get and, the first time. Thank you. I mean, I, can we go back or something? Because I missed. Oh where, my where God! That Your probably next witness was... is going to be on deposition, right? Uh, okay. All right. Did you want to just take the afternoon recess now before we? Okay, well, at least I, we can use the recess time to go back and figure I'll out. I'll take the afternoon recess and I'll instruct the jury. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll take 15 yeah. minutes. Let's come back. And here I was thinking she had just like coked herself oh, crazy wow. when she wasn't remembering things. Oh Oof. shit! So we've got 20 wow. minutes. We've got a 20 minute break. Uh, that was horrible. Um, I have want, no idea you, how the judge figured that out. Two or three minutes, and we can see what the hell yeah. happened. I mean, there was there was. I mean, I I was. I was taking notes. I don't know how she could have possibly figured that out. Um, other than if she said something about like, I saw something or I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I what don't did know. We miss? Uh, but I, I mean, we were, we were all watching that here. Right. I, I don't, I've never, I have never seen that happen, but she was very strict. She said, you're excused. The jury is going to be, to be instructed yeah. to strike all of your testimony. And she was about to go into the Australia incident. She was probably going to be very mm -hmm. favorable to, to Johnny Depp and in describing the, the, the circumstances around that incident. Oh, that is, that's pretty devastating. And she looked like she was very crestfallen too, when she had to get up and leave. Um, but it's true. It's true. Witnesses are not supposed to, they're not supposed to watch any other testimony. The only exception to that is the parties themselves, because obviously they have to be there. Um, oh, wow. That is crazy. Yeah. Oof. I don't know. Is that, is that from you guys or is that from the courtroom? What? That that background noise is that where you guys are? Oh, I'm sorry. That that made, sorry, that was my office. I'm I'm at my office oh. today. So oh okay okay. I was like I was like, what's going on here? Um, Somebody's hollering. Wow. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's devastating. Maybe that's not. Maybe there are other witnesses that can testify to kind of what she was saying. But um, that's pretty crazy. I mean, I wonder if there's something on her social media that she had posted seeing something or liking something that's always possible but i have not seen that happen at least not not in one of these high high profile trials that that is a that is a yeah. that is a bad mistake to happen and i would have expected that johnny's att attorneys had told her don't don't look at anything don't don't read anything you know what i mean like I bet they did. It's just she's an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a really dumb move. It's a really dumb move, especially when you understand just how serious this all mm -hmm. is. Yes. Um yes. So, you're not so helping just, anymore. <laughs> yeah. So so just just so so everybody is is kind of filled in here. What happened was the judge, um Judge Oscarade, she she or Judge Penny, um, she she cut off the testimony and she said, she excused the jury and she said, okay, we've got a little bit of housekeeping here. So, so let's, let's take a little bit of a break. And then uh, the jury left. And then she turned to the witness and said, um, uh, Miss Duders, have you, have you looked at any of the, the witness testimony in this case so far? Have you been, have you seen anything? She said, I've seen some clips. And then she said, okay, you've seen some of actual witness testimony in this case. And she said, I've seen some clips. 
And then she turned to the the lawyers in the room and she said, are there any follow-up questions? And no one had anything. Well, they tried and... to start asking a follow-up question. She come off immediately. It's like, it doesn't matter. So I don't even know why I bothered to ask. Yeah. Yeah. And and then she just said, okay, you're excused. And she, she kind of looked at her like confused, like what just happened? And she said, there is a rule that you are not allowed to look at any testimony before you are called as a witness and before you're excused as a witness more specifically. So I'm sorry, all the, the jury will be instructed to strike all of your testimony so far and you're gone. Goodbye. That was fast. That was fast. I was so actually trying is, to, I was actually trying is, to go back and see why she did that. This is a this is a, a a judge who comes across as very kind and very, you know, I don't know, I guess like professional, not cold, not an a hole, but she is strict. When when a rule has been broken, she's she's got no qualms about throwing no, the book at you. Not. Oh yeah, no, she she duped her right away. Yeah, yeah. Joe, did you see that? No. No. Oh no. You missed it. No, no. And I missed Even though the testimonies were drawn, they heard it. That's true too. But what she was about to get into what she was about to get into was the um was the, the Australia yeah. incident. And it probably was very important. I mean, everything that she had done so far was just basically foundational. It was kind of boring to be honest. She was about to get sure. into the juice. So I have no idea how she I mean, Kurt, you've you've pulled it up, right? I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to listen back to see what happened. Someone super chat said she mentioned a name, so I'm trying to listen back to well, see what she happened. mentioned. Debbie Lloyd. That was that. That was the name that she had just mentioned. So I don't know if yeah. If you want to, if you want to pull it up and share your screen, that way I don't have to. I don't have to take mine off of off of my screen. Um, okay, yeah, because I was watching back her own testimony or watching it back on our channel. So let me see if I can find the right moment in the original. The name that she mentioned her own was. Coverage. The name that she mentioned was Debbie Lloyd. That was that was the the one thing that that happened that you know right before oh, okay. the judge turned. So I don't I don't know who Debbie Lloyd is. This is not this is not someone who has been mentioned in this trial so far. At least not not that I've I mean I've I've been trying to pay as good attention as possible, and I haven't I haven't noticed that name. Hmm. So it doesn't mean that Johnny has lost this case, but potentially there's some very good testimony that he he has he, he no longer can yes. access and and bring to the jury. So it's it's I I I you know without having seen her deposition testimony, you know, without having seen exactly what she saw, I don't know just how devastating that is, but at the same time I I can tell you that it is a loss because they have determined that that she is important enough um that they want to bring her to trial. And um, and now they also have to figure out the ordering of their witnesses because we've got two hours left in the day and they've got to either bring up a, a, a deposition video for testimony or they've got to bring in a live witness. So now they kind of have to scramble too to figure out who's coming up next. Yeah, I don't think it was yeah, Lawrence because the, at, that, at that point the, 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 the lawyers were already talking to the other lawyers, I think, to double check. So I think it was happening earlier. I was trying to find the exact moment. I don't know if I've got it exactly, but I think I got it like maybe a minute before whatever happened happened. So I okay. hope I got a pin close enough. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We'll 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 add it to the stream. Um yeah, it it was like a party atmosphere. Okay. Um just briefly, can you checking? sketch out for us in a little more detail um how you came to take MDMA on that uh, at the wedding. Oh, well, um, it, it was evening time. I think I was a bit hungover from the day before and I can imagine those just two heard something, right? she just saw me so and happened, when they happened, I think maybe 30 seconds before that. So let me go okay. back a little bit further mm -hmm. back. Okay. Cause she just passed the written note to the, to her other attorney. And so yeah. I think she heard, let me go back a little further. Good catch by Amber. Happened so quickly. Um, uh, and yeah, they seem to be having, oh, oh, her and her friends seem to be having a wonderful time. Where did the wedding take place? On um, Johnny's Island in the Bahamas. 
And did you have any interactions with Ms. Heard during this time period? Or yes. I, oh. Did you did you talk? I'm trying to figure out when she's writing what she's writing to her attorney and when not, right? So I'm trying mm -hmm. to find the right moment in time. Because mm -hmm. she's already writing something down. So I'm trying to figure out if it happened before this or now. Right. Not. Okay. I guess I go back a further minute in time just to play it even safer. It's I'll rephrase. Her. Okay. How would you describe their interactions on those occasions when you witnessed them? It's the same same thing, Erin. It's still no foundation. Because she's present. I'll allow it. If it's fine. Um. I. They seemed okay. I mean, uh, you know, they could be quite tense. Um. But nothing, nothing to note, nothing I would okay. um, remark on. Were you invited to their wedding? Yeah. Yes. And, and did you attend? Yes. Okay. Can you just generally describe for us what the wedding was like? It was definitely a predominantly amber event in the sense that a large percentage of the guests were her friends and family. Um, and, you know, a lot of his friends and family couldn't make it because it seemed to happen so quickly. Um, uh, and yeah, they seem to be having, um, oh, her and her friends seem to be having a wonderful time. Where did the wedding take place? On um, Johnny's Island in the Bahamas. Okay. And did you have any interactions with Miss Heard during this time period? Or yes, I, oh. did you did you talk to Miss Heard um, when you were at the wedding? Yeah, um, you know, there were dinners and it, it was certainly a you know, a celebration every day. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> Amber and her friend Rocky gave me my first um, taste of MDMA, you know, and everyone was on, everyone, you know, like all her friends were on it. And so I tried that for the first time with them. Um, Okay, I do yeah, see Eve Barlow it, in it the back. It was like a party so atmosphere. Yeah. Pause it. So right there behind, so there's two desks of lawyers, and then the first row behind that in the in the gallery, mm -hmm. you can see Eve Barlow. She's got like short hair with a black blazer and a white shirt. She turned to someone next to her. She's one of Amber Heard's friends, and she's been she's been very vocal in supporting her on social media. Um, she is, I think some kind of a journalist an independent journalist or something like that. But, um, she just turned to, to the people to her right and, and whispered something. So something could have happened mm -hmm. there. It could have been the similarity of, of her answers to things that other people have said, or she may have also seen her, uh, um, Miss Duder's, um, prior deposition, deposition yeah. testimony and, and decided that this sounds a little bit different than what she said before. Yeah. Um, that was like just briefly, can you sketch out for us in a little more detail um, how you came to take MDMA on that uh, at the wedding? Yeah, maybe they're looking up something now. Oh, Seems well. Like, first of all, it's, he is, he's using a cell phone, which is hilarious, in court. Yeah. yeah. It, it was evening time. I well, the think attorneys are allowed I'm, to. Yes, they are allowed to. In Fairfax County, of course, they are. Yeah. It's so hilarious was a bit hungover from the day before and i can imagine those two when Amber passed saw me out. and when they f first dropped the pill into my hand i thought it was like a, a supplement like a vitamin supplement to make me feel better but um no they they yeah. they quickly no, said it, it was like mdma and i attention. kind of decided to throw caution to the wind and just try it You mentioned that you that basically covers it. Right, traveled yeah. with.
I was trying to see I if we could find something more precise, but fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I think that's. Um, so yeah, this is this is the other feed. Uh, I I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll find out some more information or something. But yeah, that mm -hmm. sucks. That sucks. And the other part about it too is, well, one thing that I liked about this judge about what she did was she didn't give any indication that there was anything wrong. She just said like administrative stuff that we've got to we've got to we've got to do really quick. So go take a break, which yes. doesn't indicate any kind of fault on any side. But when she, when they come back and she says to the jury, okay, you know, that witness that you just, that just came up here and looked super sweet and super nervous, but you know, and maybe a little bit boring, but um, mm -hmm. was here for Johnny Depp. Well, ignore everything that she just said. She's been struck as a witness that can signal that, she, that this witness who was just up there, looking very sweet, looking very innocent and very nervous, who otherwise previously looked very endearing, now looks mm -hmm. potentially deceptive because of the fact they, they won't know why she's excused. They won't know any of that, but there, there will be this gap of information that anyone would want to fill. They'll come up with their own reasons why she's gone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and really all that matters is swiftly she has been dismissed by the court. <laughs> So, so people know. were bringing up, is her husband supposed to testify? Yeah, I think her you husband know? is supposed to testify too. I don't know. All that I mm. know. Um, oh, her because Twitter? Because I wonder if that will be a problem. Okay, wait. Let's see if, uh, maybe pull up her, her Twitter. Um, I just got a text from, from Mr. Bites about that. Oh, no. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know if he's actually seen her. Okay, never mind. He said, he said, look, look for her Twitter, look for her social media stuff that maybe she posted something that is totally possible too. Um, which if she posted anything on social media at oh, she all, posted something on social media, oh, that would do the trick. Someone also oh, someone pulled up, someone phone. posted something she posted on social media. Oh, okay. Well, that would solve a lot of problems. Oh, okay. I did, yes. I did. I did also see that what someone. What a stupid. So, uh, so someone, someone also super chatted earlier. Um, and I've, I've got things, you know. That's a see you next Tuesday and, move. <laughs> yeah but i've also I, yeah. i've got i've got super chats kind of loaded in different ways right now but um the and we're going to come back and the, the court's going to come back in a few minutes so we've we've only got so much time but um the uh one of, somebody super chatted me saying well maybe it was the bit about arnica cream which that sounds the most likely to me because there was a lot mm. of focus yesterday on Arna on arnica cream which they actually called amica cream um there may have been uh, the, she may have she may have watched Isaac's testimony there and may have seen the questions about arnica cream and may have decided oh i can i can add a little bit in here although i mean she she answers questions that she's asked about right so i don't know i don't know um but yeah i mean we could we could potentially you know check some some social media here um, uh, but I don't know if, let's see, Gina oh, by the Dears. way, I just posted, posted the link of the, uh, feed I was watching in case you wanted it in the private chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, I did see this uh, court audio from uncivil law is much louder and better. I don't know why she liked an Instagram it's post. So did she, did somebody say that? That's a chat that someone did. Oh, someone's asking if she did. Oh yeah, I don't know. The lawyer asked her about the cream. I want to know. I want to know that. I want to know the tea. How did she I screw know. this up? I want the tea. So she's only on Instagram. People are saying, okay, "Dragon's so Treasure." Ready. Where are you? I need. My I tea. know. I know. Come on, Dragon's Treasure. Okay, let's go to Damn Instagram. It. Let's find her. We've been censored also. They're not allowed to watch us, Legal Bites. Who is not? Oh, yeah, of course. I am getting a lot of stuff here. Our First Amendment rights are being infringed as we speak. No, that's not true. Well, her last post on Instagram is from six days ago. So I don't... I don't know about that. But... Um, and I... I, I I don't want to share my screen right now because I don't, I don't want to lose the, the feed. No, I appreciate um, that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I can, I can, oh, here, how about this? I will send you a link through the private oh, this chat. This is great. 
the magic, magic stream yards. <laughs> and then, and then you can, you can share your screen share if back, you want yeah. for, for a minute because, you know, until, until we come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her last post was six days ago before, before trial started. And, and it's about Johnny Depp, but it's not, you know, nothing is, is, you know, Nothing obvious that I've seen. I think yeah. I really enjoyed that witness testimony so, I just saw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, DB's, DB's RN says Bar Bartlow is in the audience on her laptop with Amber passing her notes. She could be checking the social media accounts of witnesses. Just a thought. I mean, she may be considered part of team, uh, part of her legal team right now, even though she is a journalist. Apparently. <sighs> They could. And then and then there's this question, you know, are are they allowed to pass notes in court? Use the force 1977 ask. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the legal team is allowed to pass notes back and forth. I mean, Amber can pass notes to her lawyers through to paralegals to other people. And so they may have they may have have, you know, hired Amber on as some kind of an investigator. Amber, sorry, hired Eve on as some kind of an investigator um, and taken her in, in, in that kind of a specific role so that that kind of allows her to be under the, the legal team umbrella. Um, she obviously can't straddle that line and a journalistic line if she then wants to, wants to publish stuff about it. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. This is, uh, kind of, kind of crazy. Um, here, I'll add that to the stream. This is, this is, uh, this is Gina Duter's Instagram. But yeah, there's there's nothing that that's from six days ago. That last post, the one on the upper left. Oh yeah. man, yep. But uh, earlier, Barry Dvorak said Kate James is great. Doesn't let anyone push her around. Her demeanor is as endearing as Baruch, but in a different way. I don't know. I di I didn't think that she was quite as as demeaning or as demeaning as endearing. Um, but I think it was because she was she was more irritated and resentful and he did not come across as as resentful of anyone really and it wasn't until the very end that he he indicated any kind of animus towards um towards uh towards a amber lydia bell day one of trial amber heard slipped a note back to media lady that was yeah that was uh that was eve i know um oh we are back in the courtroom well i i guess what we can really yes sir sure what we can really learn is that somebody or at least a group of people are paying attention which is good yes. yeah and someone <laughs> yes. someone saw something or someone heard her say something yeah that reminded them of something and passed a note oh, to she's somebody talking to everybody blah 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 oh all of the people mm. caucus yeah. yeah jeez Jeez, jeez, well, geez. hey, guys, I'm going to head out. I actually got to do some stuff finally today okay. at some point. Well, thank you so much so, for joining yeah. us. <laughs> Congratulations again on 50K. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we, we yeah. keep pushing on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're interested, I'll be on tonight, 930, doing a live stream, recovering stuff during the week. Absolutely. And guys, if you haven't already, go check out Potentially Criminal. Check out his videos. Like his stuff. Subscribe to his channel. Support the people that are that are coming in to help me with this commentary if you are enjoying this because that's that's really how how you can you can kind of help help us all out right is by yeah. is by subscribing to all the channels and liking our videos and stuff because the more that we grow the more our you know the bigger our audiences get and that in turn helps us to dedicate more time to doing this kind of stuff because it, it does take a lot of time that otherwise could be spent making money in other ways. So <laughs> watching videos, subscribing, liking that kind of stuff, oh, it really yeah. does help us. So yeah. anyhow, but, uh, but yeah, right. thank you. Thank you. Potentially yeah. criminal. See you Lena. See you Kurt. Mm -hmm. See ya. But there is a big, big, uh, a big discussion going on right now between the two sides. This looks like a pretty intense argument. We couldn't do this during the break. Yeah, I wish. Well, maybe it's been going on this, throughout this break and maybe it just continues. Brett Cormier says, Johnny needs to apologize to his hairbrush for whatever he did wrong, even though he may not know what it was he did to piss it off. <laughs> Adrian Fortini, I bet her stylist doesn't like her, which is why she looks like a villain. Oh no. 
Jaywat, Mike ever watch the league being from Chicago? Ah, I wish I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I should have, I should have showed him this before, um, before, uh, before he left. But, um, I have heard that the league is really funny. I haven't actually watched it myself, but I've heard it's really good. Um, Brendan Davis, is it me or does Eve Barlow look irritated with her lawyers? It could be. It could be. Florida dad, just checking in. And geez, Amber must have heard my Elizabeth Holmes joke yesterday and decided to lean into it today. Aurelia Anderson Thompson, LMFTA MDiv, says you can't use tenant security deposit. It's supposed to be in an escrow account. Eek. Yeah, she's she's referring to uh, to the, the personal assistant's um, Kate's, uh, testimony earlier today. Gentry Jade says, do you know if they are going to play the videos we have all heard? They are so convincing. I hope so. I think so. I, uh, I, I'm sure you get, you get around the hearsay issues because they're both making, making party admissions and all yeah. that, that kind of stuff. So yeah. I, I don't see how they don't come in. Honestly, MSC LRHD says, can you explain witness impeachment and what you mean by rehabilitation? So, so when you have a witness on the stand, they testify that the light was red, you know, when they, when they drove into the intersection, but they previously did a deposition because every witness generally speaking, does a deposition before, especially in a civil case, does a deposition before they go to trial. So you have a record of what they've said before. If what they said in court is different than what they said at the deposition, you can bring in what they said before and use it to impeach them. Basically it means to show that they're not being honest in front of the jury. Um, so what you can do is you can bring that prior testimony when they said, well, it was actually, the light was actually yellow or something. Um, so if they've then been impeached, then when the, the other side's lawyer has a chance to stand up again and, and talk to the witness, um, they can then bring up more either, either context, talk about different contexts or bring up another portion of that deposition that gives that kind of context to rehabilitate them basically to show, okay, so the other side tried to make it look like you were lying by impeaching you, but really this is what you meant, right? Because, you know, X, Y, Z happened and that's not exactly a fair assessment. It, they won't say it like that, but that's kind of the, the gist of what it makes it look like. Yeah, and, for, and sometimes too, let's not forget to this prior inconsistent statements too. Where Nate, you know, your audio is, the, I think you have the wrong mic or something. <laughs> yeah, just you might. Interrupt okay, before you got now? too deep. No, yeah, it sounds you like you're talking into a tunnel. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's. Too. Yeah, either either you're like in it your Sounds car. like you're talking through a webcam mic or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're welcome. Okay. Jenny's getting inky with it. Says maybe they were going for the Handmaid's Tale look. Gabby Ankrum, didn't she copy his tie and B pin from day one and wore on day two? It, people are definitely saying that that uh, that she's been copying his looks. Life Sanders, I can't watch all day, but when I can, I'm always entertained. Thanks for the daily recaps. Also, I like watching your expression when taking notes. Oh, I read this one earlier. Yes, thank you, thank you, Life Sanders. Rick Cormier, Bites. heroes overcome their shortcomings. That is why they're heroes. A hero without a shortcoming is not interesting. So true. Can I get somebody from Mike check, Mike check. Is it better? Anybody? Oh, it's the same. Same as before. Ah, oh, my mic is the worst. There Sorry. There you go. Now it's good. Now it's good. Oh, uh, uh, cool. No, I, I, yeah, I was just saying cool. about the whole... I was just saying. Also, let's not forget this prior inconsistent, prior inconsistent statements. So it's not it's it's mm -hmm. similar to impeachment, but if you're not adverse to the witness, you can you know, hey, did not you say it this way before? You know, to help them refresh their recollection with a prior inconsistent statement. So, yeah, yeah. Jenny's getting inky with it. Says she is what Grumpy Cat would look like as a human. Comes off as cold and personal and condescending. Makes it easier to picture her as the abuser. It does. DB's RN says Elaine has vibes. She loves the sound of her own voice. Could be. Could be. Catherine S. Says, the, Johnny Depp is probably having PTSD that, that, listening to this. With Sorry, that God. last that with that last super chat, how do you fix that though? How do you in other words, we've been saying she's dressed okay. wrong for the occasion, but how yeah. but how should she dress to look more vulnerable? Um, softer colors. Softer colors, black maybe, black maybe softer, maybe softer lines. Color. Yeah, she could she could wear a dusty pink or a light blue. That would help. Um, something that's more like a cardigan as opposed to a, a stiff blazer. 
things to like soften up her lines, soften up her look. And she's got a stylist who who would absolutely know how to do that. So um, no excuses, Amber, no excuses. <laughs> I mean, you're pulling it off beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm Thanks, also. Kurt. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, I'm a vulnerable I, I also... man. <laughs> vulnerable. Um, yeah, I mean, but there's there's a way there's a way to look to look feminine and and put together and professional at the same time. I'm also am not in court, so I would not be dressing like this in court. I would probably be wearing some kind of a blazer. But I've seen plenty of like like a dusty pink blazer she could totally get away with, um, even if she was wearing all black otherwise. But like having some kind of soft color on her would would really well. Do you wouldn't wear that as an attorney, wonders. but would you wear that as as the client? This no, yeah. okay. no. I all would right. wear a cardigan with it. All right, there you go. Yeah, and probably some kind of a skirt with it. Um, just because I I I mean I I tend to be a bit more um conservative generally speaking, and so I feel like wearing a skirt suit as opposed to a pantsuit is yeah, good call safer. I guess yeah. at the very least. Yeah, and, but but I also think you you know you, you, the reason why you want to also play to those microaggressions, oh. you know, women yeah. need to be protected. Oh, so yes, that. but that's exactly that's exactly right because she doesn't want to look too Which severe or strong. She doesn't want to look aggressive. Okay, and make sure they're agreeable redactions first. Agreeable redactions. Florida Dads is just jumping back in. And wow, Fr Dr. Frau Farbisina is All looking right, so great. Dad jokes these from the 90s. Okay. All week long, They're folks. Carla Colvin yeah. says, so oh. that explains Amber Hurt's cold demeanor. She's conflicted right, with wanting to hit all the witnesses, have... disrespecting her as they are We're going to have to probably start the video tonight and probably have to finish it tomorrow morning, correct? Uh, yeah, by the length of it. Okay. And are the exhibits, so you're going to be switching back and forth again? I think, I think Your Honor, it? that we're just going to run this off of ours. Um, I believe the parties have worked out the redactions. Okay. Um, I think I could be wrong. Oh, is there any objections to the exhibits? I don't think we've talked at all about what exhibits were coming in. That's for... music to my ears. I know. I know. Sure. <laughs> um, I, we didn't, I don't think we had any. We, we've just exchanged the objections for this. So. Oh well, in that in that case, I think we're handling introducing them to the extent they get introduced and we'll right. discuss any objections okay oh so we're just going to do objections as we get to them yeah. that's fine i don't have okay. a problem with that. that that works out okay so we'll start it when we're at five o'clock we'll see where we are and we'll find a good breaking point okay okay all right so we've got an hour and a are half are we ready for the jury then the jury's gonna make come sure you're back ready. In. ready okay all right you're ready all right thank you now you have to have the awkward you have to have the awkward talk with them Remember everything yes. you heard about an hour ago? Yeah. So no. forget the person that you just spent a lot of time watching. Law Nerd Clips. <laughs> oh, Law Nerd Clips in the chat? No, I was just saying it's his fault, you know, for posting all the clips that she watched. I know. Well, I've also got clips on my channel yeah, that okay. have done. Well, pretty, that's your fault too. Pretty well, thank you very much. <laughs> you are circumventing justice now. I can't. I can't, I can't control a witness from from looking this stuff up i mean it, i'm sure it's probably Thank relatively you, difficult to avoid but ladies and gentlemen the court is striking miss gina duder's testimony in its entirety from the record okay therefore the court further instructs you the jury to disregard her testimony in its entirety understand all right thank you all right your next witness but uh, whose testimony the, the uh, your honor we call dr Kipper. the last Kim, woman. witness all right dr mm. kipper the doctor no, no they, it was like the assistant she did visual effects work class and i represent amber heard uh could you please provide your full name david allen a-l-a-n oh my god the audio is horrible -E -E. i know and what is your uh, business address dr kipper one five three south last l-a-s-k-y drive beverly hills 90212, 
Um, now you're, you're a doctor. Why they leave us? his address in the yes. thing? And an internist? Yes. How long have you been practicing medicine? Since 1977. And um, I noticed on your website, it says you provide concierge health care. What does that mean? That means I provide health care on a retainer-based arrangement. What do you mean by retainer-based arrangement? Patients pay an annual fee, and all services are included. And I'm available 24-7. Dude, this guy makes so much money that way, I'm sure. <clears throat> now, you also practice, um, part of your practice is, is addiction treatment, is that correct? Correct. And you've written a book on addiction? Yes. Oh, what's the title of the book? The Addiction Solution. And by addiction, do you mean addiction to drugs and alcohol? Yes. Is there any other addictions that you uh, practice treating? Well, there are behavioral addictions, but those are far less common. Um, and in your practice, you've dealt with patients who've blacked out from drugs or alcohol? Yes. Who is Lisa Bean? A former employee in my office. And what was Ms. Bean's role in your office? She was a receptionist. And how long did Ms. Bean work for you? I don't have that specific information. I believe it was about three years. In working with Miss Bean, did you find her to be honest? Uh, no, actually. Oh. Or why was she not honest? She was inappropriate with certain patients um, beyond what I consider to be professional. She discriminated in some regards uh, to some patients. Um, she was divisive in the office and created a lot of problems with the other staff. Whoa. Well, we have some strong feelings. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, she quit. And she wasn't even fired. She quit. And who is wow. She's still be working there. Maybe In a blaze of glory, I'm sure. That I have known for many I've years. I've seen those happen. Who has worked with like, me. F everybody on, in here. Uh, I hate this job. And addiction cases. F I'm about you, this close from doing it for F my employer. You, this close. Cool. Is Miss Lloyd an, a, um, an employee <laughs> or a contractor with you? She's a contractor. Does she still contract with you, Miss Lloyd? Uh, yes, until recently. She now has a new position, so uh, I'm not able to have her services at this point. What was Miss Lloyd's role in Mr. Depp's care? She served as his RN, as his registered nurse. And was uh, Lloyd paid by you for, for Mr. Depp's care? Yes. So would it work that Ms. you would bill Mr. Depp uh, for the care that, Ms. that you gave and Ms. Lloyd gave and then paid from that? Yes. And who is Erin Borum? She's an RN that was employed to help care for Amber. Was Ms. Borum also a uh, contract nurse? Yes. And so, did she? Ha did Miss Borum have any role in Mr. Depp's care? Only if um, if Debbie was unavailable, Aaron would step in, and vice versa. And um, and and um, did Miss Borum uh, work with you on anybody else besides Mr. Depp or Miss Hurd? Yes. <clears throat> Does Miss Borum still work with you? Miss Borum now has two little kids, so she's not really available. I understand. I have two kids myself. <laughs> um, when were you first contacted about treating Mr. Depp? Somewhere in the spring of 2014. 
And do you recall how you, who first referred you to Mr. Depp? He was referred by another patient. Did you talk to Tracy Jacobs at all about Mr. Depp? Yes. What did you understand the business relationship was between Ms. Jacobs and Mr. Depp? That she was his agent. Why don't we put up, uh, Alex, can you put up uh, Kipper 3, please? Hey, Nate, can you unmute yourself real quick? I'm going to adjust your volume. There we go. Thanks. Ah, that's it. Okay. Dr. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize uh, this document? Yes, I do. And, and what is it? Uh, this is a, an intake evaluation that I had with Mr. Depp regarding his treatment. And uh, do you keep these uh, notes in the normal course of business? Yes. And the, the notes are meant to be accurate? <laughs> yes. Okay. And, and did you take the notes or did someone take them for you? I took these notes. Is May 22nd, 2014 the first time that you met Mr. Depp? No. Your Honor, I... When did you... I'm sorry. Thank you. Your Honor, I, I move to admit uh, Defendant's Exhibit 220, which is what uh, Dr. Kipper was referring to there. In, any objection to 220, Defendant's 221? 51,000 subs? I guess so. Yeah, lead is awesome. flying. Oh, amazing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Who are we talking to on the video here? Dr. David Kipper. Okay. He's, a, he, he's a concierge doctor. He specializes in addiction. And he was he assigned nurses yes, both uh, to Johnny and to Amber. Hearsay. Um, okay. Yeah. It's doctor day here. I need another 200 subs to get to 53. Right. So maybe uh, you can pop over to my I channel, subscribe to me yeah. as well. Subscribe Help to me get Kurt. to 53. Okay. Yeah. Subscribe him. Subscribe him. <laughs> subscribe to him. It's been a long day. It's been a long day of talking. Honor, um, <laughs> Dr. Kipper testified hey, just now. That these are his. Well, my kid no, so he keeps in the regular course of business of his meeting. Ah, Nate, he came, in, he came in a little garbled. What was that? Um, which is what he does as a doctor. And, you know, and it's his. Uh, medical all the sub love. Congratulations over 50k. Thank you. Nate's, uh, Thank you. Nate's coming up close to 200k himself. Yes, sir. That's hey, amazing. Mr. Mona's, amazing. Uh, uh, we're just having a. Oh, I yeah, remember when we had about equal sub count. Okay, like subscribe <laughs> everyone. Equal sub everyone count. that is coming on to help to help out with this awesome commentary. It makes it so much better when I've got friends with me because we can all Nate, we can all disagree and discuss. Oh yeah, I felt bad when we all left. <laughs> no, no, it's it's fine. Actually, it was like I had like a half a minute by myself, and then Kurt's like, "Oh, hey, <laughs> oh, great." <laughs> so, well, thank yeah. you, Kurt. No, I, I, it was like the four. There were four of us with her, and we all left at two. <laughs> no, you know what? You actually, are, this Nate is did wrong. Stick around I'm, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you for defamation because I was nah. here struggling with you, and then Kurt came in, and I was here with Kurt. And That's true. Left. You're right. I'm misremembering that. See, that's that's how memory works. You the guys. information that I had in suggested time. that Nate had a two o'clock. He was leaving to with me. I apologize. Please don't sue me. <laughs> no, no, not you. I'm suing Alita because you, know, <laughs> so you are not All right, alone. You can sue her. That's true. I, mean, I, I did say that I was alone for like 30 seconds. That, that, that apparently wasn't true. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Your Honor, we, we would stand on the hearsay and relevance objections. Um, there's a lot of material in this document that is, is not really pertain, uh, germane to the issues in this case. Uh, at minimum, and to the extent admitted, it should be admitted in redacted form. Um, in, in addition, um, it's not clear that there's any hearsay exception that, that would apply to everything in here. Not everything in here is a statement of a, of a party opponent, I don't believe. Um, and finally, the medical records um, reflected here go go well beyond any So it looks like Johnny's team is objecting uh, here. Relevance they to are. The issues in yeah, this the case. defense team it, tried to introduce this doctor's notes. They objected, uh, and they're objecting. All the statements grounds. in here are statements of Mr. Depp, so they either be a party admission or it's use of, and, and it's Dr. Yeah, doing, Dr. Kipper is, it's his evaluation of Mr. Depp to, to, to treat him for his, you'll see his addictions so i think this is all relevant 
there's no there's no hearsay and if there is it's it meets the exception he probably shouldn't have said that it's all mr depp's statements it's, it's, it's a business it's a business it, they've not even argued it but it's a business it's clearly a business record it's clear from the it's clear from the document your honor that there's more in here uh that, that the records here are at minimum broader than it is per, germane to this case i mean uh, this this goes well beyond any any medical records that could conceivably be relevant. Uh, we would respect so there's levels of here, so uh, to the issues in this case. Levels. I understand, but we got that given latitude we got as to the family report. history and medical family medical history too. So I'll allow two twenty into evidence. Okay. Okay. Understood, John. All right. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. She allowed it unredacted. Um, so mm. whatever they were objecting to, I guess can, can we publish it to the jury? He's going to the jury. Yep. Can we also can highlight specifically the parts oh. they want to um, redacted? Well, I, the way we've Oh, that's fine, Your Honor. We can okay. just have him testify, and then it's fine. Okay, that's fine. Testify. All right, thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. yeah, for the law nerds out there, there were two hearsay problems. One, the business record exception, because it was mm -hmm. in a document. Mr. And then they hearsay, to May 22nd, uh, 2014. said the party opponents, so they had to get over sure both those levels of hearsay uh, before just given. an additional right. introduction to discuss possible treatment. And where were you when you first met Mr. Depp? He met me at my home office. And were there any, did you have any notes of that meeting at the home office? No. What did you discuss with Mr. Depp at that first meeting? At that meeting, I discussed with him uh, my involvement in helping him with his substance issues. And what substance issues did he say, did he say he had? So to answer your question, uh, this Mr. Depp was seeking treatment for substance abuse and wanted to um, wanted to detoxify from his substance abuse. Did he mention? Did Mr. Depp say what substances he was trying to detox from? Yes. And as indicated in this note, uh, it was polysubstance. So there was alcohol, opiates, uh, benzodiazepines, and stimulants. So um, you referenced the note, which is um, Kipper 3. In your meeting with M Mr. Depp uh, in the months before May 22nd, 2014, Mr. Depp was looking to um, detox from alcohol, opiates, uh, benzo and cocaine? Those those substances were in his history. The substance that he was at that point concerned about uh, and abusing were opiates. And when you say he was concerned about uh, the, the substance he was abusing was opiates, was this in the conversation before May 22nd, 2014? His sister said he was addicted to a pain medication. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Okay. So you had this initial conversation with Mr. Depp, and then um, you had this initial consultation with him a few, a few months later. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you met with Mr. Depp in Boston? Yes. And Mr. Depp was filming a movie at the time? Yes. And in your notes, you, you say... Um, he had had a um, history of self-medicating behaviors involving multiple substances of abuse. These include alcohol, opiates, benzodiazepines, and stimulants, cocaine. Uh, is, that, is that accurate, what he told you? Yes, that's in my, that, that statement's in my notes, correct. Okay. Um, and, and in addition yes, to opiates, I know opiates was, he, pain was Mr. I was Depp lined up between uh, multiple days. addicted to yeah. any other prescription drugs? No, other than opiates, no. What is what is roxycodone? It's an opiate. <clears throat> uh, and what is what is Adderall? Adderall is a stimulant. Okay. And was Mr. Depp uh, addicted to Adderall? No. What is Xanax? Xanax is a benzodiazepine. This first, uh, this first paragraph on this page, um, these are notes based off of um, your discussion with Mr. Depp? Yes.
And then on the second page where it says physical examination, that's just what you conducted at the time on Mr. Yeah. Yes. And where it says impression on the third page, that was your impression of Mr. Depp at the time of May 22nd, 2014? Yes. And under that, the plan, that that's, that's documenting your plan for Mr. Depp going forward? Correct. Did Mr. Depp paid for this visit? Yes. When was the plan to start this treatment of Mr. Depp? After his, after he completed his current film. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize uh, Kipper Exhibit 4? Yes. And what are the, what, what is Kipper Exhibit 4? It's a progress note of dated June 11th, 14, 2014. And, and did you, you keep these notes in the normal course of business? Yes. And did you take these notes? Yes. And the notes are meant to be accurate, correct? Yes. What is, um, exception you like mentioned the foundation. it before, but what is poly substance abuse? Your Honor. Poly is multiple. You can pause. So, Thank you. It takes a second for it to catch up. No, so. I, I understand. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor, I move to the admission of the defendant's exhibit 246. 246. Okay. The, the lead attorney has decided he would like to check in on this. Mm -hmm. He didn't his move name the is last Ben Chu. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. I, he didn't move the last time the back row was was fighting the evidence. Mm -hmm. And it's the same type of medical record uh, that was just admitted of for 220. Any objection? I'll give you a moment to read it. Thank you, Your Honor. Just, just one moment. Sorry, I'm enjoying this from a kind of debate. Uh, understanding your, your honor's uh, <laughs> ruling on the last uh, record, I think we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll anticipate that it, the, the exhibit can come in. All right. So I will well, take that as no objection. <laughs> Was that right. no objection? Or just evidence. object, Thank and you. we assume you'll. <laughs> yeah. Multiple substance issues. Multiple substance. Do you want to preserve your objection? Who knows? <laughs> and you I don't know. Be I guess Mr. maybe. Depp for multi substance abuse, correct? I was going to be treating Mr. Depp for opiate issues. On the bottom of the first page where it says impression, that was your impression of Mr. Depp at the time? Where it says poly substance abuse? Yes. <clears throat> and were these the drugs that Mr. Depp was taking at the time, which is at the bottom of page one of Kipper 4? I'm sorry, can you, am I relating to the first uh, entry under impression? It says, uh, well, what, where is it, what does it mean where it says uh, dopaminergic imbalance with lithium 300 mg bid to be increased to 300 m mg TID? Those were medications that I had planned to use upon our uh, treatment. For all the medications that are on Kipper 4 under impression, those are medications you plan to use with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? That's correct. And on the next page where it talks about opiate dependence, uh, right, we'll maintain on current Norco dosage TID until current filming is completed in mid to late July. Um, Mr. Depp agrees to undergo detoxification with clonidin, roboxin, bentol, and anxiolytics. I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry. But is that correct? Soup. Yeah, you're doing well, the captions are that's, fun to watch. What, yeah. Nice. Yes. Yeah. What does TID mean? Or, you see, we're just three times a day. Three times a day. Okay. And Mr. Depp was also going to undergo a sobriety program. Is that correct? Yes. And it says you know to be regularly drug tested in my office. How regularly was he to be drug tested, Mr. Depp? 
It wasn't Pirates that 5. That was dependent upon his oh. progress and, and my understanding of how he was doing. And and um, if he was progressing well, how often would Mr. Depp be drug tested? You can answer. The answer is what I said. It would really depend, um, Adam, on how he was doing at the time and how he was progressing through his speech. Do you recall how many drug tests you gave Mr. Depp in 2014? No. You gave him at least one, correct? Yes, I believe so. I'd have to I'd have to check through my records. Okay. And and De and De Deborah Lloyd was going to be Mr. Depp's uh, nurse, correct? Correct. He can take down uh, Kipper Four. And can you put up uh, Kipper Five, please? And Your Honor, we would uh, move into evidence uh, Plaintiff Exhibit 40. Plaintiff's Exhibit 40. Any, is there any objection? Well, Andy GP 2039 says, I'm pretty sure the therapist meant that they were both that they both were abused after she was asked about the so mutually hear, abusive comment. I could be wrong. I understand that you're putting in, you want to move in the, what, the, the mutual abuse comment, comment referred after like the home abuse, if that was the, we have, that was uh, the we have portions. Yeah. 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 About them I read, yeah. That's what I read that as too. Lee A says, give as good as she got may mean verbally too. Also true. Jenna Mutzi says, I take it as she escalated it from yelling to throwing the first punch. Could be. DJ Smith, she gave as good as she got. Could very well mean she argued as much as he did. He did not say he hit her as much as she hit him. Could be. Karen Chudkowski, I didn't think the therapist said Amber eventually initiated. I thought she said Amber eventually admitted that she initiated. That is a big difference if that's the case. Mr. CVC, he got the whole story out equals still a win. I would agree with that. That's um, the court of public Your opinion. Honor, I would just have to look uh, to make, I'm, you know, I, I'm generally okay with it. They're just, I'd have to, with 123 pages and then there's certain redactions. I just would need to see right. what was redacted. I'm, I'm right. generally okay with. All right. So, so I'll enter it, but with the reservation for redactions that have, need to be made. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. We can do that. All right. That's fine. 40. I wonder why that couldn't have been done with 220, honestly. That's what the DEP team was arguing for 220. Yeah, yeah. IWD says, I wonder if DEP's lawyers are going to bring up her bragging in a magazine about making Maisha Tate tap in a friendly spar. Publishing it, but I would ask that they not publish it and just let the video play as he testifies to it, and then we can discuss what needs to be. Is that okay? Given the lack of agreement, uh, con confirmed agreement on the redactions, Your Honor, I think that's, that's okay. fine. We should sure. just play the video. IWD says her Thank fragile you. waif narrative makes zero sense given how she represents herself. Cami Crombie says, I think Amber will be arrogant during cross-examination. That is You got actors on the stand, folks. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We do not know. Use the Force 1977 says, doesn't Amber have a history of even? And Didn't she abuse Kipper a cop, an ex-wife or something, or two ex-wives? Um, there's, there are some allegations. We do Academy um, Award. We do Academy document. Award for best deposition yes. testimony. What is best performance on the stand. Well, Alita's going to give, give that to Isaac. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> He's still my favorite. So this this exhibit, Kipper 5, which I will refer to throughout the um, your deposition, is a multi-page document that is progress notes throughout uh, from multiple dates that you produced that came out of your files. Um, do you know who created these progress notes? I created these progress notes. It wasn't, it wasn't Miss, it wasn't Miss Lloyd. No, these are my notes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and you kept the notes in the normal course of business. Yes. And again, the notes are meant to be accurate. Yes. 
Oh, um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back up. So there's 613, 14. That is, that is your notes. Correct. Okay. Um, and it says, um, met with patient in his apartment. Patient continued to be pleasant and cooperative. He stated that he initially started taking opiates after some dental work and became dependent on them. Do you, rec you recall that conversation with Mr. Depp? Yes, those are my notes. Okay. But the patient is fearful of coming off of opiates but knows what he needs to do? Yes, that, re that reflects dental the work. I have. Okay, and then patient also expressed some emotional trauma which causes him depression and anxiety? Also true. And if we go to um, Kipper 54 of Kipper Exhibit 5, um, these are the medications that um, Mr. Depp's assistant gave to you? Correct. And uh, going down, it's accurate where it, said, where it states um, that, Ms. that patient states he currently takes oxycodone 50 mg BID and oxycodone 30 mg at bedtime? Yes, that's correct. All right. I'm going to scroll down a bit here. And we're going to go to Kipper 60 on Kipper Exhibit 5, the notes for 622.14. Um, this, is, this is, again, a note that you prepared. Is this a note that you prepared, Dr. Kipper? I'm reviewing this. Please. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Make him wait. Get wrecked. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, and um, you see uh, where it says in the middle, uh, patient spoke about his difficult childhood and current mood swings. Yes. Um, what did Mr. Depp tell you about his mood swings? That he that he had evanescent changes uh, in his mood from good to bad. And did he give any more information about what a bad mood what a bad um, mood would be? No, it was implied that that would be depression sadness what about anger uh, that was not that, I don't remember him saying that um, and, and it, this note also said that he'd been depressed for the past three days right above where we just looked yes and Alex keep this up but uh, but put out uh, Kipper Exhibit 6, please. Your Honor, we would move into evidence, uh, DEP Exhibit 42. 42. Any objection to 42? And this is another redacted document. Council. So, so mine's not redacted yet, correct? Yeah, I don't see any redaction. We have a we have a we have a redacted copy, um, which we can we can provide. Also, uh, I believe this is unobjected to on our exhibit list. All right. So pending redaction. I well, I have the, the copy we had wasn't didn't have redactions, so I'm not sure. I. I, I Non-redacted, I'm happy to have it included, but I, I would need to see the redactions. Right. Well, I'll reserve on, on redactions then as, as we did with 40, okay? So 42 in with redaction. Understood, Your Honor. Decisions, okay.
lot of this evidence seems to have come in pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't clear some of this stuff before this, but I assume they were just racing. Dr. Kipper, do you line. recognize? I think it's Kipper a time issue. Six. There's just been so yes. much fighting right up to the and gate. What is it? Is this date right? Is this really 2021 or is this wrongly dated for 2022? This is, yes. this is last year? Yes, they were doing depositions up through March. But this is last year. And you can take oh. these notes in the normal course of business. Oh, yeah, for, I suppose so. Yes. Yeah. I just didn't know if the date was right or wrong. Correct. No, I believe it's correct. Okay. And I, I, at least I don't have any indication. Mr. Depp in Boston that it's again. Correct. correct. Okay. Um, and in the second paragraph, you write, uh, we discussed the need for compliance with his medications. We also discussed his nicotine habit and agreed we would address this when we completed the opiate and benzo detoxification. Mr. Depp's filming will be completed around mid-July and we discussed the planned detoxification. Mr. Depp prefers to do this in his home in the Caribbean islands. The anticipated duration is between 10 to 14 days and he will be completely isolated without any professional or personal obligations. Uh, does this reflect the discussion you had with Mr. Depp? Yes, it does. And uh, you also discussed that Mr. Depp understands that a nurse, Debbie Lloyd, will assist me with this program and I will initiate this withdrawal and supervise daily, visiting him at the end of his treatment to design the next steps in his therapy. Um, and this protracted therapy will include a 12-step private counseling and personal psychotherapy and couples therapy with his fiance Amber. Both are in agreement to this plan. Um, does that reflect the conversation you had with Mr. Depp? Yes. So and fiance was Mr. in this conversation as well. I guess so. Yeah, because they got I married in, remember, in 2015. But the last sentence I think February implies 2015. that both were in agreement. So it's very possible that she was, but I honestly can't remember. And um, during this um, detoxification, um, who is going to be with Mr. Depp at his home in the Caribbean islands? His fiance Amber and the nurse, uh, Debbie Lloyd, and whatever staff members he had. Where, where was Miss Lloyd going to be each day in the Caribbean islands? She was going to be on his property in a separate area. And who was administering the uh, medications to Mr. Depp? Miss Lloyd was giving these medications um, and, and supervising that. And there were uh, periods of time at night during the evening, early morning, that uh, Miss Hurd uh, was also helping with this. And would there be times where Ms. Hurd was administering the medications to Mr. Depp without Ms. Lloyd being present? Correct. Under supervision, but without being present. And when you say under supervision, what do you mean by that? That Ms. Lloyd would give um, Ms. Hurd the direction on how to provide these medications. It wasn't necessarily going to be physically present there when the medications were delivered to Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And Mr. Depp admitted to you that there may be traces of cocaine since he'd been abusing the substance prior to the initiation of this program, correct? Is this note correct, what you what you write here in, in Kipper 6, that Mr. Depp admitted there may be traces of cocaine? Yes. <clears throat> um, okay. Can you, um, let's just go to back to exhibit five. And if we go to You see the note of 624.14 at 1200? Yes. Is 1200 the time? Yes. And it said, are these, are these your notes again? These are my notes. Dr. Kipper, um, these 18 pages uh, came from your production. And I'll, I'll represent to you that there were no drug tests uh, that I saw for 2014 or 2015 for Mr. Depp. 
You know why that is? The only thing I can, the, the answer is no, I can't, un, I don't understand that. Um, we had a flood in our office in 2014, October. Uh, the office above us flooded our office and the basement, which is where we kept certain records. But I'm not sure which records relating to Mr. Depp would have been involved in that. But uh, other than that, no. Would the uh, would drug tests for Mr. Depp for 2014 and 2015 would those also be kept electronically? Uh, no. Medical do documentation report, is not um, the most technologically the, the accessible, drug especially back in 2014. Have, yes, I ordered the drug tests. And what company did you work with? Uh, it appears that it's MD Lab. That's the lab we use. And the drug tests uh, that we do have, uh, they, they came from your files, correct? Correct. And um, they're meant to be accurate, correct? Correct. And you would agree that drug tests that you took of Mr. Depp in the 2016 through 2019 period showed Mr. Depp testing positive for cocaine, correct? correct. Mm -hmm. Drug test showed Mr. Depp being positive for cocaine, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And for THC, he was Mr. Depp was also positive for THC, correct? Correct. And for uh, benzo, is that correct? Um. The answer would be yes. I'm looking for benzo. Um, wow. The answer would be correct because he was maintained on benzos, benzodiazepines. Okay. How long was was Mr. Uh, Depp on uh, benzodiazepine? He was on benzodiazepines pretty much throughout our relationship during this period of time. Was it one of the objectives to get him off of, of benzodiazepine? It was, and we actually used a medication to accomplish that initially, but he didn't tolerate that medication very well. Not everyone does. So he was put back on his benzos. On page um, three of exhibit seven, what what's being shown here under where it starts with cocaine metabolites? This is listing of substances with reference ranges and I think if you scroll down you'll see his specific analysis related to that and on page four Robert Wells was a name for Mr. Depp is that correct an alien Oh, that one's not as obvious as the marriage yes, counselors. Yes. And this this is a drug test for 112116, correct? Yes. And it what what is it showing Mr. Depp positive for? What drug? Positive for cocaine, amphetamines, and benzodiazepines. And on page five, this is this is a test, drug test for November 21st, 2016, correct? Correct. Okay. And it's showing, what drugs is it showing Mr. Depp was positive for? It shows cocaine, benzodiazepine, cannabinoids, and amphetamines. I actually think this is like the most effective impeachment of the sister. Do you and happen again, to know, Alita, is this primarily Amber's witness? Taken did, of Mr. Depp did this in particular stipulated deposition come from her witness list? Right. It comes from her witness list. Okay. Now, you had mentioned before, um, and the note said that the plan was for Mr. Depp to detox on his island in the Bahamas. Is that right? Correct. Okay. If you've got to pick some place to detox, right? Okay. It's a pretty good place right. to do it. 
He's a and literal pirate of the Caribbean. Going to be going to, to and then the he's like, but why point? is the rum gone? Are you planning to? Yeah. No, no, not a, not a good Was joke. Was it going to be anybody, anybody, anybody in the chat? Entire detoxification or... <laughs> I, I gave you the no one you planning on being at the island. <laughs> I was planning to see him and did see him towards the beginning as we initiated... Although apparently it's why is the cocaine gone? ...the end when we were transitioning from that treatment into the next phase of his treatment. Now, on 8, 814, it says, arrived on island today. Plan is for patients to continue to take routine meds through tomorrow at HS. At that time, he will not take his, take his oxycodone and detox medications will be initiated. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Is that you arriving at the island or, or, or Miss Lloyd arriving at the island? That's Miss Lloyd. So that, so that 8, 814 note is her note, correct? <laughs> So some of these notes are hers and some of these notes are yours. These notes going forward are her notes, appear to be her notes. Okay. What type of, um, what type of uh, system were you putting these notes into? I don't understand your question. The notes just appear to be continuous and you said some are your, your notes and some are her notes. I'm these trying to understand how they got cut together because I put all of his treatment notes together okay. in one place. Would Miss Lloyd type these notes or were they handwritten? She would type these notes. Okay. And then and then who put them who put them all together? Uh, I did. Okay. You see eight, nine, fourteen, patient expressed fears of never feeling normal without his drugs. See that? I see that. Um, was was that? Did Mr. Depp ever express that to you? Yes, in some form, he he discussed that with me. Um, hold on one second. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Johnny's really trying to distract himself here. Looks he doesn't like he's love chewing this. Gum. I, think, I think that's the right analysis. You see. Yeah. Looks like he's drawing something uh, probably again. At Kipper, seven, Kipper 71, uh, where it says MD's flight has been canceled. Arrangements are being made for him to arrive on the island on 8, 12, 14. Yes, I see that. Okay, so is is it accurate that you arrived at in the at Mr. Depp's Island on August twelfth, twenty fourteen? Is that accurate? Yes, that's accurate. Did you go to assess Mr. Depp on August fifteenth, twenty fourteen, according to these notes? That's correct. And by the way, fiance is misheard in these notes, correct? Yes. And patient is Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And this is a Kipper 77 on uh, Kipper 5. Text from fiance, the patient is upset and irritable. MD and RN went to assess the patient. Is that accurate that you came to see Mr. Depp at 1 o'clock in the morning? Yes. And after receiving a text from Ms. Heard? Correct. And Mr. Depp, it, the note says he state, he being Mr. Depp, states he had a fight with fiance and is questioning whether or not he can emotionally and physical, physically handle detox. Do you recall this conversation? I can't remember that conversation, but I do know that he was struggling at that point. And how was he struggling? Again, he was frustrated. He was uncomfortable physically. Dr. Kipper, this is a email. Well, do you recognize this document? I do. And what is, what is Kipper 8? This is an email that I sent to his sister, Christy. Christy Dombrowski uh -oh. is Mr. Depp's sister? Correct. And you sent this email to Ms. Dombrowski 
on August 18th at 7.54 a.m., correct? Correct. This email was shortly after you had met with uh, Mr. Depp in the note we just discussed, correct? Oh, 7.54 Pacific. So um, it was sometime in the morning in the Bahamas, correct? I guess. I, I don't have that calculator in front of me. Either, it's either three or four hours ahead. So it's either 10.54, maybe it's 11.54 in the morning. So you say, Counselor. Right. I, I, I guess that's right. <laughs> yeah. that's right. Exactly so, what he said, right? And, and like, it, I guess. I don't know, you man. Wrote this e and why did you write this email to Ms. Dombrowski? We were planning to transition back to Los Angeles. We had completed the initial phase of his detoxification. And I wanted to update her as to my uh, impressions on how he was doing and how we would proceed going forward. And you wrote this to Ms. Dombrowski because you were concerned about Mr. Depp, is that correct? I wrote this so that she was aware of where we were in the process of his treatment. My goodness, if she's on communications like this, she really shouldn't have been so cagey on day one. I did not yeah. witness the incident. I wrote this after we were called to see him because there was an alleged incident, but he clearly was uncomfortable at that time when we came to see him. Did you and see what year this again, is? we were getting ready to transition I think this is the, the detox island, in 2014. I, wanted, I think we're still uh, talking about Christy that. Well, this is now August. Understanding but, yeah. of where we were at that time. Can we pause? I, have, I was going to move for And the, then at 1230. Thank you. I was going to move for the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 268. I mean, the one the one lawyer had kind of a sassy comment as he talked about 2016 through 2019. And Your Honor, uh, we're going to have a substantial hearsay uh, and drugs. speculation uh, objection to this exhibit. Uh, this is a communication um, from Dr. Kipper to a third party. It's hearsay from start to finish and not within any exception okay. to say nothing of the fact that it contains speculation. Okay. I, I think there are certain hearsay in the, yeah, first, par in the first paragraph Christy. and in the third on the second page but the the, the rest of it is, is is dr kipper's impressions um of, of mr depp it's not a court statement offered for the truth your honor it's right. hearsay i'm gonna sustain this to hearsay Whew. Okay. i kept you. the email out i guess we'll never know you and miss lloyd uh met with mr depp uh yes according to these notes yes okay and do you know, was this now in the Bahamas or was this back in Los Angeles? I, I, I need to go back to the date, not the time. Can you scroll up? Thank you. What did you say, August 14? Date 2014. 2014. And yeah, August 2014. I'm just looking at my calendar. Yes, we were now back in Los Angeles. <clears throat> And in the twelve, in the notes on twelve thirty on August twentieth, um, Mr. Depp stated he was done with the process and no longer wanted MD and RN services. You see that? Yes. You recall Mr. Depp telling you that? Yes. And you recall Mr. Depp saying that there was tension between him and Ms. Hurd? Yes. Was the plan for Ms. Hurd to take a few days for herself? Uh, yes. And Mr. Depp wanted, is it true that Mr. Depp wanted to stop taking all the medications you were providing him? Uh, yes, that's reflected in this note. Um, now you mentioned you had, um, you did text with Mr. Depp on occasion, correct? I believe so, but I, I really can't remember any specific time or message that I sent to him. Dr. Kipper, um, Mr. Depp has produced um, a number of texts in this litigation between you and him, and they're in this chart here, and we're not going to go through all of them, uh, I promise you. Um, but I just going to, I want to ask you about a few of them, um, and we'll do this kind of throughout uh, the deposition. Um, uh, Uh, 
Okay. And um, on 8-21-2014, it says, Dr. David Kipper, this 310 phone number, was that your phone number at the time? Yes. Okay. And this is a text from you that says, um, to Mr. Depp, it says, Glad you're better today. Respect you as much as I love you. You're impossible not to love, but an easier job not to respect. You're making my job a pleasure and honor. And a few sleepless nights, stop firing me. I know what I'm doing. Do you recall sending that text to Mr. Depp? Yes. Okay. How long have you been working with Mr. Depp at this point? As of August 21st, 2014. And can you define by working with him? Are you talking about specifically the detox or are you talking about our initial meeting? Well, even can if you go you with the initial for meeting, one how many months? Your Honor, um, as, I, as I mentioned in the deposition, uh, uh, Defendant's Exhibit 1063 is a long list of text messages between Dr. Kipper and, and Mr. Depp, a number of which are gonna be testified to today um, or Monday. And I would just ask that the ones that they testify to, we would provide in, in a redacted form, which would just be the, just the text that they're testifying to. And it would be for a number throughout. I, I can get up each time, but I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. Uh, Your Honor, I, I think we're gonna have to maintain a hearsay objection. It's, it's, a, it's a text by text issue, whether it falls within any exception. Um, so we're not gonna be able to agree that the entire document comes in. It's possible that some may come in um, but I, I think that's some, gonna be something that needs to be worked out between counsel right. af afterwards. So we can reserve it. He's still gonna testify too, because we've already got Right, I mean, understood, Your Honor. The testimony can right. come in, but that doesn't mean the document itself is admissible. I can reserve on 10, 1063 and we can figure out the redactions, Thank you, Your okay? Honor. So, about four months. Okay, and you write, stop firing me. In that four months, how many times did Mr. Depp tried to fire you? Uh, that was, I believe that was the first time. And again, this was in reference to him not wanting to proceed and not wanting our help. This is actually, I'm sorry, this is the second time. Because the first time was on the island just as we were getting ready to leave that he did not want to proceed. He didn't think he could do it. That changed after a conversation. He was back on board. And this came from, uh, I think, followed that incident that you we just referred to in the notes uh, where we were asked to come and visit with him and where he didn't want to proceed. And again, at the end of that visit, he was back on board. Okay. Now, on August 24th, 2014, shows a text when it shows him, that's Mr. Depp, to you, David Kipper. And Mr. Depp wrote, forgot to tell you, had a hopefully very positive and free of ego squawk with Amber last night that went very well, dot, dot, dot. And then I shot a few Negroes in a club on Sunset Boulevard. So far, so good, dot, dot, dot. You recall this text from Mr. Depp? No. I don't think that okay. that the closed captioning is um, accurate. Is, is that all. Mr. Depp's <laughs> typical that language? That can't be what that statement was, was it? I don't think Again, so. Again, I don't recall the specific email, so that may be. They wouldn't be so nonchalant about a, it. Uh, <laughs> I thought the lawyer said something like "neat crows," but. I don't, Dr. Kipper, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's Kipper kind of what I thought. Is, and I thought it was probably one of, the, one of the drugs that he was uh, prescribed. No, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at it. This closed captioning, man, it's really, it's really suffering. 
it's a trip, especially yeah, the medical the medical testimony. Mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't use the phrase "it's a trip" during this particular <laughs> witness, but it's fine. We're all tripping with Johnny Depp. Yeah, <laughs> balls. Well, I mean, when they went through those 2016 through 2019 tests. Let me ask you this: wow. Do you recall if arrows okay, arc at iCloud.com? Yeah, it does become is, um, a lot harder to email address. To, uh, Pay attention um, at hour I seven. I that by looking at this <laughs> document. It does. Exhibit We're all trying five, here, right? uh, at Kipper You've got the jury experience there. At 9, yes. 22, 14, at 125, you see it says... Um, this all is not great from for Johnny. Stating that he had been There's in an argument with Beyonce and she had a lot of detail that they're going through. It's by a video quote, deposition. Nasty freak out and would like and, uh, to give him some, um, quote, some fucking yeah, knockout, the, yum yum. RN instructed patient to take PRN, Neurodin 300 mg, PRN and Seroquel 50 mg. I don't know how much the RN jury is actually going to see that? this. Yes. Okay. I, I mean, I, I'd i be willing to bet even after the rest of this entire one, it'd be Johnny took a lot of drugs. Yeah. Basically, um, he was in a treatment says, program and at, he was struggling. At uh, three thirty, upon arriving at the home, okay. patient was sitting in kitchen with scraped and bloody knuckles on our hand, meaning his right hand. Correct. Correct. Patient stated he punched whiteboard in kitchen after fight. Um, patient stated he'd been texting his friend explaining why he didn't show up to play music, and fiance got upset. He was not giving her enough support, and the fight escalated from there. Call the MD at 145 and instructed to give a stat order of Ambien 10 MG to help patient get to sleep as he has an early work day. Um, do, do you recall Miss Lloyd telling you about um, her visiting Mr. Depp and him having uh, bloody knuckles and a scraped hand? Specifics, I, I'm reading the note you're reading, and yes, I remember there was an incident. And an incident where Mr. Depp had, had had scraped and bloody knuckles on his hand, uh, as indicated in the note. Yes. They might remember that one too. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Not, so that's that's an instance of violence, knuckles. even though it's not against her. Yeah, it is still violence during an argument. This was a communication that I received through the notes from Miss Lloyd. And do you recall if you had the? A, it does say you were called. Do you recall if you had a conversation with Miss Lloyd about? Yes, I, I recall having spoken about there had been an incident. I don't recall the specifics of that conversation. Okay. Uh, on on uh, Kipper 5, at 10, at the date of 10-14, to show you there, which is on Kipper 110 of Kipper 5. I just can't believe you can actually text a doctor somewhere and ask for knockout yum yum and get an immediate ambient prescription. The patient finished filming and was <laughs> extremely agitated leaving the set. He patient said he's a concierge the doctor the and refused to speak to director. They pay him annually. Patient was verbally aggressive to another person on the set for no apparent whole reason. other world. Third MD patient Rich people. Xanax, two milligrams yep. to reduce his agitation. Let's be concierge time. lawyers. You recall that, Dr. Kipper? <laughs> Is that just like lawyers in general, basically? <laughs> I do remember this. Street lawyers? Pay me, uh, pay me hundreds of thousands of dollars you remember a year, being told and I will be Mr. there. Kicked in a door call. of his trailer and refused. See, I don't think we have the equivalent of giving somebody a knockout yum yum. yum, yum. Specifics, but I do remember what is legal knockout yum yum? I'd have to figure uh, it out. Disagreement <laughs> between Mr. Depp and the director. I mean, if it's putting someone to and, sleep, and it's uh, having them watch stuff like this. Per MD patient is to take <laughs> Xanax two milligrams to reduce his agitation at this time. Lawyering, the ambient increase of Xanax that he was to receive. Yes. <clears throat> and you see at 10 15 at 6 45 it says patient awake and states he slept from uh 2200 i think we should all go to a bar after this. patient continues to be agitated said, about work think, and is verbalizing all, having desires to escape with drugs and we should video um, we should do a stream with us drinking it, respectively from our various bars. This note. <laughs> I re I, yes and do you recall Miss Lloyd telling you this about Mr. Hey, Depp? I, I like yeah, uh, the doctor here better than the business, uh, the uh, building manager. You, That's true. But I Although at least, at least with him, uh, there wasn't really much was audio that was even and 
is that reflected in the note of eight forty five? So I can get caught up on super chats. Mine and continue <laughs> that. To can't do that with this one. As, I'm selfishly. sorry, I'm keeping you from your copious super Wait, chat. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what's the uh, revenue splitting on this one again? I, I <laughs> oh, I know this one. One hundred percent Oh, okay. <laughs> and earned. Thank you. Thank you. The note's accurate. That MD informed a patient's state of mind and continued agitated. He is on his way to assess patient. Yes. <clears throat> Boycott Rikino and then at 1230, join us instead. The patient had fallen asleep <laughs> no. and is now wake no talking with MD. Necessary. It has been decided patient is under too much stress as it would be best for him to stay home and rest today. You see that? Yes. You recall having a conversation with Mr. Depp about his stress? Yes, I do. Do you recall anything that Mr. Depp told you? You can answer. I, I remember he was very upset. I don't remember the specifics of that conversation, but I remember he was upset. And how was Mr. Depp displaying his that That's he was very upset? Tom Hagen. Absolutely. Who is Tom Hagen? Tom Hagen is the consigliere uh, of the Corleone oh, family. God. Of, course. of course. The Godfather. Oh, the Godfather. How could I forget? He was upset about it. Was Mr. Depp yelling? Thanks, Britt. No. <laughs> was, he, was he doing anything to display his being upset other than his words? Just his words. You don't um, doubt the accuracy of this of this note, though, do you? And once again, guys, if the jury is bored, you're bored. Yeah, you're bored. The jury's bored. I was just about to say, as we were talking over just a little bit of that, it's like, okay, so we are, but also, that's what the jury's going through in their head. So when we chat, it's it's, it's like when you spiral off and start imagining an episode of Lost while this guy's talking. You know, yeah. Is what it is. Yep. Not for the opiates, yep. is that what you said? And saying? again, if you guys right. don't like us talking <laughs> over parts of the testimony, watch, yes. watch Law and Crime. If you don't like me talking over the audio, you could kiss my orange ass. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, the but. The opinions of November 17, 2014. Agreed, agreed. In 2014. These are all individualized. Mr. Death texted <laughs> no, but, you. But really, I, said, we're, we're going to say this multiple times I've been to see Amber downtown to, yeah to, yeah to interesting to say the least to wow guys with our anyway I'm still awake and don't foresee slumber and arriving that anytime talking soon to this broken instrument of a squash situated on top my shoulders I would love to speak whenever you have get a minute dear David though honestly if I were you Debbie and or Aaron I I would capital letters run for the fucking hills three exclamation points I love you doc dot 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 Cannot thank you enough for all you've done, not only for me and my poor pack of wolves and my sweet, capital letters, fucking brave Mikey, dot, dot, dot. These are the things that remind us that life should be a fucking gas. I'm waist deep in big muddy here, dot, dot, dot. Hit me when you're drunk, dot, dot, dot. It'll be far less boring. Love you long time, brother, dot, dot, dot. And of course, the beautiful and luminous Chanel, dot, dot, dot. And by now, eight foot six Sam, exclamation points. Mucho, mucho. Dot, 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 from, the, from those of us who are not as others, X, J, D. You recall this text from Mr. I mean, that's very loving. I, it no, sounds like a drunk no. text. I mean, it's probably, no, you know, really more of a that's, that, that, that's, that text. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Definitely sounds like a drunk text. Uh, Alex, can you put up? Um, or a something text. I should start, start, 13, I should start drunk texting Alita. That sounds like a lot of fun. I will laugh. I don't. I don't think I have your uh, your phone number, Richard. Uh, you need to DM it to me or something so I can direct text you. <laughs> like, not after that. <laughs> yeah, your pitch wasn't great there, Kurt. Damn it! I <laughs> meant for coordination on videos. <laughs> Twitter DMs are not enough. Do you recognize Dr. Kipper? This email uh, chain between you and Colin Cowan. I don't remember it, but I'm refreshing myself uh, with what you're showing me. Who is Colin Cowan? He's a psychologist that I had referred Amber to see. Are there, is there any, um, Dr. Kipper, are there any um, ethical rules to report uh, reports of violence if you were to be told of, not, of violence? If I were to see the violence, I would be obligated to. Uh, uh, I would be obligated to um, make some reporting. I never saw any violence. 
yeah, or, or imminent threats or things. You really don't want the doctor to stumble you over that one, but it's fine. Or deaf or misheard, correct? Because you didn't see it. Your testimony is you didn't see any violence between from Mr. I, Ms. Hurd or Ms. Hurd to Mr. Depp, correct? We never saw violence between the two of them. Okay. We'd heard reports, but never saw you never saw it as your testimony. Correct. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize Kipper 14? Casual hearsay? Which it looks like is an email between you and Alan Blaustein. Yes, I, I, I recognize this. Okay. And who is who is Alan Blaustein? Alan Blaustein is the psychiatrist that I referred uh, Mr. Depp to. And when you wrote this uh, email as of March 1st, 2015, was it your understanding that Mr. Depp was in Australia at the time? Yes. At some point you flew to Australia, is that correct, in this March 2015 timeframe? Yes. Was that the pl were you always planning to fly to Australia to visit with Mr. Depp in, in March of 2015? No, I, I hadn't planned on it. Oh. What, what made you fly to Australia? Um, he had wanted to see me. Uh, he had just wanted to check in. He wanted, he wanted, he wanted my company at that point. He being Johnny Depp. So put him yes. on a plane and fly him over to see me. That's one hell of a house call. I'm just saying. You know when you uh, yeah. arrived in Australia? Um, Was, is this doctor in Australia for the big fight? Maybe. It sounds like it. No, I don't. Either I can't maybe recall. after, maybe before. I don't know. This Lloyd had gone with Mr. Depp to Australia? Yes. She wasn't staying with Mr. Depp, correct? No, she, no, she was not. You know how far away Miss Lloyd was from Mr. Depp in terms of time to, to get her where she was staying at Mr. Depp's house? Oh, jeez. I would, I would guesstimate somewhere between twenty minutes to thirty minutes. And when you went to Australia, how far away were you from Mr. Depp in terms of time? Exactly the same. Were you and Miss Lloyd in the same hotel? Yes. Were you in the same room? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Extra we're drama. Just, we're just adding more drama. There's not enough drama in this case right now. <laughs> we cuddled. I just think it's interesting because who I is think the big spoon? <laughs> the jury's probably thinking like I do. True. I was in a hotel around the corner from where the nurses were. Just so I wasn't in the same uh, hotel okay. as the nurse. Not the same um, and in Kipper 5. At Kipper 157, you see this note for 3715 at 1130. 1130. It says MD received a text message from client that he had been arguing with wife and that he cut it had cut his finger. According to patient, his assistant and security were were on their way to pick him up. You see that? Yes. So he is um, in Australia and right note now. Is this? That would be from Miss Lloyd. Okay. And is this note accurate? Yes. It's, it's accurate. Okay. Um, now, going back to Kipper 9. Um, give me a moment. I, all I was saying before was the opening statements have prepped me like I would be willing to bet the jury is to and you, you perk up and pay attention when they say the word Australia. At, at Depp 7790, there shows a text from Mr. Depp to you on March 7th, 2015 at 5 p.m. And it says, hi, fucked man, had another one. I cannot live like this. She is as full of shit as a Christmas goose. I'm done. No more, all capital letters, three exclamation points. The constant insults, the demeaning, belittling, most heartbreaking smew that is only released from a malicious, evil, and vindictive cunt, uh, five exclamation points. But you know what? Two question marks, capital letters, far more hurtful than her venomous and degrading, endless, quote, educational ranting, dot, 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 three question marks. It's her hideously and purposefully hurtful tirades and her goddamn shocking treatment of the man she was meant to love above all dot 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 he, here's the real deal mate 
dot, 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 her obsession with herself, two question marks. It is far more important, dot, dot, dot. She is, capital letters, so fucking ambitious, three exclamation points. She's so desperate for success and fame, dot, dot, dot. That's probably why I was acquired, mate, dot, 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 two exclamation points. Ooh. Although she has Called capitalized, himself hammered me with yeah. what a sad old man has been I am, three dot, dot, three dots. Cowan has done me the most cruel of favors, dot, dot, dot. I'm so very sad, dot, dot, dot. I cut the top of my middle finger off, dot, dot, dot. What should I do? Exclamation point, two question marks. Except, of course, go to a hospital, dot, dot, dot. I'm so embarrassed for jumping into anything with her, dot, dot, dot. Capitalize, fuck the world, three exclamation points, JD. Do you recall this text from Mr. Depp? I, I don't recall the text, but I do recall him reaching out uh, after this incident. This, this th is this text... Um, a typical type of text you would receive? Uh, in retrospect and in reading this, no, I think it reflected the fact that he was injured. Right, and, and Mr. Depp told you in the text, I cut the top of my middle finger off, correct? Uh, that's what it says. Okay. <clears throat> and, then, and then you responded, call me. You see that? That's the next text. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And did Mr. Depp call you? Uh, I can't recall if he called me, but I know that I went to the residence. Okay. And did you go with Miss Lloyd? Yes. Okay. And back to Kipper 5 at 1300, it says on March 7th, 2015, patient was having a hard time leaving the house, so security suggested the MD and RN go to house to see patient. Upon arrival the house, patient was sitting in car ready to leave. MD assess patient's finger and will spend more time with patient at the location he's being moved to. So did you see Mr. Depp in the house? Yeah, I saw Mr. Depp outside the house in the car. Okay, so this note, this note is accurate, correct? Yes. Was Mr. Depp intoxicated when you saw him? I don't. Was Mr. Depp coherent? Uh, yes, quite. Oh no. I don't recall what he okay. said. Whew. Wait, no, what's going on? I remember that he was okay. very clear in speaking to me. Okay. Connectivity. What issues. did he other than his finger, what did he look like? He looked like someone who just had part of his finger taken off. Anything did did he did what did the rest of his hands and arms look like? Mm -hmm. uh, nothing unusual. What the house look like? The house was a mess. Anything else you can describe about the house? There were things on the floor. There were things that had been uh, thrown around. It looked like there were just things were out of order in that house. What what rooms did you see? What rooms did you look at in the house? I was in the kitchen. And I believe I went downstairs. Don't really remember. I saw it was more of the same. The things looked out of place. Were, were, did it look like there was a painting on the wall? Someone had written things on the wall? Cool. No, I do. It did look to me like there was blood on the wall not an actual painting. How long were you in the house for? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And what were you doing in the house? I wanted to see what happened. I was trying to figure out what happened. Did you talk to Ms. Hurd? I did. Or what did Ms. Hurd say? Again, I can't recall specifics other than they had a fight and the specifics beyond that, I don't, I don't remember. Before seeing Mr. Depp that day, when was the, when had you seen Mr. Depp previously? I, I don't remember. You know, if it was the day before? I can't remember. Do you remember if this was the first time you saw Mr. Depp since your arrival at, in Australia? Again, I can't remember. 
Dr. Kipper, I'm showing you what's been marked as uh, Kipper 15. Chat says, um, did the house use Amica cream? And my question is, do you recognize this? Email? Apparently not. If he said every room he went in was messed up. Or maybe that's just how, yes, how ineffective Amica cream is. And <laughs> it's an email, to and house. you told Miss Lisa Bean to please print for the chart. See that at the top? Yes. Okay. So that he was, it was being printed for Mr. Depp's chart. Is that correct? Correct. And uh, Raja Sahani emailed you. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah, he's not enjoying hearing this right now. And he writes, thank you for your Living time, David. Memory. Attaches a copy of my notes for you Covering to use face, as necessary. Rocky Robert and Wells. Forth. And Robert Wells is Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And this was from March 8th, 2015, correct? Yes. Is it accurate that, he, that his hand, that his heavily contaminated hand and fingers with dirt grime and... Yeah, thank you. I, I was going to move for the admission of defendants exhibit 370. So Amber's, Amber's team is going to make it look like Johnny Depp cut off the top of his own finger. Just one moment, Your Honor. Based on the, the way that his text went. Yeah, but, aided by the text. I mean, But like Johnny's, that, Johnny's team is going to say it's the same way that you say I broke my leg. It doesn't mean that you necessarily intentionally broke your own leg, right? Okay. <laughs> Startup Labs has found you through uncivil law, Kurt, and wanted you both to know you're great. Keep going and your channels will grow too. Plenty of room for and all your of Honor, you. We would, uh, trying to be funny your Honor, we would maintain too. our objections on grounds of hearsay. Well done. We'll find your other guests too. Thank you. I'm working for and and, 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 and the other very nice. There are three of us. Our, uh, is, is, this, is this like a psychological This is an email game? communication between uh, two non-parties <laughs> to this case. I think the implication was he, um, it, it's hearsay. Gonna, it's not within any exception. It's not within the medical exception. He's going to come and find you too, Hope. And it's not admissible. I think it's in the medical exception because it's from one doctor to another doctor to treat Mr. Depp's hand. Uh, sustained objection as hearsay. Thank you, Your Honor. Michelle says, "Stop talking." I don't know, man. I think I might like to keep talking. Here, just keep talking. And talk about nothing in particular, just because I can. No, objection. Kurt, talking. Kurt. <laughs> talking. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was talking. just over. I hope he likes to talk it because he got some talking. Uh, you're no, talking. The rest of that seems accurate. Yeah, that was just objection talk. Yeah, no, I fully agree. This is this is actually pretty and, riveting. Um, came in Australia at the time. You saw. Um, Miss Heard at the house uh, in this March 7th, uh, 2015 timeframe. Um, did she seem like she was on, um, was she coherent? She was coherent. Dr. Kipper, do you recall seeing Kipper 16 uh, from the Gold Coast University Hospital? Yes, I do. And when do you recall seeing this this note at the, the, the time on March 8th, 2015 or, or around then? It was around then. This, this was the emergency room doctor that saw him and then he gave him sort of temporary care mm -hmm. and then he was referred to, Mr. Depp was referred to the other doctor that we spoke of before this, uh, who was the surgeon, who was the hand surgeon, I believe. Did you talk to this to this doctor who wrote this note? Yes, I was present when Mr. Depp was being examined and treated. And at this point, you were, as of March 14th, 2015, you were telling Mr. Depp that you weren't going to be able to treat Mr. Depp anymore. Is that correct? The purpose of this note was to make sure that he was strictly compliant with everything um, because he needed to have his finger reconstructed. And I wanted to be sure that he was following our guidelines for the, the drug treatment. Mr. Depp was not following your protocol as of March 1st, 2015, correct? Um, yes, I had concerns. Mr. Depp was not following your, your protocols that you were giving him as of March 14th, 2015, correct? Correct. Dr. Kipper, do you recognize Kipper 17. Yes. So you were withdrawing your care from Mr. Depp at least as of March 15th, 2015, correct? I was withdrawing my care if he did not comply. And as of March 15th, 2015, Dr. Mr. Depp was not complying, correct? Correct. Was Mr. Depp uh, Can you pause, can you pause it again? So I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, 
move for the admission of defendants exhibit 391. 391. Catastrophe says, do you think the fake punch? And video your honor, we joke? would maintain our objections on grounds of hearsay. Um, hearsay? Relevance and uh, 403. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hearsay, not within any exception. It's a communication um, from a third party, made not a mess. It's, it's, a, it's not hearsay. It's a letter from Dr. Kipper that doesn't hey, have Spidey. any hearsay in it. And Welcome. It's, it's, well, it's hearsay because it's a letter from him out of court. It's a, I mean, it's, it's not offered for the truth of what happened. It's offered for what, you know, what was occurring with Mr. What was occurring with Mr. Depp at the time of it's March 15th. It's not offered for the truth of what happened. It's not offered for the truth of what happened. It's truth of what happened. It's offered for notice of when Mr. Truthfulness. That's what we're asserting. Not continuous care of Mr. Depp. It's not offered for the truth of the matter asserted, but for the correctness of the events depicted. And they're probably going to be wrapping up in about 10 minutes. So just so you know, the the, the judge said the they're going to try to is, find a time the here is yes, that's he going to be not compliant and the relatively okay to stop around him, five o'clock. No pun intended was he was about to have surgery and for him to have surgery on a finger, he needed to be strictly compliant with what his medications were, what his behavior was. And I did not think he was stable for surgery and I could not clear him for surgery and that was what provoked the letter right and and mr depp was had been bro breaking promises to remain sober correct correct and then did you ever uh stop your care of mr depp there was a week i believe and i'm fuzzy on the time frame, but there was a short period of time after sending that note before he connected back with me asking me to take care of him and promising me compliance. Was Mr. Depp compliant with the program going forward after March uh, 15th, 2015? He was compliant around his surgery and post-operative period. And then he became uncompliant again? I would have to refer to my notes, but I don't remember him being, I don't remember him being out of control. I remember him being, um, you know, compliant with what we needed okay. him to do. There were times Hiding when something. Mr. Depp sort of went underground. Some of that time was when he was out of the country and was hard to connect to. Um, but I do not recall him going off the reservation as far as his drug and alcohol issues. You recall him testing positive for cocaine after March of 2015? I believe that. I believe so. Oh, I can't tell you specifically yes. when. Okay. Okay. Uh, going back to Kipper 9, uh, there's a text message from Mr. Depp to you on March 19th, 2015. And he says, my, my sincere, most sincere apologies to you, Doc. I understand your decision based on my immunity to do the right thing. And I truly thank you for your concern. I must apologize for not having had the presence of mind to respect the man who has been the most kind and who has done more for me than anyone ever. There was no call for my spineless and base behavior toward you. I honestly understand the reasons for your concerns in your letter and you, and can say to you now, they are no longer an issue. Thank you for everything. I've chopped off my left finger as a reminder that I should never cut off my finger again. I love you, brother Johnny. Okay. Uh, that's you that's a tragedy. Mr. Depp? Yes. And is this the text you recall where Mr. Depp was saying that he would he actually... uh, be compliant going forward? <clears throat> yes. Did he say, I've chopped off my finger of as text? a reminder? Any other yes, that's exactly what he Depp? said. That's why and I was like, okay, that's a good plan. I chopped off my finger as a reminder to never chop off my finger again. I'm that like, doesn't sound good for him. Mm -hmm. That's not that good for his case. Uh, <laughs> well, I tie a string around my finger to remember some things, so I guess it's the same. <laughs> yeah. uh, back to Kipper 5, which are, again, the, the notes. Um, Unless... He, he, he meant it as like, well, maybe that's just a sign that I'll always remember not to do that again or something. Like the fact that that happened. Yeah, well, the way it's possible. It was phrased, it was but yeah, the way it's phrased doesn't sound good. No. Wait, what What did you say? How, how could he have meant it? 
like like maybe that after the fact he was just kind of like well maybe that's kind of like a like a sign that i should take that that will always remind me never to do this again as opposed to and i intentionally as, um, did this ahead of time got it, got it. yeah w worstly worded, worst 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 statement ever yet at 1500 as a well, lawyer would not with um, interpretation so credit where credit's due <laughs> the note at the bottom know. says uh patient is in good Just spirits and said he's not smoked marijuana in three days as a lawyer should. he feels majority yeah. of his issues with his wife have been from him using drugs and alcohol patient states he'll no longer sneak slash use and wants to enjoy clarity uh do you see that note i see that note and who is that note from You were Miss Lloyd. That's from Miss Lloyd. Okay. Did Miss Lloyd report this to you? Uh, in this note. Okay. And there's no no reason to question the accuracy of the note, correct? Correct. Now, at Dep 168, um, 12, 15, it says at on on April fifteenth, twelve fifteen, arrived the patient's home. Assistant was in the hallway, informed RN the patient was in a bad mood, and told assistant he did not need anything from him today. RN was left let in home by security and knocked on patient's bedroom door to let him know she was there. Patient screamed, "What?" Um, RN informed patient she was just letting him know she was there and would be downstairs. Um, RN a little more down. RN left property and informed MD of the events. Uh, do you recall Miss Lloyd telling you about um, these events of April 15th, 2015? Well, my memory is refreshed by looking at this note, yes. And and Mr. Depp had yelled at Miss Lloyd, is that right? I'm not sure he yelled at Miss Lloyd. I think he just yelled okay. and wanted to be heard. I can't say I wasn't there. There's a text from Mr. Depp to you on April 15th, 2015. And he says, my dear brother, David, if there's a God, then I'm positive it's you. Thank you, darling man. I'm fine. I didn't know it was Debbie until I'd already thrown my voice toward the door. Thought it was Stephen, who is no small cauldron of hot water. Two exclamation points. I'll call Debbie to apologize. Dot, dot, dot. My boundless love and infinite thanks. Do you recall that he texted you and called Miss Lloyd to apologize? No, I don't recall that specifically. I'm reminded by this note, but I don't recall that specifically. Now, Mr. Depp sent you a text on June 28, 2015. that says, thank you, my darling Kipper. All those technical abbreviations left me fluxed and in the dark three exclamation points soon soon i must see you and just hang out three exclamation points my deformed finger and i have no friends three exclamation points by the way dot 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 amber and i have been absolutely perfect for three fucking months solid four exclamation points i've locked my monster child away in a cage deep within and it has fucking work four exclamation points we're goddamn best friends now three exclamation points amazing three exclamation points big love to you my brother dot 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 jd you see that yes so his reference to monster and, and there in the what kitchen. do you recall you were what is refreshed of your memory that the, there was obviously there was concern that he was taking more xanax than he should have been mm. and i needed him to uh tighten that up and to go back to what he was prescribed mm. and also there's a reference here to the phone calls um I had asked him not to respond or not and not to engage in these phone calls because those were uh, all that always precipitated uh, problems between the two of them when they were in this when they were in a bad phase. Potent phone calls between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard? Correct. And Mr. Depp responds on July 1st, 2015 and says, I am and have been at peace for the last three to four months. It's been amazing, but she's somehow locked into this very unpleasant and belittling mode in the last three days. The accusations, the verbal abuse and insults, stooping to one, the most unjust. You haven't changed, you fucking desperate hypocrite. You didn't 
you didn't out the monster away. You're full of shit. You're a pathetic fraud. Man, you know how hard I have worked to put that motherfucker in its cage? And I did that, me. I took all those other problems and rid myself of them. There's a whole lot more. I won't bore you with it. The Xanax takes the edge off just a little. Her lawyer. You know me. It would take I mean, more than a few jokes. to really affect me. Huh. Seroquel scares me for the reasons I, I were off of it. If you're worried about the Xanax, prescribe me something different, but with more potency. I don't take them all that often, just when the brain is inundated with this horrible badgering and half truths from my wife uh, by, by the so WSY. He's, saying that he's, he's driven right that. into it by um, her. Do you recall this text? Yep. Yeah. Um, again, I do in looking at it, yes. Okay, and, and Mr. Depp again used the term uh, monster, correct? Oops. Yes. And Mr. Depp goes on in this text. He says, by the way, um, he, he sends another, sorry, here's my, by the way, C Cohen should be run out of town in utter shame. He's a fucking sump who's done absolutely nothing but giving her the verbosity that she off that she uses, that she uses ever whenever she feels like she must explain to me the psychology of life, three exclamation points, ludicrous, three exclamation points. Yes, sir. Cowan should be shot in places no one wants to be shot in, three exclamation points. He's a goddamn charlatan big time, three exclamation points. I'm not going to continue to pay the fucking yes man to do nothing but stare as her tits and agree with everything she spews. Oh, no. Thought, tell him to tell he's leaving the business or something, or I, or I too will become a regular client whether I am welcome or not, three exclamation points. Thanks and so sorry. Johnny I is cringing. He, you. He's like, no. Your call, your call Mr. So he Depp. He really uh, hates the psychologist. He's that he's upset with Dr. Cowan. Who this I don't know. I think maybe, maybe he's a little lukewarm on him. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Really hates his two really that he was <laughs> This doctor has been been connecting Amber with this you know, psychologist. Do you recall this text message from Mr. Look at his hand. Depp that he I does just normally, read to you. He does a lot of this, yes. but this time yes. it's a lot more close, a lot more tense. Everything is so much more like he's like, ah. He's really not enjoying this. He's not loving this at all. He really doesn't enjoy how that reflects on him, or he just really hates that psychologist. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Right, so any objection Ooh. to breaking there? For right the on weekend? the dot at five o'clock. She likes it right. on the dot five. All right, she ladies and gentlemen, we'll pick up like with. Three I respect that in the judge. On yeah. Since uh, I'm not going to see you for three days, I just want to reiterate the same jury instruction I gave you in the beginning of the case. No watching legal bites, jurors. Not all of it, but some of it. I just want to make sure you understand for the weekend. That you're not to read anything about the case. You're not to watch anything about this case. You're not to listen to anything about the case. This applies to television, newspapers, magazines, the internet, and any online sites. Further, you're not to read, watch, or listen to the anything from about online the case sites, on any social way, media Good networking luck. sites such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or similar sites. You didn't mention YouTube. YouTube. Not in the clear. With anyone about the case, whether she's in person, specifying the social phone, media email, sites this time, text or instant well, she messaging, specified specific or any other electronic YouTube. or non-electric electronic means. This Doesn't includes mean your that friends, that's, family, that's coworkers, exclusive. acquaintances, You're not and strangers. Any TikToks. I also instruct you that you cannot do any research or make any inquiries about this case, whether online or by any other means. What you learn about this case is limited to limited to what you learn in the four walls of this courtroom when proceedings are underway. All right. So have a good weekend and we'll see you. Uh, bright really don't want to have to be put up right in early Monday. Though. I wonder if there's going to be any other motions or <laughs> anything that they're going to discuss. Jury is walking out. Motion to put them, the two of them in a room and see which one emerges. Uh, I, I think that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the core of our issues here, right? <laughs> I gotta say, I really, I, I was really actually very much into that testimony towards the end like the last half hour australia yeah. the future looking start... forward the texts from johnny are very interesting you get personality there he's very ingratiating with people and he's also mm -hmm. self-deprecating mm -hmm. uh, for the litigants i'll see you back on monday please no posting on social network networking sites and don't talk to the press all right Alita, and don't ask johnny to see you tomorrow at 10 a.m for a long not day. yet not until I'm it's sure all over doing johnny homework right so we should be able to get through a well, lot the attorneys of have to come to court objections, right so the motion practice perfect all right thank on. you all right we'll see you tomorrow. is that going to be on tape or not what it's five o'clock and she said the attorneys are coming in tomorrow well her oh, she she's got say... hearings yeah no she, yeah. Has, she has other hearings for for other other cases in her docket so it sounded okay. like she was talking to these specific attorneys, unless I missed something. Could be. They could be doing some of the redaction stuff and the reservations of objections. I I, yeah. I don't know. I yeah. have a silly legal question for you guys. Sure. What, yeah. what determines what determines whether jury is held like in like you know in OJ's case, like they were like in a hotel Sequestered. and yeah. requested. That's a request. Yeah. By it whom? has to be 
uh, I probably, but well, in in that case, it parties. would have been by the yeah by the by the defense. Well, I guess prosecution can also request one of the parties. At least one of them would have to request it, and then they would have to. I mean, they would have to really analyze whether it's appropriate because it's it is uh, draconian. It can, it's very <laughs> draconian. It 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 can really impact the jury, and sometimes. That can you don't want to rush them to a decision just because they they want to be among the people, you know. But at the same time, you also like you you want to be able to keep them protected out of, out of the public eye. Yeah. Um, so, for example, for, for written house, like a case like this, yeah. Go are ahead. They go really ahead. Gonna avoid? Are they really going to avoid all news? We hope mostly. Yeah. How? Well, that they by, turn it by off not going on the internet. On. Yeah. Not going on social media at all. Just hanging basically. out in virtual reality. We're not going to cover that stuff over here. We're leaving no, that. That, that, you, that actually is pretty true for your channel. You probably yeah. won't. Yeah. I'm not going to touch Johnny Depp stuff. Yeah. First of all, I love the cover. If you love it, you should subscribe. Ah, oh, thanks, Hogue. Yes. Thank no, you. I, I, I do. I do. I, I summary video streams all day. It's mm -hmm. all good. Um, yeah, but sequestering is, at least as I understand it, it's it's basically very look down upon like you really have to show yeah. that you think they're going to pollute the jury pool um yeah. and as you can see this is this is the biggest trial in the country uh and they're, they're not sequestering these folks yeah yeah that's what yeah. i was curious about and sometimes they'll do it just during the um the sometimes they'll do it just during the the yeah exactly the the deliberations um Which but was usually the case in Kyle Rittenhouse, right they did they? I thought no. they had buses, right? Wasn't that how they, they got? Yeah, in I was gonna say. Yeah, that was so. What they what they did in Rittenhouse was they they had them meet at some other offsite location, and it was very like there was a way to to go in with privacy and whatnot. That's like and NBC they, News they were guy bust gets, in. NBC News guy gets pulled over for <laughs> following the bus. Remember? I was just yep. trying to chase the ass up. And turns interview. out he was a he was a producer for like MSNBC or something, and then yeah, and yeah, then he's yeah. like, yeah, well, my boss told me to come and follow them to see if I could get some information, <laughs> and they're like, you're not allowed to do this. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's all sorts of methods, stuff. but they they don't they they really do not want to impact the jurors' lives yeah. while still preserving the unbiased nature of the court system. But yes, you were right. I, I think I joked about this yesterday, but somebody's going to be watching Jeopardy and they're going to advertise the 11 o'clock news and the startling admissions in the Johnny mm -hmm. Depp case. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully they turn it off or they aren't otherwise polluted by that. But I, I think there's an understanding that at least on the edges, living in the world, you, you're going to have, you're going to hear random things. Hopefully you're not sitting down and watching yeah. six but hours of an hour i would now. i would tell them i would tell them now is a great time to get invested in the book that you've always wanted to read but never had the time to do it do that when you go home that's it you've been ordered you know? by yeah, the, right, right, the internet so what better excuse yeah yeah exactly so spidey how much did you get to see today not much today i i watched a little bit of the the, the i think the witness that everyone's talking about from yesterday isaac yeah yes yeah tell us what do you think yeah so a lot of great notes on that guy and then i came in literally i, I had a virtual show today uh performance and immediately after i was like Ooh. all right guys bye enjoy and then i just came right into this and caught the end of that i guess doctor or yes was it, dr Only, was it all tapes today uh it wasn't supposed to be. We were not supposed to be hearing from Dr. Kipper, but unfortunately, there was one witness who was in person today. Uh, her name was Gina Duders, and okay. she uh, is a friend of Johnny Depp and saw she was there in Australia as well during this whole incident. And just as she was about to get into wh what happened there and her experiences with it, um, there was something that she had said at some point or something that somebody had picked up on. And the judge cut her off and said okay hey jury out for out for a quick break we've got to handle some administrative matters real quick there was drama there was drama there was did she drama, got kicked rama, off the rama. witness stand by the judge yes she did you want to know why? why why the judge turned to her and asked her have you seen any of the footage of this trial in the last couple days have you have you seen anything have you watched anything she's like i've seen a, a couple clips <gasps> Of witnesses? And the judge said, the clips. judge said, lawyers, does anybody have a, have a follow-up question? And then Johnny's team tried to say, tried to like ask something to sort of specify like, but it was nothing. Right. Was but no, she was no like, the, the judge said, the judge said, uh, doesn't matter. You're gone. You're excluded. 
all of her testimony is going to be stricken from the record. We are going to instruct the jury when they come back in. Done. So yeah. she did you catch she, what she said? What what the judge picked up no, on? Yeah, we, tr- we tried. We went we back. We like rewatched out. the footage <laughs> from like a few minutes before. But um, yeah, uh, it's a. Uh, it was not. She didn't, she didn't just get up there and start cracking Amika jokes, and that was that I, was well, the I, judge off. That may that may have been it. That's that's the most Does likely one joke? that I think, because <laughs> okay. I, she she so she was asked about arnica cream, from yeah. you know, and and that was a reference to the day before, and so she was like, like yeah, I know what arnica cream is. I know what it looks like. It's a it's a white cream that when you put on your skin, it's transparent. It doesn't cover bruising. It doesn't cover anything. Um, but you know, it helps, to, it's a homeopathic, it helps to heal it. I've used it before. Cause I had, you know, a week or two ago I fell and I got, I have a, a bruise on my hip. So I actually just used it. Sure. Um, there was like something, uh, and that was kind of it about the Arnica cream and they had like moved on, but that's the only thing that I can think of that has any kind of relevance to anything, um, that could have been interpreted as being seen by by her somewhere but it, else but like she didn't say but, anything like i saw this i, I saw somebody she say was this. prompted on that as a question i'm not sure that gives anything away. I, I just wonder what the judge was thinking you know if she stops it and says i got i got a question for you something popped in her head that matched up with the the testimony could i had no idea that happened it was just the instinct I don't know. I mean, she, she may have. So during, during her, during that testimony, the camera was focused a lot on Johnny. So there could have been movement in the courtroom mm-hmm. that we didn't see from mm-hmm. Amber's lawyers. They may have flagged. I it. don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they usually are not going to a- approach the bench, especially individually, because you, you, I mean, usually a lawyer is going to interrupt and then say, your honor, I have an objection. May I approach? And then mm-hmm. both sides go up because it's like having having that kind of one sided conversation with the judge is not OK. <laughs> right, right, right. That's that's the entire legal practice. That's not just litigation. Generally speaking, you got to go with the other side's counsel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, but Manny Fabani here wants to know, Spidey, tell us about Isaac and your light bulb. <laughs> We're floating light bulb. It's real witchcraft. I have no idea how this thing works. Oh, there's like nothing. There's like there's. There's literally, like, there's nothing connecting it. It's electromagnets. Inductive. Yeah. Yeah. Magnets. Yeah. Ah. Inductive, right? Yeah. You're using yeah. a magnet, you're using a magnet to, to create a current. Yeah. No I problem. I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. That sounds, okay. sounds good. Well, yeah. Right. Um, I good. always like to say that math is magic and science is sorcery. So to me, that might, that may as well be sorcery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not so far off from what, yeah. Let's talk about Isaac. So. It's it's crazy how many messages I got today and yesterday. People telling me like you gotta you gotta look at this guy Isaac, and everyone said the same thing, and everyone said how likable he is. Mm-hmm. And, and there's exactly. a reason as to why he's likable, and I'll tell you that in a sec. But let's talk about the body language a little bit. Um, a lot of open gestures, obviously. You guys noticed as he talked, he was very animated with the hands, and these weren't inwards gestures. These weren't tight gestures. Very open, very giving. Usually giving and kind people move outwards, whereas takers and you know you have these smaller tighter so very big uh open gestures his illustrators were on point so illustrators are the gestures we make with our hands as we speak when we're being truthful and we're engaged in what we're saying the same thought that causes our words causes our movement it's our thought mm-hmm. coming out so we speak with our hands and everything is synced when mm-hmm. we're deceptive the way the thought works is different first our mind says okay say this now do this so you might see a liar go I'm so pissed. You know what I mean? As opposed oh. to, I am so pissed. Oh. So that, that, that timing. His illustrators were on point. As he was talking, we're seeing those moves synchronized with his gestures. That's very genuine feeling. Um, he had insane musculature in his upper forehead. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but a lot of wrinkles, a lot of lines up here, up here, up here. He talked with his eyebrows up a lot. This mm-hmm. signals um, innocence, but also empathy. Our eyebrows go up when we see, like, notice how you bump into someone in the grocery store that you know. First, yeah. that up, his eyebrows go up and go, hey, it's a <laughs> reflex we have. It shows ah. innocence. The same way we show, like, I've got nothing to hide, this shows no mm. ill intent. And he's got okay. So- so I was going to say, I, I was just about to say, it's a little bit of a joke, but uh, my mom complains all the time in my videos that my eyebrows are too high and then I'm going to get wrinkles from it. Cause I keep, I keep raising, 
raising my yeah. eyebrows. So now I can just I can just turn up turn back to my mom and say, well, yeah, but I'm 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 conveying empathy, mom. Hundred <laughs> percent. So it's okay. Connection, <laughs> empathy, connection, empathy, and seeking approval. So especially when we say something that we want people to connect with, oh, we tend to yeah. go up with the eyebrows where they say like that that really happened. Like the, you won't believe this. Like oh. empathize with this. Come, let's oh. connect on this. Connect so, with me. <laughs> so uh, we also see this in YouTubers a lot when they ask for that subscribe, you know, like guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button. <laughs> so, so we see a lot of that. So he had a lot of that. And not only was he doing it, but we see all that wrinkling from, from doing it a lot. So this is an empathetic person who connects emotionally. When the lawyer was asking questions, he would lean in to really listen. And then he was talk. As he would talk, he would engage that in contrast with this doctor that we just saw now who had a lot of heavy musculature down here, but very smooth up here. This is a skeptical overthinker. And we even see that with this doctor in the way he was taking questions very literally. You know what I mean? Like when a question was, I don't have the exact answer to that specific thing on that specific day, specific, specific, skeptical, deep thinker, musculature here. Like Kurt right now. In, in fairness to the doctor, <laughs> That is how you tell your clients to handle a yeah, deposition. Exactly. Sure, sure. Answer that question as literally as possible. Yeah. Sure. But this is this is an indication also like, yeah, that, that's actually a really good point. But I do feel like this comes naturally for this person and we're sure. not going to see him engage. His emotions won't engage him that much. I doubt it's his first deposition. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah for, good point. that's for sure. Maybe he's been stung before by, by letting his emotions get the best of him. Um, the other thing about Isaac, he had a low blink rate. So usually when we're, especially because he was talking about stressful things, you know, he was talking about his friends arguing. He obviously feels for both of them. And that, that was so cute. I just want to give him a big hug. Yeah. Uh, but his blink rate remained pretty steady. Uh, and that's, you know, it's not something like, it's not something I expect for the blink rate to go up. It's just when we are stressed and nervous about something, blink rate tends to go up. His was very steady, very low. Between this conversation um, and the last one, I've never been more self-conscious about my blink rate. <laughs> i'm not looking i'm not looking uh, then another thing i don't know if you guys noticed this but very often he tended to, he tended to explain things by counting like this with his fingers did you guys notice that like very often he'd be like she's like this she's like that even when there wasn't a list of things to say he would do like like this like he's counting on his fingers he definitely this did that every time he talked about cuts and bruises he goes no cuts no bruises no whatever when he, yeah. when he was asked about the face he did that like five times yeah. yeah. So, so this is someone who it, we see in that body language that he wants to give the whole story here. Like he's not here to hold anything back. He wants to give every single point, everything that can be said, he wants to say it. So mm -hmm. that's what we're seeing there. Um, when he talked about how Amber is making the, this up, remember at some point he was talking about how she, she's wrong for doing this and she's now making these false accusations. All of a sudden, those smoother illustrators became more stop gestures. So we look at the fingers to indicate the movement of fingers indicate how stressed we are. When we tend to get stressed or, or we feel defensive, our fingers go inwards because mm -hmm. this makes a lot of sense, right? We're protecting the fingers. We're getting ready for an altercation. As we relax, our fingers relax. But there's a point at which they go past relaxation to what we call stop gestures. And this is something like, let's say you're in traffic and somebody slams the brakes. What's the first thing you do with your hands? <gasps> Right. Mm. So or something here, like this, we tend to go, oh my God, stop. Like, so at yeah. that point, when he was talking about her accusations, we saw a lot of those stop gestures. He was talking, there was, there was a lot of this karate chopping going on. Like he wants this to stop. This is when we're thinking stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Um, the, so the, the way Johnny's looking at him is interesting. There's real love there, like a real, like a real brotherhood, like a real uh, deep yeah. friendship. There's also a little hint of mischief. Like they've gotten into trouble together. It's the way, yeah. you know what I mean? It's the way old, like old, like frat brothers will look at each other. Yeah, I it could, I could of, sense that. And yeah. then, and there was an indication of that too, verbally with, uh, with Isaac, when, when he was asked about, did do you, did you ever see Johnny Depp do drugs? And he was like, yeah, I did him with him. <laughs> like we did them together yeah. um so that was a it was a very and, it, and he was just he was just the same way that he was when he was explaining anything else so i i could definitely see yeah. that that mischief Stup yeah super honest, very little like this is a man who, who wouldn't even want to lie because first it's not really part of his mo 
but also it's it, like you see how much he wants to he doesn't want either of them to be here he's that friend you know like you're at a party things get out of hand there's always that friend who wants everyone to get along again he's like guys what's going on here we're all friends this is him it hurts him to see his friends doing this yeah um one more thing so the reason he's very likable i'll tell you the reason he's very likable so he's got that extroverted artistic type, right? We see it. Like he's extroverted, he's artistic. He talks about his art a lot. He talks about himself a lot. So the ego is up there. <laughs> but despite that, he's not arrogant or condescending. So typically when you have that kind of person who talks about themselves and I've, I had this art exhibition and I was going to, you know, I don't, I don't, he said, I don't even paint anymore. That's how much this thing is distressing. I don't even paint anymore. It's about me. This fight is about me. But typically people like that, those extroverts big personalities tend to be condescending arrogant and very self-righteous he doesn't have that so mm -hmm. he has the likability of an extrovert plus some humility that goes with that so it kind of it's the best of both worlds so there, yeah. there are very few people who are going to look at him and go i don't like this guy because yeah. he's got that extrovertness with that humility so that was amazing yeah um, like what, like one of the, one of the comments that he said about himself that I remember that was that he's like, he's like, I'm just a schnook painter here. Like what, like, what am I, like, what is this, like, how is this my life? You know? Um, and then he referred to, uh, to Johnny, you know, giving, he gave me his sandwich, man. He shared his sandwich with, with me. Like, how am I going to share my sandwich with him? <laughs> so gratitude is so important. And he was showing that infinitely towards Johnny Depp. Like, I feel like this guy, I mean, I don't know what they have planned for witnesses, in his favor but this guy like he should have been like he should have closed this whole thing because he is like you listen to this guy and you go yeah johnny depp's a good guy like if like this guy has convinced me that johnny depp is a good guy he has his moments but he's a good guy that did you guys feel the same yeah oh not so I much okay, i'm well, not well, as convinced i mean i okay. see so i, I look at things through the eyes of a lawyer right this is exactly what the cross-examination presented which is uh, maybe not well done but you expose the biases, right? Gratitude, sure. Friendly guy. That doesn't yeah. actually mean anything about Johnny Depp, who is also going to have all this evidence said about how toxic and problematic this relationship was. And also he's indebted to him on a, on a very fundamental way. And he presents it friendly, which yeah. I agree with on, on all of your parts. But uh, from a legal perspective, I, this feels like the only way he could come out is Johnny's a good guy. Amber's a good guy. He's not really probably deciding that many people are not good guys. And so I can discount that assertion. That's a good point. Him. That's a, I'm going to give Hogue that. That's a really good point because this guy sees the good in everyone. So he might just be giving us the glass half full version of Johnny Depp. Well, he said That's they were both great, point. right? And the rest of the yeah. trial is how they were both very not great. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. I agree with you. Seems like a fun guy to have around. Yeah. I just discount it. That's all. That's, that's I mean, great. That's such a great but with regard to the way that he sees Amber, he loved Amber. You know, yeah. he was like tripping over himself to like give her all of these compliments and accolades. And yet he gave information that that showed that like, despite the fact that he loves her, he 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 saw some things that she did that was that's going to be indicating some not so great things about her. And then in, in cross-examination, you would think that they would be able to pull something, some kind of information, some kind of detail from him that's similar to Johnny that would kind of do the same thing, but they didn't quite pull that out of him. I mean, all they, all they did was the drugs, but that's, that's been elsewhere. Well, of the ones I have seen, I think their cross-examination strategy or talent, whatever you want to describe it, is, is poor. I, I don't think they're aimed at the right directions and that they're presenting in ways that put people on guard and do very odd things with yeah. how people respond to them. Yeah. Um, so, I, and that can happen. That doesn't mean they're bad lawyers, by the way. I think it looks like they're both confident sides of lawyers here, but mm -hmm. it, it didn't work out for them. And I'm, I'm interested in watching that. We don't really get to see that in depositions because you have different lawyers doing objections and edits and whatever happened behind the scenes. Um, yeah. So I've been personally removed from watching them in Cross X for a little while. Uh, but yeah, I think they could have, I think they could have done better on cross-examination of both the sister and Isaac from the sound. I agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. Pick it apart a little more. Yeah. Spidey, what else, what else do you have? Let's talk <laughs> about the guy. When I came in here, the doctor who was talking. Yeah. Now I caught the end of that, but I caught enough because I caught two answers that were significantly different in, cause we have, you know, typically we like the baseline. So we like to see more than one answer. You can't really analyze someone with just one answer because you don't know what the person answered but i got i got enough of him he was answering some direct questions towards the beginning and then i caught that end where he was asked if uh 
he ever witnessed Johnny Depp like sort of deviating from the plan or or sort of falling off the wagon. Remember right, right at the mm -hmm. end there? Yes. Mm -hmm. but before that, his answers were pretty direct, pretty straightforward. The way Hope uh, said earlier, like super like uh, factual, which he was probably told by his lawyer, just answer the damn question as directly as possible. Yeah. When he got that question at the end, we saw a couple of interesting things that lead me to believe that he did see something in Johnny Depp that would suggest he fell off the wagon or was about to, but he was still trying to answer in a literal way to not give that information. The things I saw were this, uh, there was some lip licking and lip licking is something we do to correct stress because when we're stressed, mouth dries up, lip licking corrects that. It's also a grooming gesture, it brings more color to the lips, makes us look more presentable. So that's two reasons why licking the lips, especially when it's out of character for someone is, is interesting. Second, the, the first few questions he answered, there was no hesitation, straight to the point. That last one, there was quite a bit of hesitation. Now, hesitation isn't always in, indicative. If hesitation happens in the middle of a story that requires thought, it's totally fine. Like, if you ask me what I did last weekend, I might hesitate as I tell you. <laughs> you know, we went... <laughs> I was just remembering a very specific incident and brought to mind something, so... Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, so... You might be like, uh, let's see, I went to my parents and then we had, oh yeah, we had pizza. So I'm, I'm recalling as I tell you. But hesitation before an answer, a long pause before an answer, especially when you have this thought, is sort of trying to plan the answer. Mm. Because typically, if you ask me a question, I start answering. And if I need to hesitate, I'll do it within the answer. So mm. before, again, it's the cognitive load, right? Telling the truth is easy. You tell the truth. Lying, there's so much happening in your brain. First, you have to hide the truth from coming out. Second, you have to examine everything you've said before to see if the lie you're about to say works with that. Three, you have to present the lie. Four, you have to see how the lie is being presented. This guy's being filmed, so that part isn't there. But it is a, it is a heavier cognitive load. So that hesitation in the beginning worried me a little bit. His cadence was a little slower on that last answer. He was taking his time with a little bit more as he was trying to get the right words out. And he had a, at some point, he had a nonspecific denial which uh, I wrote in the notes. I, I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but nonspecific denial is when you deny um, part of something without denying the thing you were asked. And I'm not sure what he said, but it was something along the lines of, I, I don't specifically remember that thing. You know what I mean? As opposed mm -hmm. to no. So, yep. and that's also called, that's also called an exclusion qualifier. So if you ask me a question and I say, basically, no, 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 no. Like if you say, uh, so what happened with the money from that your friend lost? And I go, well, I basically borrowed it. Well, that, that hold on there. That that's that's not quite you know basic. What does that mean? Basically, did you borrow it or did you steal it? So yeah, basically, specifically, I acquired all the it. Are, what's that? Yeah, I acquired well, it. Yeah, I acquired it. Yeah, I mean, I basically, the, yeah. the only <laughs> I other thing I would add to that is that it doesn't have to be a lie to have that pause. I agree with you. The pauses were a little bit um concerning i was going to bring couple, that up too there's a couple of things that are happening here one is that this is a doctor that is in a deposition environment but he's also going to be saying a lot about him prescribing drugs right we're talking about johnny but there's a lot of things that go to his professionalism and how he's going to look to the outside regardless of this trial good call so some of those questions that he really paused on at least as i watched it were and then this is what this said you did this you you prescribed this he sent you this text and then you sent him Ambien. You know, these kinds of things where I think anybody that's trying to just protect pr professionalism and make yeah. sure they don't trip up is going to say, okay, let me make sure that this is right. And this is all from refreshed recollection. Like he starts out this testimony saying like, I, it's 2014 folks. Uh, and so we get my notes, we get my journal. Yes, I think I've got that right. And I think there was one where I really thought that it really felt sincere and, and truthful is he, he backs up. He doesn't get right that he's back in Los Angeles when he thought he was in the Bahamas. And he says, wait, I, I can look at my outlook. And then he checks and, and corrects. Yeah. I always think that speaks to sincerity when, when, when you're watching this. But I, I will also tell you this. I don't know whether it's body language or not. Uh, and I, I can't speak to a Virginia jury. He's, he's an off-putting Hollywood drug dealing doctor. I mean, he, like, this is what he comes across as. I, so I was thinking about something um, maybe about halfway through that 
He's a concierge doctor. He said he said that, he, that they pay him an annual fee and he shows up whenever, wherever they want. Even I mean, he tells he testified yeah, that, cross, that Johnny wanted nations, him in Australia. <laughs> he wanted him on, in Australia and he hopped on, on a plane and met, met him in Australia. So he's he, it, his life is a little bit fin, fantabulous and crazy, you know, um, and at the same time, this other thought crossed my mind that I was like, if you're if you're willing to be there at any time, anywhere for a fee to be this concierge doctor, why aren't you a concierge witness? Why aren't you here? Which may not be hmm. his fault. That may have been decided by, by the, you know, stipulated by the two parties. But, but I did have that thought that the jury might, might think also like, okay, you're so concierge only when the money's flowing, huh? So yeah. you're, you're money driven. Like what's going on here? You know what I mean? Oh. Also, the profession, the profession also indicates his priorities, right? This is a man who's attracted by wealth and prestige. So to what extent is he going to turn on a guy like Johnny Depp? You know, like to what extent? Like, not, he's not going to. Well, like, I did. I, I think I pointed it out. But there was one there was one moment where the lawyer didn't need this question, got snide as he asks about 2016 through 2019 and says, well, wasn't the purpose of 2014 to get him off drugs? Like, and he doesn't even ask for an answer. There's no answer in that even video. It was just like the lawyer poking at him, almost testifying. Probably, yeah, it was kind of probably could have been objected to. Yeah. <laughs> it was jab. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, I was thinking the same thing. So the, uh, it, the lawyer worked for me, which is like, it's funny. We just went flying past this detox into the rest of these years. And yeah, I, you know, everybody brings their own experience to the table. It's like, what well, it didn't sound like you were helping so much, my guy. Yeah. Um, and, and that, yeah. you know, that comes across just in the, in the facts of the situation. Yeah. And I will say this about the, the pauses before an answer. Um, what I have, have told, you know, my client when he or she was going to go into a deposition is that usually so what's going to happen is you are going to get asked a bunch of questions by the opposing lawyer and they're going to try to trip you up they're going to try to ask you all kinds of questions to get all kinds of admissions out of you and now that, that's when talking to a party same thing it is true of potentially a witness but if i'm the lawyer advising someone going into a deposition i am telling them take your time in answering yeah. because the faster you answer, the faster you can get them tripped up into saying something that true. you don't intend to say, whether or not it's even true, you know, like yeah. it, it could, it could be not exactly correct what you said, but you're just kind of agreeing with what they said because they, they start leading you so well. They put so, you on that momentum. Yeah. So he may yeah. have also been advised. Okay. If, if there's a complex question, take your time in answering, like who yeah, cares absolutely. how that looks. Yeah, you so, saw them so, try to so, circle back just in this video I, I mean they asked about cocaine in like uh, differences of like four hours after he already admitted like some of those tests showed cocaine residue whatever and then they asked him again and he really pauses for like a solid 20 seconds and that's when i think i said while we're watching the stream you, you already admitted to this it's okay you can yeah. you can say that you saw cocaine yeah, so, um, yeah. so two things first um agreed but the only reason i noted it is because it was off baseline compared to the other questions. Yeah, so there was a longer pause sense. compared to those questions. That's the only reason I know it. If he, he definitely had that. Had that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that hesitation was consistent, I'd say that that's just the way he is. Anything could be part of baseline. So that's the reason I noted and, and worth a mention. Second to Hope's yeah. point, and I think it's a very valid point, can the stress be not because he's hiding anything about Johnny Depp, but because he's scared of incriminating himself or tainting his reputation? Absolutely. And this goes back to what I was saying the other day when I was here with you guys behavior analysis is never the end goal. It's just mm -hmm. a flashlight that tells us where to dig. So again, there's never been a case in a court where somebody said, your honor, this person is guilty because our behavior analyst observed the higher blink rate. It doesn't work that way. So we no. just, in, so when I, if I'm questioning someone and I see, okay, with this question, there's a bit of hesitation. We're seeing some lip licking. We're seeing some exclusion qualifiers. Those weren't there before. We're seeing a non-specific denial I need to ask more questions here. That's all That's all behavior analysis does. It gives me a direction in which I should go. And it could end up, I go down that direction and it was nothing. It, sure. I saw those things because of absolutely nothing. It just so happened that in that moment, those things happened, totally possible. It's just, we spot these things and it tells us where to go. So can it be that all these things happened? I mean, when there's that many, it's unlikely that there's nothing <laughs> going on, but can it be that he's scared to taint his reputation? 
One million percent. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It makes perfect sense. I, see, I'm with Kurt. Hearing you talk, I'm just very self-conscious about literally everything I do in right. front of the camera right now. <laughs> no, no, I know, like, am I licking I'm, my lips? Am I, yeah, no, what am I just, doing? To be fair, <laughs> come on. And it's just, I'm just going to do that. Yeah, analyze time. that. Come on, I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. analyze, <laughs> analyze the logo. Well, you see, the line divides the names. It's oh, the yeah, what's that logo. about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it, to be uh, to be perfectly open about this and transparent, I, in conversation, it's hard for me to do that because I pretty much have to shut off every other sure. part of my brain and, and really That focus, makes sense. So, yeah. That makes uh-huh. perfect so sense. So he says, if you believe him. <laughs> See, I wonder that whenever people have these powers. Heard, heard, heard that a little these... bit of a lip compression, corners of mouth going down, skeptical about this. Mm-hmm. Skeptical <laughs> about this. I always wonder how people with this knowledge, how they can manipulate it for themselves. How much can you control about what you do and present just to have fun with people? See, that's what I, that's what I think about. Yeah. Interesting. I, I, I don't, uh, I studied persuasion for a long time, but I don't, I'm not that self-aware of my gestures. Like every now and then people will tell me like, uh, by the way, Mr. Lip Licking, you know, like I'll do a show. <laughs> like, by the way, Mr. Lip Licking, you were licking your lips the whole first half. And I was like, yeah, I was pretty stressed. I didn't know I was doing that. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know, but like performing on a stage can sometimes be a little bit stressful. And so, you know, that can trigger all, all of those responses and dry mouth and all that kind of stuff too. Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> I, I, I think three you know, straight I, days of streaming for 10 hours probably does that too, eh? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> yeah. By the way, uh, Alita, I'm going to self-promote here a little shamelessly. Yes, I'm, drop, I'm do dropping it. my analysis of the deposition tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and I caught some really great stuff. So I'm starting with the deposition and then I'm going to let the case go on a little more. When we have a few more witnesses, I'm going to do a follow-up, but I caught some really good stuff on the deposition that I'm, that I'm quite proud of. I like the part, nice. I don't know if you guys remember, but I love the part where Johnny Depp goes, <laughs> when she said that she, she uh, threw the bottle or he threw the, she threw the bottle and it damaged his finger, but mm-hmm. she said he did it punching a wall and he goes, I would, I would like to see a scientist. You know, because there are wall punching scientists out there who can who can testify as to whether this or not. This sounds like some bullshit, though. This sounds like some bullshit forensic, though. Bullshit. Like a oh, wall the, wall pu- the wall punching scientists and the, the fiber analysis and stuff. And I the don't hair know. There's, there it are sounds ballistic, like some bullshit. There are, there are, there are ballistic. Uh... Absolutely. I just love the choice of the word scientist because he's like, science can disprove that my finger did not break punching a wall. And I, and I feel like he did punch a wall, but he firmly believes he didn't break his finger that way. So he's focusing on the um, on the action of not breaking his finger as opposed to the action of not punching a wall. And mm. it, was, it was really funny to me. Sign, yeah. Wall punching yeah. scientists. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait for that. So for sure, guys, if you haven't already, go check out Behavioral Arts on YouTube, the channel. Spidey also has another channel that you can also check out. What's the, what's the name of your other channel again? Spidey hypnosis, but that's just my magic shenanigans. That's just me entertaining uh, people. And okay, okay. Men- mentalism as an art form, which is very different than. Can you help me with the hypnosis on like not hating everyone and just having utter contempt for all the rest of humanity? Are you in yeah. a place, Kurt? How you yeah. doing, Kurt? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt is 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 grumpy cat lawyer, hmm. <laughs> grumpy lawyer cat. <laughs> grumpy lawyer cat, um, I love it. I love it. Um, uh. So uh, so yeah, for sure, go and check out behavioral arts on YouTube for that video, um, and uh, and check out everybody that has that has been showing up on these panels because. Um, that's one of the best ways to show appreciation for these live streams is by liking these videos, subscribing to the channels, helping everybody grow because it helps all of us expand our reach so that more people can find this kind of stuff. So if you love it, other people might love it too. <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a question. I'm gonna take a question from the comments. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, let me just see if I'm I am okay. I'm gonna take a question. So somebody asked, what do I think of the mentalist? And is it BS? And I assume they're talking about the TV show. And yeah. on my first channel, Spidey Hypnosis, I have like 14 episodes where I break down scenes and tell you just how realistic it is. So I'm going to give you guys a quick interesting spiel. It has nothing to do with the case, but I think you guys will be interested. Yeah. When you see a mentalist on stage who's like closing his eyes and telling you what you're thinking and reproducing your drawing and telling you what your birthday is. So a lot of people walk away from that thinking it's like psychic ability or that they could read body language. Most of them can't. It's heavily reliant on... Um, trickery like like a magic trick but we do add a bit of body language and a little bit of persuasion a little bit of psychology to present it as something different than that so i'm going to give you guys an example i'm going to do a trick for kurt right now oh joy 
I, like I went it. to the church. Well, to as church. a lawyer, as a lawyer, I have to point out you did you did reserve mostly they're not psychic. So I noticed we'll have, that we'll too. Have to turn back on that in a minute. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come. That was an exclusion. That was an exclusion qualifier. That you're, mostly you're, you, not guys are, you guys are really good at this now. Um, <laughs> get the cards, yeah. Yeah, uh, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yes, he's he's fully depositioning now. It's like, so you say, sir. So you say, sir. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a deck of cards. It could be a deck of cards. cards. Yes. Um, Kurt, I'll take your word for it, card. even though Kurt, that's a trick. Don't say it, but in your mind, Kurt, think of any card in your mind. Let me know when you've got one. All right, let me think for a second. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Um, change your mind now, get a second one. Cause if you guys think I studied probability or statistics, I might have a lucky guess. So get a different, a new one. Let me know when you have a new one. Okay. Alita, Hope, Kurt, if I could just look at him right through the screen right now okay. and say the name of that card, would that not be the craziest thing you've seen in your life? You got one out of 52. Right. So, so pretty damn crazy. I, I think yeah. it would be impressive. Yeah. It would be very impressive. I think that would be pretty, pretty crazy. I love the, I love the healthy skepticism on, on this side. And then Alita's like, oh my God, I would lose it. Like more, um, more. <laughs> no, okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look at Kurt right through the screen. I'm just gonna say the name of his card. No questions, no clues. Just say the name of his card. Kurt, focus on this for me. Now look, so here's where, here's where the mentalist bullshit comes in. Like, look at me, focus. Oh, look at the way his eye twitch. Look at his eye. So this is where they throw all that baloney in to convince you that this is what they're doing. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip all that. I'm not even gonna look at any facial expressions. The name of Kurt's card is Hugh Jackman. Wait, that's not a card, that's a person. Kurt, were you thinking of a person or a playing card? For instructions, I was thinking of a card. Okay, a card. You know what? I think I know what happened. Um, don't give me a hard time on this, Kurt. I've got all the cards here. What okay. is the, uh, name the card that, that you, what was it? The second the card. The second card was the Eight of Clubs. Eight of Clubs? Yeah. Eight of Clubs. I want you guys to see this. Not the King of Clubs, not the, uh, not the Nine of Clubs, Seven of Clubs is there. Uh, eight of clubs right there. You guys can see that, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put it right here. I'm just going to pop it out like this so you guys can see. Uh, actually, wait, hold on. Maybe there's... Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it right here at the face. Eight of clubs. Could have been anything. Um, here's a part I forgot to tell you guys. I name all my playing cards after celebrities. Like this one over here, that's Ed Sheeran. That's on the three of clubs. And uh, Robert Downey Jr., Nine of Hearts, and Brian Reynolds, Jennifer Aniston, Michael Jackson, all these different celebrities, all these different names. Jack Black. Of course, that one's physically on a black jack. You get it. Kurt, what was the first card, the one you changed your mind from? What was it going to be before you changed your mind? It was four spades. Four spades. I do want you to see this just to be 100% uh, fair and honest about this. Four of spades is a four of clubs. Four of spades, four of spades. It's in here somewhere. I just want you to see. Oh, there it is. Four of spades. Had you said four of spades, Kurt, and you could have, it would have been, oh, my God, Will Smith. How coincidental. Ah! How coincidental given what's happening, Kurt. But you said eight of clubs, Kurt, and without a single question, without a single clue, I looked at you through the screen. I said you were thinking of Hugh Jackman. Eight of clubs. <laughs> See, where else are you going to get this coverage of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, folks? Yeah. Like and subscribe to Alita and Legal Bites. That's on there. That, that's not CGI. <laughs> that's actually on the back of the Eight of Clubs. No clues. That's one card. It's not like I stuck something back there. The Eight of Clubs actually says Hugh Jackman on the back. So that's not. That's that not is. like some kind of a some kind of a plastic screen that you put on top of it. No, nope, nothing. The eight of clubs actually, I can hand this to you. The eight of clubs actually says an indelible marker on the back of it, Hugh Jackman. Interesting. Magic, folks. Magic. So, so anyway, That's so that, crazy. So, thank you so much. So the, uh, the basis of this is obviously trickery. It's very similar to a card trick, but a mentalist can take that and say, oh, okay, so look at the way he's doing this and he's doing that. So that's where I started. I started with this mentalism and I would watch other mentalists go, oh, look, he blinked twice. It's a red card. I was like, what? That can't be right. It sounds like nonsense. And, and I had my degree in social psych, but I was like, I need to learn more about this because when I do that spiel, I want it to be real. But also I noticed when you start doing the readings as a mentalist, you can add this body language stuff in and crank it to a whole new level. So to answer the question, sure. is the mentalist real? It's very, very exaggerated because he is actually really good in the show at reading people, body language, nonverbal communication, um, and they focus a lot on that aspect. Most mentalists don't have that knowledge. I'm just obsessed with it. So I, I learned it almost separately, but now it helps the art. Well, I could certainly see how it would be useful for banter, definitely. Exactly. Yeah. It helps more with the presentation. And every now and then, like I'm doing this stuff, like when I do cold readings, like 
like let's say I know you're thinking of a specific thing. I will see things in, in the body language as to how you feel about this as opposed mm -hmm. to saying, think of someone, Mary, thank you very much. You know, I could be like, there's a bit of stress around this or I could see yeah. those things. But mm, that's fun. yeah, yeah. In the mentalist though, the way he does certain things is very, like he often takes guesses that I would never guess. You know, like the other day with uh, Alita, I did the thing with the Nintendo Switch. That's a clue, you know, deductive reasoning. But, right. um, but, but I, he goes really far sometimes. Like he knows that somebody spent seven years in uh, dealing blackjack in Vegas at the Caesars Palace because they had a blister on their thumb. Like it's not, it's just not, you can't do that. Yeah. Sure. So what was, what was what was the 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 uh, the answer you gave that most mentalists don't have psychic abilities, as opposed to <laughs> none have them? Yeah, yeah, you're not committing. He doesn't know. I don't know. Maybe there's one out there who does, and I haven't seen him. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. That, yeah, I, I always liked the amazing Randy respond. when he always did those busts of people when he was still alive. He was a great one. He was the best and, uh, because he he called out the, the psychics and said. No, it's it's trickery. Or the one Someone guy knows. whose name escapes me, the televangelist who was really big in his day, yeah, Peter, who would Peter do Popoff. it, and he, he had a mic in his ear. Peter Popoff. And that's how he knew, because like they just they warm red, they warm yep. red them. They got it yep. from advance, and so they knew his exactly wife what was feeding him info. It's like that was great. Uh, wow. Leap of faith style. That's yeah, a good yeah, somebody asked I can recommend I, leap of faith. I studied this. I did my degrees in social psychology. I also have a certification in criminal interrogation, and I studied mentalism very separately as, as entertainment. Somebody else said I have two decks. I don't have two decks. You would have seen a deck switch. It wouldn't make too much sense. What I really um, should have done is just lied and then been like, well, that's good, but that wasn't really the card I'm thinking about. <laughs> da, da, da. That wasn't it. Mirrors. But unfortunately, yeah. I wanted to play nice and be a good friend. So thank you. Chris. I was well, the sucker was of this fun. of this, this trick. So. I've been relegated to the healthy skepticism box, but that's all right. Yeah, I, I'm fine. I, See, the I'm, thing I'm is, he contacted me in advance. We arranged this all. <laughs> Just Twitter DMs behind the scenes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Are we here to talk about a, a case? What's I think so. Well, see, you were talking about how exaggerated the effectiveness of mentalism is, and exaggeration is at the heart of the case between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. So love that absolutely. bridge, man. Yeah, that's wow. what I got to do here. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. Wow, what a bridge! <laughs> My God. That is a that is a quick mind, man. That is awesome. The way he's we're just having fun here. here. No, this is this, <laughs> this is, is this is great. Yeah, well, you know, agree. Andy the Game. Oh, and we have says, some super chats. You have you have a magic show and I wasn't invited. Sorry, brother. We did. <laughs> we did. Uh, you better be careful. We're gonna ask for magic at the end of every day of the streamers. <laughs> Do another one. Do another one. <laughs> I uh Kurt, I will I will Venmo you the twenty dollars yeah, for instead of the eight of five. No, the real magic trick is for the attorneys. Watch me make this uh this searched material disappear. Right? See? Oh yeah. Yeah, See, watch Kurt, me make this. this Kurt was this a good pick because disappear. I just don't believe he was yeah. working with you behind the scenes. That's exactly why I picked him. <laughs> Nobody's gonna believe that Kurt would have gone for that. If I said in the private chat, hey Kurt, name the eight of clubs, I would have gone back and F you, Spidey. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um see here there was oh here's here's a interesting one from from today mimer 82 says gina i think got kicked off for liking an instagram post on the account of house inhabit which actually has clips of your stream legal bites from isaac's testimony oh, i know that there was a clip oh. on that account because one of my friends who lives in actually i don't think it matters where she lives but she says that she follows that account because that is a she's a she's like an independent writer she likes to follow a lot of these cases um, she went to, she went and observed trial for the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. Now she's gone to Virginia. Um, and so posted a, a clip from, from this yesterday. Now, if that's the yeah, case, I Alita. feel so bad. Alita, did you slash we get a Johnny Depp witness kicked out of the trial? I hope not. I Looks really, so really hope not. But well, uh, one of two things is true then. Either one, one of these random people in the Mayu just happens to follow this particular thing and also took the step of looking. Or B, they have the biggest due diligence team in the history of time who is trying to look at like basically all the social media posts and who's liking them all on the off chance oh, you that know, somehow it will reveal they something. They probably so. have some people that are following the witnesses and following That's a lot people. of the 10th chair, the 11th chair, or so in some dark windowless associate's office, <laughs> just following. How'd you like to get off doc review? Yay! On, on Instagram. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, if that's the case, oh, 
oh that is so painful it's like yeah. it's like during during the written house trial you know we we found out that the that the at least one of the litigation teams was watching some of some of the, our live streams on on Ricada's channel and it actually ended up being very helpful natalie wisco then became my friend and she told me that she was like hey by the way we saw your comments during this one cross-examination you said that needs to make it into the closing so i helped write the closing or i wrote the closing and she was like she's like and i made sure that that was in it so you actually helped us and i was like oh that's awesome see the lawyers are allowed to watch us yeah yeah no that's funny natalie's great uh, she should awesome. come back on. She she yeah, likes all she my was... video game tweets. I I, uh, I she she is a a, a renaissance great. woman. Yeah, oh, do you, do you play video games. Uh, yes, yeah, no. I, so I'll pitch now since I can yes. I can grip too. So virtual legality <laughs> is my YouTube channel where we discuss business and law of things that you might otherwise care about in pop culture. Generally speaking, video games, technology, whether Spider Man will be in the MCU or Sony and that kind of thing. So I try Love to do it. serious stuff about contract law. I'm a mergers and acquisitions attorney do private equity, venture capital. And we try to talk about them through fun stuff. Like today, we talked about the internet's favorite wild card pitching a tender offer in a hostile basis for the entirety yes. of Twitter. So, you know, we talk about that kind of stuff all the time. Activision Blizzard, we've been talking about now for nine solid months. I'm pretty sure I'll be talking about them tomorrow based on my- What's happening, What's happening with Blizzard? Uh, Activision Blizzard's in a whole host of problems and lawsuits and things. But just yesterday, uh, they- basically had leaked that their lead lawyers for the lawsuit in California were accusing the governor's office of meddling and illegal interference with the case uh, and, and all hell broke loose. So I was just explaining how executive branch functions work in executive branch agencies. And we had a nice talk uh, in virtual legality. And half the internet hates me because I don't like Elon and half the internet likes me because I do like Elon. So you, you be the judge when you watch the video about whether or not I like or hate Elon. Everyone hates you for some reason. <laughs> that's, the that's worst the, the worst commenters you... I ever get, the, the, the death threats, literally, that I get in my DMs are when I talk about PlayStation or Xbox. Uh, those folks are real fans of their preferred plastic box. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's yeah. ridiculous. We all know it's that's... Switch. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. It, you're not an Xbox or a pony. It's Switch Miss Baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, no, that's that's one of the funny things about when you actually take kind of a middle of the road approach and you're you're trying to look for, look at things from both perspectives and trying to be reasonable. Somebody is bound to hate what you what you say yeah. and tell you. They're, they're gonna I miss, think you're gonna, full of shit. They're going <laughs> to misunderstand Every according to their seconds. bias because they want to hate you. So whatever, whatever your opinion is, that'll get you hated. That's what they believe you said. Well, the funny part is on yeah. YouTube, right? You have so much of your audience that is new, new looks. Right. So the comments are always you're a shill for whatever you talked about um, or you're a hater. And I'm like, if you literally look at the video yesterday, I'm on the op I, something else happened at Sony that was bad or whatever. So it, it's funny. You get used to it. It's a laugh for the most part. Commenters are commenters. Uh, but yeah. yeah, that's what we talk about. We talk primarily about video games and technology. And then I talk about contracts and mergers and acquisitions. And so Hogue, I think I yeah. think the question on everyone's mind right now is who is going to be in the Doctor Strange multiverse of madness? movie <laughs> well they keep they keep prepping everybody for huge cameos so yeah. they better deliver on that or people are just going to give it a negative review for not delivering that's the nature that's, of expectations. And that's the thing marvel marvel just keeps raising the bar to where if they don't have every conceivable character ever made in every movie people are gonna be like that movie sucked like zombie sucked robert Downey jr better show up that's all i'm saying <laughs> I, I bet some it might not be now it might be in 10 years 20 years 30 years he's coming back Guaranteed. There's nothing left. There's nowhere left for them it's to in go. his contract. Uh, <laughs> you are now owned by Disney. <laughs> what did Oscar Isaac say about coming back to Star Wars? Maybe if I need a new house or something? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's Moon Knight now, so he's good. Yes, he's the Moon Knight now. Yeah, yeah. And Kurt does a lot of, you do a lot of appellate and Supreme Court stuff. Like a lot of uh, reactions to Supreme Court oral arguments, yeah. which are fun. Um, sometimes that's great, sometimes that's, you get I him mean, singing. That's the, super, that's the Super Bowl for the lawyers. Not, yeah. not every time do we get the greatest stuff. Sometimes we get some shit, but you know, we so more often than not, I mean, these are the, well, not always, but frequently it's the hardest questions, the best advocates making the best points and trying to bring this stuff to the highest level. So why not react to it and try to figure it out and try to learn something along the way and also exactly. learn something about advocacy for a bonus. Yeah. Exactly. And occasionally the Supreme Court's opinion makes sense. Sometimes. Occasionally it makes sense. <laughs> a few of them do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, then and there's sometimes opinions I read and I get to yell about forever. I see people are asking about the Sony Bungie deal. Come on over. I got videos on that. Virtual legality. Oh, yeah. oh. 
So like, yeah, Spidey, <laughs> have you heard your feelings about Wickard v. Filburn yet? We had that discussion. Working for Chevron versus MRDC. How much time do you have? Let me, That's let me right. Kurt, Kurt discusses Chevron, a yeah, nine-part yeah, yeah, yeah. series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but Thought sometimes one. on this those is bullshit. But sometimes on on those oral arguments, though, Kurt can can find some real gems. I've I've been with you on two of them, and I feel like both times there was some craziness. One of yeah, them yeah, was yeah. Yep. was a rebuttal by one attorney who just sounded Lisa like Black she just exploded. Went to went to. <laughs> <laughs> she completely bombed everything at the end and ended up with some explosive word salad that no one could understand and both of our brains just froze as we were trying to understand what she was saying um it was well, it was really there's, funny usually there's someone on the bench that'll that'll throw a throw a safety oh no it was, there was no mercy oh no. No. it was rebuttal time and it was just like two two and a half minutes of uninterrupted tank it was oh, bad it was fun to watch the supreme court kind of be and like, then well, of course there counsel, was the one that made mean, it to law nerds clips where i completely lost my mind over Boston, <laughs> just throwing away its a complete legal argument. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, wait, we would we would have done the exact same flag <laughs> had they just merely called it something else. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, you lost that. That totally one. makes sense. <laughs> See? So, and if you I, lost, like that, I lost my shit completely. This is important, important stuff. I like to try to cloak serious things in the, in the, in the cloak of video games and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt's discussing important, important stuff all the time. So go check out his channel, subscribe, Absolutely. like, do all that fun stuff. And YouTube loves that. Look, I, we don't want to sit here shilling for all this stuff. We just like to no, put no, the information no. out there. YouTube loves that stuff. Blame YouTube. YouTube really <laughs> loves my channel. Let me tell you, they love it. They love the content. <laughs> it's great. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, man, what man, do you man, do? Man. Subscribe. Yeah. So um, anyhow, I think I'm probably going to start working through. Mighty, if you want to trick people into subscribing to my channel, I, I will pay you. I, I it's mean, a mental. If, if if it's if, if, if there's a mentalist trick to get me more subs, I'm I'm willing to uh, I'm willing to do sure. something for that. You I'll know? I'll carefully read the YouTube terms of service to see how we can. Get, I don't think it covered that scenario. <laughs> I, I don't think they covered mentalism into subscriptions. No, no, I don't think they covered that one. Uh, all right. Yes, so we either. can do your super chats. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, I'll, I'll go through If you guys want to, want to head out, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to Depends hang around. How many super chats you got to get to. Got a, I got, I got, I've got quite a few, but, um, we'll, we'll work our way through it. I got a few um, minutes. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, feel free to hang out for a bit and then, and then dip out if you want. Um, Catastrophe says, do you think the fake punch video was a joke referring to Whitney punching Amber to give her actual bruises, tiny fist, tiny bruise? I think that sounds like the, the connection that they're trying to make from Johnny Depp's lawyers that, that there was, you know, Isaac testified that he, he saw a video of Whitney doing a fake punch kind of thing on Amber's face sometime around May 21st. And that, um, and yeah, then and laughing, wasn't that part of his testimony too? That was, was that they yeah. Laughed? yeah. They laughed about <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that may, that may be at least the implication there. Uh, Jacqueline Nash says, could the ASST stay for the clout more than money? Um, oh, she, I think she means the the personal assistant. Oh, oh that yeah. maybe maybe it was the fact that that she was working for somebody who who was, you know, higher, like star powered because I, she could use that for her resume. That would be true. Although the time that she was working for Amber was up until she married Johnny Depp. So she married her in 2015. And then Amber didn't really have big movies until she was with Johnny Depp. Her first like blockbuster was was the Aquaman stuff, which was I think 2015, 2016. So mm -hmm. that would maybe maybe explain why she stayed at the end for a while. Well, Aquaman's but... 2018, right? Because they say that the Washington op-ed post is the eve of the release of, of Aquaman. That's correct. That's correct. But, but she, I guess she Justice League was before Mira that, right? for their Justice League. That's correct. So she she had an appearance there that got cut actually in the theatrical, but she was in it and then not. <laughs> Yeah. She didn't be appear again until the Zack Snyder Justice League, the four and a half hour version on HBO Max. So check that what, out. What, why, why, why is there contempt there? It was really good. It explained some backstory that we didn't get in the original cut. There's not contempt except for the four hours of time. Right. Okay, uh, it, it's a better version of the Justice League. Although you will get to see Amber Heard attempt a British accent for a fairly oh, long scene. Yeah. So it's um, it's not awesome. Interesting. Um, 
Carla Colvin says the Isaac memes are ruthless. I have only seen one, but I'm, I'm going to start you guys. If you, if you have them, please send them to me, go ahead and DM them to me. I know that I, I, I may not react to all of them. I may not respond, but send them to me and maybe we'll start gathering some for, for a meme review after this, like we did after Rittenhouse. Um, that would be fantastic. Jay Ladies Watson. and gentlemen, I just yes. got a text. Got to go, but get out of here. Guys, yeah, it's, it's such an honor to hang out with brilliant people oh, like you yeah. guys, and I hope everyone goes and follows you guys because this is the kind of content I feel should be more out there than the stupidities that are running rampant. So, everyone who's following, great job. Go follow these guys too. Even Kurt. Thank you. <laughs> Even Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the so buddy awesome romance we're all here for. Really, <laughs> I so, love it. I love later. it. All right, thanks, later, buddy. Guys, Have soon. a great day. Yes. All right. Jay Watt oh, I can says, my arms out. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, you have so much room for activities. Um, Jay Watt says, remember Amber was arrested for domestic abuse. So she will be hit with that. Just like they're hitting Johnny with the restraining order. That is true. We haven't really heard much about that um, at this point. Yeah. I can't remember what I don't know. So I'm, you know, it's presuming the jury doesn't know that then you'd think it would be entered. Yes. Yep. So, um, Sandy Soderquist said, Arnica cream used Arnica cream, sues Amber heard for defamation. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Jack Adams says, what do you think the jury is thinking currently? So this was at 10 55 AM. Thank God it's Friday. My time. Oh, okay. <laughs> My time. Yeah. This was, uh, uh, so that was probably around the time of the, that's got to be the rejection of the lady, right? I think like that's, so. That's during the time that I was off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So I think they probably, at that point, they probably didn't really think much of it because the judge literally said, like, we've just got some administrative stuff to take care of. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna just excuse you for a second. We'll we'll handle some, especially as I'm like, well, we're gonna we're gonna handle some boring stuff. So I don't know that they really thought anything of it. But then after they came back and she told them that they were gonna be striking everything that they heard from that witness. They probably were like, whoa, what was that? What happened? So was there anything like ridiculous space. in the area where they had to strike it? Was there any real problems for what she presented? Unrung bells and whatnot? The only, <laughs> the, I mean, because yeah, because realistically, it's like, okay, it's stricken from the road. Erase that from your memory. They're not going to. And especially, they probably might end up remembering that even more now. They just It'll highlight it. can't use it because they're like, oh, this is this is forbidden information now. <laughs> Um, so, so, you know, they, they might even be more interested in that, but uh, the one thing that I could think of is, um, I mean, most of it was kind of boring foundational stuff. Like this is how I met Johnny Depp. He's a wonderful guy. He's always been so nice. There was one time that we were at dinner with a bunch of other actors and producers when we were on set for, I think Pirates of the Caribbean five or one of them, um, that, uh, we were all at dinner and, you know, Johnny had. He was kind of hiding a, a a glass of champagne under his seat and kind of surreptitiously sipping from it. And Amber didn't like that. And so she started to to treat him like a child, basically. Um, and right. he and he didn't he didn't seem to like that. You know, he, he. Yeah. So so there was that. And she talked about their wedding on Johnny's Island in the Bahamas um, and how how most of the guests were Amber's. Very few were Johnny's. She said because of the fact that that it was so soon, which of course is speculation, <laughs> but um, no one objected to that. But um, but then she she did say that. Oh, sorry, Kurt, you're you're muted. <laughs> I was saying it doesn't quite make sense because assuming that's the reason that's so soon, why were her friends and family able to get there, but not his? Yeah, so I it know. doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't fully make sense. You know, right. it, it kind of. It, yeah. Yeah, it's, although, she's running with a younger crowd. I mean, I could, I could, I, I could at least make it work in my head as as the younger. Yeah, ones his his people are going to be easier. slower to move. Hers are hers are going to be a bit more excited to set things aside on the on the fly, maybe. Okay, I don't know, I don't know maybe perhaps, but it's it's like even <laughs> even with that, the fact that that doesn't quite add up, it doesn't really serve or disserve anyone either way. You know, it's kind of a it's kind of a nothing burger. Um, but then, then she said that at the the wedding weekend or whatever, um, Amber and Rocky handed her, gave her her first taste of MDMA. <laughs> so, so she admitted to that on the Amber stand. Amber handed out drugs. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so she's, so it's, it's, it was just a casual mention that the Amber's handing, handing out drugs, um, not just, not just doing them presumably, but handing them out for friends. And it was a big party weekend. Well, you so, know, the bride's got to take care of the bridal party. Well, and, you know, but that's not gotta, nothing. If you're talking about putting Johnny in the addiction know. hole, that yeah. part of this, I mean, is legal bites. Drugs. I mean, I'm expecting to be handed some MDMA. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you knew that. But, what uh, kind of wedding do you go to, Rick? Yeah, no, I get it. I well. get it. Um, yeah. So, uh, so that was, that, that's, that's basically like, that's the only really information that I can think of that was, you know, one way or another. Okay. Um, but well, I, I just didn't know. Certainly yeah. the drug one, I think there's going to be plenty of testimony here that Amber treated Johnny condescendingly. So I don't know that the volume matters there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, but I really do think that the, the con the, the most, valuable part of her testimony was was yet to come because i think yeah. that she was going to talk about that may that early or early march incident in australia um she probably had some some information on her own that was going to color that um in a certain way which i mean there are other other witnesses around the incident at least maybe not there in the room i don't think she was there in the room from what i have heard about that incident but still it's it's a it's one more person to 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 put the puzzle pieces together around to at least form an impression of what happened and that yeah. is now going to be missing. So, well, that's a black box, right? We, right now we just have a doctor coming into a disheveled house and that's what we got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also Mr. Bites just texted me. I saw it flash on my, on my laptop. He just texted me. He wanted to know Rick, if he can have your hat because he wants to, he wants to rep you at the gym. He likes to wear baseball cap. cap You're not the only person the that has asked. I, you know, the truth is these hats came from the first round of like practicing branding when I was just a, just a law firm. So th this is from 2016. Uh, I have to see if I can replicate these things at this point in time, but I'm going to do it. And if I do, you'll get one for free, Mr. Bites. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that's so nice. Absolutely. Um, and I've got to, I've got to start making some, some merch for this trial. Cause I, I made, I made some for the written house trial from, from the experience, but I think that maybe, uh, maybe you got to help I, me with the making merch. Cause I, I, I tried it and it, it probably should be really easy. And I don't know where I went wrong in my path, but you got to walk me through it. Legal bias, oh, Cause I, well, I totally to. failed. I totally failed. Stop drinking, to. stop drugs, stop Coke. <laughs> I no. put it in a Coke bottle. No, I'm not uh, you know, by the way, things. it is notable that the DEP team both had prominently on their table bottles of Coke, which I thought, you know. You think this is some, you think some marketing deal? Because I was making maybe that joke the other day about the Zoom call. Like this hotel is paying for product placement. Well, Coca-Cola sponsoring this trial? Yeah. You talk about minutia, but like literally the word Coke is right in front of Johnny Depp. Make sure it faces the face, faces yeah. the lens. Maybe have Pepsi instead. <laughs> But uh, uh wow. yeah, yeah. Um, if this turns out to be some sort of product placement thing, I'm going to beat everyone to death. Oh, come on! That well, is Eastern so. building. I'm going to drop in. Of, speaking of product placement, I think that one of the one of the things that guys, let me know in the chat what you think about about this as a possible T-shirt or pint glass or something. But something along the lines of of hashtag Amica Gate, perhaps. I don't know. Let me know. I what need do to you get think? some of this stuff. Apparently, it's really what good for think? the bruises. It's like Amica <laughs> covers. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or another one that I was thinking of was maybe, maybe something along the lines of like, show me the metadata. Uh, but I don't know if that's, to, if that's just like more entertaining to me than anyone else. Well, I see. I, I think if you, if you frame that right, you could do it. It's not even just about this trial. It's just a funny kind of tech uh, t-shirt, yeah. I think. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, guys, let me let me know let me know about it. <laughs> yum yum um, knockout. Is yum that, is yum that, knockout. Is oh, I am sure Johnny Pack glass. <laughs> yum yum knockout written on a pint glass. That would be great. Johnny Tech's um, I I suspect are going to wind up being a a fertile field for for quotes. Yeah, yeah. It's a very um, glass that says probably water, possibly vodka. He, Possibly, he's very yeah. metaphorically inclined when he writes so i'm sure there's more to come yeah yeah i think so treasure hike says mutual abuse seems established now he must prove she exaggerated or misrepresented an incident to garner sympathy press for her career cast a shadow on his yeah i think i think that there is at least at least uh a, a fair implication of mutual abuse right because the the clinical psychologist who testified to that 
was testifying to what they had both told her. So obviously she wasn't there for it herself, but this is what she thought based off of what they were telling her through their therapy session. So there definitely is, I wouldn't say that it's solidly established, but I think that there definitely is a strong, a strong hint of it here. So Johnny uh, would, I, I would think that what they should do is to play up this idea of him him acting in self-defense and in a less than reciprocal way, if so, um, because that's I mean, a, that's a hitting on her that exaggerating. Can understand. Yes. Keep hitting on her exaggerating because right now that all lives in a narrative she told. Like so mm -hmm. much of this right now from Johnny's side of the witnesses are, I heard this from Amber. I heard this. Mm -hmm. And that's the same for the clinical psychologist. So mm -hmm. if, if you could firmly establish that even if she's not a liar, she's a story spinner. Um, right. she's a, she, she adds dramatics to whatever and happened and she's aggressive. Like the one thing that, that this therapist saw for herself was their dialogue in front of her during these, these, these sessions together. And, uh, that is, and what she said about that is not good for Amber because she right. was showing Amber being a jackhammer. She had, she had a jackhammer approach to, to speaking. She was, bah, 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 bah. she would basically steamroll him with a lot of fast paced words. He couldn't really keep up. So he basically just wouldn't talk. And so then it was only when it was just him by himself that he would, he would talk and talk and talk and talk and, and be very expressive. It was just not whenever she was around, like that's pretty bad for Amber. This is something that the therapist actually saw in her presence. The other stuff is just stuff that, that the two of them told her about what happened. So yeah, what Johnny has been able to put together so far is a concept, a little amorphous concept that, that she is whether it's physical or not is an open question, but it, she is at least the emotional control yeah. which can slide into abuser of that relationship. You've got a lot of testimony kind of saying that about how they interact together. Yeah. Um, so that's the picture that's been painted so far three days in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this could turn into a, a reverse, a reverse Chicago, right? Like he had it coming. He yeah. had it coming. He only had himself to blame. Um, we got you know, musical numbers. We got magic. <laughs> <laughs> of course we got some show tunes um Who but what you know, lawyer doesn't love chicago of course <laughs> of course come for the law stay for the singing <laughs> uh. um so uh, uh yeah so i mean they they could they could end up painting this as like look what is a guy going to do in this situation after years and years or months and months of, of her constantly berating him in all the, all the worst possible ways on a daily basis, just destroying his self-esteem completely, driving him into drug use, into alcohol abuse. When, when she knows that he has, he has addiction issues, she knows exactly the kind of support that he actually probably needs. And she's doing the exact opposite of, of what he needs. But here's the issue I have with this, right? So the other part of the picture that's been painted so far is punches a whiteboard, right? You've got the setup, which yeah. even if even if you can establish she's something close to or crosses the line into an emotional abuser. And yes, you can paint the picture that says, and Johnny snapped. Like you can you can see that kind of yeah. forming with yeah. what has been presented so far. And it's like, I could believe that narrative. I could believe it with put under that amount of pressure that somebody could snap. And then you add somebody that could be under the influence of narcotics of some kind. Okay. I it, it's they, realistically what they have to do is muddy the waters on the herd side. And, and there's some mud right now. We got a lot of days left, but I, you can see both pictures kind of forming. And if it did come down to emotional abuse versus actual physical abuse, I, you know, I don't think that gets you a defamation win. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. I think you might be right about that, but I think um, at the same time, the the more that the Depp can can play up this this concept that he was out only acting in self defense, yep. although it's it's not a it's not a legal requirement here. It's not something that that you know anyone really needs to argue in on any basis here. It's a concept that people understand, um, and that they will that could could come into their minds to sort of help with their overall sense of justice and fairness in this whole narrative. So, and that, and that could impact the jury as well I so, buy it. with their verdict. Tammy queen says mutual abuse doesn't exist according to any DV center. 
I don't know. Maybe in a court of law, that might be different. I haven't, I haven't actually tried any, 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 or litigated any, any domestic violence cases, but Nate seems to suggest otherwise. Uh, Jillian J says, should have asked the therapist if Johnny admitted to hitting. That would have been, that would have been interesting. Gustavo Paolo said, would it be possible to come to a verdict where both are responsible, regardless of one possibly instigating more? And in such case, both are guilty and no financial penalties. You're right. well, again, it's not, a D, it's not a DV case. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, of course. I, I, the, the law could definitely find, even in separate incidents, right? You might say that there's no such thing as mutual abuse. Um, and, and that can be an important part of, you know, surviving an abusive relationship and that kind of thing. And I totally get that from a reality-based psychological point of view. Legally, yeah. especially if you had separate incidents, you could have an incident where one was Perfect. abusing and the other was abusing. And the psych and, and what the clinical psychologist says is basically, you know, I felt that the relationship was mutually abusive. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that every given moment is mutually abusive. And if there is abuse from Johnny Depp to Amber Heard, it's very difficult to see how the Washington Post article would be defamatory. Yeah. Yeah. From a, from a, a, a legal perspective, for sure. Like from a, a, a lawyer's perspective, looking at it, like analyzing the straight law for sure. Um, I'm not sure. I think I read this one, but just in case I will, I will cover it again. Voodoo child at 69 says started this trial on law and crime found you through law talk with Mike and loving it. hope you'll cover every day. The sidebar of lawyers and guests make it. Oh yeah, we did. We did go over this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Voodoo child 69. That's very kind of you. Goddess of War 2702 says, why would she do that? Like WTF, I think she's referring to the witness that got excused. Why would she oh. look at anything? <sighs> I know, I know, I know. And she's kicking herself right now too. You know it, you know she is because she wanted to be helpful for Johnny. You could tell they're, they're, they, they seemed like they were good friends and she looked crestfallen once the judge said, you're excused. Well, so. I bet she doesn't live in Virginia. So, I mean, she'd already taken time out of her life, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Gamer J Stewart says she mentioned a name that hasn't been mentioned before the trial and Amber smiled and told her attorney something who mentioned it to the judge. Yeah, it may, it may have been the mention oh. of, of Debbie Lloyd. That could have been who we later learned is one of the nurses from that, that worked for the concierge doctor, Dr. Kipper. Um, that could have been it. We're not exactly sure, but I, I did see somebody sent me a, a DM on Twitter saying that um, that umbrella guy, Tug, he, he said he's been on, on Ricada's stream. He said something about that, that, uh, he has some information on probably what happened. Hmm. Um, so he's going live actually, I think, oh, he may have gone, he may have started going, going live 45 minutes ago, but he said that he was going to be talking about it, I think. So, so if you, if you want to know more, don't go yet, <laughs> but, uh, you can definitely head to his channel for his that. His video will be archived. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going anywhere, right? Cynthia Coatney says, wasn't just one answer. It was a combination of her answers being too similar to other testimony. Could be. It could be. Um, Jocelyn Shelley. Thank you. Goddess of War 2702. Maybe it was the Amica cream testimony. That could be. Could very well be. Um, who 7P says, FYI, court audio from Uncivil Law is much louder and better. I, yeah, that, that was better. Part of that also was that it was in the courtroom when he was showing that portion. Well, but it was also in comparison. To, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I'm sorry, guys. Um, we're really trying to, trying to keep things as, as even and balanced as possible. DV's RN said, Bartlow is in the audience on her laptop with Amber passing her notes. She could be checking the social media accounts of the witnesses. Just a thought could be. And so, and by the way, um, some people asked, um, well, here's, here's a question. Use the force 1977 said, are they allowed to pass notes in court? The legal team is allowed to pass notes in court and, and Am uh, Eve may be considered part of the legal team right now. If they have hired her on as some kind of an investigator or something like that, that is totally possible that, that she could be. So in which case she would also, be subject to all of the same restrictions that the legal team has um, with regard to various forms of contact contact with different people. But any social media platforms like this live stream, they could totally be watching this live stream and get, getting information based on this stuff. They, they could be watching my recaps. They could be watching any kind of posts on Twitter or Instagram or anything. All of that is fair game. They, the, the, the legal team is allowed to look at that stuff. Um, and if there's anything that is useful to them, they are able to use it. Um, that's kind of part of this like information warfare that you you might start to see in these kinds of high profile trials. Now that we start to have this real time information that is uploaded to the world, 
um, that it kind of is almost like a little bit of feedback for these legal teams. They, they may, they may start to use this kind of stuff in the future for these kind of trials. Um, so that could very well be, um, yeah. And, oh, and, and somebody else earlier asked a question about, um, cell phones in the courtroom and also people in the courtroom. The, the court has allowed for anyone that is interested to be in the courtroom. Um, so any, any people from the public are able to go so long as they, they can make it in there. They ha you have to get up super early. You've got to wait in line. You've got to, you know, it only if there's space for you, essentially, there's also an overfill room where you can watch through a video feed also at the courthouse. Um, however, you are not allowed to have your cell phone out. It can be on you, but it cannot be out. If they see oh, it, letting them keep. They, can they hold are their letting them keep. They are allowed to, to, oh. to keep them. They said that that if they see them, they will take them away. And I believe they will be super strict based on what this judge has done so far with, with uh, like particularly. Surprised they're letting cell today. phones in there by other people. To be honest. Yeah, yeah I, I, every courtroom I've, I've been in, they've stripped cell phones. I'm 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 a little surprised at that. The only people that are allowed are the attorneys, and I believe the, the legal team, because obviously, like they they need to be able to communicate with witnesses sometimes to to coordinate who's coming in and out. There there are all kinds of reasons why the legal team would need it. Um, obviously, the the judge has a phone has a phone. Yesterday we heard a, a, a ringtone, but she said this morning that wasn't her phone. Um, but uh, but you know, some people was it do proud to be phone. an American? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it would have been really funny if it was if it was parts of the Caribbean theme. <laughs> she changes it per case just to theme along with whatever the case is. That'd be good. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been really funny. Uh Bungle Bush says, never liked Johnny after his anti-Trump remarks. I, yeah, I mean that that could be one reason. I I'm I'm looking at this apolitically. Look, I mean, we've got one person that something happened, another person that something happened, and analyzing these facts regardless of their political opinions one way or another. Um, so but Everybody is obviously entitled to their own opinion. Uh, Bella Maru 99. Thank you. Thank you for your super chat. Natty J says, I think they clued into something when she said, and someone else was on the plane. Could be, could be. I, I didn't pick it up, but it's possible. Anna Berenson says she laughed at the Arnica cream and had a story prepared. That's how they figured it out. I'm almost sure. Could be Carolina. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your super chat. Andy, the game maker, says she could have worn more colloquial outfit to show she's just as human as the rest of us. I completely agree. We definitely talked about Amber's Andrew, Amber's wardrobe today. She yesterday she was Dr. Elsa Schneider. Today she was Darth Leia. Uh, um, the hair was Leia. The 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 clothes were Darth. Darth she comes Vader. across as Hollywood. She does. She does. She's and that's and that is something that that both of them were going to have to contend with with this kind of a jury, especially not being in Los Angeles. Johnny so they, Depp they, always, I don't know, something about his appearance just makes me it makes him seem very sort of humble or very sort of yeah less less large than life. What's the alternative? Well, he often than looks like a than life? man. Yes. His, no, I mean, his I, style I, is a bit more shabby to begin with. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's interesting. I mean, I think part of this that's interesting is you see the chat whenever they're talking about. Uh, looks or drug use or when all that drug testimony is, well, they're, they're Hollywood stars, this kind of thing happens. And I, I think that's true, but you're talking about a jury that's not in Hollywood. These are not people that they know, give or take. Um, and so I think it can play differently. I think it I think even all this stuff would play differently in, you know, the LA County courthouse. Uh, but I, I think if, if I were guessing, it's better to look like somebody that could potentially be from around here. Yeah. And I don't see that from Amber Heard. Definitely. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree as well. Um, Laura Pelletier says, did she say Amica cream once by mistake? Can't look back myself. That is possible. That is also possible. She may have slipped up herself and called it Amica cream instead of Arnica cream, or maybe she overemphasized the Arnica. What is Amica cream as opposed to Arnica cream? It's a well, yesterday. <laughs> so Arnica cream is is the is is a homeopathic that you can you can help to help to reduce bruising it's not immediate it's not magical but it, it supposedly helps with that but yesterday the uh 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 elaine baron uh baron baron baron, baron, baron but whatever the fem female attorney from amber heard's legal team was cross-examining isaac and and she she spent a lot of time asking him about different kinds of foundation and contouring. What does he know about this? What does he know about that? Do you know what amica cream is? And she asked like five million times about amica cream. And so we were just like we were all like, what is amica cream? 
what is what is what is that like I, I i i wasn't familiar with anything related to that and then in the chat we started to see oh i think she means arnica cream but she kept calling it amica and she may well, have looked at her notes and an rn could look like that's an m so maybe she in her in her lower brain, case she it totally that. could i yeah. totally as a lawyer i totally am sympathetic to yeah. a lowercase arnica looking like amica yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I I could totally see that too. And so you just, she used the same wrong name as someone else and gave her away. Might have. Could be. Could be. Uh, I mean that that would be one one tell for sure. Um, Cynthia Cotney said, "If y'all could not yell, maybe whisper when you interject. It would help me in not having to run across the room to turn down the volume." Oh, I'm so sorry. So, and sometimes we get excited too when when, when something happens. So I I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to lower that volume, but to a, such an extent that that we also don't get drowned out by the court feed. So I apologize for that. And we're, we're, I'm, I'm doing my best um, over here with that. Uh, Lawnard's clips witness was looking at clips. They got dismissed. My shaggy defense wasn't me. <laughs> I know. I, I hope it wasn't me. Yikes. Um, TR great Rex one. So I'm sorry if I butchered that uh, said, what do the jurors need to see to find in favor of Johnny Depp? What they need is for, for uh, the best case scenario is what they need uh, is for Amber to have essentially made everything up. Johnny never once laid a finger on her. That would be the best case scenario, but that doesn't seem like that's going to be true. So right now, um, what they would need to see is that everything has been basically exaggerated. And in fact, there are instances where she completely made things up like that would be that would be a best case scenario because that would be based on what has happened so far. That's like the, the new best case scenario plan B, I guess um, is, you know, looking at May 21st and all of the stuff that, that was, you know, the, the mess in the apartment that all of the, 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 the stuff that was the damage to the, to the space was all fake. You know, like that would be, that would be um, one of the best case scenarios because that would start to show like, okay, then, maybe he once or twice got physical with pushing or, or hitting, but it was, you know, if, especially if he can show that it was in some kind of self-defense, it was very, always very measured, always within the scope of her level of violence, you know, never something that was using, using brute strength to over overpower a smaller person. Um, and then at the same time, her, being found out as somebody who who is exaggerating this so that everybody that has heard this story from her is has has a wrong impression about what happened because she's exaggerating because she's exaggerating to everybody essentially what do you guys think all right i think we've talked about it i don't think you can actually make a legal defamation case in all likelihood unless you really can show her setting down wine and breaking glass and mm -hmm. doing those kinds of things in that hallway but I think you've also convinced me that in the mind of a jury, if you can if you can get them to the place where uh, this was bad, but the real bad actor was Amber Heard, I think you might get some check boxes that find some guilt on something that Johnny Depp has alleged. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I, I that's that. why this is all presented the way that it is, which mm -hmm. is, oh, she was manipulative. I tried to tell her to stop being manipulative, and and she exaggerates. And the and the clinical psychologist talks about the various things that she was doing, and she was you know, overemphasizing things and whatnot. I, that's, yeah. you're trying to get to a place where she's not believable. She's not credible when she takes the stand and hopes that she will be compelling. And, mm -hmm. and, and if she is, you could still look back on those witness statements that says, you know, this is her life. This is what she does. And that the jury looks at it and says, she was the bad one. Um, yeah. So that's, that's why it's presented as I think someone else mentioned, it's the war of the roses. Yeah. Yep. Definitely is. Use the Force 1977 wants to know, are the audio tapes allowed in this case? Yes. Yes, they are. Because this is this is a conversation between Amber and Johnny that was recorded surreptitiously by one of them. I think there are, there are a couple of re different recordings. I think one was by her, one was by him. Um, and they didn't get into like a, a single party. I'm going to say presumably in a one party state. consent state, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is like, yeah, well, no. uh, yeah, I don't know if one of them was California, well, Virginia, right? Virginia, Virginia is a single party consent. Yeah. State. But, but California isn't where it was recorded. So there's an evidentiary issue. Yeah. Potentially. Uh, it that's, could have been in the, the Bahamas. One, that's the one. Do we know where too. the tapes are? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was in sure. Australia. Presumably they sure. would have already fought about whether it was improperly sure. consented to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Gromax says, can you please explain the whole issue of redaction? So when they have, when they have an email, let's say from, from the therapist to Christy Dombrowski, Johnny Depp's sister, you have him giving all kinds of information about his treatment plan. And maybe he's also talking about their, you know, he's going on vacation with his wife and, and, oh, thanks for asking. Let me tell you about this and that, you know, like there could be all kinds of information in there that either is maybe not relevant or maybe something that is, um, that is sensitive to the extent that it is not, uh, publishable, especially if it is particularly sensitive and also not relevant, because in this case, we've got a lot of very private information that, um, otherwise would not be, you know, allowed for anybody in the world to see. That's kind of the nature of litigation is you have all of this stuff just getting aired for people that normally would be super, super private. Like you can, you can have a, a, a detox plan for Pete's sake. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, that's a lot of, a lot of stuff that can be brought out. The question is whether or not it's relevant or whether or not it's, it's privileged. Because another thing about the clinical psychologist is that there are, she made it a point to, to explain these individual sessions that she had with them. If they were in service of the uh, the, the, the group sessions or the, or the co-sessions that they had together, the marriage counseling, I should say marriage counseling sessions. When you have two parties that used to be married against one another, that is going to be open for, for discovery because they both, you know, either of them can, can consent to it, but where you have one person that is going to the therapist and it has nothing to do with the marriage, it has to do with other stuff that they're dealing with. That is still going to be privileged in a case like this. Yeah, you saw a reference to her going to a therapist, Cohen, or something like that. I would not anticipate seeing anything about that because that was a solo gig. Mm -hmm. um, that would be my guess. Yeah. 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 If, yeah, if it's just one of them, it would still be privileged. By right. Themselves. And that's why they were so careful yeah. about when Amber only talks to you, she says, well, the client is the couple. Yes. And that, that's why this all goes in. Yeah, this conversation was in service of, of the marriage therapy. So therefore, it's part of this whole sphere of 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 dialogue that I had with these two clients together. There was a whole purpose of it. Because I had um, the same question, right? Privilege exists to enhance transparency. We yeah. want people to get better. And that marriage counseling stuff is like, oh, God, this is horrible uh, in, uh, in open court. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so it's just the kind of situation in this particular case that leads to that stuff being admissible. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see redactions from stuff, there could be all kinds of reasons why it's redacted. It could be because of a privilege like that. It could be because it's not relevant. It could be because of, I don't know, there's, there's, there's all well, kinds of reasons. Well, think of any bit of testimony that gets objected to for uh, relevance or, or being untowardly biased, right? The materiality isn't enough to overcome whatever is happening that would bias the jury. Every time that objection happens and they say sustain and then that, you know, they don't ask the question that could always already be happening in a text message chain or something else. And so the redactions are designed to get around that. The reason the other side doesn't let them straight in because it sounded like Johnny Depp's team wasn't able to get redacted versions of the documents ready in time to actually have an evidentiary discussion and stipulation is because as you can probably imagine using Twitter or anything else, with ellipses and a little bit of strategy, you can redact to make things look a little bit different than they actually happen. Mm -hmm. So the other side rightly says, uh, Your Honor, we haven't seen the redactions. So, we don't know so how no. this looks based on how they would have framed it with these redactions. So and they didn't fight too hard. Johnny Depp was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can we can wait. We can wait until, you know, and discuss this later when, you know, when once they've been able to do this. And also it may have been, it may have been a time, a, kind of a time-saving thing that they, maybe they, 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 agreed that they would come in early, you know, before, before 10 o'clock, before the jury comes in so that they're not wasting the jury's time while the jury's here, you know, maybe they, they come in separately and, and discuss this stuff, work it all out, um, you know, either before or after court at some point and, and work this stuff out. Yeah. So in this that, case, that, there's a question of who does the redacting It would depend on the party, but Johnny Depp's team had redacted the portion of the documents. Uh, and Amber Heard's team was like, that's not the same document. Let's see what you did. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Secret McSquirrel said, bring back Isaac. I want Isaac back always. I, I want to talk about, about him every day. Oh, okay. you know, we'd invite him on stream, but you're not allowed during the trial that you testified in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, at least not until he's been released. So he's, he's been reserved for callback. So he, yeah. he may get called back at some point to rebut someone else's testimony at some point. So he's, he's under the same restrictions um, that, uh, that Gina Duter's was under. So I hope he's not watching any of this. Please do not, do not. 
um, that would be that would be bad. Um, Laura Pelletier says you can't break a horse if you are a fragile waif. I don't know anything about horse breaking, admittedly, um, but I would imagine it's it's pretty tough because those things. I mean, even a trained horse, when you come up to it and you really think about it, they can they can really cause some damage. My entire knowledge base for this comes from Yellowstone, so I don't feel qualified. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't I don't have too much experience with horses, but but it, it had been some years before I, I was up close with one. And then I was and I was like, you know, this guy could really hurt me if you really wanted to <laughs> pretty bad. Um, so I, I would imagine that actually breaking a horse is pretty, pretty tough, too. Kelly B says, I don't know if it is the witness or if it's because he's on Zoom, but I'm completely bored. The jury also must be bored. Correct. If it, or is everyone else seeing something I'm not? No, it's. Part of it, part of it is the fact that it's, it's zoom court. That's tough because you don't have a person that is able to, at, at the very least with body language, kind of try to connect with you. Right. So it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to do that. Um, and on top of that, a lot of the stuff that he was starting to get into was very clinical, very technical. So that combination of the two is just rough. And there was that's a bunch why of stuff in the middle. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff in the middle that was Johnny does drugs. But I think when he when we got you're flying to Australia, I, I I definitely woke back up. Yeah, because it started to turn into more of a narrative, right? That you could kind yeah. of follow along with and and ooh, what happened here, what happened there, you know? Um, so yeah, but but there was a there was a part in the middle that was that was a little little boring. And that's the thing about about expert witnesses too. He's he's not exactly testifying as a as an expert here. Um, cause I don't think he was qualified as an expert beforehand, right? He I was didn't just, hear that. Oh yeah. You, you, earlier in the list. No, I don't know. Yeah. So I, so I, but when we do get to the expert witnesses, that is the big risk that you run with them because a lot of what they talk about is very technical and, and usually they are very experienced at testifying in trials. So hopefully they will, they will be experienced enough to understand how to do it so that the jury can follow along. But it can still get very lost in the weeds sometimes, especially if we're talking about megapixels and pinch and zoom and, <laughs> you know, like like very like a lot, a lot of different different things can get. Well, lost they can lose even in judge driven trials. Right. I, I mean, I I have a two hour video on Epic versus Apple and she talks about how they had a battle of the experts on economics and I, three experts may never work again. She tore them holes so big about how yeah. they were actually delivering the information and everything else. So, I mean, I think that can happen experts or anybody in that professional role. And, and certainly the lawyer wasn't helping out. Some of his pronunciations of drugs, I think I think met, metabolites came out, met, metabolites or something came out from the lawyer. I was like, okay. I, as someone that frequently mispronounces things on my channel and elsewhere, I am sympathetic, but it also makes things a little hard. What language was that? Oh, it's metabolites. All right, cool. <laughs> exactly exactly um the purple one says ten dollar challenge hey I, i'm in favor of starting a ten dollar challenge <laughs> who wants to do it right um brick cormier says legal bites wants to be a concierge lawyer like tom hagan i have a special practice yes, I respond I to that one, one. Client. yeah that's right he's also brick threatening Corm a hollywood agent at that point in time so there you go very fun. <laughs> Brick Cormier says, Tom was a great character. The fact that Robert Duvall played him only made it better. When Tessio asked if Tom could get him off the hook was one of the greatest moments in the great movie. Great scene, Britt. Great yep. scene. Fantastic Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Tom Hagen. Uh, I'm going to go watch Godfather after this. Yeah. Manny Fabani, what happened to, to doctor patient confidentiality? We talked about that a, a little bit, you know, uh, just a few minutes ago that, that sometimes that can be waivable depending on the circumstances and depending on whether that doctor represents both of them. And if the representation is, is for the purposes of them as a couple. Um, and it's not a bar, it's a privilege, right? So whoever holds the privilege can always waive it if they think it's to yeah. their benefit. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. Um, so DC says completeness equals all texts with doc come in or zero. Well, Something I kind of sort of. There's gonna be some text messages there that have nothing to do with anything. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it, whatever will help put put those text messages into proper context for a reasonable reading. Um, so maybe not everything, but, but you don't uh, want to hurdle. You don't want to hurdle thirty thousand pages at the jury. I, it's not. It's not helpful. Also true, especially if especially if a lot of them are like, you know, drunk or high ramblings. 
<laughs> like some of those that, that we saw today oh, or heard one today. of those definitely sounded like a couple two in the morning texts i've gotten in the past from various family members and whatnot <laughs> yeah uh und undefined r3 lic thank you so much for your super chat Use the Force 1977. When will the audio tapes come into play? Those, I would imagine, those would probably come into play with either Johnny or Amber. That's probably when those would be would be heard because they would be able to comment on them um, mm -hmm. if they were both there. I don't know if anybody else would be able to comment on them if they weren't there, at least, you know, yeah. So that's that's my guess anyway. You're not disputing it's their voices, right? You're not going to have like an audio forensic analyst or something? Right, okay. right, exactly. Um, Emma says, Johnny said, I chopped off my left fingers, a reminder to never do that again. OG injury was on the other hand as a joke because he contracted MRSA, MRSA two times. So that 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 is also a possibility because here's the thing that I understand about Johnny Depp too is that he also has a little bit of a dark sense of humor sometimes, kind of a quirky dark sense of humor. Which I think the that's jury, come across. Yeah, which which the jury may have picked up on at this point, maybe not. I don't know. So, I think it was a joke, but what I wasn't reacting to really the left finger being cut off. I was reacting to the notion of that concept suggesting that Johnny was the one that hurt his first finger, mm -hmm. right? Because he doesn't say, I'll do that so I remember not to, I don't know, argue with Amber. She, he doesn't, there's that sequence of events to me was was very negative for Johnny because mm -hmm. he's in this text where he's in a screed against Amber. He uses the big one against her in this text. And then he says, I cut off my finger. Um, yeah. and, you, and people were saying in chat, well, yeah, you could say that when I broke my leg. It doesn't mean that I did it. It, it was yeah. something that happened to me. Yes. But it's easy enough to say she broke my damn finger or whatever else he used in that text in that yeah. context where he is really angry. Yeah. Um, so with just looking at that logically from my perspective, I say, well, if she had done it that way, that would be the time to say it. Now, I know other people are coming and saying there's other evidence that suggests she did. That's fine. I'm just yeah. reacting to them as they come. Yeah. Um, and there's also there's also the, the fact that um, I, I have heard this. I don't know this personally, but I've heard this, that that domestic violence survivors also, when they are in a particular relationship, they will do whatever they can to not only placate that other person, but also kind of protect them from being found out. So sure, you know, I ran into the scene. I ran like, into the desk type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I just I I I fell down the stairs, you know, like I I hit myself, I hurt myself, you know, like like that kind of language can come up in that kind of a context in that sort of situation. So that's also a possibility. But but I do agree that if it's a straight reading of this, um you might have a different interpretation. And that's why we've got we, that's why we've got a jury. Don't so. joke in texts, folks, if you're going to be in litigation about them. No. Yeah, especially not about something that serious. Don't live your life pretending like you might be in litigation over this. All right. Be cautious, but don't like just just assume that you're going to be on trial for what you text. Yeah. Yes, also true. Ira Gershwin says, celeb trials should always be televised and require every member of the defense and prosecution to attend court with a completely shaved head and waxed face. That would be a look. That would be a look. Definitely would like, be. It would, it would be very uniform. Like THX 1138 <laughs> kind of concept. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> um andy gp 2039 says there is audio of amber admitting to cutting his finger off and saying sorry i didn't mean to can it help if allowed into evidence absolutely absolutely that's an admission by her that would be very very helpful to johnny depp's uh um side so i'm assuming that they will be able to get that in because that's that's an admission by her an admission against her own interest so my guess is that would come in admissions um, against interest that's big time that's yes. the law and order, law and orders act break type stuff. Mm hmm. Exactly. Manny Fabani, Spidey, please explain the light bulb. Have to know. Oh, we we heard about that. <laughs> we got that one. Yeah, Manny Fabani, Spidey, <laughs> tell us about Isaac and uh, and your light bulb. Manny Fabani. Yeah, like Jada with its stop gestures. Oh, referring to the. Yeah, the he was the, talking about the, the smooth fingers thingies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Code Monkey says rewatched the Gina takedown defense called sidebar immediately before judge asked Gina. Okay. Gina also nodded when judge asked, saw the witness testimony though. Yeah. I mean, she, she was, she was a very honest, honest witness. I mean, even, even when she got herself into trouble, she was honest when it was not the best for her, but I credit to her on that really. Well, but I, I can, can you speak for a moment? Because I don't think I'm as qualified as you to talk about this. Why, mm -hmm. why is it so important for someone that's going to talk later in the trial 
to not even look at clips of what came before. Because you don't want to line up your testimony with somebody else's testimony. Okay. Um, so, so knowing, although it's, it's in this case, a lot of this was previously litigated in the sun trial. So someone could have also watched testimony from the sun trial while being a witness in the sun trial, but watch it after all of that concluded while this litigation was still going on, they wouldn't necessarily know that they were being called as a witness because the witness list only came out at the beginning of this month or the end of last month. Yeah. So there's a, broad length of time that somebody could have also watched this testimony from you know any of these other witnesses Ooh. previously if they testified before you know what i mean yeah so it's 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 a it's kind of a weird rule in this specific instance but generally speaking it makes sense you want people to not be lining up their testimony with one another right you don't want them coordinating and that does make sense because sometimes i think some of the court rules can feel a little archaic to people especially who haven't been through evidence once or whatever yeah. Um, and that was one that I say, was there any real harm there? Probably not, but you have to be very, very careful with this process. And especially with something that is as high profile as this case, because that judge is probably thinking, if I let her in with, you know, having watched that stuff and I am not strict with her, somebody else might try to get away with it. And then what is their going to, what, what is their, you know, tainting going to be with their testimony? And then also my reputation is on the line here because everybody's watching the, the decisions that I'm making. So that sounds particularly foolish. And also that may be a grounds for appeal. Right. And once Amber team calls on it, apparently from the sounds of things, then that mm -hmm. was always going to happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. So all, all kinds of reasons why she should be pretty strict on that. And I think that probably was actually a proper, a proper decision by this judge as much as, as, as painful as it is, because I really wanted to hear her testimony, you know, it's, we'll never know kind of thing. Um, I mean, unless, unless she actually did testify in the UK trial, you know, then, then there's a way to find out. Based sure. On some, some juror will listen. look it up and that'll be a story next week. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, so yeah, but that's, it's, it's interesting stuff, those rules, but they are there for a reason, right? So, um, world of Lincoln says anything crucial happened was working during the trial. Oh, yeah. We, we had, we, we talked about all the, all the stuff at this point. Um, Brian Miller said, can you and Nick do a recap show on Fridays? I can't this week. I promised Eric Hundley that I would be on his channel tomorrow at noon. So if you want to see me talking about some of this stuff, um, other, other lawyers are probably going to be on there with him. I don't know if Nick's going to be there. I don't know if Emily D Baker is going to be on there because she was streaming on the first day too, but I I'm, I'm there to talk Johnny Depp because that's, that's the only thing that's on my brain right now for the next, <laughs> next five and a half weeks. Right. Um, so, but I not, not this week, maybe in the, maybe, maybe in following weeks. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Manny Fabani says, Hogue, sing me lullabies about the last of us too, as I drift off. I have two hour long videos over in virtual legality with my postmortem thoughts on the last of us part two and analysis of Neil Druckmann interview on the plot. So go check that out. Sing yourself to sleep with hours of virtual legality. There you go with the soothing, with the soothing tunes of virtual legality. Yeah, I'll try to do some more videos that are in the witching hour. That's right. <laughs> Let's talk about a little video gaming. <laughs> this is, this is ASMR sleep hour with That's Rick right. Hogue. <laughs> Relax and enjoy the law. <laughs> there you go. Jay Blocker says, Kurt, have you covered the Supreme Court ruling of 1893 that made cucumbers legally vegetables, not fruit? I wish. I'm sorry I missed this. We'll I, I'm Kurt. sorry. I didn't, yeah, we've got to ask Kurt. I, I, I'm sorry for not, not putting this up while he was here. Um, but, uh, I, I have not seen it. Have you seen, have you seen, have you seen that kind of a Supreme Court ruling? Have I seen the Supreme Court ruling of 1893? You know, I, I'd like to think I'm good. I have to answer no. <laughs> <laughs> Claire Flavin Jones says, hashtag Honda for sale. Do not open trunk. <laughs> Did you see that yesterday? So there was a text message that Johnny had sent to Isaac saying something along the lines. Of, oh, it, it was it was during the CUNT testimony when when it, part of it was that he had called her a CUNT. Basically something about I would like to murder the cunt and basically stuff her into the trunk of a of a car of a honda and you know let her die in a flame or something like that something along those lines it Colorful. sounds terrible of course to wish someone that kind of graphic harm 
Um, but I would imagine that divorce lawyers have seen many a text like that from their clients <laughs> um, yeah. describing yeah. their ex-spouse. So H having watched some relationships explode, that's not Yeah, really speaking of, of, of people exploding, hey Joe, hey. how's it going? Hey. <laughs> How Welcome you guys been? Logic. Good. How are you? Oh, oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Uh, I spent all day trying to find a power adapter for my camera, which I left back in New Jersey. Oh, and no. apparently electronics are not, Orlando is not really big on electronics. It's not You're in really, Orlando? I didn't even it's not know really, that. Yeah, I'm here for the holidays. Got Jewish holiday coming up. Oh, okay. So... So yeah, I'm on the road. I spent basically all day trying to find a power cord so that I could actually join you guys on a stream. Aww. And every time I tried coming in, my reception was crap or whatever. There's yeah. like lag. I'm hearing static. It was just disastrous. Oh, so so I give me understand. give me give me the up give me the updates. First of all, mm -hmm. why I, what I noticed what I noticed was that there was like a lengthy period of time that there was deposition that that was being shown to everyone. Yeah, so um, most of it today was was deposition testimony. That's a, such a strange thing. Like, I, like, why is deposition better than bringing them up there? It's not live. I mean, like, it's, why, not, it's it, not for the jury. Um, but uh, it, it's not better for the jury because it's always better to have a, a live person in front of you because a, a deposition is more likely to put you to sleep. But I think that, um, well, you know, for, for one thing, there is the, the evidentiary rule that if, if a witness is unavailable, you may use their deposition testimony um, instead of instead of bringing them into the courtroom because they're unavailable either because of the distance or because of their the, the certain factors in their life or because they're dead. Sometimes I've I've seen right. that in, in trials before. Um, so but it has to be a good reason that the court accepts, obviously. So. Um, um but, and that uh, was Am that was amber heard's witness in the middle of his of his, in the middle of his case in chief you have a witness from amber heard i don't yeah. even understand i was I'm not i turned on sure. and i'm like this is so confusing yeah i'm not quite sure why that's happening i'm wondering if maybe um the dep team is introducing it i think i think it's, it's almost like they're co-introducing some of these witnesses it seems like um Definitely. because some of them are are good some of them are bad for both sides um, and it's almost like it's helpful for Johnny to be able to tell his narrative to introduce these people, even though they're not necessarily all that great for Johnny. It's helpful to be able to craft those witnesses in between some better witnesses to sort of tell this story and tell these 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 various high and low points sort of sandwiched together um, among these various witnesses in this way, I think. I don't know. Hit Does that make a, any sense? Hit him with a Johnny's a good guy right after the the, the drug doctor. Yeah. 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 I, I, I was wondering about that myself because even though the marriage counselor kind of went both directions, the drug doctor seems m much more anti-Johnny to appear right in the middle of this case. Um, mm -hmm. So that that is interesting. I was also wondering if I don't know how much more testimony that we're seeking to elicit from the witness that got kicked out of the trial, but were they... Were they fully ready for what the next step was going to be, and and was was Dr. Mueller or I think I got that wrong. What, what, Kipper, Kipper, sorry. Yeah. Um, was was he always ready to go when this ended? I, I mean, I, I don't know. It's certainly an unusual state of affairs that they just have their testimony cut off. Yes. Yeah. That that also was 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 odd. Did you catch that, Joe? That there was a witness who was dismissed before she could finish her testimony, and stricken from the from the record. No. Why? What happened? He, because because it came out suddenly, and and it's un, it's still unclear as to exactly how they figured this out based on her, the testimony that she gave. None of us could really catch it, um, at least not obviously. Um, that she, the the judge dismissed the jury um, for like fifteen minutes and said, "We're going to take care of some administrative stuff. Just hang tight out there." Um, then she turned to the witness and she said, "Hey, um, by the way, have you?" watched any of the testimony from this trial so far and she said yeah i've seen some clips <laughs> she's like okay uh, you're dismissed so she said she said it's a it's a strict rule you can't you can't you can't look at any of the testimony in this case because you're supposed to remain completely you know on your own 
from from everybody else um, because they don't want it, it, the rule exists so that they don't line up their testimony with anybody else. And so she said, we are going to strike this witness's um, uh, testimony from the record. We're going to instruct the jury that that's what we're doing. Tell them to disregard everything. And she is gone. I'm sorry. Wow. Did she say whether she was watching Legal Bites or Raketa Media? That's what I want to know. <laughs> she didn't, but someone suggested that on Instagram. Okay, so I do know that there is an account that had that had taken a, a, a clip from my stream from yesterday, from when Isaac was on the stand, and had put it on on her mm -hmm. on her account in her story. I know this because one of my friends follows that account and sent it to me and said, Hey, you're famous. That's so cool. And I was like, Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so I, I knew about this before. And then someone super chatted today. That same account said, Hey, she liked this witness liked that clip that had been put up by the, so I don't know. If you're ruining the trial. That's you're ruining said. the trial. Oh my like, God. Did Alita disqualify a witness? Oh, wow. The no, judge should totally. Like the judge should totally issue a cease and desist on this whole no. channel. Oh my shut God. you down for six weeks. Make sure that you don't. <laughs> make sure that we just we just silence you. This is outrageous. This is so uh, you're destroying Johnny Depp. You're, uh, man, it, it's all your a... fault. Johnny Depp now is gonna is gonna lose. He's gonna owe Amber a hundred million dollars. It's all your fault. If we get a so, bench statement that opens this, next week that says, I'm hearing people are streaming this on YouTube. Be careful where you put your clips. I'm talking to you, legal bites. Lead up. <laughs> <laughs> except, except, except then, just watch, just watch. All of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, what's going on with this with this live streaming? And then we are get you kidding like a me? huge if the judge said legal bites, you'd be at 400,000 in two seconds. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, you oh. should pray. You should pray that from the bench she says, she says. And by the way, Ms. Legal Bites. <laughs> hey, no one should be streamers. watching. Nobody should be watching her. She's offering her commentary and trying to poison this entire all our witnesses here. So yeah, I think I think you'll hit your million like like tomorrow. <laughs> I get my silver play button in two yeah. minutes. No, there you no, go. No, no. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Uh, but but T T J Ventura just said, "Judge, you, judge said, you've seen clips on social media, witness. No, I've seen some bites though. <laughs> <laughs> that's not actually what she said, but that's hilarious. Um, yeah. I mean, that would be. Except then, then of course, law and crime would be like, who is this stealing all this attention? Right. Come on, you get the, the four hundred thousand subscribers. <laughs> You'd also get the cease and desist letter from law, law and crime. Yeah. That's when there. you know." That's when you know you've actually made it. Is like when yeah. law and crime notices you and says, "Piss off," or "I'm gonna have you yeeted from the internet forever." They're just rolling through the law tubers. Yeah. And then, and then that's when I pull quartering in, and I'm like, "My channel is under attack." And then yeah. pull in everybody and guys, like 50 videos on that. <laughs> guys, my channel is under attack. <laughs> Always. Uh, oh. No, we were gosh. just doing super chats, Joe. Yeah. Oh, very, yeah, okay. A lot of very generous viewers. Yeah. On the channel very, today. Well, very when when Legal Bites gets thrown off the internet by this judge, I'll start streaming the trial and pick <laughs> up for you. So. Oh, I would totally cover Legal Bites gets eliminated by Judge and Johnny Depp trial. Oh, that would go God. on my channel. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe, like, if I become the source of drama, that that has never uh, happened in my life. So that would Rick. be just the weirdest thing. Oh, Reuters <laughs> reports YouTuber <laughs> kills Johnny Depp from California. <laughs> Please, country <laughs> over the weekend. Right. Well, I'm, we're gonna have to just Richard. We're gonna have to disavow that we ever knew her or had anything to do with her. <laughs> we're, we're that that she's a down. terrible influence on everyone. <laughs> Even though the evidence is right there on YouTube, <laughs> no, all no, the live streams you guys that. have done it with me. me. <laughs> you can't see. I'm not. You, no one sees my face right now. So no, you can't prove it's me. He was hijacked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh man. Well, yeah, yeah. Anyhow, uh, hopefully that doesn't. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Although the, the shout out would be pretty funny. Um, but I would prefer my channel not to be heated over something like this. So, mm. yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah. If you guys are okay with it, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the next yeah, super yeah, chat. Yeah. 
Please. Okay, cool. Well, I'm waiting for you. Something soon. All right. Just want to make sure. Um, <laughs> Isaac Baruch is wholesome Gabool art says, phony pitches, <laughs> pint glass, please. <laughs> phony pitches. You know what? That actually is not a bad idea. I'm going to take a note oh, of that. Oh, she's writing that phony. down. Uh, for the record, uh, if you do provide commentary to Legal Bytes in the method of providing possible things to go on branding, the intellectual property is owned by her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have questions said. They actually have questions. WTF is testified by deposition. As somebody recently, as somebody, someone recently deposed in a civil malpractice case, I was told I am not testifying under oath. Oh. Sorry if this is vague. Or sorry for this. Bit. Sorry if this day. Okay, so so. I mean, what? you do actually a deposition. You do take an oath. You do. Yeah, similar you to specifically do. Yeah. Yeah. So you're mean, not you're not in a courtroom. Maybe the way that they put it was a little bit confusing because you're not in a courtroom, but you are testifying under oath to the same effect that you would be if as if you were in court. And that's one of the reasons why they can use a deposition in mm -hmm. the courtroom is is for that exact reason. Um. So you can. It, and like I said before, it's 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 dependent on unavailability. It's dependent on the court accepting your reasons for unavailability, or the two parties step stipulating to the fact that that they can allow this in. The thing I've seen that throws people sometimes, and I think you've seen this in some of the deposition videos you've seen, not in court but outside of court, is that you do you do talk through objections. You do go straight through that, and then they they edit and and redact and do the various things after the fact. So. People could get thrown by that process because you'll you'll be sitting next to a lawyer well, I, and they'll object. They'll object and they'll say relevance and bias and whatever else they feel like saying. And then and then they'll and then your lawyer will say, "Yeah, answer now." Yeah. Um, and you go forward, and it's not like Law and Order. It's not like watching the trial where you just you stop everything and you don't you don't answer mm -hmm. because the finder of fact isn't in front of you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right, which is why. By the way, so I, at least in New York civil practice, relevance is an invalid objection, which is one of the reasons it's so weird to have depositions brought up there, because there could be so many random questions thrown out, thrown up there, unless it was edited to make sure that there, were, there weren't any improper questions, which I guess would make sense if they anticipated that this witness was not going to be able to appear. That yeah. they have, they, that, as Richard said, they redacted the, the original deposition to make it, yeah. to make to ensure relevance. Yeah, yeah. No, that, and you see that Am in I? the edits in the videos. You, you see, like, you can watch the timeline jump between pretty significant portions of time. And, like, that, that was something that went a wrong direction um, yeah. and, and pop in. Mm -hmm. Now, see, I got to combine I got to combine my two channels now here. I, I got Rachel Olson in your chat, Elon tweeting and buying, all interesting timing since he could be testifying, right? So I got virtual legality, my channel talking about Elon putting a bid in for Twitter, and the and the conspiracy theory right there is he's bidding for Twitter during this trial to take to take the light off of him because we may have seen him in a video already yesterday and he may come up again in this mm -hmm. trial. And he's trying to avoid negative press. I love it. Could be, could be. Although Law Talk with Mike made a, a very good point earlier today that it could very well be that he's so he he has so far avoided um, subpoenas for a deposition. By both parties in this case he has not been deposed so one party or the other could vehemently object to him being called as a, i mean even if he just decided because i mean he's such a maverick he could just like be like ah whatever he I'll, just rolls okay, in under the I'll public go. door one day and is sitting back there and he just wants <laughs> to get like, out of the witness I'm list. ready <laughs> he wants to get out of the witness list because he's like i saw what you did to that lady so i'm gonna look at this trial for a couple of minutes and i'm out <laughs> yep yep i'm going to watch legal bites <laughs> um so, it, you know, that there is a possibility that, I mean, who knows? Who knows what goes on in his mind, right? Um, well, but the possibility, even, yeah, of course. But even if he did decide he wanted to, the uh, one or one of the two sides could totally object to that saying, look, we have been trying to depose him for so long and he has avoided service. We haven't had that cha that chance. So he should not be able to testify because who knows what's going to happen here, right? Like, like this is this is fundamentally unfair. Sure, so, but also exciting. Also thrilling for our purposes, <laughs> it would be great. It would be who knows would what be... he'll say. He'll yeah. have his bit on Twitter on the stand. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, so that, that was a very that was a very good point that that Mike made earlier. Um, Paul K says she looked like Grace Kelly, and that shading did look like bruises. Um, possibly a little bit like Grace Kelly. She looked a little more severe than Grace Kelly, in, in my opinion, today. 
Um, but the shading, so her, her bronzing on her cheeks, that's like bronzing or blush or something. My, in my opinion, she has, she has some strong cheekbones. So in the, in the, the, the lighting, depending on how she, how she holds her, her face to the lighting, it could look like she's got some shadowing there that could look like a slight bruise. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's all stuff that the jury might notice if, if they can see that far. Cause for us, like I said, we can see pretty up close, but they, uh, they may, they may not. Um, and Paul K said again, she looked like Grace, Ke Grace Kelly and that sh shading did look like bruising. Yep. You're right. DB's RN said, does anyone know what role Kathleen Zellner will have on Johnny Depp's team? It was big news when announced, but we haven't heard anything else. Blessings. I know that she's one of the, one of the attorneys on his team and she's done some high profile litigation as well. So people were very excited that she was joining it. She is, my guess is that she probably is in a, in a consulting role kind of behind the scenes and is maybe sort of helping to, to manage a lot of the, a lot of the witnesses and the way that things are sort of fitting together and the way that they're crafting everything for the closing argument. That's my guess if we haven't seen her so far. Um, so that, that could be it. I don't know, but that's kind of just speculation. So I don't really have any in inside baseball information on that. Um, Aisling, Aisling or Ailing? Eiling? Burke? I'm so sorry. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Thank you for your super chat. Um, and once again, will they tell the jury why Gina won't be allowed? No, she didn't say. She she didn't say, and, and no, no one's going to be able to comment on that either. No one will be able to make any kind of inferences or anything, but the jury is going to try to fill that gap somehow. So um tj ventura says this feels like a written house reunion remember remember that crazy november it does feel like a reunion doesn't it for sure for sure um tj ventura also said judge you've seen clips on social media witness no i've seen some bites though oh uh. <laughs> mhl says when was the last time you've seen such havoc in court this is setting up to be the most bonkers trial ever. I, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. I, Rittenhouse had some crazy moments too, though, that definitely went viral. But this is also, I don't know. I don't know. What we're do you building. think, Rick? Yeah, we're building right now. We haven't had yeah. any mic drops that were occasional days in the Rittenhouse trial. Yeah. Yeah. But so. we did have some laughs. Yesterday we had some, we had some hysterical laughs during, during Isaac's testimony. And today was a shocker. With the uh, with the witness that got excused for sure, so that is the last super chat that about does it for me. Um, thank you, Rick, for hanging out yeah. with me for most of the day. Yeah, it's been great. And thanks to Joe. I know he just dipped out. I don't know if he if he, if he had a poor connection or what. But um, thanks to everybody that that joined, guys. If if you're still watching and you haven't checked out anybody else from from the from the you know, the panel for sure, go and check them out. Give them a like. Give them a subscribe because they are really helping me out to give you guys some really good commentary on this trial. And we all do slightly different stuff. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, we call ourselves law too, but I think I heard sidebar here before. I like that one. I like that too. Um, Viva kind of owns that already though. Who, who owns that one? Viva, Viva and Barnes. They have their, their, their Viva and Barnes sidebar when they invite somebody I mean, on to talk about stuff. I think we know they can't own a, a generic legal term, oh, Alita. That's true. That's, that's, so, that's, that's true. But we want to be respectful of their brand, yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I do like sidebar. So then good on you, Viva and Barnes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, everybody here does slightly different stuff. Even the mm -hmm. stuff that's kind of similar. You know, Emily handles pop culture and I do too. But we handle yeah. different pop culture, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, check out everybody. I, I, I've had such an enjoyable time meeting and working and talking with you all, uh, realistically since November. I mean, I, I was talking with you before I knew you before all that happened, yeah. uh, last fall. but that, um, yeah, it's a good time. So subscribe here. Definitely. Lita is the one putting in the work. I obviously Aww. cannot, I cannot be here, <laughs> whatever this is, 10 hours, 11 hours a day. We're nine um, and a half so I right pop now. in as much as I can. Uh, but yeah, subscribe yeah. here, like, do all that fun stuff. You get the day off tomorrow, I think, right? Except I do. you're be on other people's shows. Yes, tomorrow I will be on Eric Hunley for one or two hours, whatever that is. Oh, that'll be a short day. Ooh, only two hours of live two streaming. Two hours of streaming is short. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever, however long, you know, he wants to go on um, and and talk about Johnny Depp, right? Because that's that's what I'm that's what I'm obsessed with right now is this trial. And that's that's the only thing that I can really pay attention to right now. But um, that's what I've got for tomorrow. And then Monday, we are going to be right here, right at 930 East Coast time again. 
I I will be back in my studio. Hopefully, I don't have any plane delays and I can sleep on the plane and and uh, and you know that that whole thing. I've got to. However, I'm going to manage overseas. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, four days a week, I can I can manage that and then crash on the weekends and recover. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot, um, I could not do what you're doing with this particular case. So I, um, I'm already subscribed. I can't extra subscribe, uh, but I would, uh, cause I think subscribe this is very, very again, cool. just make sure it's an odd number of times. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I want to make sure the subscribe button's on. Well, that's where I get the updates. Yeah. So, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, and apparently I missed like most of the drama today. I think I was on for like 60, 70% of the stream today. I missed the real exciting stuff. I was yeah. drafting a note purchase agreement. So what can there you, you do? Go. There you go. So, um, but, but thank you so much for, for hanging out with me. This oh, yeah. has been great. Thank you to everybody in the chat, all the likes, the shares, the subscribes, all of the super chats are very generous. Thank you, you guys. This has been great. And so far it's been a very, very interesting trial. We are here for it. We, this was day three on to day four, right? Let's get yeah, it. Let's I, get I, it. I will, I will be popping on when I can. So absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And, um, so I, I'm going to be filming a, a recap for today. And hopefully getting that out as soon as possible. But it it's yeah, this they, they they take a little bit of time, but so far they've been they've been doing they've been doing fairly well. These these uh, recaps. So you, are, you are like the master of understatement. These things are popping above ten thousand views in like two minutes. If you don't watch these, you're missing out. Even if you sat with us for the whole stream. So check those out too. I, I feel like I, I feel like your PR agent over here. But your stuff is great. <laughs> Thank you. And also the clips channel, because we've got some, we've got some really great clips that are coming out from these, these trial streams. So if you, if you just want to see some of the spiciest parts of the day, um, be sure to subscribe. It's, there's a link down below for that as well. So definitely be, be sure. To Is there going to be a clip of Kurt completely not reacting to a magic trick? Cause I think it should be up there. I think probably, <laughs> I, I, th I think, I think that's going to have to make it. If, if, if not today, tomorrow, then at some point soon, because that, that's, that, that was pretty great. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, grumpy right. lawyer, cat, Kurt. <laughs> we All love right. You, Kurt. That, that for me about does it. And otherwise I will see you guys in the next video.